rescue comes through. Chun Li moves away, gets rescue. out of range, but touch of death range, touch of death range, F tier no way. way. They're going to championship Sunday. Dorito! Dorito! Dorito might just fall here. Big hits coming out from Prep. They've got Trinket Bob. They've got the game in the bag. They've got all the ingredients. I think that they have done it. Paralyzed, no Trinket. Prep is going to go down, and F tier oh, are into the gauntlet. Oh my yeah, strong God, opener coming in here. Who are they gonna go after? Going after Sea Dew. Immediately, Emerald community might just die in the opener. And that is exactly what we were just talking about. Z5 looking to close out the game. He is pushing forward. He is on a solo mission. No way! He take down Waz Brute Hit. He is there. The line. He's trying to bait him right there. There it is. Grip start on track. Oh, Into no, another no. one. And he's gonna go down. Unbelievable. Big damage with the roots. Alec. And they will. Alec Alec go. Kill. Oh, oh We got a 2v2 situation. Just send the tyrant. It's time to win the game. He gets bashed. He's got no trinket abster he's got some mana but he's cloned he trinkets out of the clone whiskey's getting pressured sam's getting pressured it could come down to a 2v2 at this point c to is sheared sam goes down whiskey could follow trill kidneys abster he's going for the kill i think we're going to a 2v2 to oh. decide the number one position and whiskey on 10 percent trill is gonna take him down everyone it is the moment you have all been waiting for welcome to championship sunday of awc season 2 2023 my name is i i'm your host here with zico is zale and super tease then will be joining us a little bit later but we have a full day of games today we are starting off in the eu region agents nice team they're lined up first to zale but the competition has never been higher i feel like for these eu teams right now yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Echo has just been looking so good, I think, throughout this entire season. You know, they have been looking pretty much unstoppable. Uh, the agents and Nice Beam, obviously, you know, turning in some really strong performances. And whoever wins there is going to be in tough against Admirals Esports, who has also kind of been on a tier of their own, it feels like. So uh, definitely going to be really, really competitive and interested to see if there can be any kind of upsets. If anyone can take down Admirals, if anyone can take down Echo, uh, remains to be seen. Yeah, that is absolutely the question right now for the European region. And then the, on, the, on the other hand, Super Tease, we've got North America, Ducomified. They came up from the depths of the gauntlet on Friday and are definitely holding their own. They've had some pretty strong games and their first stop against Golden Guardians. We didn't really get to see them fully play yesterday. They were missing WizK. So now that they're kind of full throttle, Super Tease, how do you feel like that match is going to go? Yeah, I mean, hopefully everybody is here. Um, this is a series that could actually be tough for the Golden Guardians because they were struggling with Liquid's Moonkin Rogue for, you know, the, the last portion of the cup stage of the season. So Ducomified are looking like a phenomenal uh, Moonkin Rogue team. So do they have something else prepared here with WizK? Are they going to try and utilize some Mage Warlock tech? Um, that's what we saw Luminosity Gaming uh, trying to use against Liquid. And they had some unfortunate games uh, where they had a lot of tr cooldowns they could have traded and they didn't. And those games games could have looked good for them to be able to beat them so the golden gardens they've been practicing a lot of mage lock um between jelly beans um and whiz k they've, they've put a lot of effort into that so i'm really curious to see what their comps are going to be for this tournament yeah i am as well you know we've seen over the friday and saturday we saw kind of a lot of new comps come out some players on some new specs you know we saw like peekaboo death knight in there so i think we maybe we'll see some new developments today as well but about three hundred thousand dollars worth of prize pool on the line today the teams that have made it so far already have a pretty good amount of you know like pocket change basically uh fifteen thousand dollars that is definitely a, still a big number just for getting mm -hmm. fourth so quite a bit on the line for these players, Zico. What are you most excited for today? Uh, I mean, it's hard to pick, to be honest. There is a, a lot of storylines, but uh, of course in Europe, uh, I would say, can anybody actually dethrone Echo here? Or is it just business as usual for these guys? Uh, and I think uh, the North American bracket as well is going to be very exciting to look at because uh, I feel like uh, EU has been a little bit more top heavy this season. But uh, if you look at that North American bracket, uh, you got Team Liquid looking actually better than ever yesterday. They took down Ducomified, they took down Luminosity Gaming, and uh, they are looking like the team to beat right now. So this could be, uh, you know, Sidu's big year. And, and at the same time, you know, we got Golden Guardians yesterday. They didn't have their full roster. Hopefully today uh, they have, you know, full power. Uh, and then Ducomified coming from the gauntlet. They looked strong on day one. They looked strong in the gauntlet. Uh, what can they actually do down there? 
um, and you know luminosity as well. Can they uh, kind of climb back up to their uh, uh, their former glory? This is the first team where you know I would say they're not like the heavy favorites going into this thing. So uh, there's a lot going on in NA for sure. Yeah, a lot. I, I think I'm really excited for, you know, the later half of the day. But we can kind of get into the first match that we've got coming up here in just a moment. I'm sure these teams are getting ready. Our lovely admins are queuing up the game any moment now. But it's the Agents versus Nice Beam, Super T. Super T, uh, you know, we know that the Nice Beam, they came from that gauntlet. How do you feel like they've been doing so far? I mean, you know, they had to go up against Echo for their first game on on Saturday. So that's definitely not an easy way to have to start things out. Uh, yeah, I mean, in the gauntlet, we saw them utilizing the Fury Warrior Balance Druid Holy Paladin, and they looked really good with it in the gauntlet. Um, and I'm imagining that's going to be the comp that they use, considering in Europe the agents were knocked down by that comp from Admirals Esports. So Nice Beam actually stand a pretty good chance, I would say, if the agents haven't prepared something overnight to be able to deal with that composition. I mean, which they could, you know, I mean, we've kind of been questioning that a lot as they all, I feel like we've seen, mm. you know, like uh, rogues have come out to play quite a bit. Um, and we've seen some, you know, bring that new spec on the table. Like, what do you think maybe these teams could have prepared, if anything, overnight for uh, for these competition for this competition? I mean, overnight, I think it's going to be pretty hard to beat anyone you know, at this level if you're literally just making a class yesterday and practicing a little bit. Um, but yeah. there's been a lot of time, obviously, since since the Cup's finished. So, you know, they haven't necessarily shown everything that they can show. Uh, as you said, we're seeing a lot of Outlaw Rogues come out. That's looking really strong. Moonkin's still seeming really strong. We're seeing, you know, a, a number of different teams running Warriors. We've seen Death Knights come out. So I do think there's quite a bit of variety on this batch um, from what we've seen so far. So, you know, we'll have to see what they want to bring out, you know, if they have some different answers some things that they can actually try to you know throw out i think especially you know if you if you fall down early in a series it makes sense to just try right like if you're down zero two you need to try something different um and i think that's when yep. we'll see teams really kind of like reach for maybe what they wouldn't normally go for yeah Absolutely. And, you know, something kind of we were talking about with Nice Beam. This is a team that kind of has nothing to lose here. You know, they already came out of the bracket. Uh, they had to play Echo first, so they're already down one. When we were speaking with them earlier this weekend before we headed into any of the games, they said that their goal was basically to make the game as miserable as humanly possible for the enemy team. And I think they've certainly <laughs> set out to do that. Um, so uh, we'll see if they do that here against the agents. It is best of five once again so neither of these teams have any more chances they lose they are out of the running here for being european grand finals champion it's game number one here on a grand arena all right the agents this is a stacked roster like we got z pie as grad brunhitty is going to be coming in on windwalker Ooh, that's going to be their mix up here in game one and surprisingly nice beam aren't using the fury warrior uh trent is going to be playing his main class the demon hunter instead maybe they just want to focus on making sure that they're playing mains but demon hunter into windwalker or a rogue is a very dangerous matchup yeah, absolutely. You can you can totally get sent, you know, 100 to 0 in a stun. So we'll see if they can set anything like that up. And for now, you know, Brunhitty trying to get in on the enemy Moonkin. He's just getting CC'd up so heavily, though. Clone into Repent, another clone over the top. And Trent is just on the back of z by 4 now. So Brunhitty's got to try to get something rolling. We'll see if he can do just that as he pushes in onto Corky. Instant trinket on that leg sweep there from Corky. And Brunhitty's just going to turn around. They're trying to get back to Trent, who's actually in a hodge back behind the pillar. And Trent is getting crushed there. Going to be forced to trinket. So back to back. Trinket's force here uh, out of the agents. You know, they get Corky's Trinket, they get Trend's Trinket, and honestly, a really good start already. Yeah, big value Serenity from Brunhitty. But now he's cycloned up. They're pushing in. They're getting on top of z -Pi, and the Demon Hunter's going to do a lot of damage to an Ellie if he's uncontested. He's going to get 100% uptime, and z is really struggling. There's a Solar Beam. Hodge to cover the Tiger's Lust, and Asgrath was actually interrupted, so he can't do anything after escaping. As z is cycloned low. If they can chain any CC on Asgrath right here, he may have to Trinket or Divine Shield. He gets a big lay on hand, so that's a cooldown you're probably only going to see once in a game. Now he's bashed up for a moment, still dying through lay on hands. Has to Trinket the Cyclone. They're trying to pressure Trend, but a lay on hands comes in from numbless that's going to get trend back to full house with so some really big trades from both sides in the initial stages but at this point nice beam with no medallions the next leg sweep which is available is very threatening is if brunhitty can connect this with cross crowd control they could close this out 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm getting a little bit nervous for Tren here. You know, he's always back behind that pillar looking for damage, but if he gets hodged up, if he gets lassoed, and they can actually get over onto him, it could just be game over if he's out of LOS of Numbliz. We'll see, though, because Tren's going to go back in towards the middle of the map now, trying to get back onto Brunhitty. And Brunhitty's pushing forward. There's the Paralyze onto Numbliz. There's the stun on Tren, and Tren might just be gone. Not going to be able to knock him down just yet as Numbliz does get out of that CC, able to top Tren back off. And now Tren feeling a little bit more safe. We'll push in over towards Zipai here, trying to lock down that Ellie Shaman as much as he possibly can. But I really like the positioning so far from the agents. It feels like the game is going in their favor. But then again, Bop forced out onto Zipai. So Tren, you know, getting some work done. The Bop is going to have to be used on him as well as he's going to push in onto Asgrath. But again, every time he gets pulled back behind these pillars, it does make me a little bit nervous for him. And now Numla is pushing in. He's looking for the repent. It's going to be a full repent there over on Asgrath. Can they get some damage rolling with this? It doesn't look like it just yet, as Corky's actually the one taking the brunt of the damage here. Has to pop the barks in, trying to pull back, looking for those clones. Does get interrupted, but it's not going to last long. Zipai, though, pulling back. Now going to get cloned. Unfortunately, a big heal landed right before that clone came in. So it is going to, I think, stop the push. All right, push is subsiding here. Zipai has burned a lot of cooldowns, about even at this point for both sides. But mana is definitely in favor of Numbless if they can maintain that advantage. Zipai looks like he's trying to find a hex, just tanking an interrupt maybe for his team. Now a lightning lasso around the corner. These lightning lasso fists of furies can be really devastating, but with no crowd control on Numbless, he's just easily healing through that with Avenging Wrath. Asgrath lining up that tier's deliverance, but he's behind now on healing. His teammates are down to 30% in game number one. Zipai trinkets out and tremors the incoming crowd control. Now Asgrath is finally free, but even with Tears Deliverances up at the moment, he's struggling. He doesn't want to couple it, I guess, or overlap it with Avenging Wrath, but uh, if he may need to use it, is there's so much damage incoming. Trent is just getting so much uptime right now. We can see that in the damage meter. He's just absolutely devastating. z -Pi. here comes Metamorphosis. Asgrath ducking over to Ask. Trend ducking over to Asgrath as if he was looking for crowd control there, but doesn't actually find any. z -Pi gets cloned low. Trend's trying to retreat away from Brunhitty here as Brunhitty is setting up damage. Serenity is available as Trend ready for the attack. He gets a double stun, but they turn it around. He gets grappled on his I beam. Trying to reduce some of his incoming pressure onto Zipai. Brunhitty gets cloned away. Both teams playing expertly to try and negate each other's advances. Trend continuing to charge forward. Really looking for that astral shift. Now potentially a swap to Brunhitty. He's got no trinket. Could definitely be a good option if they can get a solar beam at the same time as a stun. But Corky's caught in a lasso. Trend in a hex. Paralyzed on Numbless. Triple crowd control. Is Corky going to go down? Numbless has to divine shield out of that crowd control chain. And now the agents have built a cooldown lead for themselves. Yeah, able to build a small lead for themselves. We'll see if they can keep that pressure rolling, though. Brunhitty taking a lot of damage here from Corky, who's just teeing off in the middle of the map. Now Brunhitty going to get back onto the Moonkin out here, trying to keep that pressure rolling. z though, in some trouble himself. So they're going to go back onto Tren. It's a bop forced out there as they had him into the leg sweep. Asgrath's just trying to run for his life, trying to stay away from that CC from Tren to keep his team topped off. But these clones are being so disruptive. z getting crushed right now. z sitting low. Asgrath has to get some healing out here, try to top him back off. We'll be able to do so just now as Brunhitty into the bash. That's going to expire. Trent again pushing forward. Here's the lasso. Brunhitty trying to get back onto this uh, onto this demon hunter here. Knocking him down to about half HP as Corky has some cooldowns pop. z again though into the stun. Corky being pressured. Looking for those clones. Trying to fake out as much as he can. He gets the fake onto Brunhitty and now Brunhitty's stuck in that clone. They can try to set up a 3v2 here. Corky though still sitting low. Brunhitty's pressure is really ramping up. Despite the interfates coming up from Corky, the mana is actually pretty even here between Numbliz and Asgrath. And it's going to be a close one down to the wire. It feels like z though, still sitting low here. Trend has pulled away. I think a little bit nervous about getting stunned up right now. Numbliz is back on the other side of the map. And Numbliz is actually looking for a drink. So they've got to stop him right now or try to get some pressure rolling. They're not going to be able to do it just yet. And Numbliz got a good 10, 20% of his mana back. Yep, putting his team in a really good position. They need to be most afraid of the Serenity. It's Corky. rolling right now. Corky's dying through Barkskin. Ring of Peace bouncing him away. They imprison the Windwalker Monk and set him up into a Cyclone. He trinkets out of that into a DR bash. They're trying to control the Serenity. He gets sheared on his next clone. z jumps away with a Lightning Lasso behind the pillar. Beautiful positioning. Look at the pressure. Almost taking Trend down in that stun. But the Cyclones from Corky are too good. Brunhitty can't finish him. He's going to grapple Trend, then swap back over to Corky. Corky's baiting Brunhitty into a bad position. If they could stun Brunhitty behind the pillar here, he's trying to pull him back into his territory across the map. z is pushing in, though. They're getting aggressive, trying to pair up with Brunhitty. And there's that 
that stun. Big swap onto Brunhitti. Is he ready for the exchange? Sacrifice is up, and it looks like damage is redirected onto Corky. Trent's not feeling comfortable. He drops the darkness to try and soak some hits while that Ring of Peace is on cooldown from earlier. So this is actually a really good value moment for Trent. Realizing Ring of Peace is on cooldown, he can at least get some value from darkness in the situation and try and make sure their mana stays ahead. Numbless is trying to find CC. He gets paralyzed with Zipai still on the back foot. Trent now caught into a stun. They bop him, but it doesn't matter. Magic damage is going through that from Zipai. He metamorphoses out of there defensively with the blur and the bop. Now he's ready to play with confidence, trying to get in on the Zipai. Zipai knocks him back in a way, so Trent's going to switch back over to Brunhitti. He's immediately going to use defensive cooldowns preemptively on that stun, reading that swap like a book. Now here comes the Zwen. Serenity's coming up in 12 seconds. Brunhitti needs to win the game with this Serenity. He doesn't have really the best targets. He's going to just have to power through a lot of defensives. Corky has used Barskin at this point, but Brunhitti is not looking stable. He gets imprisoned on low health, but Corky, will he survive at the same time? It's still so close to call. Yeah, it's going to be really down to the wire here. You can see the wings pop now by Numbless, just trying to keep his team topped off. Brunhitti into the middle of the map, but he is getting crushed by Corky, crushed by Trent. He's into the stun, and the I-beam can't get interrupted. Brunhitti sitting very low on health, does have the Karma, but that could be popped pretty easily at this point of the game. Azrath using the last of his mana here, as well as that sacrifice out onto Brunhitti, but it's Zipai now in trouble. Zipai is going to have to get popped up, and Azrath is running on fumes. They've got to try to close out the game, and they're going for Corky. Corky's getting pretty low, and Numbless is going to Drop the sacrifice on him. Asgrath now charging in, looking for the Hodge. Is going to be able to land it onto Asgrath. We'll see if he's going to be able to actually find anything else out of this because both these healers are pretty much tapped. Numbla is going to be forced to bubble, taking so much damage in that situation. And Corky now just trying to cut away from Brunetti, but it's Corky in a lot of trouble now, trying to fake. He's going to get sheared on the clone. He's trying to kite for his life here. We'll be able to land that full clone onto Brunetti, and that could really stop the pressure here. Zipai on the other side may just go down. He's down about 20% HP, and he's sitting there constantly. Asgrath is out of mana. Asgrath is out of time. And it looks like the agents might just be falling, but no, Zipai able to jump back behind that pillar as Brunhitti gets a leg sweep onto Trend, but Brunhitti is just getting locked down by Corky so heavily. It's clone after clone after clone, and now another bash. Now the Monk, finally free, has got to get some work done. He's got to get some damage out here if they want to have a chance to actually win this game, but he's still getting kited by Corky. Finally, it looks like he's going to be able to connect a little bit here. And Zipai's got to send some damage now as the Fist Fury coming out there onto Corky, but another sacrifice comes out from Numbless. Asgrath has somehow, some way kept his team alive with no mana for such a long time. But again, the DR is back up. Brunhitti now into the clone. He gets out of it. We'll see what they can get done here as the wings is popped. The bop is popped there as well by Asgrath, trying to keep his team offensive. But Corky may just be going down. It's three seconds until that bark skin. But I don't know if there's anything left here for Numbless. He's into the Hodge, and I think that's going to do it. Corky will fall, but can they? be a counter kill. Trent on the other side trying to keep this pressure rolling. Zipai is low. Brunhitti is low. He's looking to make it happen. Zipai down to about 10% HP. Trent as well getting pressured really heavily. There's a rebuke on the Hex. Zipai still sitting low, but it's Trent that's even lower and it's Trent that's going to fall. The agents are going to take a close one in game number one. I mean, you can tell that there's no second chances today. The pressure is on. They're giving it their all. There was like a good two minutes there where I could tell where you're casting, where you're like, you're, you know Zipai's going to die, and you're, you're getting ready to end the game, and he just was refusing to die, and really like pushing your voice there at the end there. And I mean, his ability to stay alive right there bought his team enough time to actually turn it around, because I, I thought the same was going to be like two minutes of just Zipai's going to die here. Like, there's no way he wins mm -hmm. this game at this point. Uh, but they do it. They turn it around, and they actually win in game number one. Um, but it was so close. It was so even, really, between these teams, looking really evenly matched in the series. This is definitely one that I could see going the distance to a, to a game number five. And Brunhitti is looking really solid on the Windwalker Monk. He had a bunch of really good reads uh, on setups, pre-walling a lot of stuns and not overextending too far for his team to keep up. And these miracle moments at the end of the game where there's a bop on Zipai, and he's like, all right, I got a couple of seconds to make something happen where I'm immune to Trend's attacks. We need to make it happen. He's going to stun up Trend. They paralyze the Paladin. They isolate Corky. He's got a couple Lava Burst procs, and he's going to chuck these immediately after the lasso. And they're just really relying on Brunhitti. Urshock comes in, Lava Burst, I'm sure, so shortly after, and Numbless is stunned up. He can't do anything. They all connect on him. There's a Karma blocking the kill on Brunhitti. Tren tried to do whatever he could to, you know, get a kill here by himself. He, he has the hunt up. He trinkets out of the stun. He's doing whatever he can, and uh, there's not much he really could do at that point in the game. Uh, it's just the finishing power of a Demon Hunter is just not going to be as powerful. You don't have that touch of death, that guaranteed kill range uh, of something like a Windwalker Monk, so it was unfortunate, but the fact that it even got to that point means that this is going to be really close series. 
Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I'm really surprised that the Agents won that first game. Like, when you look right now at this point in the replay, Azrath was just dead oom. And Azrath was dead oom when Numbles was still at, I want to say, 20-ish percent mana. And that's why I was really kind of getting ready for z to die. That's why I thought he was going to be able to fall. But Azrath was able to just maintain his team on fumes for so long. Like, he was zero mana for, it felt like, the last minute or two of the game at least. And, you know, Numbliss eventually was the one who actually ran out of, of gas. You know, he gets CC'd up. He didn't have any cooldowns left to, to actually get out of there. And that ended up being what sealed it at the end of the day. I will say I really like the positioning, uh, you know, from z a lot more than what we were seeing from, from Corky. I do think the fact that He's pulling Trend back behind that pillar really works in their favor. But at the same time, obviously, the Moonkin offers a lot as far as, you know, clones and whatnot. So he's in the middle of the map, but he's able to get a lot of CC down on the Windwalker and then push forward. So I can understand, you know, why both teams were positioning the way that they were. But I do think that there's uh, something to be said for, you know, just pulling that melee DPS back behind the pillar constantly, opening them up for swaps. And potentially that's something that they could actually do to the Windwalker as well. Yeah, they're going to be going to Empyrean Domain, so a really large map. I wonder if they've, they're going to change anything. I mean, uh, they, I don't know if that game really warrants changing anything in terms of composition. I'm imagining the agents are going to pick the same thing, um, unless they feel like this map could be beneficial for something like an Ellie Warlock, maybe, um, mm -hmm. and just take it as like a caster map and see if Nice Beam have an answer. And okay, oh, they're actually going to do you go. that. They're actually going to do that. So <laughs> Ellie Warlock. It's almost like you played this game or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this is going to be interesting to see what Nice Beam because I'm thinking they probably want to bring a Fury Warrior in. The Fury Warrior's been what they've used to take out the Warlocks, but it's not a great map. So like you set no. this map up. <laughs> <laughs> for a warlock because you, you thought you could fury warrior them but it's like this is a good warlock map i don't You're think like, this wait, is a guaranteed stop win <laughs> like, <laughs> don't play wizards on the big map we wanted to do that <laughs> yeah this this might backfire on them and it's a it, this is yeah. like a, at that point like how do you turn it around really yeah it can get tough i mean i, I do think that if you use your cooldowns well on a big map like this, between freedoms, between sprint ports, between gateway, thunderstorms, you know, static field totems, knockbacks, all these things, the Warlock can kite the Fury Warrior. You know, you can kite them decently well, at least so they don't just have perfect uptime and have, you know, slaughter stacks like slaughterhouse stacks up fully all the time. Uh, so it is just going to be the same comp as last time. So interesting. Uh, we will have this Demon Hunter uh, plus the Moon King comp going in here, and we'll see, you know, what kind of pressure they can get rolling. I think Demon Hunters can be pretty problematic sometimes for Wizards to actually deal with, uh, you know, if they can stay in and, and really just kind of keep that pressure rolling. Trend was putting out a tremendous amount of damage. So I'll be interested to see if they really mostly just want to lock down the Warlock or if they're going to be swapping around between Wizards. You know, when Mercy ports away, are they just going to go z -Pi? Are they actually just going to full commit for the chase? Um, because I do think, you know, with the Moonkin, if you just actually shut down all the Tyrant goes and just like use beams and whatnot on Tyrant, I feel like you could probably dampen um, this Warlock LA team. Yeah, I definitely think that that could be a safer strategy for them um, if they don't want to play an aggressive one. But I'm just wondering, like, why they just watched the Admirals Esports beat the agents with Fury Warrior Moon and Paladin, like destroy them with Fury Warrior Moon and Paladin. So it's like they played Fury Warrior Moon and Paladin to get into this top four. Why are they not using it? I don't get it. If this Maybe is like they a play them on ladder and lost, I don't I, know. It, there's got to be some data. They're either just giving them a lot of respect and saying, okay, I'm not going to play my alt into this team. Like, these guys are the best at, at what they do, and I'm not ready to do it. Or they practiced, and suddenly the agents figured out how to beat it, and maybe the next time if Admirals Esports meets up with them, um, they're not going to be able to have such an easy time beating them. So, But it, it is something yeah. to take note that they're not playing the same comp that did beat the agents and the same comp that got them here. They're, they're sticking with that Demon Hunter, trying to make it work. We haven't seen a lot of Demon Hunters succeeding, uh, if I'm being honest here. So mm. this would be an accomplishment, I think, for Nice Beam to, to pull this off with the Demon Hunter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the reality is at the end of the day, you know, just because one team does it with a comp doesn't mean that you can, right? So maybe they haven't had that same level of success. It's kind of like you can watch Echo win with RMP and you're like, well, why aren't you playing RMP? RMP beats everything, you know, if you watch Echo. Uh, but it's, you know, sometimes more about the players than the comp. So, you know, maybe not having that confidence to bring out the Fury Warrior, but we'll see what they can make work for themselves here in this second game. Corky push, pushing in, gets that root beam down on Asgrath, but he's going to be able to get out of that no problem. 
and we're gonna see trend just kind of trying to get as much damage down as he can in the middle of the map gonna get axe tossed immediately on that i beam though just trying to shut him down trying to reduce that damage as much as possible as there's a hodge thrown there over onto mercy you can see the static field totem used to just try to peel him off as mercy is on the run there using that gateway trying to create some space trying to reduce the damage from trend as much as humanly possible and really as a warlock you know, your goal is to reduce damage from this from the Demon Hunter as much as you possibly can while still keeping him in LOS of your Ellie Shaman the whole time. You want this Ellie Shaman to really be maximizing damage, to be able to hit whoever he can and just really crank up that DPS. Right, let's see if they can set up the damage here. That was the Tyrant opener, so this is going to be now swing pressure in favor of Corky and Trent. I think the Demon Hunter is going to be doing a lot more damage in this type of matchup outside of the cooldown windows. Procking into Eclipse. They've imprisoned the healer. Are they going to be able to set up a Sigil of Fear? Doesn't look like they have it, so no chain crowd control on Asgrath, and Trent is feared so far away from his team, but that's not so bad. He's a Demon Hunter. He's immediately back over here uh, with his team and ready to go into Mercy after that Cyclone. They swap the Cyclone over to Zipai. I-Beam is going to get Axe tossed, and this is something that a lot of teams are doing now, is they know Demon Hunter's damage is all all in on the I beam, and if you just interrupt it instantly, you can limit them quite effectively, and they're just saving every interrupt. So Corky's need to be need to be careful and try and punish that interrupt usage and spam clone and abuse the fact that the interrupts are stopping the Demon Hunter if he's going to put his team in a good position. Right now, Numless is taking quite a lot of damage. He's running into the middle of the map. Corky's getting lava burst at the same time. He ducks around the corner. He needs to get this tears delivered, but he's standing on Mercy's port. Oh my god! If Mercy had any CC right there to to stop that cast, um, they might have been able to get a device shield even that was a scary moment for numbless but he manages to pull it off and he stays alive yep gonna be able to stay alive and mercy now does have that tyrant up and available one more time so we'll see if he can actually set up a decent tyrant go you know how much it, it's gonna get stopped so the tyrant comes out we'll see how good they are at actually see seeing this you know tyrant can be really difficult as there's that fear glyph coming down it's just gonna get cc'd up but it actually misses there unfortunately from trend so he actually whiffs on the on the aoe fear that he's trying to drop so now the tyrant's oh. actually getting a lot of value here it is just punishing trend for that misstep he's gonna have to use the darkness and the trinket off of that missed fear that is something they cannot allow to happen you really have to shut down that tyrant it is so much of the warlock's damage without it he's not gonna have a lot of kill pressure he's gonna be bottom of the charts it's really just mostly about the utility you know if you are stopping that so uh, we'll see if they can continue to do that going forward here but you have to be so careful like I, that is the number one thing you know if, if you're watching for a demon hunter i beam on the other side for the warlock it's it's really all about uh, that tyrant but the hunt comes out there on the z getting chunked down pretty low the sacrifice is going to be traded out as a root beam trying to come down there to interrupt yeah. asgrath but asgrath again able to get out of it gets that tears deliverance back up and it's going to be able to easily top his team so I, far I, slight mana lead for numbless though i don't really like i think corky was trying to interrupt a fear there but I, I feel like solar beam it's either you put it on the healer you're trying to win or you're putting it on the tyrant I feel like there's anything else mm -hmm. is kind of like a waste of the beam. They're making a big swap on Asgrath here in a bash, but they get double Shadow Furied. Mercy peeling so excellently. They get a Hex on a Numbless, a Coil on a Corky, big setup on a Corky, no Bark Skin, caught into a stun. Will he survive? Numbless trinkets into a full fear, and Corky's on the run, but now there's pressure on to Z Pi. He's got no Astral Shift. He's trying to reposition into Asgrath's line and, and away from Corky. Mercy free casting some Hannigal Dance, trying to get pressure for his team onto Trend, but Trend's in Metamorphosis. He's going to have a lot of Leech healing. They need to avoid his melee attacks and limit his ability to get leech and now he's down to 50 percent stuck in the middle of the map really good positioning but they cyclone zipai they stop his damage numbless is pushing in with quirky i think they want to get in on top of asgrath and try and find a hammer of justice in the near future as numbless is continuing to push forward asgrath sees numbless coming at him he's mounted up he's trying to escape back around the corner but he can't escape it's going to be met by a hammer of justice they fear up the warlock zipai is isolated and they root beam the tyrant i like that root beam right there by quirky stalling out that massive cooldown mercy's finally free of crowd control going for a coil onto trend quirky still rotted down numbless the hex for one more second and he needs to pick his team up quick here with the remainder of that tyrant and he's managed to do it they've managed to recover and they're in a solid spot zipai is a great target to switch to at this point with no astral shift yeah absolutely and zipai will be that target i mean as long as they root beam as long as they get those interrupts on the tyrant it only gets two or three attacks after it, it doesn't actually last that long so it's not really going to be that much of a threat as long as they're on point you know always saving some sort of interrupt or cc for it asgrath though going to be trading out the wings uses the sacrifice here as well trying to keep his team topped off it's likely to be a mana battle here unless someone makes a misstep we have seen people knocked low but no one going down just yet of course mercy into the bash though is actually getting pounded right now here 
by Tren and Corky. And there's the beam coming down on Asgrath. It was actually a, a lockout, I believe, on Asgrath. Asgrath was trying to use this time to reposition, but Mercy ports away, and he's actually LOSing his healer a little bit here. Could be problematic because there's the imprisoned over on Asgrath, a stun on the Z5, so it's a bit of a 3v1. They're going to force out the unending resolve off of that miscue there between Asgrath and Mercy as Mercy was trying to cut away and port it to the opposite side of the map from his healer. Definitely problematic there as that's a major defensive now down for Mercy. This series is the last chance for both teams if they want to be Dragonflight Season 2 European Champions. There's no more second chances. Every team that loses will be eliminated from the competition. Nice Beam are already down one point, and they're fighting valiantly to try and tie that up. They're in a great position. Mercy is on the run, and Tren cannot connect. Zipai pulls Tren so far away. He's trying to make his way with that freedom. A Hex is coming through. That lands onto Numbless, and I don't think Corky's playing Deekers, possibly. So these Hexes could be devastating if that is the case. If he's not talented into that, Corky popping into Eclipse. He's got some Astral Power, dumping some Star Surges, but Tren, just look at him, he's Frost Shock rooted now, they've been doing such a great job of containing the Demon Hunter and keeping him away from Mercy, and now they stun him up, that's gonna get Blessing and Protection, but now they go for a Lasso instead, they managed to disrupt it, Zipai's interrupted, Solar Beam onto the Tyrant, I think this is a much safer line of play, and honestly, I think that Asgrath needs to be aware of those root beams and trying to dispel them, um, or maybe even possibly freedom the Tyrant, because that could be something that catches Corky's team off guard if they can break that Tyrant free. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're throwing so much CC on it now, though. It was the Demon Hunter stun, the Demon Hunter fear, the root beam, like everything on that Tyrant. So, you know, after that first misstep where they let it free cast, they are just making no mistake about it. Uh, Trend, though, trying to push forward here on a Mercy. Mercy in some trouble now. Uh, was getting hit really hard, and in comes the hunt. Now that's going to need the coil to be a response from Mercy as he's trying to actually kite away from there. Asgrath now doing a pretty good job topping him off, but he's still sitting relatively low. Asgrath slightly behind on mana, and Corky has his Innervate here in just one second, so they can actually drop it onto Numbless out of this Hodge and potentially create an even larger lead, but it's a repent onto Numbless as he catches the Innervate, so he's getting no value from that whatsoever, and Corky is sitting low. That Innervate will you know, be quickly expiring. Got actually very, very little, so a bit of a mistimed Innervate right as he did actually get repented. The Solar Beam onto Asgrath. they got to be careful here. Asgrath has no trinket, and he didn't stone farm the Solar Beam. I'm really surprised. Unless maybe it's on a shared cooldown. He's CC'd out of the match for some time. Lay on hands. Going to come out top Mercy. Now Corky on the back foot, taking a lot of damage in that Axe Toss. He's going to bark skin immediately. Numbless gets sheared on a heal. Coil for follow-up. Corky gets knocked into the middle of the map. Mercy and Zipai can start to free cast, but Corky gets a nice Cyclone on Zipai, slowing down the damage a bit. Mercy is repositioned. I think they want Asgrath to sit for a drink. Asgrath is just running max distance away in a safe position to get Tears Deliverance up, avoiding all of the interrupts. Zipai is taking a beating. 40% dampening. It's going to be so tough for Asgrath to continue to heal at this pace. Tren is jumping into the fight. They drop a static field, but they kill it off before they can move them out. And Tren's going to drop a darkness, realizing that that movement is on cooldown. He wants to get some value before he gets that static field to move them away. And it's also trading for the Tyrant, since they don't have a solar beam. They use that aggressively. They survive that Tyrant with the darkness. Now they're trying to make their push. They've got a demon proc. They're ready to go. They're on to Mercy. But he's actually got unending resolve available again to him. And if they don't know that, man, he's got such a good Good, efficient trade with that cooldown. They get a coil onto Tren, fearing him away. Lava burst in onto Corky, and I think Corky should be the main kill target. Crowd controlling Tren as they are right now is just going to leave so much pressure, and Corky's way easier to take down. Blasted down in the stun. Numbless is spending so much mana to keep Corky alive at this point. Another solar beam comes down. Asgrath manages to escape from it. Mercy being pressured. Asgrath's Tears Deliverance still up, but as soon as it falls, I think that is the win condition for Nice Beam, is when that Tears Deliverance has run out of time. Dampening is going to be too high, and I think they can overwhelm Z Pie and Mercy. Yeah, and the Tears Deliverance did just fall. He still has his wings up, so we'll see if they can get that pressure rolling. They need to get it going right here, right now. Try to actually force out that unending resolve, get some damage rolling on a Mercy, and he's just going to port out of there immediately. And Asgrath has a decent little mana lead at this point. It's a minute until that innervates back up from Corky, so we'll see if that can make the difference deep into dampening as we're almost at 50% at this point in the healing, becoming much more difficult to keep up. As Zipai is just getting crushed right now in the middle of the map. Is actually going to have to get bopped. Is going to have to pop his Hellstone trend. They're trying to turn some damage back around onto him but it does feel like when they connect to mercy when they connect to zipai the pressure is really ramping Trend. up there's a trinket coming out from corky and trend down incredibly low down about 10 percent hp it's going to come back out into the middle of the map trying to survive trying to cut it out he's back behind the pillar there with numbless but numbless is going to get lassoed now the interrupt comes in with that imprison from trend he's going to get back out on the map trying to connect here onto z in that demon form. Asgrath pops the sack, has the Tears Deliverance back up. He's got wings, he's got bop, he's got Divine Shield. 
Nope. So he's got a lot of cooldowns to actually answer some of this pressure here. They're going to try to swap it over onto Mercy, but it looks like it's Trend that's going to be going down. He's down at 2% HP. Does dash back behind the pillar. Maybe going to get picked back up, but they just have no pressure rolling. Tyrant. And when you start running against these Wizard Cleaves, it can just be lights out. The Tyrant is not getting interrupted. It is free casting in the middle of the map. Corky is low. Trend is low. And you have to think time is up here for Nice Beam. Mercy, z trying to finish them off, but they can't quite do it just yet. Is there going to be enough time for Numbless to actually top them back off and lived. make one more push? They actually lived that push. I can't believe they're alive right now. There was nothing to stop the Tyrant. It was free casting. Now that they've survived it and they've actually recovered, they're all back to full health. They're making their push. Mercy needs to get some distance and get a gap away from Trend, but he's interrupted. He's blasted down. They stun with the Lightning Lasso. Corky's trying to jump over to assist with the Lasso, but he's a little bit late. Mercy's still falling behind, even despite that. On any result, may not be enough at 57% dampening. They're trying to counter aggress, but it's into Incarnation. This is the scariest moment against a balanced Druid. They have to avoid Corky. He's still got Astral Power in his bank. He's ready to dump some star surges. Look how much astral power. One star surge. Looking for a second in the near future. Comboing those together. Knocking Mercy away. Trying to get him distance away from Asgrath. Asgrath gets bashed on his trinket. And they've got to kill Mercy now. Numless has no mana. There's nothing left for their team. They have to finish this game here and now. Numless is stunned up. He divine shields. They block the kill. They drop the darkness. But Mercy's port's behind the pillar. And I don't know if they're going to be able to connect to him before Numless goes down. That divine shield is about to fade. Quirky is not comfortable. He can't heal anymore. z on top of him. Lava burst after lava burst. And Corky is praying in bear form that Trend can carry the game. Trend has to solo Mercy before Corky goes down, and he can't do it. And that's going to be a 2-0 lead for the agents, and it is going to be a dangerous attempt to try and reverse a team of this caliber. Yeah, it's going to be so hard from this position now. Down two games. Again, it goes deep into the Anthony again. There's a lot of close calls, but they can't quite get the kills. They can't quite finish anyone off. They almost knocked down Mercy on that final push. They had a really nice beam that actually interrupted and blocked him out on Shadow and delayed the unending resolve until he was incredibly low. And there was that moment where you think maybe they can push through, maybe they can get that kill. But at the end of the day, they weren't able to do it. And z and Mercy were relentless with the pressure. And that swap over on a Numbless really paid dividends, put him very far behind. And he was just on the run, couldn't really get anything done from that spot. It was such a, an unfortunate event here. Uh, maybe, perhaps the darkness, like this darkness, it's getting some value on trend, but Numbless was already bubbled. It doesn't, I don't think it really matters at this point. I mean, may, like, he could have extended darkness here, but then he's not attacking the right target. Like, zpi has got wall up. He's not going to be a good target. They, they just somehow trend had to solo Mercy at this point. And I just don't, I just don't see that happening. Um, yeah. With how high health he is. And Asgrath has Tears Deliverance up. He's got wings in his pocket in the back. His sack's coming off cooldown. He's still got mana, too. So th this is rough now. Uh, if they're going to turn this around, I, I feel like I'd like to see them bring the Fury Warrior out for a game. Yeah. I will say I'm a little bit surprised that, you know, the, the Moonkin team is, like, is losing on mana when they have Innervate and they're doing more damage. Like, you look at the damage readers. Maybe maybe a lot of that is fake damage, though. Maybe it's all just hitting hitting Warlock Demons and stuff, and it's not actually real damage. But when, when you're looking at the DPS meters, it looks like the Demo Warlock's doing nothing, right? Okay, so they still did do more Probably. damage, not enormously so, um, but they're doing a, a little bit more here. You know, even just like this this uh, post game screen doesn't actually count pets, so that is usually pretty accurate. Um, but maybe you just didn't get good value from the innervates or something. But you know, generally it's like when you're out DPSing and you have um, you have innervates, you would kind of expect to be able to to win on mana. I don't think the healing is nothing either. I think Zipai had like 7.8 million healing, which is like yeah. maybe the same as Corky and Trend combined. So the, the, the off healing from the Warlock and the Ellie is contributing quite a bit. And Nice Beam are sure. going a different direction. They're going a small map. I think they realized their blunder picking that large one and not realizing that the caster comp could actually be a, a struggle for them. And so the agents are like, okay, small map? Well, we're just bringing our Windwalker back in again. <laughs> uh, we, we won the first game with this one, and it was really close. So this could be over for Nice Beam. Like this, this is, it looked like a really evenly matched game. There's, they can't make any more mistakes. They battled it up from the gauntlet. This is an entire season of work. You're basically almost doubling your money with every series win at this point they've got yep. to find a way to reverse sweep this yeah i mean it, it's tough at the end of the day they are you know up against it they're one game away from their season ending but both those games were incredibly close right they were really really close in game number one to actually taking the win they were really close at times in game number two to taking the win so it's obviously possible for them to actually get some wins on the board and maybe make something happen but they just have to be that little bit cleaner on their on their plays and see if they can actually you know make something happen build a little confidence from that 
Uh, it's always tough, though, when you're down a couple of games and your opponents are going to have so many chances, you know, with their map choices, even if you start winning, to be able to bring it back. So we'll see if Nice Beam can get anything done here. It's match point in the lower bracket here. This is the top four in Europe. Grand Finals, first team up for elimination would be Nice Beam if they go down here. The agents looking to close it out on hook point. They're still relying on their mains. Trent is not abandoning his Demon Hunter, even though nobody has been able to see success with this specialization. They're going to be an underdog. Try and make it work here uh, with their last leg, their last life. There's no second chances. You're out of the tournament here. Already getting a double stun, connecting that eye beam, which is really important, getting the full duration of it. With the Cyclone and the Brune Hitty, they force Astral Shift not even 15 seconds into the game, and they're continuing to play with confidence, and they will need to in a matchup that is as close as this one. Yeah, absolutely. Brune Hitty there puts the in cap over on a Numbless. Leg sweep on a Corky, and he's going to ring a piece and back into the corner. So he's actually out of LOS right now uh, from Numbless, and we'll have to use that Bark Sin. Pops the Heart of the Wild as well. Brute Beam coming down on Asgrath. They're trying to get the pressure rolling on a Zipai, but a big heal comes out with that Wings. Now the clone going to be landing on Asgrath. The sacrifice will expire, but it's Zipai still incredibly low. Zipai is just getting crushed right now by Trent and Corky. They're keeping that pressure up incredibly well. Onto be still again down about 30 percent HP 40 percent HP the full I beam comes out once more as Asgrath is really struggling with some of these interrupts and it's keeping Zipai on the back foot we'll see if Rune Hitty now can turn things around as Asgrath looks to have stabilized finally keeping Zipai back up towards that top HP and Trent gonna get pulled behind the pillar LOS of Numbless will have to dash back to his paladin as he was getting put down to about half health Oh man, this pressure. Nice people are so aggressive, just playing on top of Asgrath, finding CC, and at some point the agents, they're going to need to find a way to punish this. Trend gets a demon proc, gets a double stun, beautiful positioning here, gets that demon proc, goes for the I-beam, instantly wind shared. Excellent wind shared into Hex from z to slow down some of that pressure, but he's still right on top of him, getting cleaved. Brun Hitty's clone, Corky's pushing in, they have Solar Beam. They're trying to stack up so that the cleave damage, I think, will break the root effect in this position, but if they stay stacked up much longer, Trend is just going to AoE them to death. If it tears deliverance from Asgrath, he sneaks that in around the corner. Corner. Now he's caught into a solar beam. He's caught into a hammer of justice as well. They could switch to him. I would have really liked to see a swap to Asgrath here on that stunned solar beam, but they're still CCing him, trying to stay onto Z Pi, but they're having a tough time connecting. Trends dismantle. He can't connect any damage here. Brute Hitty's now into a bat, so trying to swap over onto him and you get a huge swing of momentum, but they don't force any major cooldowns just yet. They cycle on him low. They get his trinket. Maybe they can kill him. They clone him again on his trinket. Beautiful clones by Corky here on match point, and that forces damp and harm to get at least a cooldown from Brute Hitty. Now they're switching back onto Z Pi, trying to keep their pressure. Here comes their their incarnation and nice beam they don't want to go out of this tournament without a fight and they are playing so aggressively on match point yeah absolutely are but this one's gonna get popped and it's now corky on the back foot here as brune hitty finally out of the cc and getting some damage rolling trying to chase down this moonkin corky looking for the fakes on those interrupts trying to do the best that he can they're gonna swap it over on a trend as he's into that lightning lasso but brune hitty immediately cloned up there by corky shutting down the swap over on a trend keeping his demon hunter offensive and as soon as that clone ends, brune, he might just die and brune hitty is gone just like that out of the clone on Brunhitty, it's the double Chaos Nova there from Trend. Stuns them both up, and they just sent Brunhitty into the Shadow Realm there. Not respecting the swap enough, but it was the Agents and Nice team on the board. This was an overwhelming amount of pressure. The last two games felt like they were always slated to go to deep dampening and be decided there. This one was Nice Beam being so aggressive, start to finish. It felt like Asgrath was really struggling with that kind of rushdown playstyle, where Zebi was constantly being held at low HP, and Brunhitty's being pressured on these swaps. And this final swap was really, really nice. You know, Tren actually, you know, goes back behind the pillar. He gets lassoed up. They try to make this swap. Brunhitty got cloned, and then right out of the clone, they're able to take him down. This is a really good setups from Nice Beam, and I'm glad that they started. They realized, like, if we're going to be a Paladin team, like, we got to play on top of them. Our advantage is that we have so much CC. We got Clone, we got Root Beam, we got Incap. Like, we need to be playing aggressive. We need to be setting up for kills and staying on top of them as opposed to just giving them space to breathe and letting z do damage and pull Trend into bad spots. So I really like that Nice Beam switched that gear and started playing aggressive. And it's something that can be, you know, risky in a tournament. Sometimes you think, let's just play safe, play a safe game. Uh, if we play better, efficiently will be able to win but sometimes the matchups don't play out that way and i feel like this is yeah. one of those examples you play a safe game here you're actually playing into the ellie's hands the ellie wants a long game where he can just breathe and do damage the whole time he doesn't want a game where you're running on top of him and ccing his healer and he can't get any pressure out so this is a really good momentum shift for nice beam but it's really unfortunate that they picked empyrean domain on their other map because i think the big maps are just going to be really tough for them 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and now it is going to be the agents with the map pick, right? Um, you know, they got that kill on Burnhitty. Clearly, Azgrath still had a lot of cooldowns, uh, but, you know, wasn't even in CC. Just kind of didn't expect him to go down in that moment. You know, he was actually just horsing in on top of Numbless looking for the Hodge in that moment. Does throw the sacrifice, but it's too little too late. But, you know, to your earlier point, uh, it, it can you can kind of fall in that trap, I think, sometimes, where it's just you don't want to take risks. You want to play safe. It's an important game. Uh, but as you say, it doesn't always benefit you. And sometimes the wiser strategy, you know, in a tournament, if you're getting outlasted, it's better to just play all out and win or lose the game in a couple of minutes than to go late. If you're going to lose every time when you go late, if that's not working, you just have to make that call. We're going to go aggressive. We're not going to stop pushing in no matter what. And we're going to win or lose this game fast. You know, Try to keep that pressure really, really ramped up. And they were able to do it very well in this one. Uh, so we'll see what the map choice is now going to be because they're still obviously down a game here, still up against it. And their opponents are going to be able to potentially take them to a really big map and maybe you know bring out that wizard cleave once again yep that's exactly what they're gonna do so this looked rough for them on empyrean domain but maybe they just keep playing aggressive maybe they run in on mm -hmm. top of asgrath and they just even on the large map just focus on staying on target um, and see seeing the paladin out and getting out as much pressure uh, because i think if they play the the stall game it's it's playing into the agent's favor i'd, I'd really like to see yeah. them play it play more of an aggressive game maybe use sigil of fear on the tyrant um or save some other aoe cc maybe save your chaos nova uh, and that way you get solar beam which is a more threatening cc for asgrath yeah i mean the thing is in the last game they were using they were kind of overlapping their beam and the fear like they were using the fear on the tyrant they just were using the beam too and they were sometimes using the demon hunter stun so sometimes they were throwing three ccs on it which is obviously a bit of overkill um you know i, I agree you can just have one or the other doing it. Maybe just always save those root beams for interrupts on the pally. Try to keep the pressure rolling in that way. I think the difficulty is just going to be that, you know, Warlocks can be pretty difficult to knock down. And with ports and with, you know, gateways and everything, he's not going to be the easiest to stick to. So we'll see if Nice Beam can kind of keep that pressure rolling in this one. Uh, it is going to be a big map. They are going up to the Wizard Cleave. I think they definitely have to. Um, it didn't seem like Dampening was favoring them, you know, when we saw the previous Wizard Cleave game, once it got late, you know, I was thinking, hey, maybe the Demon Hunter can kind of, you know, overwhelm them with pressure, but it didn't feel like it went that way at all. So I think they have to recognize that and try to play a really aggressive game, see if they can create a massive advantage before Dampening. Nice beam. They have the potential. They're the underdogs. They're trying to write a Cinderella story here in the lower bracket and get all the way through here. They had to battle it out in the gauntlet just to even get into the top four. And now they're finally taking a game off of the agents, showing that they're, they've got the capability and they can definitely realize their potential in this series. It's, it's still an option for them, uh, but the agents are a notorious wizard glaive. This is not going to be an easy fight to say the least. This is a team that will take it to the distance. They're going to get map pick for the rest of the series. So even if they may to beat Astromates Fall. We're probably going Meldraxxus Coliseum. Nice Beam need to win two large maps, deck stacked against them, and they're staying true to their comp. They're staying true to their mains. They got the Demon Hunter. They got the Balance Druid. They're trying to make it work. We have yet to see any other team really make this team work in competitive play. Can they do it sticking to their guns? Yep, we'll find out here. Gates about to open. Numbless Corky Trent up against it they got to win two in a row if they want to keep their hopes alive here for this championship trend just going to be pushing in right off the bat immediately actually interrupts asgarath there uh, and asgarath does not have that tears deliverance up just yet now the root beam going to come down they will be able to get out of that with the dwarf racial corky into the axe toss and they're turning the damage around on corky pretty heavily the lightning lasso is there to follow but it's trend in on to mercy as the static field totem going to pull him away he leaps out in demon form on top of him we can see that tyrant is now out they've got to shut it down we'll see if they were able to do it. It looks like that fear glyph did come down onto it and is actually locking that down. So they're doing exactly what they what you asked for, Sid. You know, using that beam on Azrath, saving the Demon Hunter fear for that tyrant. And we'll find out if they're gonna be able to actually get that kill uh on it with that aggressive play. Corky now into another axe toss. You know, the pressure is pretty heavily onto him. Numbla is actually gonna get sheared on his repent as he was looking for that CC. Mercy just constantly repositioning here with Asgrath and with Zipai, and it's kind of just making it open season, you know, for Zipai as these wizards are pushing through the middle of the map. But Mercy taking a lot of pressure now as he comes out of that clone, he's into the Hodge, a pretty good CC chain, but they can't quite connect as it's actually Howl of Terror. The swap has been made from Mercy uh, over from that death coil that he had the last time around, and that was really paying dividends, peeling off that DPS. All right, Solar Beam onto Asgrath in this position, trying to set up damage, but not really forcing 
any cooldowns from that push. And now Numbless is in a hex. Corky is stunned up. He jumps into bear. He's trying to recover, decurses the hex, and try and get back to the pillar and bear with frenzied regen. Numbless bombing in flash of lights, keeping the team going. And this is a game where if they're not pushing the pace, they're going to need to try and set up drinks, try and play more conservatively. I think if you're playing like a mixed match game where you're sometimes offense, sometimes defense, it's probably not going to work. The agents will always have a cooldown to trade, a wall, a sack, a bop, uh, a wall. It's just, it, there's going to be an infinite rotation of cooldowns if you're not going all out in this situation. A double howl of terror from Mercy with a lightning lasso. It, now a hammer of justice onto Trend. They could kill either target at this point. It's match point for Nice Beam. Are they going to go down? Numbless has to fight back in defiance. He's got Tears Deliverance, but he's got to cast it. He's got to sneak behind the pillar and get that cooldown rolling. Trend procs a demon at a critical moment. Gets a huge heal from that. Killing it off with the throw glaive. And now he's trying to get on target. He's hexed up at the moment. We see a solar beam. They need to make a play here. This is where they need to get a cooldown. They get the unending resolve. Can they kill him through it? If they can keep the chain going, Corky doesn't get the clone. He tries to get over there with the wild charge, but he can't get in line of sight. Asgrath is avoiding him. He walks forward, but Numblis will meet him with a hammer of justice. If they can get a clone here, they get the clone onto Asgrath. Sacrifice is up. They have to power through that redirected damage. I don't know if they've got the damage, and Trend's actually falling behind in the meantime, trying to keep them away, but z actually t tugs Trend behind the pillar. What a sick play from z -Pi. Are they going to close it out with that triple howl of terror into a stun under the trinket, almost dying through darkness. Numblis has to divine shield and lay on hands, and the agents punish Nice Beam so heavily for that push. That static field totem was sick from z -Pi. They got so much, a massive cooldown overlap there as Nice Beam, you know, could see the trend was about to go down. It was a really good push prior to that, though. Numbless, again, looking to try to get that repent, but he's going to get feared on and Trend's in a lot of trouble if they can keep this CC chain rolling. Asgrath was looking for the repent, but he's going to get pummeled on it. But now the Hex comes down onto Numbless. That will get dispelled by Corky. Corky looking for some more CC, does land the root beam on Asgrath, but there's no pressure really coming out. Mercy, this Howl of Terror is just paying so so many dividends as every time his healer gets CC'd up, he's just able to howl a tear the DPS away. Again, Numbless looking for the repent, going to get sheared on it, looking for it one more time. This time he's actually going to get outranged there by Asgrath, who gets that Tears Deliverance back up, but it's Trend pushing in. The stun comes down on the Mercy. Nice axe toss, though, on the I-beam. Trend actually going to trink it out of that, but it's into the double howl. It's a triple howl, excuse me, as Corky is now having the pressure turned around on him. They have another fear out of that. Now the Hodge comes down onto Numbless. How much pressure can they get rolling as we see that Lightning Lasso coming down onto Trend? chunking him really low finally the pressure is slowing down a little bit but corky had to use his barked in they had to use the sacrifice from numbless and really nice swaps your nice pressure coming out of the agents all right, let's see if they can keep it going here. Mercy is down low. Leon Hand's going to come up from Asgarath, so a major cooldown force from Nice Beam in this push. And they've got Incarn, and they've got Root Beam, and now Mercy's on Forbearance. They can make a big play and still win the game, even despite being destroyed earlier on. They just need to align the stars, find that perfect CC chain onto Asgarath. Can Corky get there in time? He's just doing damage with Incarn and not CCing, and that's not going to work against the Paladin. They need to CC Asgarath during this time. Corky tries to jump over, but he gets Static Field back and away, and now he's into a Shadow Fury. Tyrant is down, and that Tyrant is keeping them pinned down with suppression fire. Corky finally makes his way to Asgrath, bashes him up. He's looking for a clone, but Mercy ports on top of him. He's going to be able to block that clone. Now he's going to clone Mercy instead. They drop a solar beam down. They're trying to swap onto z -Pi. Clone onto Asgrath. Big swap onto z -Pi. Can they kill him through Astral Shift? He's down below 50%. This is the type of miracle that Nice Beam need to make if they want to try and pull off this reverse sweep, but the kill is denied. Ancestral Guidance healing from z -Pi. Going to support the team too effectively. Now they're swapping on Numbless. Kind of seemingly out of nowhere. Blast him down to half. Is he ready for this type of swap at the moment? Is he going to choke on match point? He's still struggling to heal. z is soloing him. But finally, z is pressured away from the pillar. Numbless should get a moment to breathe back behind the pillar, dispelling out the flame shocks, trying to put z a bit behind. But now Corky's taking a huge hit. Big I-Beam gets feared by Mercy, and the I-Beam shutdowns have been so clutch, just limiting Trend's damage as much as possible. Otherwise, he'd probably be running them over at this point. They do get a connection, though. Oh, they're stacked up for Trend's double stun, potentially. Double stun onto them. Beautiful punish into the solar beam. They've isolated their target, but why aren't they going after z I, I don't know why they're going after Mercy in this position. They just got every cooldown from z -Pi. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Mercy is just destroying them with his kiting, with his CC as well. I feel like z -Pi might be the better target because, again, you know, they get that root beam, but then he just ports out of there. Numbla is now stuck into the repent. Is going to get broken out by something as Corky was actually getting chunked low. Their damage is still continuing here onto Mercy, but Mercy has that unending resolve available. z -Pi, I feel that is potentially the better target. Mercy, though, is still down to about half HP. The sacrifice has to be used there by Asgrath as Corky's pushing in, looking for the CC on Asgrath. He finds the Bash, going to get the clone. The Bash is going to be triggered 
did, or actually, I don't even know what he used to bubble there actually to get out of it. So he's just going to run straight away, not messing around with that as z was still getting chunked down. Numla is still getting chunked down on the other side. Is sitting down about 30% HP. Numla's oh. in trouble now. Has to actually trinket out of that stun. He's on the run here. He is really getting pressured heavily. There's a DR Hodge coming through as z is in on top of him. He's going to static field totem him into the middle of the map and Numla's is now getting feared up. Corky is low. Numla's is low and Nice Beam are in trouble. This could be the end if they can't actually keep him safe. There's the full repent on Numbless. Corky in a lot of trouble, but a big heal does come out. The sacrifice gonna get popped. The tears deliverance is up, but Numbless, the pressure is just not ending. Zephi and Mercy are relentless as they are chasing after this pallet and trying to ramp up that damage. But Zephi now taking some bad damage himself. He's gonna get popped up. The axe toss used to actually peel off Trent. The hex comes out, is gonna be dispelled by Corky as Trent is just trying to keep his pressure rolling as much as he possibly can. The lasso now used onto Corky there, had him down to about half HP as Numbless is now put in the Hodge. Corky could potentially be in trouble. There's the Hile of Terror coming through and Corky is so low. Corky into the bear form at 5% HP, 1% HP. Corky is gone. Numbless bubbled, Numbless popped the wings. But the damage coming through from Zipai was overwhelming, and the agents will take down Nice Beam three to one and advance to the next round. Corky is going to get popped here in the first series of the day in the European Championship. Agents will advance. They'll be going home in fourth. The agents get a chance to go at Admirals Esports uh, again, possibly in the near future, um, is what I'm expecting. And they played so hard, but that overlap earlier, man, it was just such a scary moment. And it was the static fields just from Zpi that were just game breaking, pulling Trend behind the pillar, stunning him, getting every cooldown, pulling Numbless out into the middle of the map, pulling them together, stacking them for double Howl of Terrors. Like Zpi just came to play on the Elemental Shaman in this game. He was not going to have Nice Beam giving any sort of opportunities to try and reverse sweep them and they just couldn't deal with the damage. It was an absolutely devastating amount when we came towards the end of it. Uh, I do wonder if there was anything they could have done. Like, is there a stop for this lasso? They stopped the lasso and then Numbless, I mean, maybe divine shielding here during the crowd control. He, do he does, but it's maybe just a second too late. Then he just dies to renewal. He's just taking so much damage right at that point in time. It's all stacked up and Trend was feared too far away. Couldn't get back in time to help. And not that he really had much to help with anyways at that point in time. But the agents, this is a, this is looking like the, the former agents that we'd expect to see in terms of the caliber mm -hmm. of players in the roster. Yeah, I mean, looking really, really good here. Z5 showing his class on the Ellie Shaman. Uh, Mercy, I think, you know, was to me the MVP in this one. I think swapping over to Hal was really, really smart. I think Hal Terror is just so underrated. Uh, people really kind of just, I think, tunnel vision sometimes on, on Death Coil and the strength that it has. But Hall of Terror, I think, made all the difference in this one because they wanted to go for Mercy. And every single time it felt like Asgrath got CC'd up, he gets root beamed, he gets Hodge, he gets repented, whatever. Mercy ports away, the DPS chase in, they get howled, sometimes they get triple howled. And sometimes their offensive push would turn into, you know, them having to go onto the back foot. Uh, these Hall of Terrors were just so clutch, both defensively and offensively throughout the game. You know, Mercy really, really using them well, especially in conjunction with sprint ports. It's really easy to have your port down, you know, where the enemy paladin is, port over there, get the howl. You know, Tren is, is trying to chase after him. He you know, means he's stacking up with Numbless. You can get double howls there, sometimes triple howls. Uh, I think he just really played it out well and made some very, very smart talent choices. Absolutely, and that is unfortunately going to be the end of the line for a nice beam, but they really did have a great season. You know, they were able to come out of the the gauntlet for Europe. They had some pretty decent games here. Unfortunately, weren't able to win a series. So the, we're gonna have to say goodbye to them, but the agents do have a chance to move forward. They are in the lower bracket, so they still can't afford to drop any of these games. And we'll just see who they will be playing in this next game. And, uh, oh yeah, they're now, yeah, they're moving on to Admiral's Esports, excuse me. Here is the bracket, actually. See, we're still in the lower bracket, and the winner of this one actually moves up to the grand finals, so kind of a, a shorter day. I feel like we're already here. It's so crazy that we, you know, we're still gonna find out who is the champion of the European region, and, you know, we've got three teams left, but with this upcoming series here, Super Tease, who do you feel like comes out of the lower bracket? I mean, Admiral's Esports 3 0'd them earlier, and they were, their Fury Warrior Moonkin was so good. So, again, unless the agents have something prepared for that, uh, I'm probably still on the side of Admiral's Esports. Yeah, I, I, um, I think I agree with you there. It's kind of a, it's, 
It'll be an interesting game, I think, nonetheless. But I don't know, Azale, do you have a differing opinion here than Supertease? No, I mean, I, I feel like unless there is something that, that really kind of changes our opinion as far as like a new comp or a new strategy or, you know, a team that's it's really, really going to step up, like if the agents are just playing at a different level than what we've seen them, to me, Europe has been a three-tier region basically where echo is tier one emeralds is tier two and then everyone else is kind of tier three right and it has been like that throughout almost all the cups where echo goes straight through the grand finals beats emeralds esports in the upper bracket then emeralds esports goes to the lower bracket beats everyone then goes to the grand finals and loses to echo again right and we've seen that in almost every single cup you know it has been you know just such strong teams at the top that no one really has been able to compete with them just yet so uh, we have to see if the agents can kind of kick it to another gear figure something else out um, because clearly what they did in the quarterfinals did not work against Admiral's Esports. They got swept out of that. So uh, they've had a little bit of time. You know, they had yesterday, obviously, um, and a bit of today to try to think about, you know, what they would want to do differently. And so now we kind of have to see, you know, what the, the fruits of that labor is. Yeah, we definitely will. But speaking of fruits of the, of their labor, we do have a, a fun little segment that we've got here since it is Championship Sunday. Uh, we've got some nominees, some nominations that we're doing here, such as, you know, MVP, um, Best Play, Best Live Lord, which is the one that we're going to be looking at now. So there should be a poll that's already been going in the Twitch chat. So let us know who you think the best live lord is for this one but i believe that we already picked some sort of nominees for this category already and right now it's it's between cubsy sidu and seralian so i don't know sid azale if you have a take on either of these i mean sidu is the obvious one man i mean he's got <laughs> the, he's got the historic so, moment that azale casted as well back in i think it was 2014 or something where he's uh, three yeah, amigos yeah, yeah. and in their one series against the golden guardians where they had uh, two v3 and come back and sidu was clutching out these full heels at 70 percent dampening just back to back to back to back just wouldn't let his team down i just feel like this has got to be there's no way man who's who is a contest for that right now I mean, I, I think the thing with Sidu, you know, I played with him for many, many years, obviously. He's just, he's just such a greedy player. And I think <laughs> it, it, sometimes it will backfire on him. And sometimes you'll have that, those games where, you know, like something just happens and damage is unexpected, whatever. You know, you lose a game that you maybe didn't want to lose with cooldown still up. Um, but it also does allow him in these situations when he, he rides that line perfectly and he's incredibly greedy. He's refusing to give up cooldowns and it allows him to set up these situations where he's able to make what looks impossible happen, right? Where because he still has cooldowns that other players didn't have. He's able to kind of sustain in a way um, that few healers in the world can so i think it can kind of create those really really exciting moments when cdu has really greeted it out and really kind of ridden the line and you feel like okay the game should be over now there's no way that they can survive from this point but cdu maybe still has that extra cooldown that someone else wouldn't uh that he really kind of pinched earlier so it can allow them to create those really special moments that was like a whole dissertation I think Sidu, I think Sidu wins this one. Yeah. And I think uh, I think he actually wins wins the chat favorite for best live lord. So congratulations to Sidu. Uh, you are the live lord for this season of AWC. But we are gonna head to a break with that. Thank you everyone for voting. We've got a lot more of those coming up if you'd like to participate in some of the coming uh, categories coming up. But real quick, we're gonna head to a break. It's Admirals Esports versus the Agents up next.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. If you are just now tuning in, we just finished off our first series of the day, sending Nice Beam, the team that won the European Gauntlet, out of the tournament. And now, Admirals Esports versus the Agents is up next. Agents, they had a pretty good run so far this weekend. Admirals Esports, we know uh, that they're jonesing for that rematch against Echo. Van, who do you think comes out alive from the series that we've got coming up? Uh, well, if history is to repeat itself, it would be Admirals Esports, but you can never count out the agents. This team has been, you know, a top dog in Europe for quite some time, and obviously they're looking very well prepared for this finals. Um, so I think this is going to be one of those matchups that really could go either way. Both rosters incredibly flexible in terms of the compositions that they bring. They both have a huge talent pool in terms of just the players on both rosters. So. Whoever's going to be able to put those pieces together the best is likely going to be the one that does end up in the grand finals to play against Echo. So um, that being said, though, Admiral Esports has definitely kind of had the number of the agents. They have been pulling out ahead in their last couple of series. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle here for the agents. They did just come out of a win, though, and maybe they can take some of that momentum coming from the first series that they played. You know, they're a little bit warmed up, Zico. I mean, what do you think? that they could do just based on past times that we've seen them play each other. Do you think that it's a, a lost cause here for the agents? I definitely wouldn't count these guys out. You know, the agents, they have been uh, sort of the team that has been, you know, Echo's rival uh, here in Europe. So uh, it's actually a bit surprising that this season it has been all about Admiral Esports. So we'll see what the agents actually have cooked up for this one. This has been a team, you know, that has gotten the better of them uh, like we kind of mentioned throughout the gen uh, the regular season. So uh, surely they must have something that they uh, have uh, prepared here. I mean, we did see uh, their outlaw um, a little bit earlier on, and it, it was tough. So uh, maybe maybe they have something else that they prepared overnight, or maybe they will just get carried uh, through their momentum uh, from that last victory because, you know, this is, this is the end of the line right now. So anything really can happen. Admiral Esports might be feeling a little bit uh, nervous or, uh, you know, uh, the agents might be feeling a little bit, uh, you know, pumped from that last win. So uh, we'll see what, the, what they can do here. Yeah, most definitely. You know, both of these teams, they've kind of been in this position before. A lot of tournament play uh, between all of, all of the rosters, all of the players on both rosters here. So, I mean, hopefully that pressure certainly isn't getting to them because there definitely is a lot on the line. This is playing for at least third here in this series, this upcoming one. $300,000 worth of prize pool on the line as well. I mean, this has been kind of a long and grueling season as well. You know, they had the gauntlet. Uh, well, I guess all the teams that played the gauntlet are out, but there's just been so many cups leading to this moment. The first four cups to even qualify for the finals here were definitely some tough matches and it's all coming to a head right here. Unfortunately, agents, they're coming into this as the underdog. They do have a, a win record, Admirals 2-1 to one versus the Agents, if you look at their past games as well. So let's see if the Agents are up to the challenge. It's game number one here for this elimination round, Admirals Esports versus the Agents. All right. The Agents going to be leading with Brune Hitty on the Outlaw Rogue, Zipa on the Elemental Shaman, and Asgrath on the Paladin. And for Admirals Esports, this has been their composition so far in this finals. Swapsy on that Moonkin has been looking really good. Blizzo on the Fury Warrior as well. So we'll see what they can get done here in game number one. Looks like Brune Hitty's going to be caught in, out of stealth into a bash, an immediate setup here from the side of the Agents with the Hammer of Justice into a Blinding Light onto next. They're trying to get aggressive, but... There's not too much damage out just yet. Swaps is going to be able to tank out that Lightning Lasso quite easily. And it looks like he should be able to survive uh, the early stages of this match. Yeah, and uh, Swaps, he actually will be getting that sacrifice there from next. And now here comes the Incarnation. Big damage potential for Swaps. Zipai realizes it. Immediately ducks for cover behind the pillar there. And it looks like they're going for another setup here on the side of the agents to get a kidney shot onto next. But it doesn't look like they have anything to follow it up just yet. Cyclone's coming out here onto Zipai. Swapsy has been an absolute menace so far on this Munkin, finding the Cyclones, finding the damage, and uh, being able to stay alive for quite some time. And uh, that's going to be the name of the game here. Swapsy needs to stay alive from Brunhiri's attacks, and Zipai needs to try to survive Blizzo. And Blizzo right now is getting the better end of that exchange. He's doing so much damage here onto Zipai. 
Aspen needs to be very careful here. Finally catches a couple of big heals there from Asgraf. Lightning Lasso coming out here onto Blizzo. And if I need to try to move around this pillar here with the freedom, make sure that he's rooting Blizzo, slowing Blizzo, doing what he can here uh, to prevent those Slaughterhouse stacks uh, from stacking up too high. Because if they do get it too high, that's what's going to burn Asgraf out of mana. And that's what's going to also burn Zephi's cooldowns here. Asgraf's hitting through a Cyclone here. Zephi is playing a little bit defensive, but he manages to stay alive. Another uh, Solar Beam coming out here onto Asgraf, but he manages to duck away from that one with his stone form racial and uh, asgrath will trade out um that uh, wings there as well actually no actually it was a proc so uh, asgrath will be fine with uh, just a sacrifice there onto his team and now it's going to be the agents looking to get aggressive yeah agents making a push right now they have a lot of pressure and a slight mana lead at this stage of the match and these type of matchups where you have a very durable melee a very durable caster and a paladin uh, they sometimes do require some heavy level of dampening, but both teams have to be very, very careful, cautious, make sure they're making trades, because if they do mess up their defensives, they could fall quite quickly. Full Hammer of Justice now onto Asgrath. We see a Cyclone on Brunhidi, but it looks like he will be the main target. Zephyr's on the run, just making it so difficult for Blizzard to actually stay on target. But finally, target acquired, and that's going to be immediate blessing of the protection. At the same time, though, Next is getting absolutely destroyed. Forced into the Divine Shield. Admiral's Esports makes the trade, but they're also getting cooldowns out of the way here for the agents. That was good pressure on Zephi, good pressure on Brunhidi, good crowd control on Asgrath. Good setups here by both these teams. Absolutely. Lone Hands being burnt on both sides, but that Divine Shield going to be a key defensive here on Next. And uh, that Tears Deliverance just faded here for Next. He's actually sitting down for a drink on the opposite side of the map. The fight shuts it down with the Earthquake, but Next actually was able to recover just a tiny bit of mana. And if we've seen anything today, it has been these Paladins being able to keep their teams going for a long time. But here's another setup onto Next, and I really like this from the agents they go on to next they get the bubble and they swap back to next get the blessing of protection and if they can continue to kind of ping pong here between swapsy and next that could be a massive opening here brunhiri uh, could be able to maybe set something up onto swapsy in about 40 seconds with that blind but right now he's sitting through a cyclone actually cloned up on low hp swapsy here uh, looking to push in onto Asgrath. might have a uh, Crowd control ready for Asgrath here. It uh, doesn't look like he's going to be able to find it just yet. Gets wind sheared on the Cyclone. Asgrath actually with very offensive positioning. Finally getting Cyclone fully here. Zipai in trouble. Zipai, no Astral Shift available. He has the Burrow, but doesn't want to use it. Nice Thunderstorm there onto Zipai. Good cheap shot there. Good protection from Brunhiri. Gouge breaks onto next. And Zipai is going to be in a world of trouble right now. But Asgrath does make the trade there with the sacrifice. And that should be enough to stabilize Zipai for now. Potentially, Zipai actually getting knocked back into Blizzard. That was a really nice Typhoon from Swapsy, and that's going to force out the Burrow. Full Repentance here onto Asgarath. Blizzo trinketing out of a blind, looking to get aggressive onto Zipai. Stormbolt connects, recharges there on the uh, Thunderstorm, and Blizzo actually getting bopped out aggressively just to get more and more uptime, and Zipai is really struggling to uh, get away from Blizzo so far. He's doing a pretty good job, though. It's the Blessing of Freedom with the... Um, as well as you know his travel form. So once he can get into that and just run around the pillar, it's going to give him obviously a speed boost. He can't be snared, and he can line aside Blizzo. Once Blizzo gets on target, though, this is when things get incredibly scary. That's going to be a blessing protection onto Zipai. Get those slaughterhouse stacks off immediately, and allow him once again to get into that ghost wolf and just kite around the pillar as much as possible. And it's going to be really, really important. But the thing is, those Blessing Protections are now gone. There's not one available for another minute. So if Blizzo picks up that steam, gets that momentum, can stay on target. At the same time, though, Blizzo needs to be very careful. His Cotton Hammer of Justice oh! might just go down. Big heals coming in here from next. And Swapsy saving the day. Blizzo holds on. But that was a great push there by the agents, really catching Blizzo off guard. Yeah, and, you know, it's going to be a lot of momentum here, potentially, for whoever wins this game. So far, it has been Admiral Esports getting the better end of the Agents, but the Agents coming off at the back of a win, and right now they are pushing for the win onto Blizzo. Full kidney shot swaps is there, though, to try to deflect it. Gets the bash onto Brunhita Drip. Blizzo dropping dangerously low there, but manages to get a big heal from next in the backline. Mana lead in favor of Asgarath. Cooldown lead also in favor of the Agents right now. Nobody's sitting on a Blessing of Protection. And next, he's going to have his bubble coming back up in about 15 seconds. But Zipai could be in trouble here. He's going to activate that Fireblood Racial, or actually that Stone Form. He's playing that the good old-fashioned Dwarf, not the new Dwarf. 
and uh, Zipai should be able to stay alive uh, with that damage reduction. But another swap here onto Blizzo. Next was sitting down for a drink, and immediately they're setting up these kidney shots onto Blizzo with the adrenaline rush with big damage from that rogue elemental. And uh, it is uh, causing a lot of pressure here onto Admiral Esports. It's very troubling here to see anytime next wants to go back for a drink Blizzo is in trouble and right now next is actually sitting up for a drink Deepai, what is he going to do about it he goes for the earthquake with the gust of wind but next does manage to recover a decent amount of mana here and tie it up in the mana department yep things are looking good asgoth going for a tears deliverance really empowering his healing here but we are at 32 percent dampening and things are going to get crazy shortly Blizzo right now on brune Haiti, making a little bit of a swap there onto next they're just bouncing around where they can and it looks like Swapsy is going to be rotting down also. Good swap here on the Brunhidi as he's caught into a sun. Big damage here from Swapsy. Just pulling the trigger with that incarnation. He's trying to get the damage rolling. Zipa in a good position. Immediately popping that astral shift just to try to slow down this pressure. Coming in from Admiral's Esports. Stun now onto Asgras. Zipa still low. A full cyclone lands. Swapsy doing a great job setting up his team as they are looking for a push to close out the game. But at the same time, Blizzard gets caught once again. In a kidney shot, that's going to be the sacrifice from Nax. You can see him just rotting down. The damage might be overwhelming here at this point in dampening. It's going to be very difficult to recover at the same time, though. Brunhidi forced to trade out the Cloak of Shadows, and that Cloak of Shadows is going to be empowered with the new PvP talent, giving him 100% evasion, as well as removing all physical debuffs. So very powerful defensive that just got burned through, uh, and that means Brunhidi could be a good target here in the future. Yeah, and uh, so far, nice swaps onto Blizzo, pushing out his trinket. He's down back uh, behind the pillar. Once again, Blessing of Protection comes out. Earlier when they did that, it was his trinket, and then they got a full blind as a result. So these uh, swaps to Blizzo are really alleviating the pressure that's on Zipai, but still, Zipai is struggling right now. Dampening is just ramping up and up. Asgraph definitely feeling the pressure here on in the healing department. Full Solar Beam connects by Swapsy, pushing in for the win here. Can he find the Cyclones to follow it up? Uh, Asgraph actually going to be using that Divine Shield there so big cooldown trade coming out here from the agents and swapsy he's gonna have incarnation coming back up in about 30 seconds as well and that next solar beam could potentially be lethal here if they can make it to that point brunhiri is gonna need to do something here get aggressive onto blizzard potentially if blizzard pushes in too deep he could definitely be a target he gets knocked back there for just a second and zipai trying to keep him at bay trying to get some damage rolling here onto blizzard and they're trying to set up for a kidney shot behind the pillar and there it is full kidney shot full hammer of justice onto next do they have the damage Asuka blinds swapsy there he would have liked to blind next out of that Hammer of Justice, but Swapsy uh, had to uh, be interrupted there on the Cyclone. And then as a result, it looks like Blizzard is actually going to be staying alive. That sacrifice once again proving to be very, very effective. Yep, nicely done there in order to survive a dampening getting crazy at this point. 46% dampening. That's a permanent sharpened blade on the entire team. Zipai right now is going to fade from that astral shift. He is very susceptible to going down. Asgrath doing what he can to keep him alive. A very beautiful defensive line coming in from Brute as well. But he gets caught into the bash and Blizzard was there. Blessing Protection saves the day once again. Just endless Blessing Protections coming in. But if that gets purged off or dispelled or falls, Brune is going to be in a lot of trouble. Blizzo continuing to make a push, but he needs to be careful. He's got no trinket. All three members of the agents are rotting down. Asgrath cannot save the day. And that is going to be it. Admiral's Esports takes a good game number one. That was a convincing win. I mean, there was moments where Blizzo was in trouble, but Swapsy was always there to save the day. They always had the answers in crowd control. And uh, I feel like if we see this matchup play out, I, I got to heavily favor Admiral's Esports with this one. Yeah, Admiral Esports once again. I mean, we have seen this matchup before, and it it, it is going in Admiral Esports' favor. So I'm not sure uh, exactly what the agents are uh, really trying to do here. It, it feels like they're trying to go after Blizzo with those swaps behind the pillar. And there was a couple of moments where they almost took Blizzo down. So definitely can't be counted out. But I feel like Blizzo at some points just realize okay this is the only thing they're doing right now so i feel like uh it went a lot better for the agents when they were going after next in the match early on and then doing the swaps to blizzo uh so i would like to see some you know i i, I probably wouldn't mind seeing this matchup once again but i want to see them mix it up a little bit um don't just do the same thing over and over and over again um i feel like that's the kind of trap that they're falling into outlaw rogue is the scariest when it's completely unpredictable and the first time they went after Blizzard when he was behind a pillar, it was very unpredictable and they almost got the kill. Um, but, you know, the last couple of times, like, uh, you know, in situations like this, 
it's just kind of obvious like this is what they want to do they just want to kidney shop blizzo here and every single time they already know okay blizzo is going to trinket the next kidney next he's going to sacrifice the next kidney and it just gives swapsy too much room to do whatever he wants here uh, and then here, you know, these cyclones here from Swapsy were absolutely devastating as well. Got the low cyclone there on the Blessing of Protection. They got the pressure here onto Asgarath. Asgarath runs away. They swap to Zipai. Uh, Brunhilde comes out of the cyclone. But at this point, Zipai is basically dead. Kidney Shot does connect, but it's just too late. And um, as a result, Admiral Esports are going to be up 1-0 here. In this uh, lower bracket final, winner will be advancing to the grand finals. Uh, so the winner of this will guarantee their team $40,000 uh, because they will be, uh, you know, getting second place. So definitely a lot on the line here. Um, but as far as, uh, as the composition is concerned, I don't mind seeing it again from the agents, but I do want to see them bounce ar around a lot more. It would be uh, uh, guaranteed at least second place. They have a chance for first, though. Come on. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry wait wait did i say they're guaranteed to, to, to finish second <laughs> yeah. it's okay i know echo is looking really good but these two teams i know that's not what you meant but yeah the agents right now they have some options they're actually one of the uh first teams to bring in an affliction warlock now typically affliction warlocks and warlocks in general are not going to be that great into the fury warrior but on a big map like imperial domain i i don't know if i would really mind seeing it like maybe you do bring in the warlock elemental shaman um, Admiral Z Sports, obviously, this has been, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the only composition they've ran so far uh, this weekend in the finals. So I think this is something that, ah, actually, that's against Echo. They played something else, right? Uh, they played, didn't they play? Against Echo, they played something else, I do believe. They, they, yeah, oh, yeah, they played, um, didn't they play like a DK Hunter? Yes. That's what they played. Yeah. yeah, they brought in Jamie on the BM Hunter, I think. Yeah, which is that's what they played. Surprising, but. You know, it just shows the level of preparation that this team has. But at least into the agents, this is all they're playing because the agents haven't really come up with a different... They haven't had come up with anything that's been able to beat it. So I kind of wonder what they're going to end up doing. They do have a lot of options like we've talked about. Um, going to a big map signifies to me like maybe they do end up playing a wizard setup. I think small, build, uh, small pillars mean to me that uh, we're probably not going to see the same thing just because... Uh, Zipai surviving really relies on him going in that Ghost Wolf with freedom and running around a pillar. And Empyrean Domain might be one of the worst maps to pull off that strategy since the pillars are so small. So I do think we're going to be seeing a, a different composition here. Yeah, uh, the question is, what is that composition going to be? I mean, the, the map would suggest it's uh, something with double wizard. So we could see a Warlock come through, but I feel like we have seen this matchup during the regular season so many times as well. And it just hasn't looked that good, even with the Warlock. Uh, it's just like, oh, this is like, oh, perfect. Now, instead of just hitting the Ellie, there's a Warlock as well that I can go after. So um, I wonder, I actually wonder uh, what they want to do here. You know what I would like to see? But it's what? probably not going to happen. I would like to see a Frost Mage. A good old the agent's playing a Frost Mage? Who's going to play the Frost Mage? Mercy Mage, baby. Let's go. I would like to see that. I mean, that's probably not going to happen. But uh, Or Jamie. I think Jamie has played Mage, actually, in the past. But... It's not going to happen. It is going to be Ellie Munkin, Holy Father, coming out. So we are going to get to see double wizards. It's not going to be a warlock, though. Um, they're going to take a Munkin instead. So um, I don't actually mind this too much. I think this could work. But the question is, how much practice do they have on this? And how much practice do they have in this matchup uh, with this? Yeah, I mean, that's really going to be the question. Uh, you kind of wonder at this point if they're just trying to figure something else out, like okay, game plan didn't work, like, what do we do now? Because I don't think for the agents, it was really a surprise what they're going to be running, like what Admirals Esports is going to be running. So they obviously led with their best foot forward. That didn't work out. Now we're going to plan B with Mercy on the Moonkin. Now, on the large map, this could definitely work out. You're going to have to do a really good job kiting Blizzo. My only fear here is Swapsy plays the Moonkin really aggressively when it comes to crowd control. Like, he is not afraid to just push in back up Blizzo, spam out the Cyclones, and when your only range interrupt is going to be Zipai, he has a lot of responsibility, especially if he's getting destroyed and chopped up by Blizzo. He still has to be there stopping those Cyclones and trying to slow down Swapsy just a little bit. Um, at the same time, though, Mercy might be able to give Zipai a little bit more freedom in the match. If he can all of a sudden land Cyclones onto Blizzo, they might actually end up losing pressure and they can get aggressive. So... A lot of this is going to come down to which Moonkin kind of pulls ahead in terms of their Cyclones and crowd controls and really sets up their team. Absolutely agree. And Swapsy really feel like he has been 
Uh, you know, he didn't really use to play Munkin in the past. He's always been a player, you know, who multi-classes a lot and has been playing, you know, a lot of DK, a lot of Red Paladin in the past and things like that. And also his Shaman. Warlock has always kind of been... Yeah, of course, Shaman as well. Uh, you know, enhance, he's always been, a little Ellie. Yeah, yeah, a little Enhance. Um, also, his Warlock has been, you know, a big pocket pick for him. But I really feel like this season, Munkin has been his main. And I feel like out of all of the Munkin rerolls, He's been one of the absolute best at it. I feel like him and Waz have been the, the two like re-roll Moonkins who's really, really stepped up big uh, in this season. Um, so it Europe. is nice to see. Uh, yeah, in Europe. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it is nice to see. Um, and uh, that's going to be tough for Mercy as well to compete against. Maybe that should be one of the categories we vote on. Best Moonkin <laughs> re-roll. Best, best Moonkin re-roll. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who do you think is the best Moonkin re-roll in NA? Because you were thinking about someone. Uh, in NA? Well, I don't know. I feel like Sam I Am isn't considered a reroll anymore. Like, Sam I Am just is a yeah. Moonkin, right? Like, he won BlizzCon on Moonkin. So, is that when you when you win BlizzCon on a class, does that kind of graduate you to a main at that point? <laughs> or does that work? Yeah. Yeah. If you if you win at least one big tournament on, on the reroll class, then it's officially like comfort pick. Get a little certificate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super teams will come with, with like a little medal and put it around your neck. <laughs> yeah. There has been a lot uh, of Moonkins, yeah. though. It's it's definitely been a really <laughs> potent class this season. Definitely, you know. It's back. Uh, I feel like, I, I feel like uh, Munkin has been uh, the key to success for just a lot of these teams. You know, we've seen so much. What what Munkin comps have we actually seen? You know, we've seen Munkin Warriors, we've seen, you know, Wizards with Munkin. Demo Munkin was super uh, popular as well for Echo basically got them you know all of their wins uh rogue munkin has been you know warrior uh, kind of the bread and butter yeah uh, hunter munkin oh uh, yeah with um my way although mm -hmm. they did get knocked out but still they you know they won they a series with that damage. comp i think yeah it's uh it's crazy to see actually how many munkin comps did we ever see mage munkin though i think it's actually good i think it's a good comp i don't know if we did see it Wait, in frozen title. frozen chicken or spicy chicken I think we oh or arcane chicken. What, what, what would you I don't call know arcane if we saw chicken? Oh. Microwave chicken. Oh, there is a name. <laughs> I I don't know why I'm blanking on this right now. <laughs> put it on the spot, but there is a name for it. Um. Anyways, I mean, well, we could we could figure that out later. It'll come to me during the cast, so we'll we'll get back yeah. to that one, but. We're going into game two here, Empyrean Domain. The winner, I mean, the stakes of this series right here are incredibly high. The winner of this one is going to be making it to the grand finals to play against Echo and their shot of, you know, that $70,000 first place prize pool. So really, really important. The agents, they got to battle it back here. Admirals Esports so far has had their number. They have been a cut above the rest. The agents really got to step it up here in the second game. Yeah, and uh, if you lose this one, you know, you're going to be down 0-2. It's going to be so hard uh, because you're basically going to have to reverse sweep. And this is it, folks. No more second chances. You lose this series, you are out. You're going to finish the season in third, which, of course, is, you know, amazing still. But all of these players, they want to win. They want to go all the way to the grand finals and beat Echo. Uh, let's see if anybody can actually do it here. This is a lower bracket final and the gates are open ziva is already in a full cycle mercy already down a trinket here getting pressured quite heavily here Asgard sitting through a root solar beam doesn't want to actually Asgard is not playing a dwarf he's playing a human i think uh on that pod and so he's not going to have a way out beautiful typhoon there actually on the heroic leap of blizzle and he's going to struggle to actually reconnect here onto mercy as a result of it but now finally does connect there with the charge solar beam coming out from mercy onto swapsy and now looking to blast him here but mercy's not feeling too confident himself and swapsy gets the cyclone there onto mercy cloning him up low there and now swapsy caught up in a stun by z -Pi. next pushing in for the repentance Asgrath, though, interrupts it with a hammer of justice. Blessing of protection comes out onto Mercy. Full cyclone onto next. Swapsy could be in trouble. Zipa loading up the lava lava. Gets him down to 50% HP. But Swapsy will trade out the Frenzied region. Gets the Blessing of protection and should be fine to stay alive. Yeah, it looks like he will be okay. Moving forward with the cyclone. Looking for crowd control here onto Zipa as they are putting some pressure onto next. Next forced to retreat to the pillar, and I don't mind this. If Paladin's going to be in the open, it is a good target. It's going to make him burn through his mana even more if he has to heal multiple targets. Hammer of Justice now lands from Asgarath onto Next. Next going to trinket out of that. Land the counter Hammer of Justice here onto Asgarath, and both these Paladins looking to get aggressive right now. Next behind the pillar, you can see Swapsy 
looking for a cyclone he gets wind shear that range interrupt from z really paying dividends but blizzo just charging over getting the damage rolling on to mercy and maybe they're going for a little bit of a target swap here not going after z as much and just really opting to go after that moonkin but they have to be careful Mercy gets that precognition and manages to land a full cyclone so the interrupts the pummel from blizzo is going to have to be spot on or mercy is going to get a lot of control of this game yeah, and uh, Blizzo right now is trying to shut that down from happening. Mercy, though, with a quick bash onto Blizzo. Blizzo's going to use his human racial there as well. And uh, now getting aggressive onto Mercy. Mercy's going to uh, be forced to trinket out of that Storm Bolt. Activates the Heart of the Wild next, getting swapped to here with Lightning Lasso. Z by getting shut down. Full Cyclone connects onto Swap Z. Mercy looking for the damage here, but everybody is avoiding him right now. And uh, Sacrifice will connect from Asgarath onto Mercy. Mercy still looking for the CCs right now. He's trying to kite around here, trying to blast Swap Z. Gets the Solar Beam there onto Swap Z. Now gets pummeled there instantaneously on his Cyclone. Blizzo's all over him. Gets the Shockwave here as well. Good uptime from Blizzo. Eight Slaughterhouse stacks here onto Mercy, getting them all the way up to 12 now, and Mercy is going to start feeling the pressure here. How is he going to deal with this nice static field totem coming out from z -Pi. Trying to buy him a little bit of space, and that will give Mercy enough time to get the Cyclone there onto Blizzo, and that will be enough time to reset those stacks, but still, Blizzo is going to reconnect. to get a full Cyclone onto next. Big damage potential here onto Swapsy, but he's just going to trade out his Trinket and his Bark Skin. Be completely fine. Mercy, in the meantime, catches a Blessing of Protection from Ascraft. Mana Tied up here between both healers. Full Hex connects onto next. Gets dispelled though by Swapsy. And Blizzo once again getting ready here to pummel Mercy. Mercy knows it and is sitting in bear form here. Tries to duck around a corner. Trying to find some Cyclones here. But instantly getting pummeled again. Blizzo has been on point here with these kicks. And as a result he's getting plenty and plenty of uptime. Full Shockwave connects here onto Mercy as well. And the stacks are building up. Blizzo just doing so much damage. How is Mercy going to stay alive here? Asgarath going to need to do some big heals there. Imagine to snipe a big hill right before Mercy gets put into that Cyclone. And I think Mercy is going to be able to stay alive for now. Nice Typhoon there as well. Onto the charge. Beautifully done there by Mercy. Trying to buy some distance finally to breathe here from the menace that is Blizzo. Yep. Blizzo finally leaping over. Connecting once again. Dampening getting higher and higher at 17% at this point. Both Paladins are doing pretty well on mana, but Nex is a little bit behind, so that might be the game here of the Agents. Try to get the game into deep dampening with the double wizard set up on the large map and pull ahead. So if they can stop the drinks here from next and they can deny Blizzo that uptime that he desperately needs on that Fury Warrior, I could definitely see them winning this match and tying up the series. Let's see if they can do it. A full bash though onto Asgraf, into a Cyclone. Swapsy wants to shut down that game plan and allow his team to get aggressive. That's a Trinket Sacrifice. Avenging Wrath trades out by Asgraf, trying to keep Mercy alive, but Mercy also getting very aggressive here with his Incarnation, really blasting Swapsy. Gets interrupted. An offensive Solar Beam just to slow down Swapsy a little bit and pull out ahead. Cyclone now landing by Mercy as he turns his attention onto Blizzo, looking to get the damage rolling. z backs him up with a nice lightning lasso, slowing down Blizzo just a little bit and getting that pressure rolling for his team. Yeah, and uh, still Incarnation is activated for Mercy, but he gets caught up in the Shockwave. Big damage here onto Mercy. Blessing of Protection. Blizzard actually reflecting the Cyclone right there onto Mercy. Beautifully done there. And uh, Zipai also sitting through a Cyclone. Full Repentance connects onto Asgraf. He's going to bubble out of that one. Now a Hammer of Justice connects onto next here as Asgraf tries to get something back to get a full Cyclone uh, out of that. And Swapsy is dropping quite low here, but once again, he has the Renewal available. He has the Frenzied Region. He'll be able to stay alive with that Moonkin self-healing. Dampening at 26%, so the self-healing will be getting weaker and weaker as the game progresses. Next now, pushing in for the kill here. No trinket on Asgarath. He just used his sacrifice, and next gonna have a Hammer of Justice with Asgarath's name on it. No, he goes for the Repentance. Full Repentance connects here. Big pressure, but Blizzo's dropping quite low as well, and they managed to get a Reflector on the Cyclone once again. Blizzo doing some MVP plays, gets dispelled there out of that Hex, and now here comes more damage onto Mercy. How are they gonna respond right now? Next has a Bubble, and Asgarath does not no trinket as well onto Asgard. They need to get Blizzo out of way from Mercy. They do manage to connect with Cyclone. Mercy now uh, trying to get another Cyclone here onto Blizzo. Trying to buy a little bit of space. Asgard sitting through cryo control right now. And Mercy dropping lower and lower. Nice Hex there onto Blizzo. They knock him around the corner as well. Mercy just doing what he can here to try to get around the corner. Meanwhile, z on a solo mission trying to blast Next there in the back line. But looks like Next is going to be able to stay alive. And once again, it's going to be Swapsy under pressure. Both of these healers feeling the heat right now at 31% dampening. 
Oh, things are really starting to ramp up here for both of these teams. Blizzo, though, caught into a bash. At the same time, Swaps is getting aggressive. Using that incarnation, wants to connect here on the Mercy, and this is where things get crazy. If Blizzo can stay on target, it's going to be really scary here for Mercy. There's no more Blessing and Protections available, which means this Slaughterhouse is going to absolutely decimate the healing. At the same time, though, Swaps is in trouble, gets Earthshock down to 10% health. Force to retreat back to the pillar next is going to be able to pick him up, and now Admiral Zeke's Force can get aggressive. Blizzo unfortunately does get cycloned there, so some of that pressure will be lost. But I think Admiral's Esports, they realize they're on a timer. They have to go, go, go. They need to close out this game. They need to stay on target. There's no blessing of protections available. And if Blizzo can just get to Mercy, they can deny any cyclones from Swapsy. We'll see if they can actually get it done. There's a full cyclone out of a hex here on the Blizzo. Blizzo just in endless crowd control on that warrior at the same time. Swaps in the middle of the map, getting absolutely blasted. Next, trading up the sacrifice to keep him alive. Overlap with the bark skin. Both teams making trades as healing is becoming incredibly unstable at this point in the game. Yeah, and mana also very unstable here for next. They need to get something going fast, or they will just lose the game here in the War of Attrition. The agents might have actually done it here on uh, Empyrean Domain. Blizzard right now sending through a route, gets freedom there finally by next. Now reconnecting here onto Mercy. Mercy has the Heart of the Wild, though. If he needs to, he gets pummeled there on the Cyclone, ducks back into bear form, gets the Frenzied region, catches a couple of heals there. Heart of the Wild will be active. Another reflect here on the Cyclone by Blizzard. Blizzard with some MVP play so far. And next now getting blasted here by Zipa. Zipa is so good at bullying these healers and Mercy is just crossing the map, forcing Nex to cross the map as well to try to keep Blizzo on target and that's when z strikes and right now Mercy though in trouble once again dropping quite low here how is Ascraf even going to heal him? He's got mana but he's got no way to break out of these crowd controls still 12 seconds on the bubble full Stormbolt connects here, he does manage to connect with the sacrifice on the side of Ascraf, he's got the wings active as well, Mercy now feeling a little bit safer here, going for the Cyclone but he gets pummeled by Blizzo, nice Thunderstorm, another reflect on the Cyclone by Blizzo, leaps over but a full cyclone will connect and mercy will be topped off here uh, with that big heal from Ascarath. and now next what is he gonna do he needs to sit down for a drink potentially but he's not gonna be able to find it he's gonna keep blizzle on target blizzle charges in he might have charged too deep though gets caught up in a dr cyclone there save but life is gonna proc here for blizzle frenzy region is active as well for blizzle once again connecting with the storm ball big damage Ascarath sitting down for just a sip but not able to find it the orbital strike is connecting here onto mercy swaps he smells blood in the water double shockwave connects bubble immediately oh. from Ascarath but I don't think it's going to be enough. Mercy so low, but he catches the Blessing of Protection. Ascraft working miracles, and now they're turning it back on to Blizzo, man. Yeah, Blizzo has to keep going, keep on pushing. He's so low on health, but he needs to be unafraid at this time. Chase down Mercy and get the damage rolling. Next, completely tapped on mana and might just fall. He has the Divine Shield. He's behind the pillar doing what he can to live, but there is nothing left. He's working on fumes. Renewal comes in from Swapsy. Next, sitting down for a drink. This is such a scary moment here for Admiral's Esports. The agents, can they do it? They just need one more win, and this is going to be the Innervate Tears Deliverance. They might be able to stay alive. Blizzle's caught into a Hammer of Justice. Next, gets a Lightning Capped away. Beautifully done there by Zipai. Oh my goodness, that was such an MVP play. Managed to get the static field totem onto Next and throw him away. He sat down for a drink. He got the innervate. He got the tears deliverance. But Zipai completely shut him down with that ability. He's not able to get there. That was a really clutch uh, play there by Zipai. Yeah, Zipai definitely popping off, and uh, that's the one, one of the good things here. You know, Zipai has been the main target in that previous matchup, but now Zipai gets to be free casting, and you can see what this man can do here on the LA Shaman. There's a reason why he's been considered the best for such a long time here in Europe. You see his damage down there on the bottom, uh, you know, left of the screen, uh, topping out the damage, doing it absolute miracles on that shaman soloing next time and time again really taxing his money you can see next here next can't cross the map right now but blizzo needs to follow uh, through here onto mercy if the moment blizzo stops chasing mercy they lose all their pressure and that's when the wizards get to do whatever they want and, and you know there's no more punishment for that and then at this point of course zipai here he has separated them and then there it is boom Hi. static field totem and next he kills it off but he tries to get there in time but blizzo gets blasted on the opposite side of the screen there Ascraft is there with the hammer of justice and to lay down the law and all of a sudden the agents managed to take this game number two here tie us up one to one a piece and uh, we got a series on our hands the blessing of protection is just so crucial like if Asgrath is not on paladin any other healer loses like in these moments where mercy is just you know 10 percent health 20 percent health blizzles on target slaughterhouse is fully stacked we're at 40 percent dampening 
it's impossible to heal through that. Like there's, there's nothing you can really do. The only thing that saves the day is that blessing and protection, removing that physical debuff, allowing him to heal up. So Asgath has to play really clutch with that ability and really save it for the perfect moment because if that's not available, it is going to be lights out. This was such a close game. I mean, the agents, they managed to tie it up, but still, I don't know how convinced I am of this composition. Maybe on a big map, it's something that they can reliably pull off, but you know we're going to a small map. Like, we're, we're going <laughs> to a point. Like, it's going to get as small as possible here in this game number three. Absolutely. And even on a big map, I, I wouldn't say that this is something that they can reliably pull off. There were so many moments where Mercy was just flirting with death. So uh, we'll see, you know, if they can keep up that level of play. It's definitely possible here for the agents. But like you mentioned, we're most likely going to go to somewhere small like Hook Point and... Uh, if the agents can't win there, then it might just be one of those series that go back and forth depending on the map. But Whoa. we are actually going to the Nakudon Proving Grounds, the new map that was added in Dragonflight. So uh, this is uh, very, very interesting. I do wonder why they decided to go with this. Um, yeah, what, what what is Admiral Esports uh, cooking up here? Like, it, it, this map is interesting because... It is a, in terms of size, it's a large map, but it feels like a small map when you play because depending on where you position, there's always pillars you can go to. That central structure, that little fence kind of cuts the map in half. So for the most part, you're either playing near the ramp or just on one side of the map. You know, it's like you can't play um, on, you know, those central pillars you can see there on the screen. You can't play on, you know, either side of that. You have to be on one side or the other. So. Looks like Admiral Esports, they are going to be mixing it up. And they bring in Swapsy on the Demonology Warlock, Jamie on the Elemental Shaman. This is okay. So I guess if we're going Wizards, they want to just bring in the ultimate wizard, which is that Demonology Warlock, um, where you do have that added Mortal Strike effect, which is very potent. Yeah. So uh, the wizard of all the wizards here, the Warlock has entered the arena and uh, we have seen admiral esports lock in this map uh, in the past and what they did was they basically used it as like a big uh, circle they would just run a full circle around the map just uh, constantly running constantly switching position and just have the warlock pets do work just have dots working and just uh, kill them slowly and then uh, try to find drinks constantly but that was with i believe uh, a resto druid on their team and they were constantly looking for drinks while they were doing that so the enemy team had to constantly chase them to stop the druid from drinking uh, so it will be a little bit different in this patch because it will be with the paladin but um this is probably the same line of play that we're going to see from the uh, from um, admiral esports uh and for the agents i mean this is kind of good news still because you got you got them to swap away blizzo blizzo has been a, a thorn in your side uh, for such a long time at this point you know blizzo is basically what has been dismantling the agents it's been really tough for them and the fact that admiral esports are willing to swap away from blizzo instead of locking in a smaller map and continuing uh, rolling with that same composition and making the agents second guess themselves they are actually bringing in something new and and that's where mistakes can happen right you know swapsy uh probably one of the most experienced players in the entire game you know uh, has a, a record actually for most BlizzCon wins in the game. I think he's sitting at three BlizzCon wins. So uh, this is definitely a veteran, you know, uh, in the true, in the full sense of the word. But even Swapsy, you know, he's still human. Uh, swapping from, you know, uh, his Moonkin all the way to his Warlock, anything can happen, right? Like you might forget to set something up. You might be a little bit cold. You know, you might need, you know, at least a minute of Jamie you know, pressing too. your buttons. Uh, and yeah, and bringing in Jamie as well. Cold from the bench, it's, uh, you know, so much on the line here. You're going to finish in third if you lose this series. And uh, you're going to, you know, be advancing to the grand finals and have a chance at winning the entire thing. Uh, so much money on the line as well. So um, for, for Jamie, the pressure is going to be immense. He's just coming in fresh from the bench. And uh, for Swaps as well, swapping a class like that uh, is also, you know, going to be a little bit of a curveball there that he has to adapt to. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Jamie coming off the bench cold. Like you said, he's going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with Zipai on that Elemental Shaman. But they're feeling confident bringing in a map. Honestly, I feel like I don't even know. I can really count on one hand how many times people have chose this map or teams have chose this map uh, during this season. So a little bit of... Okay, there you go. Three and times. Three <laughs> times. I think I can count that high, so yeah. All right, we're good to go. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how the teams navigate this. And 
I like this. Sometimes you bring in an unorthodox map. Maybe you have you know a certain strategy in mind with your positioning, and that really can give you an edge. So utilizing the full map pool here uh, in this series, and this is a perfect time to bring it out, right? Admirals Esports, they're tied up right now, but this is their map advantage. This is their composition advantage. Let's see if they can make the most of it. Yeah, let's see if they can do that. Uh, right now, it's going to be the agents versus Admiral Esports. This map, like we said, only been count, uh, only been picked three times so far, and I believe it has been Admiral Esports. And uh, this is such an Admiral Esports thing to do, and especially such a swapsy thing to do. He'll he'll be the only team as well picking maps like Blades Edge in the past. You know, everybody else just hates that map, avoids it like the plague, and Swaps is just like yes. We're going to blades you know and he locks in his melee cleaves and tries to shut down the the good old rogue mage overlords uh, it's kind of been you know historically um you know something that swaps he likes to do he likes to actually work those uh, kind of unorthodox maps that we don't see too often and actually try to work them in his favor and try to figure out ways to actually use those so let's see if it works out for them or if the agents can take the swing match right now the gates have been open z already feeling the pressure here from jamie uh, sitting through that lightning lasso but he will be able to just uh, walk that one off now looking for jamie you can see already they're uh, going into that formation here but swapsy was left a little bit behind there and z getting blasted so far from the observer mercy as well taking a decent amount of uh, of damage there jamie proccing some lava burst here proccing ascendance getting some good work done onto mercy and z and they're forced back here and every single time they go back you can t you can bet that next is going to be happy about that he's not going to have to spend too much mana and already the internet is coming out here for mercy uh, onto asgraf and that's going to allow asgraf to just keep his uh, team in the fight for free incarnation did just subside here for mercy so the pressure from the agents is not going to be too high right now and it's going to be all about admiral esports yeah admiral's esports is going to be looking good here a lot of the damage the agents have available comes from magic effects so if next can just dispel those off and really limit some of the pressure that Zipai and Mercy are going to be able to put out. He's using Judgment of the Peer, so when he uses the Judgment effect, uh, it's going to be removing you know certain magic effects off of him, um, spamming out Dispel in this match. It's going to be really, really important. So we'll see how many Dispels they're actually able to get off, as that's really going to limit the damage. The problem is, deeper in Dampening, where you have to heal, it's not as much of a luxury to do that, so that's when the game becomes really unstable. But Swapsy so far is looking really good on this Demonology Warlock. He's been able to get a lot of pressure. And that, uh, that Mortal Strike effect, that Mortal Wounds that reduces healing is going to be really, really important. That Felguard applies it. So if Asgrath, Jamie, and Mercy, they kind of group up behind the pillar and they all get um, is stuck, or sorry, Zipai, they all get hit by that pet and it's spinning. It's going to apply that Mortal Strike to everyone and that's going to be really difficult for Asgrath to actually heal through the pressure. Yeah, and uh, you can see already, actually, Asgraf with a tiny bit of a mana lead, but I do suspect some of that is due to that innervate that came out from Mercy. So Asgraf so far doing a great job uh, kind of conserving his mana. Demonic Tyrant is out here for Swapsy. Are they letting his free cast, though, is the question. No, it does get stunned there in the back line. And now it's actually casting here, uh, getting Cyclone there, nicely done uh, by Mercy, shutting it down. And now Mercy activating the Incarnation, looking to get aggressive here onto Jamie. Zipai is there as well, backing him up. The Observer comes out here for Swapsy. They need to kill that off immediately. You see those blue beams zapping everybody there. Finally, it does go down, and Swapsy looking for full fear there onto Ascraft. Manages to find it, and Ascraft actually trying to uh, lay down the law here with the Hammer of Justice, but not able to find it there onto his target. And he would have liked to plant that onto next, but instead, I think actually it was Jamie that might have grounded it, and uh, Jamie right now is going to be completely fine. He gets topped. Actually goes for the offensive burrow right there, getting extra damage there, extra pad work done. And uh, that burrow has a knock-up effect attached to it, so you can even use it as an extra interrupt. Next, though, getting blasted there, forced to use his lay on hands. And uh, so far, the engines are showing signs of life here. They're getting good pressure onto Jamie and onto Next. Yeah, really nicely done. And you can tell Next, he just wants to be away from the fight as much as possible. Zipai is kind of chasing him down. That's one of the best things you can do against a Paladin who is spam dispelling is make sure you put pressure on him because there is a bit of an effect of when you dispel, you know, Flame Shock and dispel Druid Dots, you are going to be taking a little bit of extra damage. And if you're already a little bit low on health, that effect becomes a lot more, uh, you know, scary. It's, it's a lot more uh, scary to dispel those abilities when you're low on health. So pressuring the Paladin, I think, is really, really important. But it could be risky because you're going to allow Swapsy a lot more room to breathe in the match get out his demons, get out the big tyrants, and that's where the game can unravel quite quickly here if you are the agents. Yeah, and uh, Mercy right now, 
uh, is pushing forward, getting aggressive here actually onto Jamie. Jamie, how is he going to respond? He doesn't have anything. Next comes in with the sacrifice, and uh, he does manage to keep Jamie alive with that. Now, Lightning Lasso coming out here onto Mercy. He's taking a little bit of damage as well, but uh, the name of the game is definitely going to be, you know, try to get ahead before dampening gets too deep. Right now, both teams trying to find basically an opening here. Mercy, though, needs to be careful. He's pushing in. His line of sighting is here. He gets knocked even further behind. Mercy actually catches a big heal there, but that was a close call there. Really, really Really nice knock there coming out from Jamie, but also a nice hex onto Jamie by Zipai there to try to shut it down before it gets going. We managed to interrupt the drink there onto next as well with the earthquake here. Zipai is on point here on the Elisha. You can see Jamie as well falling a little bit behind there on damage so far, but uh, it is expected uh, somewhat when you are the target here in the matchup. Now, Jamie caught up in a hammer of justice once again. Big damage connects here from Zipai. He's proking some lava burst, pushing in onto next once again. And uh, the goal right now is to try to make sure that next doesn't drink and to try to make sure that they force a big cooldown before dampening gets really, really high. Because if you have all of those major defensives deep in dampening, that is when that could cost you the game. So if they can manage to get a Divine Shield out of next, they can manage to find, you know, an unending resolve or something like that with a little bit longer cooldown on the side of the Admiral Esports. If the agents can do that, then they're going to be in a great shape here. Getting that lay on hands out of the way, definitely a nice little win, but they need more dampening right now at 25% as we continue battling on here in Nokudon Proving Grounds. Yep, things are getting spicy here at about 26% dampening. Both Paladins doing pretty well on mana at this point of the game, though. So we're in a full-on wizard war. Mercy just pushing forward, trying to get a good positioning here, but he is getting blasted by Swapsy, and this is a really scary thing to do. Double Shadow here coming in from Swapsy. Nicely done, getting the pressure rolling here on a Mercy. He was looking for a Cyclone, but Swapsy's just ranging it. Jamie also taking a lot of pressure right now. Finally get it done, but there's just no crowd control on the Paladins for the time being. Full Lightning Lasso, though, on Nexus oh. could easily be the Divine Shield, and it is. The major cooldown is forced, and now Nexus is going to be uh, a little bit afraid. There's no Divine Protection. There's no Divine Shield. There's no Hellstone. Like, a lot of his cooldowns have burnt through here, and if Mercy and Zipai can reconnect once again with a lot of damage, I feel like they might be able to take him down. Yeah, and they do have a lot of damage available. Mercy needs to be careful, though. He's dropping dangerously low here. Hasgraf has some work to do. He pops out the wings. Next, sending now for a drink, and this is exactly what they're trying to do with the map. And look at that. Next manages to get basically full mana here. So the agents are going to be on a timer. They need to try to somehow get a big, clean setup here and try to take uh, Next down because uh, in terms of uh, mana, they definitely are not going to be winning that one. And uh, Mercy does have that incarnation here, so if they can set something up onto next potentially with that, or if they can find a root beam onto next and try to go after maybe Jamie, that could also be a short way to get to victory here. Mercy already lobbing out the big dam here with that incarnation, but so far not really finding a target, and Ashcraft not going to be able to get any drinks. They go for the Hammer of Justice, but Mercy is way too far away. Swaps is shutting it down. Jamie shutting it down there as well with a beautiful knock. Mercy now in no man's land here in big trouble. Ashcraft connects with the Sacrifice, and they do manage to stay alive there, but for how long is the question right now? They need to get some pressure with this Incarnation. They really wanted to find a big cooldown, and they weren't able to get it, and all of a sudden, Next should be able to deflect some of those kills. He's got these wings. He's got Tears Deliverance rotating back up here as well, so he's going to have a lot of healing, and he's got plenty of mana as well to work with. There it is. Tears Deliverance being casted there for Next as well, so he's going to have some good healing to work with for now, and I think everybody on the side of Admiral Esports are going to be completely fine, but look at Ashcraft. He's hitting up for a drink in the back line. Jamie, he's too slow with interrupting it. Finally gets feared. He trinkets to stop it, but Ashcraft, the damage is done, manages to tie us up here in terms of mana, and that's going to keep the agents here in the fight. Yeah, definitely. Tyrant available, though, for Swapsy. If you can get a big Tyrant off, and it looks like it has been called to the field. Let's see what it's able to get done. Can it actually cast on anyone here? A few casts here on a Mercy, but he jumps down. Going to be line of sighting it, and unfortunately, that Tyrant is not going to be getting much done here in this match. Just a few casts. Observer gets called out, immediately sniped off there by Zipai, doing a really good job at pet management <laughs> here, you know, pest management in this match, and that's really, really <laughs> important against a demonology warlock you can get overwhelmed by these pets but if you manage them perfectly you know you're kiting out the tyrant you're rooting it you're line of sighting it you're taking out the observer really quickly uh you can really pull ahead here against the demonology warlock and stay alive and the agents i feel like have played this match out really nicely so far as sitting down for a drink he has burned through a lot of that mana he was able to pick up but still looking good here in terms of pressure 
Uh, if you got a problem with insects, you can always call Zipai here. He's doing a great <laughs> job so far, just acting as the pesticide of the team. But right now, Jamie dropping down to 50% HP here. Next, spamming out the flash of lights there in the back line. Zipai actually himself taking a lot of damage as well. Asgard channeling out the tears deliverance, manages to get it off. Zipai is blasting out here. Big damage on both of these shamans. Zipai will trade the Astro Shift. And Jamie also just did trade his Astro Shift. So Jamie could be in a lot of trouble here. Jamie getting blasted, 10% HP. So much damage coming out. Jamie will activate the burrow here. Zipai at full health right now. Asgard pushing. He's got the wings ready to go. Next has the Divine Shield going for the Flash of Lights. He gets pummeled here by Askarath. Beautiful interrupt. And Jamie might just die in that interrupt. Mercy blasting off. There is the Lightning Lasso. So much damage. Low Cyclone coming in here onto Jamie. How is oh. Next going to keep him alive? Full Hex onto Swapsy. Big damn. Recyclone oh. connects. They get the Winch here onto Next. But he's spamming out the heals. No Jamie way. is actually able to stay alive. No way. The Gateway coming through for Jamie. But still getting blasted. Lightning Lasso coming out here in the nick of time. And I think Jamie will be able to stay alive next. Working some miracles right there, but a little bit unfortunate there on the recyclone. We're going to see it potentially on a replay there a little bit later. Zipai not getting value oh, of the uh, Earth Shock, but it doesn't matter. Job. Jamie gets absolutely blasted, and the agents are going to win the swing match with Askarath having zero mana left. Oh no, this is a disaster for Admirals Esports. They came in with their map pick, with their composition pick, and they lost. And that gives the, the agents the advantage. If we do go to a game five, this is a very crucial game. I mean, if the agents are going to win any series against Admirals Esports this year, this would definitely be the one to win. And they are looking good so far. The Moonkin Elemental Shaman, I feel like DeFi has been doing such a good job. Uh, there was a few close calls for both sides, but once the agents were able to pick up momentum at the end of the game, we're going to see the cyclone you're talking about. So. It's the follow-up. He actually gets Earthshocked yeah. at the same time as the follow-up cycle. So he might have just dropped right now. Boom, yeah. that Earthshock might have just been lights out. Uh, but you know what? They're able to get it done either way. I mean, next at this point is just so far behind on healing. Really far behind on mana. There's no cooldowns left. And once Zipai and Mercy can kind of reconnect and get that damage rolling once again, Solar Beam onto next. There's no way out of that root Solar Beam. Jamie's just going to be sitting there tanking the damage. Mercy follows it up with the Bash. X tries to get out of it with uh, his trinket, but it's too little too late. And uh, unfortunately, there's nothing he can really trade to keep Jamie alive. Yeah, the agents, man. This is a team that they have been struggling. You know, Azale said it earlier as well. And we, we've we been saying it all season. You can see there the wind shear onto next and the earth shock onto Jamie. Zipai had the game right there, but the recycle, a little bit of miscommunication there uh, between him and Mercy. Uh, luckily for them, it didn't cost them the series or it didn't cost them the game, uh, which potentially could have costed them the series. Uh, and now all of a sudden they're going to win the swing match. But uh, as I was saying, you know, we've been saying it the whole season. We've been saying it, uh, you know, all day long. Uh, you know, Azel as well, a little bit earlier on. Uh, the agents uh, has kind of been on that third tier. You know, Europe has kind of been a three-tier region. You've had, you know, um, the top tier has been Echo. Clear winner, you know, just dominating the region. And then second, it's been Admiral Esports. Uh, and then third, it has been kind of the agents, my way, you know, all those other teams being a little bit more closely matched. But finally, the agents are up in the series. When it counts, elimination match is happening. And I mean, this is just got to be terrible. If you are Admiral Esports, what do you do now? Are you going to swap in Blizzle? What are you going to do? Because the agents will blind lock this composition. They are never going to swap out of this comp. And uh uh, you got some tough decisions to do now uh, on the side of Admiral Esports. W what do you actually do? Do you go to a small map and, I, and bring in Blizzle? I mean, hindsight is obviously twenty twenty, right? But I, I feel like it's it's really weird to me that they didn't just pick a small map and just play Fury Warrior Moonkin. Like every single mm -hmm. game they played on a small map has gone in their favor. Even on the large maps, they're incredibly close to winning. So it's so strange to me that Admiral Esports isn't taking that advantage. Like, why are they going to Ashamane's Fall? Why aren't we seeing like a hook point or like a Ruins of Lordaeron and just bringing in the Fury Warrior, which has been, you know, the thing that's been beating the agents so consistently. So, I mean, that's a bit of a mystery for me. I don't know if Admiral Esports is blundering. Maybe there's something that I don't know, um, but that would be the most obvious pick from the information I have, but they're not going to go with it. They're going with Ashamane's Fall once again, which is a large map. Um, it's also a big pillar map, so if they do go with the Fury Warriors, Zipa is going to have that luxury of actually kiting around, so I really don't know what Admiral's Esports is going to do here. 
guess is as good as mine and uh they are uh, bringing in swapsy oh this is a full mirror right now happening the agents and admiral esports and this is funny because swapsy is the 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 famous inventor of the quote uh, that if he has to play a mirror and you know play better he doesn't want to actually do that he would rather take a matchup where he can play bad and win and, and you know obviously uh he would rather do that so uh, now he's gonna he's kind of forced into that straight up mirror and what a way to end the season here uh, between these two teams it's gonna come down to this big mirror show match yeah i mean it, i don't know it, you no longer have the event I'm, I'm just so confused why they're not playing with blizzo like but they're 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 putting it all on the line here this is it right if they lose this mirror match which uh you know the agents are obviously very warmed up with they have you know the confidence of winning the last two games uh with this with this and yeah we'll see what ends up happening but admiral esports they're gonna have to win in a straight up mirror on ashman's fall if they want to stay alive in this tournament if they lose this dreams of making it into the finals are completely gone they will not get that rematch with echo and it's going to be the agents that takes their place well, this is exciting man like let's let's just put it all out on the line here who, who do you think has the upper hand here in the mirror i'm putting it on the spot then i know you don't like that but it is what it is it's it's championship sunday mm, the advantage in the mirror match i yeah. i i feel like pound for pound if we're gonna do a comparison I, i'd give swapsy a slight edge on the moonkin i'd give yeah. zipa a slight edge on the elemental shaman so that ties it up now asgarath the next um i don't know both of them are have been really solid for their teams I I want I don't know it's so hard that's, <laughs> that's a, a tough, that's a really right? tough one that's a really tough one yeah <laughs> I would say that I want to say they're dead even but you you said you're putting me on the spots I have to favor the agents just because of momentum like I feel like the mental state yeah. of the agents has got to be a lot better like you've won the last two games you're warmed up on this composition everything is looking good for them Admirals Esports their mental state is like oh no like did we mess up by not bringing in Blizzo. Like, okay, I guess we're going to go into a mirror match. Like, maybe they're super confident about it, but um, I, I don't know. On the surface, I feel like I have to favor the agents. I feel like it's it's close. It's way, it's super close. Like, even I would say Jamie and Zipai is super close matchup. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, I, you know, it's not a lot of, of difference there, but I would give just the tiniest edge to Zipai. Uh, in terms of Moonkins, we have seen a little bit more from Swapsy. He's been looking super stellar on that Munkin. So again, I would have to agree with you and, and favor him a little bit. And, and really the tough one here is to call has got to be the healers because next is kind of just like this uh, somewhat of a newcomer. You know, he's been around for one season and this is, I think, his second season competing. And we have seen, you know, uh, quite a lot of versatility from him. We have seen him really perform. But I think this is, you know, the biggest match of his life so far um, in terms of uh, competitions. So... Uh, is that gonna, you know, make a difference here? Because Askarath, he's won BlizzCon. He's already played on the biggest stage. He's already won on the biggest stage. Uh, so you would have to favor maybe the experience there a little bit. Either way, the agents coming in with momentum. Admiral Esports on match point. They're gonna bring it to a straight up mirror here. Who is going to take it right now already? Bolts are flying. Lightning bolts are flying. The cyclones are being cast. Look at that. Jamie and Mercy cycloned exactly at the same time. And uh, Solar Beam actually coming out there onto Swapsy. Shut him down by Mercy. Now Mercy popping his incarnation, looking for the damage onto Swapsy. Not able to find too much. It actually cyclones Swapsy there on his incarnation. Trying to shut Swapsy down as much as possible here with these cyclones and uh, with that Solar Beam earlier on. And now Swapsy finally gets out of that CC, gets a cyclone onto Mercy, and is looking to get some pressure rolling yeah let's see what they can do swapsy right now looking for a cyclone manages to find the second there on mercy hammer justice down to mercy can they get the damage rolling and i don't always look i don't always like looking at like the damage meters for matchups like these as it doesn't always tell the full story of the match but in a wizard matchup like this doing more damage definitely puts your team in an advantageous position so Right now, Swapsy is a little bit ahead of Mercy, and uh, Zipa is a little bit ahead of Jamie. Definitely something to pay attention for, but ultimately it's going to be those crowd control chains and setups that do close out the match. But just one of those things that really contributes to burning the mana of the enemy healer, which can ultimately be a win condition. 
absolutely. Z5 right now, sitting through a, a big lightning lasso there. Ascraft casting out the Tears Deliverance here, just min-maxing while Z5 is sitting through that CC chain and manages to uh, keep him alive there. Full Hex secured onto Z5. And next actually was sitting down for a full drink there, so... Uh, even at 90% mana, just going for these drinks early on. Both of these teams are expecting the matchup to go late, but both of these, uh, you know, uh, wizards on each side are packing some significant burst damage. So if you just mess up for a split second, it could just be all over. And the winner of this, of course, will advance to the grand finals to fight Echo. Uh, well, if the agents win it, and if Admiral Esports. Uh, it can uh, tie us up. We will go to a game number five, so we'll see uh, what they decide to do here. Every single uh, moment matters. Every single global here is uh, going to be heavily considered for these players. Swapsy getting a Blessing of Protection actually out of that bash and going for some crowd control now onto Zipa. Gets a bash into a full Cyclone. Zipa trinkets out. Mercy getting a Cyclone onto Swapsy. Swapsy trinkets out. And now Swapsy looking to get aggressive here. Gets a Cyclone onto Mercy. He's got no trinket. And uh, it's going to be Swapsy pushing in here. Getting aggressive onto Zipa together with Jamie. And you can see here on the damage as well. Swapsy a little bit ahead of Mercy. Zipai, uh, quite a de decent difference between him and Jamie there as well. So uh, kind of what we were talking about with that pound for pound prediction so far. Uh, staying true in terms of damage, but our first uh, big objective being forced there. Ascra forced to trade out that trinket and that lay on hands there as Zipai was dropping dangerously low. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is a crazy wizard matchup between these two compositions. It's a lot of dot damage. It does a lot of burst damage during those cooldowns. So the scariest moments in the match are, of course, going to be when the Elemental Shaman gets some big Ascendance procs and then that incarnation from the Druids. So those are the moments the teams have to really navigate the waters. Uh, Innervate's going to put Paladins ahead in terms of mana. So purging off those Innervate's going to be really, really important. Right now, Swapsy has that rolling. Goes for a Solar Beam here onto Jamie. Or sorry, goes under a Solar Beam onto... Or Mercy gets a Solar Beam onto Jamie. He's trying to slow down that damage a little bit for the time being. So... We'll see how that ends up playing out. But the Root Solar Beam on the Paladin is going to be very effective if they can land it. That's one of those things that can put your team really far ahead uh, with that crowd control, especially if you can follow it up with a Hammer of Justice or a Cyclone. That's the kind of crowd control that's going to force out Divine Shield uh, or just potentially end the game. Yeah, and uh, we'll see Swapsy now sitting through another Lightning Lasso. Jamie sitting through a Cyclone. Mercy, I'm going to get aggressive, get Cyclone there by Swapsy. And Cyclone is going to be such a big spell here in this matchup. Whatever Moonkin can, you know, find offensive Cyclones on the healer and set up the kills, he's going to get a lot of pressure. And whatever Moonkin, most importantly, can uh, get those Cyclones onto the enemy Moonkin, uh, is going to be able to shut him down as well. So uh, definitely going to be big so far. I would say Swapsy has been getting a little bit better uh, and in that exchange compared to Mercy. And you can see it on the damage here as well. But uh, Jamie actually being the victim of a setup. Big damage coming out there. Solar Beam actually onto z -Pi. I believe he was casting a Lava Burst. But z -Pi going for the Hexes here right now. Can he find it is the question. There is Hex Dispels though, of course, with these Druids. So uh, he's not going to be able to do too much. Just maybe slow down Jamie for just a second. If he is able to connect that one, Swapsy trinketing there as well out of a crowd control. Ascraft sitting down for a drink and he manages to get full mana once again. Next is playing that Repentance and is threatening to cast it. There it is. Lightning Lasso into Repentance there on to Ascraft, but it breaks. Unfortunately, they expended a lot to actually get that setup rolling. And here comes Swapsy. Orbital Strike onto Jamie uh, or Orbital Strike onto z -Pi. Uh, But Jamie as well is taking quite a lot of damage here from Mercy. Seize incarnation. Both of these Moonkins just trying to blast the Ellie Shamans. And so far, it is Jamie a little bit on the back foot, but uh, next manages to pick him back up. Nice uh, shock there onto Mercy, and they cycle on him somewhat low there. Swapsy with good control, pushing Zipai here back to the pillar as well. Jamie on one side, Swapsy on one side, trying to blast him out, but Zipai looking for the cycle or looking for the hex there actually. But it's going to be Ascraft actually caught up in a full hex, but it does get dispelled there. Mercy sitting through more and more crowd control. Full bash secured there. And finally, Swapsy now sitting through some crowd control of his own. And both of these Moonkins just trying to shut each other down. But it is Mercy once again on the back foot. Catches some heals there from Ascraft. And Ascraft has that slight mana lead because he has been able to drink twice so far in the match. Yep, the drinks have definitely paid off for him. And you want to be going into full mana at this point in the game. There's a certain point of no return where the probability of you actually being able to drink is extremely low. And we might already be at that point. Look at the pressure here on the Swapsy. This is potentially match point. Keep in mind, if the agents can win this game, they will be going to the grand finals and Admiral's Esports will be eliminated. There's so much on the line in this match. Admiral Esports, they have to win it if they want to stay alive and battle it back. Swapsy looking for pressure, but 
the positioning right now of Mercy, Zipa, and Asgrath is really good, making it extremely difficult for them to get dots on everybody. Like, look at Asgrath, he's just behind the pillar. He's not getting dotted whatsoever, which means he's not afraid to go for those dispels, and he is ahead on mana as a result of that. Topsy right now, finally pushing in, getting a Typhoon here, but Asgard's just going to reposition and just make it an absolute nightmare here for Swapsy to get any damage out. Jamie pushing forward. He's going to be put into a Hammer of Justice. I mean, Asgard's positioning has been 10 out of 10 so far in this game. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, like you mentioned, you know, the, that point of no return in terms of drinking is definitely nearing by here. Asgraf, though, sitting through a swap there, but the Divine Protection will be enough to carry him through it. Next, actually, had an opportunity there maybe to sit down for a quick little sip, but he decided to try to add in a little bit of damage on that setup. And uh, I don't think Next is actually going to be able to drink at this point in time. Zipa actually trinketing out of a cyclone there, dropping quite low. Mercy has pushed in a little bit too deep here. Trinkets out, gets his root solar beam there onto Next. They're getting aggressive onto Jamie Mercy, feeling very very confident here and he will be able to force out some cooldowns here but at the same time jamie what is he going to do right now dropping very very low it's getting very unstable so much damage coming out here from z5 and from mercy another wind shear connects there onto mercy slowing him down for just a split second ice fury coming out here for z5 cyclones coming out by mercy onto swaps he tries to cyclone the trinket but swaps he trinketing out after this, the recast and gets a cyclone onto mercy instead really nicely played there does not get cyclone on his trinket and now jamie pushing in looking for the crowd or looking for the damage next had to use his bubble in that exchange and major defensives are starting to be forced here 40 percent dampening anybody could just fall over it could be swapsy could be mercy as well ascraft saves the day with the sacrifice swapsy how are we going to stay alive right now he tries to push mercy back there with the typhoon but not able to find it gets a bash onto mercy instead into a full cyclone here potentially but zipa is there to deflect it swapsy trying to get it but mercy outranging it right now doing a great job here on the moonkin and that will be the sacrifice of next saving the day here onto swapsy and swapsy now looking for blood yeah, let's see what he can do. He gets interrupted there on the Cyclone. Mercy just trying to slow down the damage. Full Hammer of Justice lands here. Zipai trying to get a lot of pressure out. Casting out the Lab Verse. Going for a full Hax. Can he land it here? Doesn't look like he's going to be able to. Double Cyclone coming in. Cyclone onto Swapsy. Cyclone onto Zipai at the same time. Lightning Lasso now on Jamie. As pulling ahead at this point in the game could be irrecoverable or unrecoverable for both of these Paladins. But... So far, they've done a great job navigating the game. I would say Asgrath is slightly ahead, having his Trinket and his Divine Shield. The Agent's in a prime position to win this match and eliminate Admiral's Esports. Admiral's Esports are going to have to make a power play here and try to force some cooldown overlaps. Let's see if they have the burst damage, they have the crowd control to actually get it done. Swapsy now in a bash, immediate blessing and protection. They do not want to mess around. They do not want to allow the Agents to get any more momentum. Right now, the Agents, they are on the back foot. Admiral's Esports is looking good. At the same time, though, Swapsy is getting absolutely blasted here by Zipai. This is so back and forth here, Zico. It's such a stressful type of matchup. Oh, what a nice knock there by Zipa. He goes for the Lightning Lasso there onto Swapsy, but hey, they do manage to shut it down there. Jamie is there, ready with the wind shear. And now Jamie with a double knock here onto Ascraft and Zipa, knocking them out into the clutches of Swapsy. Next, pushing in, finds the Hammer of Justice onto Ascraft. He's going to bubble out of that one. Mana's not looking good for Ascraft. Man, Mana actually slightly in a lead here for next. Sacrifice will connect here for next, but not a lot of cooldowns left on either side. That Divine Shield really was the final cooldown that both of these Paladins had. And now all of a sudden, it's going to be all about the damage, all about the pressure. Mercy with the incarnation active. z pushing back to the pillar here. He has the astral shift on the side of Jamie. z still 42 seconds remaining here. Jamie pushing in, feeling confident with that astral shift, but it might be a bit of a throw here. Jamie getting a little bit too aggressive there. Maybe Mercy, though, behind enemy lines right now, looking for the uh, bash onto next, looking for the cyclones onto next. He gets rebuked there, and all of a sudden, Mercy needs to be very, very careful here. Swapsy going for the cyclones onto z gets cycloned by Mercy. Mercy blasting off right now onto to Jamie and Jamie's still holding on to that astral shift does not want to be using it too early trying to hold on to it for the perfect uh, moment because that is likely going to be his final defensive cooldown of this game so deep into dampening right now Mercy once again in a full cyclone Swapsy looking to take control next working with fumes Ascraft same thing for him Mercy dropping very very low Zipai as well the Admiral Esports are pushing in for the win but Swapsy not feeling super confident here as well gonna catch a couple of heals here from next Jamie on one side Swapsy on one side gets Hammer of Justice and once again, they are going to be repositioning on the side of the agents, looking for those heals, looking for that recovery. But they need to find that pressure. Still 38 seconds remaining here for that incarnation. And Swapsy is actually going to have Ooh. his in 30 seconds. So a little bit of a lead right there. Zipai almost ah. going down there, though. 
It's so stressful for both of these Paladins. 60% dampening at this point in the game. Admirals Esports, they have to hold on. They need to win this game to stay alive. Jamie really pushing forward here, trying to get the damage rolling onto Zipai and Mercy. Next mana is looking good, though. He was able to recover a little bit. He's ahead of Asgrath at this point in the game. Swapsy, though, at 50% health. And if you take too much burst damage at this point in the game, there is no recovering. And like you said, Swapsy, he has that Orbital Strike available. He can put out a lot of pressure here in a moment. He just needs to pick that moment, get a Cyclone out, and just go for it. Here it is, Bash on Mercy. The damage is incoming here for Swapsy, but it gets caught into a Hammer of Justice. He may have overextended behind the pillar. Both of these Moonkins could fall. We could see a cross kill. The Cyclone lands here by Mercy, who's desperately trying to stay alive. Swapsy wants to close out the game, but he's in a Cyclone, and now he is getting attacked here by Zipai. He's in a lot of trouble. Asgrath rotting down. He does not have the healing in Admiral's Esports. They do it at 66% dampening. They stay alive. They go into the mirror match, and they tie up this series the amount of confidence right now from admiral esports to lock in the straight up mirror and out mirror the agent what an insane performance here and i gotta give a lot of credit to next i feel like i feel like next he wasn't able to find those drinks too much in the matchup but still kept up his mana tried to stay ahead on cooldowns just did an all-around great job i mean look at the mana right now here at 63 percent dampening a little bit before those kills happen next able to tie us up or actually get a huge lead rather in terms of mana working with like 35 percent at this point towards as compared to Ascraft's like five or ten percent and uh, i think that's a big reason to why they're able to close it out so they hodge swaps it they knock him back they try to go for the kill here mercy He's got nothing left he goes for the cyclone on low hp sacrifice comes through and then they swap to Ascraft here during that sacrifice getting him quite low there you can see uh, jamie lobbing out a little bit of damage there towards Ascraft. so he's forced to go behind the pillar he's forced to heal up there a little a bit tries to heal up mercy but just not enough left here in the tank dampening is too high the pressure is too high admiral esports do it and we are going all the way to game number five then i mean we'll have it no other way between these two teams right the agents admiral esports just slugging it out deep in dampening just picking up those little tiny advantages i, I can't believe it admiral's esports they got to be super thrilled with themselves after that one now do you think the big question for me is, are we going to a mirror match again? Like, are we just going into a straight up Moonkin Elemental Shaman uh, mirror match? Or is there something else the agents can do? Like, let, let's pretend, like, what, what mm. if Mercy gets off the Moonkin and now he goes Demonology Warlock? <laughs> 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 that would actually be really BM. They just lock in Mugambala. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, that's, a, that's an option, but also they could go with the Outlaw Rogue, so uh outlaw oh, yeah. rogue is pretty good into wizards and they have that in their back pocket you know they have brunhiri there uh we saw brunhiri as well on the windwalker don't think you want to be maybe okay it looked like you had, just had like a big like light bulb like oh it's crazy over your head i don't know i'm not that i'm not that bright <laughs> but i was just like uh, <laughs> I, I i feel like yeah the agents winning that swing match puts them in such a prime position admiral's esports do they get baited into playing the moonkin ellie on enigma and then the agents bring in the outlaw rogue like definitely a possibility so maybe the yeah, admiral's esports tries to stay one step ahead of them they bring in blizzo once again uh, i feel like this is a really interesting draft yeah i mean that, that's the thing I, I, do you pick blizzo here because i feel like the outlaw rogue would have a good time in this matchup so th that's the thing as well you know the agents this is one of their main comps so they know what beats it and uh, if they have that available then uh, you bet that they're going to pick it. So Admiral Esports definitely going to need to take their time here with this draft and, and really try to figure out um, what they actually want to do here uh, because this is their final draft of the tournament, potentially. Uh, but uh, they it. don't even hesitate. They're going for it full on. Munkin, Ellie, they're going to ride it all the way through here. And, uh, you know, this is... Uh, <laughs> This one match is going to decide, you know, if you get 40 grand, potentially 70 grand. So uh, it, it takes a lot of uh, confidence to actually lock that in and just say, you know what, we're going mirror, outlaw, whatever you have, we're ready. Uh, the agents, they have a difficult choice ahead of them now. What do they do? Do they bring in the outlaw rogue? Do they go into a straight up mirror match? I personally would like to see the mirror match. I just feel like shows confidence from both teams and it's as even as it gets right like both teams just have to play a good game uh th there's no question of who's playing a better composition nothing like that it's just the better team wins better players win so we'll see 
Um, but the agents, if they have an advantage, they should definitely take it. Like this is a competition. So <laughs> if they can't play a composition that's going to win, they should definitely do it and take advantage of that swing map win. Um, we'll see. They got about less than a minute here. This is going, this is the final game, right? This is the one that concludes the series. This is the one that shows, you know, who Echo is going to be playing against in the finals. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very intense match. Like you said, there's a lot of money on the line for this one. Absolutely. And also the medals, you know, we got the bronze medal versus the silver medal, potentially even the gold medal, uh, you know, uh, for these players here. And that's the, that's exactly they what, do it. No way. No <laughs> I way. You, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> That's actually so troll. The agents are going to lock in the same matchup that Admiral Esports locked in to counter and the lost. agents and lost. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. So, Maybe imagine after the, the game, agent... they're saying, how do you lose? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's even more confident than locking in the mirror. You're like, you know yeah. what? We're going to lock in the, the, the thing that you thought countered us and lost with. So. Uh, if you're not looking in the mirror, this definitely does show a lot of confidence. I mean, if you're Mercy, though, like, I mean, Mercy is pretty good Warlock, right? Like, that's the thing. Pretty good. I like Swapsy. Like... No, sorry, Swapsy's not a bad. No, I was going to say Swapsy's not a bad Warlock, but I, I feel like you, I feel like it wouldn't be crazy to say that Mercy probably has the edge Warlock versus Warlock against Swapsy, yeah. and Swapsy has the edge Boomkin versus Boomkin. So maybe you're just yeah. trying to take advantage of that fact. I completely agree, but I also feel like the last game kind of came down a little bit to Holy Pilot Diff. I'm not going to lie. Like, Asgraf, he's been super stellar in this entire series, but that last game, I feel like Next was kind of popping off. So uh, we'll see. It, it might just come down to that as well. So everybody's going to really need to step it up right now because both of these uh, you know sides can win. We've seen the Munkin Ellie win, and obviously I don't think the Agents and Admiral Esports are locking in the Warlock version uh, just because, you know... Uh, they want to lose so i'm pretty sure that uh, you know it is a winning matchup for them as well so uh, anybody can take it here enigma crucible uh, going to be uh, the final map of the series as well it is a it's a very nice map actually this is my favorite new map uh, you know it has a big pillars it has you know a lot of big places uh, you know a lot of it's a big map you know a lot of movement uh, that you can do on this map you know a lot of room to kite so um, I like this map a lot, and uh, I, I feel like it's a it's a great uh, map to have this uh, kind of final wizard showdown on. Definitely a good wizard map, that's for sure. So, which wizards will come out ahead? Is it going to be the Demonology Warlock Mercy, the Agents locking in Demonology Warlock Elemental Shaman very confidently for the final game of this series? One thing is for sure, there's no turning back after this one. If you lose this, you are eliminated. So the pressure could not be higher for Admirals Esports and the Agents. Both these teams obviously want to win. Both these teams obviously want to get to the Grand Finals and have their shot against Echo. So may the best team win. Yeah, may the best team win right now. There's no more guessing. We've seen all the cards. They're all on the table. And uh, it's going to be so exciting to see actually who takes this one. And if you are Echo, I mean, this is just the best seed in the house, right? You're just already in the grand finals. You're just waiting for your opponent. And you get to see all of their different options, you know, unfold before you. You just know, okay, if they play this, this is what we're going to play. If they play that, that's what we're going to play. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see here. Uh, what uh, that matchup is going to look like and who is actually going to be able to uh, get that, uh, you know, revenge match against them. But right now, game number five, Admiral Esports versus the Agents. Game number five, winner takes it all. Loser will go home. Who is it going to be? Admiral Esports right now uh, kind of uh, had the series in the bag. They were up and then they lost the swing match. And now it is the Agents with the counter pick here, bringing in Mercy on the Warlock. Uh, which is his main class so uh, he's definitely gonna need to perform here on that on that one and uh, we'll have to see right now tyrant already being called into the battlefield big damage coming out here from mercy and uh, that tyrant doesn't look like he's actually cryo controlled i think they rooted it maybe with a frost shock there in the back line but uh, so far it is going to be able to actually blast off there you see swaps it does take a couple of hits from it and and now it will be finally fading. So a little bit of value on that first Demonic Tyrant. But still, uh, if uh, the previous matches are anything to go by, we are most likely going to be going to Dampening. And the name of the game is going to be to try to force as much cooldowns before we get to that point and try to burn as much mana before we get to that point.
Yeah, definitely. Mercy right now just going to be portaling away. He's taking some pressure, but Azgrath should be able to easily heal through. That's going to be the Dark Pact coming in for a little bit of an absorb shield, but Mercy is getting blasted. I do not like this positioning so far. The agents, they need to try to separate just a little bit. Azgrath's going to be gating away as he realizes, you know, being clumped up like that against the Elemental Shaman Moonkin is not ideal, but a very confident push there by Admiral's esports as they're looking to get the pressure rolling early on. Azgrath's mana is looking good. Next is a little bit behind, but seems to be a theme. Like, Azgrath always has the early mana lead and then slowly falls behind in the late game. So we'll see if he can try to get that advantage um, if it does get to that point. Yeah, and uh, we'll see uh, exactly how that plays out. But right now, Mercy needs to be a little bit careful here. It does drop quite low. Nice static field. Totem there coming out from Jamie. Getting aggressive. They got a Cyclone there onto Ashcraft as well. Mercy feeling the pressure here, but actually not going to be trading anything. Demonic Tyrant coming out here for Mercy. Big damage potential. They root the Tyrant, but Jamie is taking a couple of hits from it there. And uh, that Demonic Tyrant looking very sad in that root. Finally gets another shot off. So... Uh, they ha are disrespecting it somewhat. Jamie is line of signing it a little bit, and they actually swap target with it to Swapsy. Swapsy does take a couple of hits there. Hell Funnel coming out onto Mercy's Felguard, and uh, making sure that you keep those Felguards alive is definitely important. If you are playing that Demo Warlock, it is one of the win conditions here as well. So you're going to uh, notice Mercy uh, potentially using Eye of Kilrog and using that Health Funnel to reposition and heal his pets right now, teleporting behind the pillar. Askaf sitting through a full Repentance. And Zipai could actually be in a little bit of trouble. He's left in the midfield. Full Cyclone out of that Repentance. Swaps is looking for it, but doesn't manage to find it. He goes for it onto Zipai instead. And actually swapping to Asgrath here. Big damage coming out there, but I don't think they have a stun for Asgrath at this point. He was able to just heal through that. And so far, mana lead for Asgrath. Next, he's going to need to find something here for later on in the game because so far, if these games are anything to go by the previous ones, we are going to go to deep dampening and it will be decided potentially on mana. So, and next, actually sitting down right now for a drink with that in mind. Was not able to get any mana there. They were able to force him to stop there, but uh, it's good that he's looking for them. Next, though, it did cost him his lay on hands, th that attempt. Yep, Zipai repositioning here to the midfield, trying to get those flame shocks rolling and get that pressure up. Is he going to be knocking Swapsy away? Swapsy just chasing him down, looking for a Cyclone immediate wind shear there by Zipai. Nicely done. Going for a huge amount of burst. Can he actually find it? Doesn't look like he just yet. That's going to be a full repentance channel out there by next, but he gets caught into a full fear for looking for that crowd control. Jamie, though, taking a lot of damage. He's going to be very careful. Like we said, we kind of expect this game to go deep into dampening, but if either of these Paladins slip up, if either of these team members, you know, miss position or they disrespect some of the damage that's incoming, uh, you can definitely get deleted really fast in a matchup like this. So I have to be careful. It's a very intense matchup. It's a, it's a, it's an endurance matchup for these teams, right? Like this is mentally taxing having to pay attention to so much for so long in these series. But if you do slip up. Uh, the game and the series is obviously going to slip right out of your fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is game number five. This is when the stakes are as high as possible. And uh, this is when mistakes happen. This is when uh, we've seen players in the past crumble. So they're going to need to keep their heads uh, level-headed here. Or see sitting through a full Cyclone at half HP. Can he set up out of this maybe? Obviously, it looks like he wants to find some crowd control there, but Mercy with beautiful repositioning there. So he teleports behind the pillar, and then he gateways back to his teams instead of forcing Ascraft there to reposition. And now Swaps is getting blasted here in an Axe Toss. Big damage there coming out from Mercy and Zipai. Good punish. That's going to be the Bark Skin from Swapsy coming out. And Jamie has just been chasing Ascraft basically for the last like two minutes, just running at him, uh, trying to bully him as much as possible. And uh, for the first time, I would say in this, uh, well, since Jamie was tagged in, he's actually beating Zipai on damage. So that's really good here for Admiral Esports. Mercy dropping down to half HP once again, teleports away from the orbital strike. Cheers Deliverance for Asgrath. Big healing coming out. Zipai finds the hex onto Jamie, looking for the damage here onto Swapsy and Jamie. Zipai basically being kind of the tank for the team. Nice knock there by Zipai onto Swapsy, but he's going to be able to jump right back in a two range of next there and catch a couple of heals and now root beam does come out here onto mercy as well as Asgraf, but Asgraf does manage to avoid it and uh, it is going to be z now sitting through a cyclone felguard has been summoned there so that was the fell domination there for mercy so if they kill that next path mercy is going to be a big big target here for admiral esports as well so i uh, definitely need to keep track of that as well and admiral esports Looking very confident in the matchup right now, but there is one big weakness of their composition. They don't have that mortal strike effect 
which the Felguard brings for the Warlock. And as a result, they will fall behind on mana if they can't make any of these setups really force anything major. Yeah, we'll see what they can do. Just back and forth pressure for both of these teams at this point. z down to about 50% health. He's going to be looking to reposition and get back to Asgrath, who's forced to trade up the Sacrifice on this Lightning Lasso. Observer is going to be traded out, but that thing died instantly. Now it's going to be Jamie on pest control on this one, just taking down those pets and really getting control of all that demonology warlock damage z though in some trouble needs to be careful static field totem going to be used there by jamie who is very confident in this push admirals esports are they going to be able to battle it back and actually win this series make it into the finals or is the agents going to be able to stomp out those dreams i mean just look at the history between these two teams this season admirals esports has been way ahead this is the best performance we've seen from the agents so far they can win this it would be very impressive Admirals Esports, this is, of course, going to be a very difficult matchup for them as dampening is getting higher and higher. z down to about 50% health, caught into a Cyclone. Nicely done there by Swapsy, just getting control of the match, but he's getting blasted back to the pillar. Need to be very careful. It's going to be so crucial that they don't get hit by these Tyrants. Look at the Tyrant right now, just blasting Jamie. It is going to subside and fade. They managed to weather the storm with just the Astral Shift and Sacrifice. Still, though, making some big cooldown trades to stay alive. Yeah, and uh, Swapsy is going to need to stay alive as well. He's got no bark screen right now, but he does have Incarnation, and he is getting aggressive here onto Zipai. Zipai dropping to half HP there. Sacrifice will trade for Asgarath, and Mana once again slowly getting in favor of Nexus. Actually, sitting down for a drink right now. Do they have any way of stopping it? Zipai jumps in, gets the Earthquake there, and Next is going to be able to get a little bit of mana there, and even a little bit at this point is massive, and Asgarath right now is getting out mana here by Next. They're going to need to find some pressure. Asgarath sitting through a full Hammer of Justice into a full Repentance. Fire Control come, comes through, and he's going to have to trinket that. Jamie, though, getting blasted right now. Super low HP. Going to activate the Burrow here to buy his healer. A little bit of time here, but Next also getting swapped to. Next, helping himself out there with the wings but jamie's still not out of the woods yet half hp at the pillar finally does catch a couple of heels and look at Ascraft immediately here looking for the drinks here behind the pillar and swapsy uh, is going to be able to chase him down there as well tears to rivers coming out full bash onto Ascraft. they're looking to take down mercy they're looking to take down zipai they don't find the follow-up cyclone there onto Ascraft though he actually will use his divine shield there and he did find the follow-up cyclone and they forced out major defensives admiral esports are spending blood in the water and they're looking to take this down here so far it's looking good for them 44 percent dampening none of these healers are going to be able to drink next with a decent mana lead here as tyrant. well and i uh, think they can do it demonic tyrant though is out it's free casting and it is free casting onto jamie one bolt two bolts big damage but finally they do manage to connect with the cyclone there onto the tyrant by swaps he's going to recycle on it as well there for good measure root beams it as well swaps really investing a lot there to shut down the tyrant but it is deep into dampening zipai getting absolutely blasted here the burrow comes through for zipai jamie's all over him though he might just go down here ask him what's it now for a drink though that zipai did uh, buy him a little bit of time with the burrow and now all of a sudden the agents have a little bit of a mana lead but it's not looking good in terms of cooldowns it is so back and forth and this is the point of no return swapsy getting aggressive with the orbital strike getting the damage rolling here for his team but asgrath managing to top off everybody at the same time though swapsy is taking quite a bit of damage zipai just trying to reposition trying to pull away mercy gets caught into the cyclone Zipai going for a little bit of a defensive lightning lasso here, just trying to slow down the offense here from Admiral's Esports. We are almost at that point of no return. 50% dampening. It is a permanent sharpened blade on everybody. These Paladins are going to have to put in work, and it becomes a game of doing the most damage you can while avoiding as much damage as possible. And Zipai just Z -Fi! cannot avoid the damage. Earth Shock lands by Jamie. Zipai holds on by a thread, but is it going to be enough? Healing Surge comes in. Admirals Esports, they want to close it out, and they do. They battle it back here on match point, and they earn their spot in the finals. Unbelievable amount of pressure. Jamie turns it on in the final game. Manages to out DPS Zipai in this one. Gets the big pressure. Swapsy pushing in there as well. And uh, you gotta say, you know, going for that drink a little bit earlier on for Ascraft, it costed them a little bit. It costed them that bubble, it costed them the burrow, it costed them, you know, a lot of cooldowns. And all of a sudden, 
the uh, Admiral Esports are able to kind of find a punish, and I do believe this is uh, right after that moment here. So Zipai getting blasted here, takes a lot of damage, goes behind the pillar, Mercy, uh, using that demonic gateway to get to him as well. Swapsy finds the Cyclone, they find the Lightning Lasso, they find the Axtos there onto Swapsy, but here Swapsy pushes in, getting very, very aggressive. He's got the Incarnation uh, rolling here as well. Hammer of Justice connects onto Ascaroth, they have no way out of that one. Zipai trying to counter pressure, Jamie with a beautiful grounding totem, and they Cyclone up Zipai here as well, and now here comes the counter pressure nice static for totem by jamie pulls him out there in the midfield and they get the wind shear there onto Ascraft. Ascraft gets the heal there uses the stone form to get out of the solar beam but it's just not enough here zipai trying to keep himself alive but it's not enough there's nothing left in the tank dampening is too high no emergency cooldowns really to keep him going and uh, admiral esports man what a team. They brought back the mirror. They forced the agents off of their elemental Munkin. And uh, this was a, quite the series, man. It started with, you know, Admiral Esports dominating with that warrior Munkin. Then it was the agents coming in with the Ellie Munkin. And then it was Admiral Esports who turned it on its head, took the entire series and turned it on its head. And uh, winning that mirror match was just super key as well. Having the confidence to lock it in, especially when you just lost the game as well, it just shows the caliber of this team. That was such an intense series. Just so back and forth. Lots of confidence coming in from these teams with their picks as well during the draft. But ultimately, it is going to be Admirals Esports who does come out ahead, and they are going to get that rematch with Echo. And I mean, this has kind of been their theme, right? Like this has been happening to them time after time after time so far this season at all the cup stages. They go down to the lower bracket, they battle it back, they get to the finals. Now the question is, is this time going to be different? Is this the time they can actually beat Echo? Yeah, that is definitely a question. That was a really hard fought series from Admirals Esports. I, I hate being like, you know, by myself during those moments because good, Good gosh, that was so hype in that last moment there. It was really thinking the agents were going to pull that off. But that means Admirals Esports, they are in the grand finals up against Echo. You guys already said it. It is going to be a rematch. It might be the rematch that um, is the ticket for Admirals Esports. Can they do it is for sure the question. But before we get into that, before we head to a break to get to that series, we do have a another segment for you guys and this time we'll, we will be voting for the best newcomer for the awc and i think the twitch poll is live if you want to participate in that one the one we just did earlier on was best live lord and now it's best newcomer so do you guys either of you have a, a favorite for this one uh, well we have our nominees we got to talk about those right yeah yeah favorite out uh, of the so nominees i guess all right, so our nominees are Next, Shaz, Manzel, and Saul. Um, I'm not going to say my vote yet. Uh, what do you guys think? Sorry, I stole your job there for a sec, Aya. No, I, <laughs> I should have been reading that. You're absolutely right. I thought they were on the screen for some reason. I think I'm going to vote for Next, though. Okay, I, th yeah, I, no, I think that's... that's an easy out, but I'm going to vote for Next. Ben? Solid choice. I mean, all, all, all of them uh, are looking good. I mean, Saul and the Enhancement Shaman really stepped up for his team. I like the fact that Shaz is there as well. Um, I think I would go for Shaz just because when nobody was playing Paladin, he came in that fourth cup and with his team was able to make it, you know, the dream run um, and actually make it into the gauntlet. So my vote's going to be for Shaz. Um, hadn't, I really hadn't heard too much of him before then, but uh, definitely some really impressive plays. Yeah, the fact that he was able to uh, kind of beat Brain, when even when Brain didn't really necessarily think that Paladin was that good and Brain was playing Resto Shaman, uh, to bring in a Holy Paladin and actually beat him and have that dream run that F tier did. Unfortunately, they didn't make it to uh, you know the actual finals here, but they had a good run in the gauntlet. They had a good run in that cup. And the, the effects of F tier are still being felt through, even today, you know, 10 years from now, we're still going to feel the effects of what F tier was able to do that weekend. So, so uh, you know, Shaz, definitely a very impressive player that I had never heard of even uh, before then. So uh, I'm obviously going to go with next with that in mind. Okay. And I think um, it looks like next is also winning the chat favorite at 70%. And then for second place, we've got 
Saul. So congratulations to Next. He is the best newcomer for this AWC season. Thank you everyone for voting. And if you'd like to participate in some more of those categories, those AWC awards, you can stick around for the next one. And then with that, we are going to head to a break. We have a huge series coming up here. Definitely stick around for this one. We will be right back in just a moment.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are now in the grand finals for the European region. Echo, Admirals Esports, all of their hard work has come to this moment right here. It's best of seven. Admirals Esports, Eco, they are for sure coming in this as the underdog. But honestly, they've had an incredible couple of ga games for this past weekend, and this just might be their chance to prove everyone wrong. Yeah, this is going to be a rematch here between Admiral Esports and Echo. Uh, they were, you know, sent down to that lower bracket by Echo, where they had that gruesome battle that we just saw against the agents. They narrowly won that one, had to pull out all the fireworks and all the stops to uh, actually win that one. And now they get their finally long awaited rematch here against Echo. And for Echo, it's been pretty smooth sailing so far in the tournament and in the season. So. This is Admiral Esports' final chance here to actually dethrone Echo. The question is, what do they have prepared? What can they do? And uh, what have they actually, uh, you know, learned from their last meeting against Echo? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, we've seen the the bra You could you could copy and paste the semifinal final portion of this bracket and just put it on almost every single cup this season. This has been a match we've seen so many times. Echo loses, Admirals loses to Echo in the semifinals. They go to the lower bracket, back up to the finals, and then they have a rematch. But I mean, this is a different month, basically. It's been quite some time since this has happened. This is the finals. We've had some, you know, patch changes. We've had a lot of matches between the last time here. So, and, and you know, we've got $300,000 on the line here for both of these teams. So there's a lot of pressure and I, I just think that this could be the day. So personally, Ven, or Super Tease, I am, I'm rooting for Admirals here. Yeah, I mean, there's only you know one opportunity to be the Dragonflight Season 2 champion of Europe, and this is it. We've had a patch change. We've had some balance changes. So it's definitely giving the best opportunity to Admirals Esports, and they're one of the few teams to actually take games off of Echo in the past out of all the European teams. So I, I, I could say confidently that I think they're likely going to be the biggest challenge for them, but it's just been Echo's tirade for the entire season. They've just owned every single tournament. So this is their last chance their last opportunity they're basically going to be doubling their money they're going to be getting that nice shiny gold medal uh in the middle if they can manage to upset this situation oh. but it is david versus goliath right here in the finals right oh, you're going to start quoting the, eminem for a second how come the, <laughs> the gold one says north america on it like it says first place north america third place europe well what's because we know north america uh, number is better one. than eu what do you mean north, <laughs> yeah and he's better than eu zico what do you mean uh, uh, I Two guess, against one here. You can't, you can't know what the stand on. Help, chat. I'm outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're the EU. Type one for Zico NA, here. two for EU, and we'll know for two sure. Three for EU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. One for, let's redo that. One for NA, three for EU. Uh, uh. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, but uh, also, can I, can I just say how far we've progressed with these medals first of all they're really cool they're dragon flight but the first time that we had a finals from home pretty sure it was d machine that took it like laid them out on his coffee table and took a picture of them and that was the ones that ended up on the broadcast and now we have this like <laughs> beautiful graphic they all look all nice but you make do with what you have no no flame at all but i mean those are some lovely medals and i'm sure those players will be excited to take those home along with their share of the prize pool so i you know either admirals or or echo will get at least second with this matchup and it's also like i said it's best of seven and admirals esports i mean zico they just played a pretty long and grueling series against the agents i mean do you think that they're going to be dealing with a little bit of just you know tiredness from that that first series I mean, uh, that's the thing, right? Uh, you either got to be really, really hyped. You just beat the agents. You were down. You managed to bring it back. And you are fired up and ready to go here. And you're excited about that you already made second and potentially you might even make first right now. And you have the chance to do so. Some people might get carried on by that momentum. And for sure, at least in the first game, that could, that could help you, right? Um, but at the same time... Uh, you just played a really, really long series as well. Because those games, that was, you know, it went all the way to game five. I think it was actually our first game five of the weekend. Um, and uh, those were also pretty long individual matches, you know, 50, 60% dampening. And 
uh, after playing for that long, that's when, you know, we're all human. At some point, uh, you're going to be tired. You're going to space out. You're going to make a couple of mistakes. And uh, this is the grand finals. There's no more chances here. There is so much money on the line. We got the medals on the line. We got everything on the line. If you want to be called the European champion, this is the series that you have to win. So, uh, and these players, obviously, they don't just want to uh, come to the finals. They want to win the entire year so. Uh, this is really where you have to step it up and uh, you know we we just gave uh, next as well the MVP award for newcomer he's played a season before this one um, but he's still kind of a newcomer compared to everybody else in these uh, teams um, and uh, this is you know his absolutely biggest match that he's ever played so uh, this is no time for nerves next he played an insane um, lower bracket final and he's gonna need to keep that up now in the grand finals Yep, let's see if they can keep it up here. We're going into game number one. This is it, the moment these guys have been waiting for. It is the grand finals for the European region, AWC season two. All right, this time does not come around often. You do not want to miss it here. Who's going to be the champions of Europe? Met and Raikou and Waz are just stepping in right away with the classic Rogue Mage Priest. Admirals Esports are starting with the same comp that they start the previous series in the semifinals, which is that Beast Mastery Hunter, Death Knight, and Paladin. And this is a composition that can run a mage down, one of the most difficult compositions to kite in the game. So Raikou is going to have to be on point in this matchup. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, we've seen this matchup actually before. Uh, this is what Admiral Esports led with um, in the upper bracket final when they did face uh, off here uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, we'll have to see exactly what they can do here. It didn't look too good. Jamie did go down in that one. And we'll see if Jamie can actually stay alive here. The RMP already getting the setup here. Full fear on to next full sheep. Arcane Surge coming out from Raikou. Looking for the damage. Scatter shot onto Waz, though. Good shutdown here onto Raikou as well with the counter shot. And Raikou still looking for the Arcane Surge. Gets uh, asphyxiated on it, actually. Big Dragon's Breath there by Raikou. And he's going to go into that Greater Invis. Give him a couple of seconds there where he won't be taking too much damage. And now Raikou is on the back foot. All the time is used here. And he's trying to buy a little bit of space between himself and the rest of the team. He's going to alter back now to Matt. Matt in that spirit of the Redeemer should be able to pick Raikou back up. So far, great defense between Raikou and, and Ma, but that's going to be the Guardian Spirit. Displacement comes back out there, and uh, now full fear onto next. Jamie could be in trouble, Sid. Yeah, let's see if he can survive. Well, next is in crowd control. No medallion for himself, but Raikou is getting pressured by Swapsy. Swapsy just doing so much damage to Raikou time and time again, cutting through the temporal. They're racing the temporal a bit here. Raikou holds on, and with Ray of Hope, he's going to be stable as Met is dumping in big heals to keep him topped and keep him aggressive onto Jamie. They need to try and find a polymorph onto next as soon as possible, but instead they grip oh. Raikou out on the stun. Beautiful grip play from Meh there to deny the freezing trap. They stun Jamie. They stall. Defensive Ring of Frost to hit all of those pets, but they grip Raikou Raikou away from the Ring of Frost. He's stunned in the middle of the map. Jamie is going for crowd control. They get the Freezing Trap onto men. Now they need damage. Where is the pressure? Raikou's just not taking any damage right now. Frost Nova onto the whole team. Swaps so he going to break free. He gets put into a Polymorph. Met is into a stun. He's trying to sit through this. Raikou displaces back. Waz is trying to take control, but he gets double blinded. Raikou's alone behind the pillar looking for crowd control. He finds it at 30% health. He goes aggressive and finds a sheep. He's going for the kill onto Jamie. Are they ready to trade? They drop the anti magic shield. And it looks like with that defense and a blessing protection that Jamie should survive in this instance. They be careful though. Raikou immediately spell steals that blessing of protection. I think Jamie, they, they're going to need to cancel those blessing of protections in the future because their damage is just going to completely stop if Raikou is able to do that frequently. MVP plays from, I, from Riker right there. They force out the anti-magic zone. They force out the bubble. And already the human racial there from next. They could actually swap to next and try to take him down. But right now, man, sitting through the diamond dice. Kidney shot there. Connects onto Jamie. And they don't find any CC just yet. Onto next. Cheap shot into a full fear. Jamie in a lot of trouble. Aspect of the turtle is going to come out here for Jamie. Full sheep out of that fear. Onto next. If Riker can find another resheep here, they could potentially take Jamie down through that turtle. Can they find it? They do find a resheep. And Jamie gets absolutely deleted here. Echo takes Game number one in quick fashion. I was not expecting Waz to be top on the damage meter, dude. What? Waz is actually <laughs> top with a Death Knight and a BM Hunter in the game, and even like an arcade. Like Waz is top damage. Just kept the pressure up, kept going, kept pushing, kept going, kept pushing. In these final moments, I feel like it was a, a bit of a blunder on on the part of Admirals Esports. I think they overlapped Aspect of the Turtle and Anti Magic Shield. So Swapsy is playing the Spell Warden so that he can use Anti Magic Shield on his allies. And overlapping those, just you know, it could have staggered the defense a little bit longer and potentially about time for Next to get out of crowd control. But even despite the pressure put onto Raikou, he was constantly getting crowd control on the Paladin, and that's 
here. Wind condition when fighting against the Holy Paladin. Mess sets up this fear out of the stun, and this is the overlap. You see the anti-magic shield inside of the aspect of the turtle that absorbs not really getting any value um, in that defense, and then both of them fall at the same time, and he just immediately gets erased. Met is lining up big damage onto him as well, um, and there's no way he's going to survive. He tries to fake his own death with a feigned death at 1%. But they're not falling for it. Arcane Barrage comes through and will close it out. And Next was in this weird position where it's like he's got a trinket, but there's like seven other crowd controls waiting for him uh, to get back, just immediately CC him again. Yeah, and uh, Riker actually sent his Arcane Surge into the turtle just to get that big you know, boost of spell damage that you get from that Arcane Surge, just to get that extra spell power. Uh, so as soon as that turtle ends, he's going to have that big hit of damage on his missiles. He's going to have that uh, empowered you know, damage on his missiles and his barrage there at the end. He had a touch of the Magi there as well. Gives him full charges and it gives him that execute on his barrage um, with Jamie being sub 35%. So... A uh, really good setup there uh, from Waz, you know, starting off the chain with the cheap shots, follow up from Matt, follow up from uh, from Raikou, great kiting as well before that point um, by Raikou, uh, and in general, just a great game by Echo, and also a great shirt uh, by you, Sid, because I noticed that. <laughs> I think it looks a little different there now. <laughs> I, I, I might have changed it a little bit. My my power went out <laughs> while I was off, and then I was like, may as well put on a different shirt too. I don't know. We're, we're mixing it up here, okay? Maybe Admirals Esports need a new comp um, for this match, uh, because Echo's, <laughs> Echo's RMP, man, like... If you're not getting even blocked from a mage as this comp, I, I'm not sure if it's going to work out for you. I'm somewhat considering if um, they should try Marksmanship Hunter instead of Beast Mastery. I feel like Marksman is just a little bit more of a punch, and it's a, it's a lot more difficult to deal with than Beast Mastery. And Raikou's doing a great job with the pets. He's just managing all of them with Frost Nova. He's even barrage snaring them and then moving away from them, dropping rings around corners, kiting them into that. And the pets are not getting as much value as you would normally expect with the way that he's playing. And Runes of Lordaeron is a really good map for a Marksman Hunter because there's almost no line of sight. Um, and I think that could be a way for them to get a surprising amount of damage. I'm fully expecting a Hunter comp with this map pick. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, right? Admiral Esports, they played game number one in the upper bracket uh, final when they faced Echo as well earlier in the tournament. They locked in the same comp on Nagrand, lost. Then they locked Runes of the Lord of Rome um, on game number two. Same composition, lost. Uh, and then I think they did swap to, I believe, a Wizard Cleave, and they won with that. So I'm not sure here if it's just history repeating itself. <laughs> um, either way, this is a best of seven. This is the grand final, so... Uh, they're not going to, you know, be on match point if they lose this one, but still not a great start to the series so far. And uh, I feel like um, we got to see something different here. You know, uh, a Marksman Hunter definitely could be an option or just all around maybe swapping it up um, to something else entirely here. Admiral Esports, they haven't had too much time, you know, to kind of adapt to what happened in that series. You could tell that they really uh, put in a lot of preparation in this Hunter DK comp, and this is what their, you know, response was going to be towards Echo uh, with their RMP. But um, we'll just have to wait and see what they decide to do uh, and how they decide to play it here. But so far, you know, they didn't actually force out anything uh, in that last matchup. All right, they're going to run with the same composition. I, on paper, it makes sense. I mean, I feel like Death Knights and, and Hunters are some of the most difficult classes as a mage um, to deal with, but Waz, Men, Raikou are just still playing so well in terms of coordination that they're able to enable Raikou even despite that disadvantage. And you know, how much experience do Admirals Esports have with this comp? Whereas Echo, they've played Rogue Mage like how many i want to say it's like probably in the almost the double digits at least individually it's definitely in the double digits together probably getting close to pushing that so they've got so many years of experience so many years of synergy um that admirals esports need to try and topple over on a comp that i think they're playing for the first time in this patch so this is a pretty tall order for admirals esports but i, I have some some belief in this comp some faith in this comp and i can i can see why they want to run it in these types of situations on runes of order on yeah, I mean, uh, Ruins of Lordaeron is a great pick uh, to run down mages on. So, uh, you know, not a lot of space to kind of move around and kite and uh, and, and deal with those pets. You're always going to be in line of sight of the hunter. He's going to be able to do a lot of work. But uh, on the flip side, it's going to be tough for Nex to stay out of crowd control in this map as well. So they really need to have a very, very aggressive strategy. And I actually wonder if um, the mage is even the right target for them. Maybe they can do a bit of an old school strategy and just run at the priest. Uh, and see how that works because so far running at Raikou really hasn't given them too much uh, of an advantage and I feel like that's one of the main strengths of an arcane mage in general 
is when you're uh, tunneled, uh, that's, you know, that's what you want, basically. Kiting around melees, trying to get some sheeps, and trying to do damage from, uh, you know, between the kicks, and fake out some kicks. That's when Arcane Mage is very effective. I feel like Arcane Mage is the most uh, frustrating to play, actually, when you're just being completely left alone, and then during your Arcane Surge, you're being shut down heavily. They're just throwing ranged interrupts on you, micro CCs on you, and then the rest of the game, they're just ignoring you and going after somebody else, so... Um, uh, as an arcane mage, I feel like that's a lot more annoying than when you are the main target. But we'll see. Uh, maybe Admiral Eastbush can extend the CC chains long enough here to actually take down Raikou. They had good pressure uh, in the start, but we're never really quite able to get that ice block. Meh was just always able to block the kills. And we'll see what they can do here in game number two in the European Grand Finals. Jamie's in stealth. Waz is in stealth. How is the opener going to look here? Who are they going to go after right now? It looks like Riker's going to be the target, and Waz is going to open up here onto Swapsy. Oh, but they get double blinded by Swapsy. They land the freezing trap out of that. Good chain of CC. Raikou in trouble. Temporal's back, but now he's stunned. He triggers. He's getting bursted down as that greater invis comes out at the last second. Man, looks to stabilize him. This is a much better opener from Admiral's Esports. They're getting way more pressure. The map's definitely paying off. They're getting tons of uptime. They're gripping Waz away from Jamie, trying to get pressure on Raikou at the same time. Oh. He's going for Arcane Surge, but he can't really connect it. Man is forced into the Spirit of Redeemer. He drops out that Ray of Hope. He grips Raikou onto the freezing trap that it seems like Jamie may have placed onto him during that angel form to try and find it as a trap as he comes out. So really good place for men in this position, but he does get hammer justice. Next is still playing in an aggressive position into it, blinding light, but unfortunately on diminishing return, and they're not really connecting to Raikou. They do get a freezing trap at the end of it, but Miramages and Temporal is absorbing so much damage, and Meh is actually pre-shackling a lot of the undead pets of Swapsy before these CC chains even happen. Chastise out from Meh, trying to get into position. Doesn't look like he can find the fear, though. Raikou gets bursted. Meh recovers him once again. Kidney shot on Swapsy. He decides to icebound Fortitude aggressively. Swapsy he knows that they need to stay on target, get as much pressure as possible, keep Raikou on the back foot, but this does leave him as a target, and Waz knows that he's immediately trying to punish that Icebound Fortitude with a swap onto Swapsy, getting those combo points going and damage out, cheap shot onto next, and Met is pushing into position, they get the Ring of Frost, doesn't look like they're able to land it, as Raikou gets asphyxiated into a bubble, double blind, Waz is rooted, he's trying to go for a killing spree, but Raikou's in trouble at the moment, as Guardian Spirit trades out for Meh, Raikou's line of sight in Jamie at the Tombstone, Blessing and Protection gets spell stolen, again, these Blessing yeah, protections they've got to cancel them before they get stolen yeah absolutely and right commanders to get a sheep with that blessing of protection active and now next actually he tried to anti-magic shell the fear of meh there onto next that was really clutched by swapsy not sure if he actually was able to get it but next running out of breakers here he's got no bubble he actually does have the bubble but he's got no trinket sacrifice connects onto jamie next now out of that kidney shot is going to be able to top off jamie right is going to be the target of choice here right now you can see admiral esports pushing forward here and they're going to look for that freezing trap onto meh meh doing what he can full asphyxiate onto raiku can i find a crowd control here on to man, man spamming out the flash shields, keeping Raikou at 100% HP. Ring of Frost coming out here on the path. Jamie now in a full kidney shot, could be in trouble. Missiles are flying in from Raikou. Ray of Hope connects for man. Big damage here as he goes for the fear, but not able to find it. It's actually going to be next who finds the blinding light. Oh. Man, but man depths it, but Raikou in the meantime gets absolutely destroyed from this abomination limb, forced into his ice block. Oh, Death and Decay on the back of it. Med jumping in that Spirit Redeemer on the grip. Beautiful pre-timing from Med, immuning any possible CC. He's got a fully stacked him. Raikou's got a lot of extra healing. He's got Guardian Spirit as well. Now they're setting up for the kill. Cheap shot into Gouge. Arcane Surge going to connect. A double blind in for a triple blind in from Swapsy there. Stopping all of the damage. Next escapes behind the pillar. Gets Tears Deliverance. That's going to give him a big boost of healing to keep Jamie offensive. Here comes the Bestial Wrath. Tons of damage on a Raikou. Hammer of Justice connects. Can they chain it? They need more CC. But Waz jumps over and eats the freezing oh. With a grappling hook, beautiful grappling hook from Waz to eat that crowd control chain because that was certainly going to be Mez Trinket, but now he's able to hold on to it for time later. They apotheosis, they get the fear, they're turning it around, they're getting on to Jamie. He's going to pre turtle the mind games. He doesn't want that extra damage incoming onto himself, but without aspect of the turtle, he is a sitting duck at this point, but he's still got to stay aggressive. He's disengaging in. It's all or nothing here against Echo. They are Titans. Almost no one has been able to beat them in the European region. This is Admiral's Esports' last stand. Yeah, and right now Jamie is sitting through another kidney shot here. It's looking good so far. The best they've looked in this matchup. They managed to get a stun onto Raikou. He's going to trink it out of that. Asphyxiate swaps is all over him. Big damage coming out here with the Apocalypse. And Jamie once again pushing forward here. Looking for the Freezing Trap. Mask hiding it though so far. Waz all over Jamie here. Taking him down to about 50% HP. Ring of Frost coming out here onto the pet. Raikou They're so Fake close. He's dropping very low. They almost take him down, but the Ray of Hope blocks the kill for just a second. Ring of Frost comes out for Raikou. He gets is it stunned on it. Oh. It's stopped once again from the Ray of Hope. The defensive Dragon's Breath 
coming out here for Raikou. Big heels in the back line from Next, keeping Jamie offensive. There's the blessing of protection. He needs to cancel that now. Next has no mana left. Man has a little bit to work with still. They need to try to push down Raikou right now. Jamie. Jamie's getting way too aggressive here, dropping very, very low. And that's going to be an anti magic shot from Swapsy onto Jamie. Full kid shot connects onto Jamie. He, this could be where he falls. He needs to be very, very careful. No mana left onto Next. They just need to stay alive and do damage. This Can Echo do it, or will Raikou fall? Double blinding sleet. They need more crowd control. They've got it. Hammer of Justice. Raikou is on the run. Swapsy Trinkets out of the stun. He needs to connect, but Waz is peeling everything. He's not letting anybody get to Raikou. And Raikou displaces back away from Swapsy. Med jumps into the Spirit of Redeemer, and now they're going for the kill. They've turned it around. Next is Divine Shield, but maybe not. Huge pressure from Swapsy. Raikou is retreating for his life right now. Both teams in shambles. Nothing left on either side. The next swell of momentum is going to decide this, and it's swinging in favor of Admiral Z Sports. Raikou is just constantly on the run. Waz scattered shot on his cheap. Jamie's moving in, but a Ring of Frost hits all of the pets. That Ring of Frost getting huge value for Raikou, denying so much damage. He's moving out in the middle of the map to set up for the kill, but do they have the time to do it? Med drops that Apotheosis. He's bombing in heals, but dampening is quite high. 25%. Is he going to be able to deal with the damage? He trinkets up, and no the damage way. is overwhelming, and Admiral's Esports are so close. They do it! They do the impossible. They take game two just when they had nothing left. I mean, Waz is still actually playing this out, even with no mana left onto him. Maybe he can pull this off. N Jamie's no, still trying now. to kite right now, but there's no way here, Waz. He's going to duck out, but an unbelievably close second game here. And Admiral Esports are showing signs of life. Can they do it? That was game number two. They're going to need to do it again in the swing match. They're going to need to play their minds out right now because Echo finally showing, you know, just a sign of weakness here, just showing uh, just a little bit of a crack in the armor here. And I think Swapsy was a huge part of why that was possible. These anti-magic shells, using them onto Next to deny the fears, allowed Next so much more uptime, allowed him to just get, you know, his cooldowns back, allowed him to save his bubble for a long time and rotate his trinkets and actually keep Jamie nice and topped and aggressive here. And they're able to get so much damage done as well. And eventually, they are able to actually run Raikou down with the pressure. Next here, pushing in for the Hammer of Justice. They get the Asphyxiate onto Raikou. Matt Trinkets out, but doesn't have quite the healing here to keep Raikou alive in the fight. And uh, Raikou will fall there. And uh, this was, of course, on their best map. And, uh, you know, Echo still has a lot of different tools here in their arsenal. But Admiral Esports definitely came to play. All right, they've got a comp, they've got an answer. It can make them bleed. They're not walking out of this tournament undefeated in the grand finals this time around. And now Echo, they're going to pick their map. They're going to set up their comp. Are they going to keep running the same matchup? Do they have a different option that they could break out for this type of hunter comp? Because I'm sure they've got a lot of other things that would be a bit more sturdy if they absolutely needed it. Um, but also a larger map would give them a huge advantage. It would just be impossible for them to run down Raikou as they have just done on Runes of Lordaeron on something much larger like Maldraxxus or over on arena so i'm imagining we're going to one of those two maps here for game number three it is a best of seven grand finals the last chance to earn the title of european champion this is an opportunity and a moment that does not come around very often and they do not want to give it up it has been quite a while since admirals esports have been able to take one of these tournaments echo has been dominating so many of them back to back to back and this is their last chance to do it can they pull it off they're taking games or at least a game i should say here in this series yeah, definitely. I mean, this is exciting, you know. Uh, I think a lot of people, especially based on the record that, you know, we've kind of been talking about, a lot of people are just expecting Echo to kind of walk away with this one. I think we saw a stat yesterday that Echo was, I think, 6-0 and in series against Admiral Esports, something like that. And now Admiral Esports finally tying it up one-to-one -one apiece, and they're locking it in with confidence here. The Hunter DK Paladin coming through once again here for these guys. Blizzo is going to have to stay on the bench for a little bit. Now, what are Echo going to do? Mage Lock is on the table. Mm -mm. They can bring in, you know, Rogue Lock. We've seen them with that as well. We've seen Moonkin Lock as well, you know, um, uh, playing that basically primarily uh, last season. So, or uh, during the regular season. Uh, so, Echo has a lot of answers here. Is this where they bring in Chan? Are they going to remain with this out Outlaw Arcane? Uh, are they going to go Fire? Probably not Fire. It would be kind of mm -mm. terrible into the Hunter, but... Uh, they have a lot of options here, so they really need to consider them now. I think it's either the same comp or like a Moonkin lock angle, I think, for Echo. Um, 
either one of those I'm, I'm not totally against. I, I think that this is a decent comp that you could get crowd control into the Paladin with, with Boomkin Lock. This might be the time that we see Channel. Have we even seen him yet this weekend? I don't think we have. I think that they've been exclusively running R&P, nope. so... Uh, it, maybe they're going to need to bring out their fourth here in the final game. They're running the clock considering all of their options because I don't think they were really expecting to lose. Uh, I, I don't think I was. I was expecting this to be a 4-0, just, oh, all right, this is done. It's over. It's dusted. So Admirals Esports are, are definitely stepping up, and Channel is oh. coming in, and they will be bringing Raikou, not Waz. Waz going to the bench, Raikou in on Frost Mage, and this is a classic for Channel. So can Admirals Esports navigate this, stay on their target um, through the gauntlet that Echo are about to lay down in terms of crowd control. That is a big question here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we haven't seen Matt on the Holy Paladin yet. Uh, yeah. This this final, so this is actually his first showing. I mean, uh, bringing it out. I'm sure he's been practicing it a lot, you know, uh, on ladder and things like that. But this will be his first actual tournament game uh, here in the finals with that Holy Paladin. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how well he's adapted to that. He's going to be going up against next. He's swapping away from his priest, but you know we've seen Matt do this, uh, you know, with his evoker and his holy priest and things like that in the past. So don't really have too much doubt that he's going to be able to pull it off. But still, Nex has been warmed up. You know, he's been playing Holy Pod in the whole weekend. He's ready to go. You know, um, and uh, Channel as well coming in cold from the bench. Right, he's going to have to swap over to a Frost Mage. Admiral Esports going to get to play what they just played. So for them, it's business as usual. And um, I'm, I'm really curious to see actually how they're going to be able to. Uh, handle this like what are they gonna do how are the setups gonna look what is admiral esports targeting gonna be like um are they gonna you know try to stay back wait for a little bit of dampening and then make a big push onto chan are they gonna go after raikou again early on and then swap the chan or are they just gonna tunnel raikou the whole game are they even gonna go uh, for you know swaps and try to test meh on the holy paladin there is a lot of ways uh, for them to victory here the question is what is the best and do they have the practice in this matchup um against mage warlock because uh, they surely got to be expecting this comp to come out of Echo. Uh, you know, this is something that uh, everybody kind of knows that they have been practicing. I, I feel like we're watching like a tournament in Cataclysm right now. Who who was it that played? Was it Jung Yup yeah. versus Pooks? <laughs> and they were playing Mage Lock Pally and they were playing Hunter PHDK. Like, I feel like I'm reliving that moment from Cataclysm right now here in this series. So if Admirals Esports are going to do this, they need the spirit of Jung Yup to just dive into Jamie's character here uh, if they're going to try and pull this off because Echo is just completely undefeated. An insane team, just an absolute titan, a monster, a behemoth. Who, who is going to slay them? Can anybody? But he slay them. Admiral's Esports have struck a blow, but it's merely a flesh wound in this series so far as Channel is coming in off the bench on the Warlock. This guy is an absolute legend on the Warlock, just almost unparalleled in terms of, of ability, in terms of the history of the game and, and consistency and top performance. So th this is really going to be tough. Can Admiral's Esports stay on their target, push through the gauntlet, survive the Tyrant, survive the Ray of Frosts, and get enough damage out to be able to take Game 3, to take a swing match? This, this is the situation that matters the most in a series like this. Yeah, getting the swing match uh, is going to guarantee them that advantage if it becomes kind of a counter comp uh, back and forth here. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see here. Next right now, already sitting through a hammer of justice. Matt pushing in very aggressively, looking for the blinding light potentially out of that one. It's the double blind onto Jamie and next. Swap is going to be the target. Oh, Ring of Frost into Mortal Coil coming out here. Channel getting very, very aggressive here onto Swapsy. Already burning through the anti-magic shell, but didn't have to use any of those big cooldowns, the anti-magic zone or the icebound fortitude. Now Wraith walking back over onto Channel. Channel is going to be the target of choice teleport back here onto meh messing through the diamond ice trap right now channel is taking quite a beating here on that warlock going for the shadow fury gets uh, gripped back into the middle of the map and now he is going to be taking some punishment but a nice fake cast here and a sheep by raiku onto next and raiku is going to really need to be a key member here in the matchup finding the frost bolts finding the counter pressure when channel is the target here he needs to find a lot of sheeps here onto next and just find good pressure and of course also slow down jamie here with these sheeps so far raiku is playing it out great but Chanimal is going to need to be on point with the kiting. One mistake can just cost him his biggest cooldowns. 
All right, Swapsy has been the target in this game. Just constant pressure onto him, but he's still pushing forward. He's still marching forward to try and finish Channel. Channel going to port away with that soul burn effect. He's sprinted. They can't snare him, but he walks in Swapsy's line of sight for just a moment and gets Death Grip back into the fight. He's down at half health. Met is struggling to keep him topped at this moment. If he gets interrupted on a tier's deliverance, so they don't have a stop for it, it would appear. Fears onto next. Polymorphs onto the hunter. Met is moving forward. I think he wants to get crowd control into next tier pretty soon. Maybe a hammer of justice, but a double blinding sleep from Swapsy stalls out the damage installs up the crowd control for a moment. Raikou blinks away from that stack. Gets another sheep onto Jamie. Next is trying to run away from Meh. Channel ports into the back line. Next is in a stun. Can they get the Polymorph out of it? They stop the Polymorph for the counter shot. They're chasing down Channel, but Swapsy gets stunned behind the pillar. Next is in a Polymorph. No trinket. Anti-Magic Shield comes up, but they've already cut through most of its absorption effect. They're forced to drop Anti-Magic Zone as well to tank up the Tyrants, as that is going to be doing quite a lot of damage, but it's a fair trade. Swapsy is still keeping a level head in this matchup, despite the fact that I think experience Experience is going to be dwarfed on the side of Echo. They've just had so many games of Mage Log. Can Swapsy on Death Knight and Jamie on Hunter be enough to stand against them? The Grip Channel once again to try and stay on target. Scattershot onto the Mage, just trying to stop as much damage and cast as possible while they're continuing their push onto Channel. Yeah, and this is the Icy Veins of Raikou. Big counter pressure coming out here with the Frostbolt Flurry combos. Wopsy dropping dangerously low here. Raikou's just turreting here with the Water Elemental active. Full trap gets eaten there by Chanimal. The Diamond Eyes coming through. Beautifully done there by Chan to eat that one up. And man, he's going to be able to have some time here to heal. But look at that. Next pushes in for the Blinding Lights here. Chanimal's still in trouble. Ray of Frost gets kicked by Swapsy. Really nicely done there to kick that big, hard-hitting ability of the Frost Mage. Now grip into triple Blinding Sleep by Swapsy. He he wants this win. He wants it bad. Full hammer of just onto next. He's gonna use his human racial to break out of that one and land the hammer of just. Actually, land this sacrifice here by Meh as well on that diamond eyes. Animal still not out of the woods just yet. Used his dwarf racial there as well. A lot of cooldowns being used here, and that's gonna be the blessing of protection as well. Can they purge it off though? Jamie's trying, but he is in a full sheep. Raikou shuts it down before it can even become a real threat there. Nice sheeps there by Raikou, but this game is not looking too good here for Echo. They have forced out the bubble of next though, so that's one big thing. But Swaps still has a lot of cooldowns left. All right, let's see if they can stay on target here. Tyrant out again. They interrupt it. They need to stall this Tyrant as long as possible if they want to keep their pressure. They force the Dark Pack from Channel. Bestial Wrath is faded. They stun Channel there with the Intimidation. They're putting all crowd control into Channel. Next is sitting through a Polymorph. They have to stop these fears. Hammer of Justice is going to find him. Maybe they even swap to the Paladin. He's in Divine Protection just in case, but they're switching to the Hunter. Ray of Frost fully channeled. Massive damage onto Jamie as he is very low on health. Next is still crowd control. There's basically no healing for him. He's back behind the pillar. Next is finally free. And he's to get some big holy shocks out right now. He doesn't have Tears of Deliverance up. His healing's going to be limited, but he's charging in aggressively, but he walks into a Polymorph. He's trying to stack on the pets to break it with Klee, but Channel has perfect pet control. He's going to stop his pets from attacking and not break that crowd control. Port back behind the pillar and away from it. Now Jamie is exposed in the middle of the map. He feigned deaths, trying to stop some cast, get a little bit of damage reduction. Decent damage on Channel. Are they actually going to do it? No, Jamie's falling behind at the same time and has to use Aspect of the Turtle first. They're trying to control Swapsy with Sheeps and Frost Novas, but he gets a grip, double blinding sleet. Can they get any crowd control off this. Doesn't look like Jamie's in position for the freezing trap. Next is charging in on top of Swapsy, trying to stay on target on Channel. They don't have a lot of options. That swap onto Jamie was devastating. Swapsy's continuing to stay aggressive. That fell storm from Channel's pets. Cleaving Swapsy as he's trying to get distance. He gets in Tim stunned. He's going to trinket out of that. He wants to keep his pressure going. Jamie's sitting through Polymorphs. Next into a Hammer of Justice. He didn't get Tears Deliverance off though. Jamie could be in so much trouble. Any magic shield from Swapsy onto Jamie. Absorbing the hits and next needs to get that Tears Deliverance but he trinkets into a Half Fear. He needs this tier's deliverance as soon as possible. The damage is so high right now. He manages to recover. He buys time. He gets the tier's deliverance, but look at his mana. He's working with 5%. And how many more defensives? Like, there's a bop, a wall, a, a pack, a sack. There's so many cooldowns to get through with so little mana. Yeah, what mana here? Next, running on fumes already. Only five minutes into the match right now. Raikou taking control right now with big damage on the swaps. He's pushing them back to the pillar. Raikou going for the sheep there. Onto Jamie and a nice triple Shadow Fury coming out. And look at Meh already pushing back here with the pets on him, though. He's not going to be able to find a drink. Ray of Frost gets interrupted by the Asphyxia. Swapsy making his push. Next, sitting through a stun into a full blind here by Meh and uh, Chanimal. And Chanimal, just look at his positioning. So annoying. Just dragging Swapsy out in open field. Dragging them away from his healer. 
and constantly teleporting behind the pillars. And every single time he does that, Nex is put in the crowd control and Swapsy could be on his last leg right now. Big damage coming out. Riker Prox of Bloodlust with the Ice Events. Frostbolts are being turreted in with the flurries. And that's going to be a sheep there onto Jamie. Riker getting a lot of control here onto Jamie. Next with no mana left. Sacrifice will block the kill for just a second, but still a lot of damage left here on that Frost Mage. Big hits coming out though onto Channel. He eats the Freezing Trap once again. And that's going to be a blessing and protection coming out. And now Swapsy on his last leg behind the pillar getting out. Absolutely crushed here by the demons of Channel. Riker blinks in, trinketing out of the stun, looking for the ring of fire, looking for the pressure. Next is rotting down. Jamie is rotting down. Swapsy is rotting down as well. And I think Echo has them on the ropes. They've got one last chance. Divine Shield comes up in one second, but he gets interrupted by Channel. That could be a game winning interrupt. Jamie's crushed. Raku finishes him. And Echo take game three and continue to hold their advantage. Admiral's Esports, they fought this out to the bitter end, but there were still so many more cooldowns to get through. There was a bop coming up in 12 more seconds, a sacrifice still available for meh. And it seems like on the large map that this may not be a solid answer for Admiral's Esports in the rest of the series. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem, right? Okay, great. You beat Echo's Rogue Mage. Welcome to Phase 2. And uh, the Phase 2 looked uh, pretty terrifying, honestly. When you have a player like Channel on the bench, uh, it's, just, it's just not ideal. Um, you know you're going to have to go against that Mage Warlock. You know they have some Boomkin Warlock as well in their arsenal. And... Mage Warlock, you know, you're leaving Riker free the entire game. Look at his damage here on the bottom left. 60k DPS on that Frost Mage. Getting so much work done. You know, the Ring of Fire rotting everybody down. And then here towards the end, with those Frost Mage buffs, that Ray of Frost, uh, when it's fully channeled, it does so much damage. And uh, here on Jamie, he gets to feel the pressure. And a little trick that you can do there that Riker just did right there is to send that Flurry and then send the Ray of Frost, of course. And that will make your Ray of Frost benefit from the crit effect from the Flurry. So uh, you will have that uh, really, really high chance to crit on every single one of your ticks on the Ray of Frost because it will benefit from that and also not consume it. So that's how Riker is doing so much damage towards the end of the match right there um, with each and every single one of these rays. And, um, you know, Channel as well, he's uh, looking good here on the Warlock. Every single time he's tagged in, he's so clutch, uh, just uh, utilizing the map perfectly. Look at that Eat on the Freezing Trap. Uh, he gets bopped by Meh, and Meh, you know, he still has his bubble. He still has his trinket this late into the game because his teammates have just eat, been eating the traps off of him. We saw Waz do it last game with the Grappling Hook. We're seeing Channel do it here. And, uh, you know, everybody's just playing their role perfectly. And Matt as well on the Holy Paladin really didn't look like he's uh, lost, you know, a beat. Uh, looked absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm only thinking if maybe the scatter shot could have been like even a millisecond faster there at the end. Uh, it's a very slim chance. Um, but the Ray of Frost is like one of the biggest threats in the game. If, if ever a single ray goes off like that, it's a major cooldown or death. And it was in this case. So. Uh, they, they've seen how the matchup plays. They were getting through cooldowns. It wasn't like they didn't get anything done in the game, and they survived quite a lot longer than I was actually anticipating them to be able to survive. I thought the Paladin would be much easier to control, and, and they would die much sooner, but Admiral's Esports pick a big map. So they're going to play a lock they, comp. There's, a, there's no way, right? There's no way they're doing DK Hunter again, right? So I think Admiral Esports are trying to get Echo to lock in Mage Lock blind, and uh, if they do... They will be met with um, LA Warlock, and uh, that's kind of their counter, like wizard. Because Frost Mage, the one, the, the one thing, or Mage in general, gets out wizarded by other wizards. Like the other wizards, usually in a full-on wizard mirror, do better than a mage because you have to cast a lot um, as a mage, and you don't really have that much like bullying compared to like an LA Shaman with grounding and knocks and stuns and you know all of these uh, little annoying things on a short cooldown, plus the instant burst damage that they pack. So. Echo not going to take the bait, and they're going to go with the Arcane Outlaw again. So we're probably going to see Admiral Esports run the same thing here. Yeah, it's a, this is actually kind of an interesting strategy, because in a best of seven, I think it's possible to run out of big maps. So if you if you take the big maps away on your pick, um, and then run the counter comp that you want, maybe that's their goal of trying to get to a game seven where there aren't any big maps. Um, but it's risky, because they're not. I don't think they're guaranteed to win DK Hunter into RMP. Yeah, on a, on a, big, on a map. big map. Like this is this is a risky line to play. But if you think you can't win a swing match, maybe it's just a higher odds percent for for a best of seven series to do this. That's the thing. It's it's a tough situation to be in, right? If you're Admiral Esports, because 
it's not just the one comp. Like, you barely have an answer against the Rogue Mage. Yeah. Like, you, you lost on Nagrand. You barely won on Ruins. And then there's a Mage lock as well that you need to have an answer to. And maybe you have the comp that can answer it. But because you lost that blind pick, now you're forced into the situation where you're going to have to to do something. You're going to have to take some kind of risk. And you're going to have to calculate what is the you know highest probability to actually win uh, later on in the series. Uh, is it worse to go up against the mage lock on a small map later on or is it worse to go up against a rogue mage right now on a big map and uh, it seems like they think that they can beat the rogue mage uh, even on imperial domain i wouldn't be too certain of it but uh, we'll have to mm -hmm. wait and see admiral esports they lock in the same composition if they can then i think this makes a lot of sense and they're probably going to continue to do it for the rest of the series um and maybe they try like Tolvir a next yeah I, well if they if they win echo will go tolvir and then maybe they should blind lock like ellie lock or something just something different on a big map um because they're if they're not intending to be able to win the swing match on the big map anyways it might just be better to play a different composition at that point and, and hope that echo aren't ready for it or something but this is a big gamble from admirals esports because they're giving away another game which then would mean they have to reverse sweep twice on not their map like they can't lose this they have to win this for this strat to work where they like siphon all the big maps out of the pool for a, <laughs> for a sl maybe slightly favorable situation if they lose one time it's i think the series is over for them because they're going to run out of choices um in terms of getting to a game seven where they get more of a small map is what i think they're trying to aim for so let's see if they can get it done here um they're staying dedicated to this composition they're not going to be bringing in any sort of cast or cleave even despite the large map um for the rogue mage um, they're just going to have to continue to play as aggressive as ever, um, staying on Raikou the whole game, trading efficiently, trading effectively, trying to stop as much crowd control as possible, because um, if they're not running him down, I'm a bit worried about how much control he's going to start taking of the game. Yeah, and that's the thing. That was really key in that Ruins of Lordaeron game, right? They never stopped pressuring Meh and Raikou. And that's what they're going to need to have to... That's what they're going to have to do. They're going to just need to run at Raikou the whole time. Make sure that they're landing the, you know, asphyxiates on the Raikou and shutting down his damage as much as possible. And then getting those Diamond Eyes traps onto Meh. And if they can do that, uh, you know, it's going to be great for their pressure. But at the same time, if Echo, you know, can use this big map to move around and, and create distance between Swapsy and Raikou, that's going to be uh, really, really good for them. We saw that last game almost get decided on mana. Next was actually completely out of mana before Meh on that Priest. So uh, that could be another you know, kind of a pressure point here. But we're already seeing the first setup. Look at that anti-magic shell onto next. Shutting down that full fear that they wanted to do. And instead, it's going to be Meh actually forced into that Spirit of the Redeemer. Jamie taking some damage. Sacrifice does trade. Both healers trading big here in the opener. Yeah, some really high IQ plays here from Swapsy using any magic shield on the Paladin to stop crowd control as opposed to on the Hunter to stop damage, realizing if we stop CC, the Paladin can heal through almost anything as opposed to getting a slight shield onto the Hunter. So really big adaptation. This could potentially swing the game in their favor, and they need that if they're going to have any hope of defeating Echo. They've got a freezing trap on Meh, scatter onto Waz. Raikou is all by himself for a few seconds, and Swapsy is tearing in. He blinks back to midfield. Meh gets a big heal up here with Fear on to next, and they do use that anti magic shield tech onto next one again to try and get him immune to any potential polymorphs they stun up Raikou they force his trinket that's a big moment a trinket and next it's probably going to be an ice block if he gets caught in a stun but big damage onto Jamie kidney shot onto next Waz is jumping in to go for the kill they drop anti-magic zone onto Jamie and he's got anti-magic shield as well but now they can't shield the polymorph and J next is forced to trinket a trinket and a zone and one push is a big opening arcane surge is available and here it comes Raikou's trying to cast he gets interrupted he gets stunned and pinned down for a moment but they get a stun onto Matt Waz grapples over to oh. eat the freezing trap again so they scatter met instead but it's still going to be really good for them in terms of eating at least a second of crowd control because every second counts with the pressure that's on to raikou yeah, full fear connects there. On to next as well. Jamie dropping dangerously low here. Caught up in a full kidney shot. Next sits through that one though. He's got tears deliverance and he is powering through with the heals. On to Jamie. Waz going for the vanish here. Looking for the cheap shot. On to next. And uh, still uh, bullying Jamie here. Full gouge connects. Goes for the killing spree. And Jamie forced into that aspect of the turtle. Waz with some MVP plays right there. And Waz actually has a full blind here for that next setup. Next doesn't have a trinket for it. So they could just try to set up with a blind. I think also Waz is running smoke bomb. At least he was um, yesterday. 
So that could be another uh, option here onto Jamie. He's taking so much damage. There's the full blind into a full kidney onto next, and that will force out the bubble. And overlap though with the anti magic. Oh, he got full massive spell coming out into a full sheep, and I think that is it for Jamie here. So much damage coming out. Do they have any follow up? Rekker gets another sheep. May is oh. there. Dragon's press connects. May gets the triple DR fear. Jamie trying to stay alive behind the pillar, and he manages to survive. But they don't want to survive. They want to be the ones pushing the pace in the matchup. Echo so far dominating. They need to get the gas pedal on the floor right now. They need to pressure Raikou if they want to still win this. Sacrifice comes through for next. This is their last bolster of defense. They need to stay on target. Jamie's trying to go after him, but Raikou blinks back behind the pillar. They can't attack him. Jamie's just poking Waz, but he's not really going to be doing too much. He needs to get on target as soon as possible. He roots Waz, but he needs a freedom. He just can't move at the moment. Now the cheap shots are coming in. Big damage from Raikou with that arcane orb. They get a full fear. Mind game's being casted. They interrupt the mind game, so now they can't stop the sheep. The anti magic shield, the sheep onto next. Insane play from Swapsy in this moment. They try Meh. They're trying to turn it around, but next is Andy Magic Shield is over. He's susceptible to crowd control. Raikou is blinking in. He's trying to get the sheep. They drop the zone, but Jimmy disengages under the Andy Magic Zone. A critical miss play at this moment in time. And next is trying to heal him, but he gets off kicked by Waz. Waz is on top of both of them. Crowd control for the whole team. Next pops the stun. Jamie is stunned up. Is he going to pick him up? He trinkets into another oh, cheap shot. Meh is there for the double fear and the kill. And Echo now moved to match point. That was clean. Waz with the off kick into the cheap shot. Next, bops the cheap shot, casts a flash of light, and guess who's there to interrupt it with a chastise into a full fear. Waz and Meh playing the offense beautifully. Uh, Raikou playing the defense phenomenally. And Echo, they're going to take this one. And this is what we were talking about. If you're locking in the big map and you're locking in the Hunter DK and you're kind of banking on maybe running them out of large maps, it can very quickly backfire because this is Echo's RMP that we're talking about. These guys don't lose very often. And uh, Waz as well, eating the traps here. You can tell he's fired up. He's popping off here in the finals. And uh, there's a full fear to here. On to next, and then they get that anti magic shell, which is one of the big adaptations that they've done, is to use it on to next to shut down CC. And uh, they managed to pick Jamie back up because of that, so that's really clutch from Swapsy. But here uh, they continue the pressure, and here's where Waz pops off. Look at that. They get the sheep on to next. He trinkets out, then he gets off kicked right here uh, by Waz into a vanished cheap shot. Into look at that. He bobs the cheap shot, and the meh pushes forward there, gets the chastise on that heel, and then double fear. And then that is Sayonara for Jamie. Echo are going to be up now, two to one. Oh no, the strat to try and take the big maps Three away. Three to one. The, the, the strat to take the big maps away is going to backfire here, which means now they're likely going to have to fight Mage Lock twice on a big map. And I, I feel like you've got to play it safe at this point if, you, if you've got this next round. Like, you've got to go a small map. You, you need to set up a situation where you can still at least have a chance and maybe come up with a different strategy here for the last two blind picks that you're going to have to walk into because it, this, this just didn't look good for them. And it, it's going to be so tough if you want to try and get as many wins as possible in the series. Like, you're still going to have to play it out on Maldraxxus. You're still going to have to play it out on Tolveron. There's, there's so much more big maps for them to go after. And, man, Waz, Raikou, and Meh, they're ready to play. Chanwell comes off the bench. He ain't, he ain't rusty at all on the mage lock. He's ready to go. And if Echo is ready to go, like, I don't know how who is going to be able to beat them here. Um, but the, the Hunter Death Knight is not going to be enough here. And, no, they're still going the route of locking in the big maps. They're saying, okay, we, we have to win on these maps eventually. So we're just going to play them now, I I suppose as opposed to waiting for it a little bit later um and echo they're probably going to do the same they're going to lock in outlaw arcane rmp i can't see why they wouldn't considering they just won um and then admirals esports have a big decision do they keep playing the hunter death knight or do they go back to the wizard cleave that they got a win a win with uh yesterday i think we're going to wizard cleveland i mean if you're putting all your faith in that uh hunter dk you gotta win on the smaller maps. But if you lock in the smaller maps, you're not gonna be able to siphon all the big maps out of the pool. So um, you got a tough decision ahead of you here. And uh, Echo, of course, uh, there's probably, I mean, it would, <laughs> it would be stupid at this point not to lock in the Outlaw Arcane again. They just won with it on a big map. And, um, you know, they won on all big maps actually with that one. So um, yeah, I think the, the game on ruins was extremely close as well so even on you know like a good map for admiral esports that was definitely winnable for echo so the highest percentage play for them definitely outlaw arcane and uh, for admiral esports i think maybe we will see the wizard cleaves come out now the question is what kind of wizards are we talking here are we going to see ellie munkin are we going to see uh maybe some mm. um, warlock munkin 
Um, there is a lot of options uh, for Admiral Esports here, but what are they actually going to choose? That is the big question. I don't like Moonkin into Rogue Mage. Uh, I'll just say that. I, I feel like it's not it's not a good time. Um, I, I don't think Admiral Esports would do a Moonkin comp, if anything. Um, Lock Ellie? It's got Lock Ellie or Hunter DK again. I, I don't think... Unless there's something else that we're not thinking of that they've randomly been sleeping on that they're maybe at the point where it's like we got to do whatever we can do <laughs> like we're just going to try this and hope that it works and because that's kind of what at this point you're going to need to do like echo are just so dominant and they don't even need to just play one comp i mean echo is winning every tournament with moon can lock and preservation evoker but now they can flex they can play rmp they can play the the wizard setups so, like what can't they play at this point man is playing paladin as well um echo is just looking so dominant here and admiral's esports and what could be their final hour are running the clock on their comp selection. They want to make sure that everything can be talked through. Maybe something could have been a little bit different. Maybe they could have waited a little bit longer. Yeah. And yeah, they're abandoning the Hunter. They're going back on, on some of their mains with Jamie on the Elemental Shaman. This did get them a win yesterday against Echo. And on the large maps, I think that it does make a lot of sense um, to want to run with this Wizard Cleave composition. But is it enough? That's a big question. They are on match point now. And... Uh... Lock Alley, it has worked out for them. They also have lost with this. Uh, so it's uh, definitely not a, like a sure way to beat Echo here. But uh, I do like that they're switching it up uh, since they won't go to those uh, smaller maps. And uh, Echo here, uh, just one game away from winning the entire year. I mean, what an insane performance. They won all the cups. They've steamrolled through this uh, finals as well. So far, they have lost two maps out of all the games they played. So... Uh, this is definitely an insane team right now, and uh, Admiral Esports uh, definitely feeling the the pressure, uh, you know, of the Grand Finals. Yeah, I mean, this situation doesn't come around very often. You know, it's only twice a year this year, um, so they don't want to throw this away. They they could still do this, reverse sweep it three in a row. This is you know one of the first time Nex is having a big competition on that healer role for his team. He stepped up big just to even get his team to this point. So I'm sure that they're going to be trying their best to get as many wins as they possibly can in the European Grand Finals. But Echo is looking as polished as ever. I was thinking maybe the only chance they could have was if maybe Echo was looking a little sloppy today or something. Maybe they didn't get a, enough sleep or something like that and maybe they weren't playing 100 percent, but they're playing 100 percent. admiral's esports are fighting the full power echo so this is not the time to hold back they're bringing in jamie on elemental shaman they want to play something that they've got a lot of experience on if they want to pull this off and i think it's exactly what they're going to need in this situation yep 100 percent. and uh i think it's nice for jamie as well here he gets to actually play something that he's a little bit more comfortable on you know ellie it's been his main he looked phenomenal in that uh semi-final as well a little bit earlier uh and now he's gonna get to at least uh potentially end the year on that ellie shaman or keep his team in the running here uh we'll have to wait and see if echo can take this wizard cleave down or if admiral esports uh, are just going to be finishing in second um, or if they can actually battle it back, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Maldraxxus Coliseum is going to be uh, the map here that Echo wants to do it, or that Admiral uh, Esport actually picked. Um, let's see if they can get it done right now. Gates are about to open, and uh, Wizard Cleave, they're going to need to shut down Raikou a lot, get a lot of counter pressure. You know, you're going to have the Axe Toss to shut down some of those uh, setups when, uh, when Waz is going for those kidney shots, and that's going to be big openings where uh, Swapsy can blast off a little bit. Um, but uh, last time, I do believe Swapsy was the main target here, so he's going to need to balance his offense and his defense in a really good way, and uh, we'll see if they can get it done here. Right, Jamie from Mass Invis, Arcane Surge right off the bat, a massive burst of damage potentially. Who's it going to be on to? Waz gets feared away. He can't really connect just yet. Swaps reports back behind the pillar. Jamie knocks the team away. He's looking for a heck or mind control. He gets a mind control on Jamie's hex. He's pulling him into a really bad spot, but they're leaving Waz in a stun during the mind control. And is this going to end up being a misplay? Man immediately jumps into the Spirit of Redeemer to get that Divine Hymn through the pillar and get his team topped off, get that big boost of healing off the opening stages of the game. Next now into a Polymorph Chastity onto Jamie. Swapsy is isolated. He ports away. He's trying to fish out for a Tyrant, but his healer is still crowd-controlled. Waz gouges the Tyrant. They drop a Ring of Frost. That Tyrant is fully contained. There's nothing they can do. Smoke Bomb comes down. Is he going to survive its match point? And it is so much damage. They oh. might control him low on the Unending Resolve, trying to eat potentially the Lay on Hands from Nex, but Nex is patient with his heals. He's not overlapping them. Now they're turning it around. Cloak of Shadows forced from Waz with that crowd control onto Met and Raikou. Now they're fearing Waz away, trying to get the Dreadstalkers out, trying to build that Legion of Pets. They're really targeting down the Outlaw Rogue. 
Full blind onto next. Swaps again to port back behind the pillar. Waz grapples over. Does he have crowd control for next? He's got a kidney shot. Jamie has ancestral guidance up. He's going to be healing the team quite a lot. Alasso onto Waz. He can't connect onto Swapsy, but Raikou is soloing Swapsy. These missiles doing so much pressure onto him. He gets interrupted. It's still match point. The pressure is on. Wincher onto Mez. Mind control. Jamie's trying to find a hex, but he's not able to finish the cast. He's just under so much pressure. They get a fear onto Met instead, and Waz is going to retreat away during that fear. Raikou is just resetting cooldowns with the shifting power, but they left Meh behind in the middle of the map. They're trying to blast him down here as the Dreadstalkers are launched, but Waz is chasing down Swapsy. He's in line of his port, so I don't really like the positioning right now. They unleash shield root Waz away from Swapsy, but if he ports, Waz is just immediately going to reconnect with this positioning. I think they need to maneuver differently, or it could be the end of their tournament run. Beautiful setup coming out here. Double fear. They get the Dragon's Breath Sheep there onto next as well. That's going to be the Trinket Sacrifice. And Swapsy might just go down through it. Big damage coming out. Riker gets hexed, but it breaks. Unfortunately, Waz going for the Kidney Shot. Going for the Cheap Shot here onto Jamie. Swapsy so low. He's on match point. He might just die here. Echo going for the win. But Swapsy will be able to stay alive. The Mortal Coil comes out onto Waz. Ray of Hope connects here for man. Lightning Lasso onto Waz. He's going to be able to stay alive there with the Crimson Vial. Catches a big heal from the Ray of Hope. Full Sheep connects onto man. Arcane Blast being casted by, by Raikou. He's got the power infusion swaps the trinkets the kidney shot teleports away behind the pillar next reconvenes with him full cheap shot onto next nice axe toss there onto Waz slowing him down for just a second sheep onto jamie ring of frost onto the demonic tyrant Waz gets gripped back here onto man man now stuck in a hammer of justice next trying to counter aggress here gets a full blinding light here onto man but where's the damage right is already at the pillar running back man is already at the pillar and echo are able to recover now full blind onto next they're pushing him for the win right can he find the polymorph he's going for the fake cast jamie trying to land the hex he gets interrupted by the chastise from meh and meh going for the heals there actually big Ooh. damage here onto waz he's got no he's got cloak of shadows he might need to use it drops super low right there the crimson vial is going to be enough healing here vanish coming out for waz reconnects onto swapsy but still very very low on hp here the counter pressure of jamie is definitely paying its weight in gold Oh, Waz getting pressured. If he makes even one misstep, I think he could go down in this game. They have such a huge lead, though, so I think it would be a misstep at this point. Swapsy ports back behind the pillar. Waz grapples in. Does he have a stun lock for next? No, he's just continuing after Swapsy with that blade rush, looking to reconnect. They interrupt Swapsy on the fear. He goes for a hand to go down. They get roots onto Waz. Mez in position to get crowd control onto next. Next is trying to escape. Big lightning bolts out from Jamie onto Waz, trying to pressure him. Lava burst incoming. He needs that ascendance, Brock. He needs it now. They need a miracle of pressure if they want to still take this. Mez charging in. Trying to pre-fade the incoming stuns and they get the chastise on the next they get the full fear they sheep the shaman there's no tremor he has to wall he killing sprees the port but it doesn't teleport him alongside swaps i was expecting him to in this position waz gets low down below half has cloak he just needs to not be greedy ray of hope is going to come through and absorb the hits man is getting big heals into it and it should be a pretty positive ray healing him back to 90 percent but there's a stun now onto meh waz is still the main pressure point he vanishes away pressure on swapsy gouge onto next no he's got a trinket but he doesn't want to trinket a gouge he reconnects on to Swapsy. He's trying to heal him up. Met is playing so aggressive here. He gets stunned on his mind games. Swapsy's trying to take control. Jamie is suppression fire onto Waz, forcing the Cloak of Shadows. There's a chance. There is a chance for Admirals Esports to win this right now. No Cloak of Shadows, and Met has used pretty much every defensive. If they can get some crowd control on Met, and I mean literally anything, a coil, a hodge at the same time that they stun Waz, they could just take him down. Yeah, Matt still 10 seconds away from his Trinket Void Shift, which would be the next line of defense here. But I was just playing it safely here for just a second. Mind Games do full connect fear. on the swaps. They're waiting for that sacrifice to fade. They get the full fear here. They get the full uh, kidney shot into a mind control onto Jamie. Full cheap shot onto next. Where is the follow up though? Raikou tries to move in. He trinkets out of the Hammer of Justice. Gets a Dragon's Breath into a full sheep. Swapsy kiting for his life right now. Doesn't have anything to stay alive with. Waz reconnects. Beautiful damage. The mirror images are slowing Swapsy, but Swapsy's doing a great job just kiting Mez. Uh, <laughs> and Waz and uh, Waz now is going to be able to reconnect here back onto his target. Still a minute left on that Cloak of Shadows, but he does have the Cheat Death, he does have the Smoke Bomb, and he does have the Vanish, so he has some tools available. Shadow Steps over, gets the full Kidney Shot. Bob comes out from Next. Still a minute left on Next Bubble, but he has rotated back his Trinket, so if he's able to rotate back through that oh. Bubble as well, I would actually say that Admiral Esports are looking good right now. Waz taking a lot of damage from Jamie, and Jamie so far being the free wizard in this matchup is doing exactly what he needs to do. Nana Hex is on right to shut him down Whoa. and create counter pressure.
Arcane Surge connected, but they don't have any damage to back it up. Raikou's trying to chase down next, but Meh actually gets stunned first. I think going after Meh here would be perfect. Waz grapples in, stun swaps in, denies that swap from happening. He's trying to get pressure. Jamie's trying to keep him off. He gets chastised, swaps. He's going to port back to the pillar. They need to stall for 30 seconds. That Divine Shield is so precious here for next in the next couple of seconds. Waz still with no cloak for 17. Ne Meh is trying to pick him up, but it's still a lot of damage. He gets coiled off into the middle of the map. Big heals come in from Meh with that Guardian Angel, and he should be able to stay aggressive during this time. Meh is lining up a Holy Fire, trying to add damage to his team to take down the tanky Warlock that is Swapsy, but Swapsy ports away from the Holy Fire. They go for a Mind Control. Next is in a Sheep. Swapsy's all by himself. He's trying to kite Waz, but Waz is sprinting him down through those Curse of Exhaustions to get uptime. Lava Burst incoming from Jamie, but Swapsy's getting low. He gates back over to Next, but Waz can reconnect, and now he's on top of him. He gets a Cheap Shot. This could be it for them. It's their tournament lives on the line. Is he going to survive? A Blessing of Protection sweeps through, but they spell steal that off immediately, so Swapsy's still not comfortable. He's trying to get a Tyrant. He's trying to go for the kill, but Waz blocks it. Cloak of Shadows is up. He's immune to magic damage, and he is just gunning down Swapsy, whose wall comes up in one more second. Can he survive to it on any resolve available? Next is pulling off Miracles, man. He's a newcomer to the AWC. He's facing down the Goliath, the Titans that are Echo. He's keeping his team alive into the seven minute mark at this point, into the grand final, setting them up for the best possible situation. They can still do this. It's still possible right now. Waz with no Cloak of Shadows, no Trinket, meh. Basically no mana left. Activates the Apotheosis, pushes in. Riker procs the Bloodlust, looking for the Arcane Surge, trying to fake as Jamie, but Jamie's pushing him back, pinning him at the pillar. Arcane Surge coming out there onto one of those little imps there just to get the buff there for Raikou. And here comes the damage onto Swapsy. Sacrifice comes through though for next. Preemptively there, anticipating the crowd control and now getting aggressive, spamming out the Flash of Lights onto Swapsy. Still so much damage coming out here and Mind Control actually being casted out by uh, meh. And into a full sheep here onto next counter spell onto swapsy that's going to be the unending result immediately being popped 39 percent dampening they need to find the damage here double fear coming out onto jamie and swapsy full gouge onto swapsy and i think this is going to be it swapsy so low hp teleports oh. away trying to stay alive waz is right behind him trying to chase him down swapsy with the demonic soul burn trying to kite and trying to stay away and he is able to recover once again next working miracles bubbles out of the kidney shot they need counter pressure immediately right in a full hex waz is dropping down to half HP. How are they going to stay alive? Man still has answers. You can't be too greedy. The Guardian Spirit comes out onto Waz. Swapsy teleporting away once again with the Soul Burn Demonic Portal. And he's going to be able to close the gap here. Coil. Waz once again gets coiled on tyrant. the Shadow Step. Demonic Tyrant has been summoned. And they might have enough pressure here to take down Waz, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Swapsy gets dropped. Echo will win the Grand Finals in Europe against Admiral Esports 4-1. Oh man, they, they put up as much of a fight as they could. They got Med down to zero mana. Uh, it looks like Jamie is tapping out. I was wondering if they were going to play here, but they may have got the Divine Him off out of close. No way. They played that out. They gave it everything that they had. They threw whatever they could to try and take down Echo. But once again, in Season 2, Echo will remain undefeated, uncontested. First place of Europe. They will be your champions, and they're just looking just polished on fire. So many classes, so many comps, so versatile and so clean. And it's just now, like, how are these teams going to level up moving forward into the future because these guys are just too good yeah i mean honestly uh, it was a great performance here by everybody involved i think in this grand finals you know this is why they are in the grand finals these are the best teams europe has to offer i mean look at swapsy here how many warlocks will stay alive in this situation you know he gets the soul burn he gets the demonic circle keeps kiting uses that sprint and every single time was reconnects he's there he's already pre-faked he's got the precognition running spamming out the fears trying to buy himself time they get the hex onto raikou they get the counter pressure onto was and that's the thing you can't just play to live you need to actually find counter pressure that's the only way Swaps is actually going to stay alive. And then again, gets that demonic circle or gets that, um, uh, you know, teleport with the sprint, with the soul burn, was reconnects, instant coil, calls out the drag stalkers, gets the demonic tyrant. And here, he just needs to give that tyrant a little bit more time to actually fire away here onto Waz. But Waz actually kicks the tyrant instantaneously. You can see it there on the bottom left, his kick icon. Uh, he just insta kicks it and continues to stay aggressive there. And uh, he knows that. I can just kick this tyrant and then kill Swapsy and then it will disappear. So uh, that's how we're going to deal with this one. And um, Echo, uh, what a dominant team. You know, we saw why they are so feared, why their win record is so good. I mean, I when mean, you have Channel on the bench as well, it just pressures teams into these situations. I'm just saying, we had EU players come over to NA, not making top eight. We had NA players coming to EU, absolutely <laughs> dominating the scene. I'm wondering if uh, any other EU players are going to try and run away to NA or something uh, in the future if, <laughs> if Echo is that terrifying of a team.
And maybe it helps as well if you... Maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, that's the reason why the first one has says NA on it. Right, right. I mean, Channel is a beast, but it, it definitely helps when you join a team that just hasn't lost in as far as I can remember, as long as I can remember. But definitely something to consider. And, you know, uh, you are absolutely right, though. NA is going to be super exciting as well. And we have that coming up as well. This is not the end of the show, guys. We still have plenty of more games. We have, you know, Team Liquid, Golden Guardians, Luminosity. We got to Comify. We got all the big gamers in North America as well. Still waiting to go head to head. Um, so I think nobody could hear what Aya said there, but she basically said oh, no! Europe is the best region in the game and congrats to Echo. Um, if uh, they were facing NA, they probably would have won, but they're going to get the yeah, first place uh, medal with the uh, EU on it. So I'm pretty sure something like that is what she said. Yeah, um, yeah, you got it. You got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, man. It happens. All right. Well, <laughs> I mean, this is such a long series, you know, I <laughs> forgot that I, I was muted. But yeah, no, you, you covered everything. Um, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll say it again. Congrats to Echo. We're going to get an interview with them in just a moment here. But um, we and then also I'm excited for North America coming up here. And we can like we can kind of do an overview. I'm not sure how long this interview is going to take to get set up. But you know, we, of course, do have the second half of the day for North America. We've got some teams waiting there. We've got Golden Guardians versus Ducomified for that first up match. And I'm, I'm really excited about this, Super Tease, because, you know, we didn't really get to see Duc uh, Golden Guardians in full yesterday because WizK yeah. was, was unfortunately missing. So I think I'm looking forward to this match. Well, hopefully he's here today too. I don't know if that was just something that was planned or if that was something not in their control or, or what was going on with that. But yeah, it would be really terrible if we couldn't see the Golden Guardians as the four player roster that we expect to see here in the finals, considering they had that big pop off moment in the middle of the cup stage where they won that cup. So I really hope that they're all here. We can see them at full fighting force. Um, Ducomified on the other hand is a team that came from the gauntlet and they looked so good. Like I'd say easily the most improved North American team um, on, on the side of Ducomified comified just throughout the series and how clean they're looking on the moonkin rogue right now um turning on the holy priest they just had ins an insane run in the gauntlet just dominating everybody um that tried to come their way so uh, yeah there, this is going to be an explosive series hopefully golden guardians are all here um, it, what could be strange though about this series is i don't know if whiskey is going to be playing shadow priest I, I don't know if they're going to play mage lock or if maybe they're down a bunch of points they just play shadow priest rogue shaman because that's what they do if they're down two points they bring that out uh that could be an exciting moment if it does happen uh, but i'm expecting some type of paladin stuff going on with absturge and likely some mage lock stuff from the golden guardians this weekend yeah i am too and we'll see that in just a moment but as promised we do have an interview and we are joined by raiku hello can you hear us no Yo, hello i can hear you yeah hi wow hi. all right well second win for the expansion how how does that feel be on top of the world. Oh, I feel, it feels good. Yeah, I don't know. We won in Shadowlands as well, basically in the same team, except now we have Chan instead of Chas. But I mean, it feels great. It feels good. And but it, when we won, Chan was like, "There's zero excitement. I don't feel anything." <laughs> so there's zero excitement. I don't feel anything. <laughs> Lose that zero so much. win, feel nothing. <laughs> it sounds yeah. so much like him. Unfortunately, I can see it. Super Tease, did you have a question? I think I cut you off. Um, I mean, did you guys think that Admirals Esports were going to even able to be able to win a game? Did you think that their Hunter Death Knight was threatening? Maybe if they had more time on that comp, if that comp would have been something that could be able to beat you? Um, I mean, PhD came when you was could be hard because like we only picked up Outlaw on Wednesday since they got buffed, right? And Mage Lock is good into PhD came, but I don't think it's good into LSP. So we needed like a comp that could like beat both. Uh, and Subfire, I think, is not good at all in the PSDK. So Ark and Outlier was good because we could play, play both uh, versions. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I um, mean, uh, you guys uh, kind of popped off. You didn't really get to play too much uh, during the regular season. Uh, how, how did it feel to actually get to play some games now and actually contribute a little bit off the bench? I mean, it feels good. Uh, ever since the Mage Rework, we've been kind of only been playing Mage Comps, like Subfire and Mage Lock. Uh, the Arcane Outlaw, though, was something we just picked up on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, we just went with it. It's really strong and it can, it's very tanky. So we can win a mana <laughs> a lot of games. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's why you guys are winning on mana. It's, it has nothing to do with meh as well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he always wins on mana, no matter what healer he's on. Yeah, you know, we kind of noticed that true. as well. Uh, it doesn't matter what he's playing, apparently, on Dragon or on Holy Priest. Uh, uh, but it, it really looks like you guys uh, got together, and uh, you guys haven't skipped a beat. You know, last uh, year or last season, you guys uh, you know, kind of blasted, and, and this season as well. Um, so uh, it just looks like... Uh, uh, you know, do, do you guys feel like you're going to get, uh, you know, complacent? Like you guys are going to, uh, are you guys putting down the same amount of practice uh, like last season and this season, for example? Um, or are you guys uh, like maybe not, uh, uh, you know, putting down as many hours, uh, would you say? Um, are you guys like feeling too like relaxed or are you still like, you know, feeling the pressure? Does that make sense? Uh, no, it makes sense. Uh, actually, during both cup seasons, like uh, Dragonflight Season 1 and Dragonflight Season 2, we barely practiced like any of the cups. We did like, on the day of the tournament, we make sure we warm up like an hour before, but we didn't really play ladder or war games at all, like except the one hour before the tournament days. But every time before like the grand final, same with Season 1 and now, every day at 10 o'clock, you just have to be there. It doesn't really matter. You just have to be there and we do it every single day as soon as like, Cup four ends or something. Ah, uh, we take a small break, maybe like a week. Mel likes to take a small vacation, and then we just grind every night. Yeah, it shows. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say it. Also, it did. Whoever answered the, you know, the questionnaire that we sent, everyone said that you guys were basically practicing twenty four hours a day. Uh, but actually, I do have a question about Meh for you. Meh is uh, he's nominated for Healer MVP of the season. Do you want to vouch for him a little bit so that chat will vote for him? I mean, May is insane. I mean, like everyone's like, he can only play Priest. He's a Priest one trick last expansion. We can only play Rogue Mage. And I mean, we won the Cups playing Dragon, Boomkin, uh, Evoke, uh, the Warlock, Boomkin, Evoker all the time. So he picked up Evoker and then Holy Pala got reworked. And I mean, he won a game on Paladin today as well. He's insane. Yeah, very, very true. Okay, well, I think uh, we only have a few more questions left, but do you want to maybe like predict for NA? Is there any team on North America that you're rooting for? I mean, I like Luminosity because Serelian plays Mage as well, and I think that's the only Mage we're going to see most likely. Um, but I did hear, actually, I was talking to Sam a bit last night, he thinks Golden Guardians might make the full run, actually, all the way to the finals. And uh, I mean, that team's awesome, said so that? I hope so. Yeah, Sam M said it. He thinks okay. the, uh, the Golden right. Guardians will make it all the way. Okay. okay. That's, the, that's, the that's good for my prediction. I need yeah. that to happen. I hope yeah, that my predictions right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I mean, congratulations once again to you and your team. Do you have any final shout outs or thoughts you'd like to say before we let you go? I mean, shout out to my teammates. Shout out to Echo for sponsoring us. And uh, yeah, shout out to you guys for uh, casting the AWC and shout out to the AWC in general. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. You have any favorite yeah. caster? Oh my god, <laughs> uh, oh. he can't just put him under like that. What? <laughs> I like you all equally. Uh, you should have said Venuki. He's not here. <laughs> 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 oh, oh gosh. thank you. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you so much again, Raiku, and yeah, we will thank see you, you, thank you. In, in the next one. Okay. Congrats once again to Echo. We'll see if his prediction of Golden Guardians is correct because that is the team that we will be seeing next up. And they're on the chopping block as well. They are down there in that lower bracket. They're facing elimination here against Dukamified. Dukamified, of course, they are the team that came out of the gauntlet for North America, kind of from like the sort of the middle range of it as well. They've come a long way to get here. Um, and it's kind of coming, coming all to a head right here as well, Supertees. Do you think that they can stay in it?
Uh, I definitely think that they can still stay in it. Um, they're looking like such a strong contender, but North America is also just really evenly matched. It seems like it, you could have a grand finals with almost any combination if we didn't already know Liquid was there um, between these remaining teams. They're also strong. They have great options for the current meta. Um, and they're so versatile. I mean, I, I I thought it was a quite a big treat to see Prev finally back on the Boomkin yesterday. Considering it was like a it was a Boomkin meta, but he was playing Shadow Priest the whole time. Uh, so it's nice to see him come on Boomkin. It wasn't enough though to get a win. Uh, Liquid seemed seemingly still had their number there, and then the Mage Lock that they used wasn't as effective. Um, but this this series between the Golden Guardians and Dukamified, it, it's not a free win. I don't think it's a free win either way. No. Most certainly not. So uh, we'll have to find out. We will be heading to a break. Let us know in chat which North American team you are rooting for. And we'll see you in just a moment.
Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're just now tuning in, you unfortunately just missed the European finals. It was Echo that were the victor for it. Now we are moving on to North America. First up, starting off in the lower bracket, we are seeing Golden Guardians face off against Ducomified, like we touched base on before we headed to a break. Ducomified, they were the team that won the gauntlet came out of that alive, and now they're facing off here against Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians, they had a bit of a rough go of it yesterday as they were missing one of their star players. So considering that they should be full throttle today, hopefully then, who do we feel like, I mean, how do we feel like the series is gonna go? What do we wanna be looking out for? Well, I think the biggest thing is Golden Guardians is going to be at full power. Like you mentioned yesterday, they did not have their fourth member. And I think one of their most key players, I mean, WizK is, uh, he plays a pivotal role in their roster, you know, playing the Shadow Priest, the Moonkin, the Warlock. So not having him available is obviously going to be really, really bad. That being said, Ducomified, they are looking good. I mean, bringing in the Outlaw Rogue Moonkin specialization, uh, it seems like their team is really well-rounded and very threatening. So I feel like this is a series that could go either way. Um, but, you know, I got a chance to speak to Absurge a little bit. He's feeling very confident. You know, they're kind of shaking off what happened yesterday. Uh, and they feel really, really good about their chances Ooh. here today. You love to see that. Oh, you love to see that. Peekaboo on the sub rogue, WizK on the Shadow Priest, the classic Golden Guardians. And Ducomified, they're going to meet them with a subtlety rogue of their own, Calvish on sub rogue, and Nick on balance druid. Absurd this time around, though, will have to be a paladin and not a shaman. He's going to have to flex a bit in terms of multi classing in this current patch. Is he going to be able to deliver Peekaboo already in stealth, sneaking across the map, gets a sap. They're trying to find somebody in stealth, but they're not finding anybody just yet. They might even be forced to open on the Holy Priest. Whiskey is just mind spiking, getting combat for Absurge. No sap. They're right on top of each oh. other. How do they not see each other? Pikachu immediately steps out first, but he gets clotheslined by Calvish. The first cheap shot into a clone. Not a good start for the Golden Guardians. Massive pressure onto Whiskey. He gets cycloned on his dispersion, and Ducomified are popping off right now. Kidney shot onto Absurge. The dispersion is over. If they can reconnect onto Whiskey, he's trying to turn it around, but he gets kicked on Shadow as he is put further behind. Nick fakes the kick, gets a clone on Pikachu. Nick is just popping off. Look at these clones are down to everybody. It's Clone City. Yeah, lots of Cyclones coming in here from Nick. As he's getting really aggressive. Blessing Protection trades here by Absurge with the Sacrifice. They're getting good counter pressure here on the Nick as Golden Guardians are striking back. Kearney goes into the Spirit of the Redeemer. Just going to be bombing in Flash Heals to keep his team nice and topped off. A big setup here on Calvish. Just dying through heals. The pressure from Golden Guardians is high. Nice double fear from WizK as they're continuing this push here on to Nick. All right, let's see if they can keep him pressured. He's pre-bared a lot of these stuns, but these repentances from Absurge are really pesky for Kearney. Such a long amount of crowd control. Here comes another setup. Cheap shots onto Whiskey. Fear on Absurge. Clone on Peekaboo. Whiskey isolated, trying to find the masses. Belly finds it, clutches it. Now Nick on the back foot. Kidney shot into Kearney. They're trying to turn it around. Nick is just huddling down in bear form with Heart of the Wild, trying to bolster his defenses for this attack. But he's playing pretty close here. He's trying to jump in. Absurge looks like he, oh, he wasn't able to avoid the interrupt of the solar beam. And if they can keep stopping that tier's deliverance, Absurge's healing is going to be limited. He's going for it. Again behind the pillar, he gets Tears of Deliverance, he gets Hand of Divinity, he's got big Holy Lights available at any point. Repentance out of the fear from Absurge, it is on DR. I can't imagine they kill him in that, but they have a Hammer of Justice instead. Can they power through the bear form of Nick and the Bark Skin? There's so much damage from the Golden Guardians right now. Nick is just getting blasted, they swap to Calvish. He's dead out of nowhere. Cloak of Shadows forced, Void Shift forced, and Golden Guardians are punching back hard. Look at WizK's damage. I mean, he's over 4 million damage. The next highest is around two. So he is really carrying in terms of pressure so far in this match. A playmaker wants to show off here. Wasn't available yesterday, but he is back with a vengeance. Boy Torrent's going to be channeled out here on Nick. He will trade out the Shadow Meld to avoid that, but he is positioned so far away. Uh, this is really dangerous for Nick. If he gets caught here by Peekaboo behind the pillar, it could be lights out. We'll get back into position with Kearney as he does get that life grip to safety. And now Ducomify is going to be looking to strike back, potentially setting up here on Peekaboo. It's a gouge into a stun. Do they have the damage? Take down Peekaboo. Doesn't look like it. Absurge is there to block the attack and keep his team alive. Yeah, beautiful fear there as well. They put Nick across the map. He couldn't connect. And here comes crowd control from Absurge. He gets a precognition. He's going for the repentance. He gets the repentance. Looks like Kearney was able to death it. He gets silenced instead, but that silence is not going to be nearly long enough. Solar Beam comes down, but Absurge is able to escape. Whiskey's blasting out damage. So many mind spikes right now just coming in. He gets kidney shot. They need to force dispersion. They're actually pretty far behind on the side of Ducomified. They do get a cycle on an Absurge. A perfect opportunity to force that dispersion. Whiskey, he actually trinkets out on this setup. Kearney, pre-angel 
angel form, anticipating crowd control. I think he pre-angeled the fear, but Nick is still dying. Oh. He's just dying to nothing right now. He's in angel form, free healing. Is the ray going to be positive onto Nick? Oh. It's barely positive. Nick is still almost dying. Back into bear once again. Absturge looking for a repentance. Gets knocked back on it by Nick. But I think Absturge, if he gets over there fast enough, they're going to go for a gouge instead. Play it safe. Go for instant CC and now reconnect onto Nick. Can they peel him off in time? Nick gets gripped away just a few inches. They get a cyclone onto Peekaboo. That's going to stop a lot of the engagement. Absturge, his mana, though, is so bad right now. If they keep playing this out, they're going to lose on mana. Chastise Absturge. Trinket sacks the fear. It breaks the damage. And it sacks redirecting damage from Peekaboo back to Absturge. Absturge trying to find a repentance. Kearney goes behind the pillar, but he walks into a full fear from Wizk. Absurd in position to get the repentance, and here it could be the slam dunk if they can connect onto Nick. Nick sees it coming. He's in bear. He's ducking for cover. He jumps back behind the pillar and navigates that situation expertly. Now they're trying to turn it around onto Peekaboo. He's on the run. He's into a cheap shot. Massive spell onto the clone instantly from Wizk. Absurd now into a solar beam. This could be it for Peekaboo. He's so low. Oh my god, the damage coming in. Wizk barely clutches that void shift, but it is overlapped with the divine shield of Absturge, and suddenly Dukama Fighter back in the game. Yeah, Peekaboo looking for a counterattack here with a cheap shot on Nick, kitty shot on Calvish. It's getting very low, but Kearney is there to deflect, and Kearney's mana is just so good right now on that Holy Priest. Definitely going to have that late game advantage if they can't survive, but I don't know if they're going to be able to. Nick is getting slow. There's the silence. Huge damage here from the side of Golden Guardians as they want to claim this game number one. Nick is barely holding on with cheap shot on a Kearney. Power Infusion trades out. Big heals on a Nick, but it is just not enough. Look at Wiz K. He's doing unhealable damage in this situation. Void Torn in the back line. It's negative. Nick can he hold on. It is a negative ray, and Nick will fall. Wiz K, I mean, his damage is unbelievable. The amount of pressure he was able to put out for the Golden Guardians. That was absolutely <laughs> insane. You know, we didn't see any Shadow Priests throughout the weekend, but WizK wasn't here. And now, now look who's here. WizK on the Shadow Priest, absolutely destroying kids. I bet, I bet Golden Guardians wish he was here yesterday, because uh, oh, now, yeah. now they're in a tough spot. Like, you got to do a deep run in the lower bracket, but this was insane pressure, start to finish from them. Excellent defense. They didn't let that start, because their start of this game is pretty bad. It felt like they were just getting cloned up, constantly low on their cool, on their on their health bars, and it looked really unrecoverable. But they didn't. They just kind of walked that off. Said, "All right, this is the opener. We're gonna double everyone's damage." Says Wizk. It's like right, you take it and double it. That's what Wizk I mean, does. He's just <laughs> he's just absolutely destroying everybody here against Dukamified in game number one and. Uh, Dukamified, though, they had a lot of opportunities. They were creating a lot of pressure, but it seemed like after the opener that WizK just became not a good target. Um, they didn't attack him at all after that opening stage. They started going after Peekaboo. Nick got so many fakes on interrupts in this game. I don't know if we have a metric for, like, interrupts fake. Like, right here. If he doesn't fake that, he's already dead. Precog uptime. Uh, uh, precog uptime. Can we precog uptime for Nick? I actually want to know, because I swear he faked, like, every kick from Peekaboo this game. It was Every time I looked at him, he had precog up, and it, it can be really tough, especially in those tight situations where you need need to get the clone or you die to be able to kind of just have the gall to actually fake it um, and survive. But in these final moments, he was in bear. He renewaled into the ray, but even the renewal into the ray was not enough to turn it in a positive direction. Kearney had no way out. Absurge was there, even if he did, for a repentance as follow-up, and that was it. Lights out, and Golden Guardians are back. Whiskey is here. He's firing on all cylinders in game one. I feel like Golden Guardians, this has been kind of... I don't want to say it's been a secret for them, because during the cup stages, it kind of felt like Moonkins just rose up over Shadow Priest. But Moonkins did get some nerfs, um, especially to High Winds, which is that debuff uh, on damage after a Cyclone. Uh, that, that's got nerfed, and a lot of Druids don't even play it anymore. Uh, so maybe Shadow Priest are, are back here. And I know the Golden Guardians, this is a composition they may have been saving for the finals, like keeping it kind of a secret that Shadow Priest Rogue is, is in fact back. In these type of matchups so we'll see if they can continue the success in this series obviously a great start for them keep in mind this is an elimination series so there's lots on the line for this um if you win this you're going to be into that top three position if you lose you are going to be eliminated we'll see if what do comified can do to battle it back because they are another team that has a lot of flexibility like there's a ton of different compositions that they could potentially run here but what is going to be better than this into the shadow priest rogue is the question
I think they're probably going to play the same comp. I'm wondering maybe a, if a smaller map is better or worse. Like, Absurge on a Paladin, I feel like Paladin into Rogue is actually really good. You just get so many stun breakers, so many ways to avoid crowd control. Uh, I feel like it's it's actually a, almost a better pick than in a Shaman meta. If you're going to do like a Rogue meta, you'd probably rather Paladin be the best healer um, and have the have the Paladin on your side, unlike Kearney. Yeah. Because uh, you just get so many extra crowd control breakers and that Repentance is so threatening as well as Synergy in this comp because they don't have a Polymorph DR. So adding an 8 second extra crowd control that you don't have shared diminishing return i think makes this comp even scarier yeah looking good i mean whiskey really popping off he wasn't available yesterday like we mentioned but today he is back with a vengeance we're going to be going into the draft phase now and it is going to be up to do comified they can choose a map golden guardians will have to choose a comp and then do comified can counter comp them so we'll see uh what they decide to do it looks like the draft is <laughs> all done and dusted they are ready to go both these teams leading with the exact same compositions as game number one. We're going to Ashamane's Fall. I would say Ashamane's Fall is very similar to the Grand Arena, so I think it's going to be a similar matchup. All right, can Dukamify pull it off? Maybe maybe they need to not go WizK from the start. I feel like they went him just because he's the only DPS out of stealth, but it seemed like after the opener, they couldn't get any pressure on the Shadow Priest. He was just so durable, and maybe if their attempts were on the Peekaboo sooner, they would have burned more important cooldowns and been closer in terms of ending the game. Um, could be the question. Maybe they could also try some Paladin stuff. Um, an opener on the Paladin might be scary. You might get a Divine Shield right away. Maybe you get an MD and you can race him down. Um, could be an option for Dukamified, but this this was still close. Very, very close. Lots of close calls at any point, but Dukamified need to keep playing at the same level. If if Nick suddenly stops getting these fake casts and he's getting shut down too much, then Golden Guardians are going to steamroll them. So there's a lot of pressure on Nick here in this situation uh, to not be interrupted because if he's not getting those casts at key moments, it, it's game over. Yeah, I mean, you, you touched on a really important point here. You can see, uh, I think WizK is back. Yeah, he liked that pretty fast. It, he liked that pretty <laughs> fast. That's true, though. I mean, yeah, you could tell that damage is absolutely incredible. It's like having two Nicks on your team in a matchup like that, you know. So you lose that on the Cyclone, but obviously Shadow Priests have a considerable amount of crowd control themselves. And what I was going to say is, when you're comparing the Paladin and the Holy Priest, a Paladin in a matchup like this is really nice because not only do you have the extra stun breaks for your team with the blessing of protections. But you can also break out a crowd control yourself with, you know, the Divine Shield as well as your Medallion. So lots of options to break out a crowd control. I believe Absurd is playing a Dwarf as well, which is going to be a way to get out of that Root Solar Beam. So Golden Guardians, they have a lot of answers for the different setups Dukamified uh, has available. Um, and Kearney doesn't have that same freedom, right? If he gets caught in crowd control, he can shrink it out. After that, he's kind of a, a sitting duck. All right, let's see if they can set it up here. They're looking strong in game number one. Whiskey is ready to go. They need to keep it up, though. Keep up the pressure if they want to win this, because Dukamify are not going to go down without a fight. They get a sap. Kearney gets sapped at the same time. Who are they going to open on? Calvish is still waiting right next to Absturge. Gets another sap. Nick gets opened on. So they could open Balance Druid. Maybe it's a bait. Peekaboo's not falling for it. He's not opening. Yeah, he's going to open. Calvish needs to get there quick. He steps over for a cheap shot, but Peekaboo immediately. Cloak of Shadows off the disarm. Peekaboo going all in on this opener on to Nick. And they could punish that Cloak of Shadows later on. Calvish going to pre-evasion, anticipating some stuns onto himself here as they're trying to target down WizK. Cheap shot after cheap shot. No medallions forced on the side of the Golden Guardians. The Golden Guardians still have momentum. Nick is quite low. So much pressure. Is he just, is he just what? dead? What is going on right now? Super-powered Golden Guardians shredding nick to pieces at the moment almost every cooldown burned through in less than a minute and nick is going to try and play with confidence he gets a clone on whiskey to try and turn around punish that cloak of shadows from peekaboo in the opener on the disarm they have a blind on absters they need more than a blind and calvish doesn't look like he's got it he gets in range for a gouge shadow fiend out on a peekaboo can they punish that cloak of shadows they're really close to the punish but they get shut down and now we can see kearney ducking into that spirit of redeemer immune in crowd control but even immune to cc nick is struggling another ray is it going to be positive on to nick it looks positive for now as we see it being yellow and he'll bounce back to full with a positive ray peekaboo now set up on once again cheap shot after cheap shot but no damage the star surge is just not there during the stun lock nick gets into eclipse clones on absurd they're trying to finish him with a gouge can they take peekaboo down here in game number two really close to it and whiskey blocks it void shift redirecting his health over to peekaboo and they survive but void shift is a major objective now down on the side of the golden guardians and dukamified can keep playing from this point nick needs to be careful no bark skin his healer is feared he cyclones peekaboo Whiskey gets interrupted on his Void Torrent. Good shutdowns. Now a clone on Whiskey. Cheap shot on Peekaboo. Clean swap of crowd control by Dukamify. Cheap on the trinket. Oh! And good night, Peekaboo. Dukamify tie it up one to one. 
Wow, I mean, Absurge, if you look, he still has everything. There's the Divine Shield, there's the Trinket, there's Sacks, there's Bops. I think he, I think what ended up happening was when WizK used his Void Shift, it was also a really greedy moment for Absurge. He was waiting for the crowd control and he was just spamming Lay on Hands. So I think he was actually on forbearance from Lay on Hands. We'll have to wait and see for the replay, but I'm pretty sure uh, that's what happened there at the end. Wasn't able to break out of the stuns, but that was a wicked swap there by Ducomified. Oh my god, I was thinking like, oh, Golden Guardians got the Void Shift earlier, but they just kept the pressure, and I think I've seen it in the pregame, like focusing on the Rogue as opposed to the Shadow Priest created so much more pressure for Decomified just every single moment. I'm thinking, oh no, is Pikachu going to go down? The Cloak on the Disarm, like can he really get away with the Cloak on the Disarm? And it looks like that is not going to be the case. That instant stun on the Trinket from Calvish, like they're newcomers, but they're also new blood. They got the, the fast reactions. They're ready to go here in this series. And that swap of crowd control, man, just switching the clones around, switching the stuns around, and just cracking into Peekaboo, stun on the Trinket immediately, and just sending him at this moment. I don't think he's expected to die through cheat oh, death, I can't no. imagine. Um, but he's, he's, he's going to go down. Two seconds on Vanish. Like, man, uh, the Golden Guardians. I mean, that's one of those moments where if you're Ducomified, you are so stoked. Like, you're, you're happy <laughs> to take a win like that. But if you're Golden Guardians, it's like Absurge is just barely out of line of sight. Peekaboo, he trinkets, but he's got two seconds left on his Vanish that would have saved him. Like, the timing on this kill from Ducomified was extremely tight. We'll see it again. So, who gets Peekaboo's positioning? He's in a Cyclone. Calvish sets up. He goes after Absurge. Absurge wants to avoid the stun, but... By doing so, he puts himself in a position where he's actually just out of line of sight of Peekaboo, so he can't actually trinket and save him, you know? Though Nick being able to easily fall up to crowd control with like a bash. So, a little bit awkward there, but we're all tied up. Do Comified strike back with his composition? I'm getting the feeling that we're just going to be seeing these two compositions back yeah. and forth for the rest of this series. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't know. I could see Golden Guardian switching. I, I feel like going after Peekaboo is a lot more lethal, although this was like a moment of blunder, but. I think Peekaboo is a lot squishier. And, um, mage Lock? Yeah, mage, I was <laughs> thinking Mage Lock um, could, could be a possible answer for them. Not not a guaranteed one uh, by any means. And you, you can lose games like this. I feel like this is like the number one way to lose games against Moon Rogue. I mean, Kalvish could have dueled him too um, at the final second. He could have maybe Shadowy dueled him, and he may have just died to dots at that point if he really wanted to send that when Absurge was around the corner and coming back into line of sight. So... That chain could have kept going, uh, or you could have even dueled Absturge to remove him from line of sight and let Nick finish him off um, with how low he just got bursted. I can't. I just. I feel like they weren't expecting to take that much damage because they just traded Void, Shoff, void Shift on that last stun, but this clone swap with a kidney was just so good. Um, just shut all the damage down, and I, Golden Guardians are thinking, all right, we win next go. Like we got Kearney's trinket, we win next go. They're not thinking we die next go. <laughs> They're thinking we win next go, and they just got caught right there in that moment. And the Comified put a point on the board as a result. The Comified is just such a sick team. I, I still feel like people don't give these these players the respect they deserve. Like Kearney, Calvish, Nick, they've all been so solid in the North American scene for such a long time. They all can multi class, but. It's just really good to see them finally come together with this roster and you know make it into the situation where they're actually in the finals uh it's been really really a joy to watch but let's see it is going to be the same thing so i, I really think it mm is game five potentially between these two teams back and forth i uh, will see if golden guardians can pick up a momentum here or if Tukamify is going to continue these wicked setups here on the peekaboo it seems that golden guardians the longer the game goes the better it is for them um, just based on damage and numbers. And so Ducomified, they're looking for short games, fast wins, fastest line, who has no trinket, who has no cooldowns, who's the best target, should we switch, and trying to find that fastest line to victory. Usually in a tournament, you want to be the team that can win just by surviving. Typically, that's the, the team that ends up winning the tournament. That strategy has been predominant throughout, you know, uh, centuries of World of Warcraft esports. That's how old this game is now um, at this point. But you, you really want to be on that side. So Ducomified are going to need some big, flashy plays, I think, if they want to win this series overall. And the Golden Guardians, they got to not trip up. They, they got to be ready for these quick strikes from the new kid on the block. I'm really excited for this one. Golden Guardians, they got beat down bad yesterday. They did not have WizK available. I think in that first game, WizK really stepped up. We'll see if they can continue the success or if Ducomified is going to be able to ride uh, that last victory and pull off, I would say, an upset here in the series. So we'll see what they can do. We are going to Tiger's Peak for game number three between the Golden Guardians and Ducomified. Really important series here. This is an elimination series, of course. 
Um, things are going to be really tense here in this North American Finals. We'll see what they get done. Looks oh. like we were <laughs> going to be jumping right into the game and nicking a kitty shot into the cheap shot as Peekaboo is looking to get aggressive early on. Whiskey with the Void Torrent, but looks like Kearney is there to back him up, and that should be more than enough for Nick to survive. All right, they survived the initial exchange, but missing the opener, what did we miss that they got that clean of an opener onto Nick is what I'm really wondering. Now he's interrupted, uh, constantly putting him on the back foot. Cheap shots incoming, double fear from Kearney, and Peekaboo has to trinket and cloak of shadows as we see Kearney jumping into the Spirit of Redeemer on top of that to try and immune some potential crowd control. Some big cooldowns forced out on the side of Golden Guardians. Uh, Peekaboo is a sitting duck. I think if Shadowy Duel connects cleanly here, they might be able to kill Peekaboo, just KO 100-0. Kearney's into a blind. They're trying to turn it around. Nick pre-bears the kidney shot. There's no way they're taking him down with Heart of the Wild pre-bear, I don't think. The double fear and they swap to Calvish. Beautiful double fear from WizK. That forces Calvish to use Medallion and Golden Guardians are back in the game. But here comes another setup. They need to survive. Are they ready? WizK has no trinket. Absurge bubble sacks. Is it going to be enough to keep him alive? Nick's going for Cyclones. He fakes out the kick. Peekaboo vanishes the next Cyclone. But Nick is still just free casting. Regrowth. He's going to jump into Bear Farm. Frenzied regen back up. They got Divine Shield from Absurge though. And that was the main cooldown they were going for. Now they get a gouge on the Kearney. Peekaboo needs more than a gouge. He goes for a kidney. He steps over. Reconnects onto Nick. Nick trinket right away back into bear dismantle on peekaboo but he's dying to whiz k ray of hope is up and if it's yellow it means it's going to heal to full if it's purple it means he might die it's yellow right now so he's going to go back up to full health from kearney's healing into that blind on abs there's another setup he trinkets immediately if they have any punish on that trinket they could kill peekaboo doesn't look like any punish bops up on peekaboo kearney's trying to purge it he's not able to he's into a cheap shot nick gets pre-guardian before the crowd control abs gets kicked on their pens good shut down by calvish but now whiz can free cast with no rogue interrupt and he's starting to get a little bit more aggressive Poking towards Calvish. Uh, they could kill Calvish right now. They could kill Nick right now with no medallion for Kearney for 30 seconds. Golden Guardians are in the driver's seat. Here comes crowd control. How are they going to deal with it? Gouge and Kearney, no follow up. Calvish pre cloak of shadows to make sure that he doesn't get stun locked and KO. But now he's mind controlled. Nick has been isolated for a moment, but there's no CC on Kearney. Oh, a step kick from Peekaboo. That shadow step kick. Nick is on the run. Gets back out in the open away from the fight and manages to stay alive. Peekaboo doing his best to keep plays going for his team. His trinket comes up in nine more seconds, eight more seconds. He dismantles Calvish to buy that time on the clock. Five more seconds. Now Peekaboo dismantle. Is he going to cloak it off? I'm really thinking he's not going to this time around. He wants to make sure he has that as an option. Here comes another kidney shot. Abstridge pre-sacks. They can swap. Swap on the Abstridge. Could be lethal. He divine shielded earlier. Is he going to die through the divine protection? He gets kidneyed. Nick can't connect. Abstridge is going to survive the stun lock. Now they're turning it around. Fear from WizK. Nick is isolated. Kearney wills out of the fear. Jumps into the spirit of Redeemer right on top of Nick so he can't be smoke bombed or any potential shenanigans here. He's just bombing and flash shields. Keep Keeping them up, keeping them topped, and now to Comified, they're in a tough spot if they want to turn this around. Yeah, definitely. Nick, no Barcia, no Trinket. This could be the game-winning setup here by the Golden Guardians, but Nick gets the Cyclone down. They're going after Absurge. It's going to be the Void Shift here. The Von Shield was used, so Absurge, of course, could be in trouble during the next setup, but a gouge now onto Kearney as Trinket's rotating back up, and he has the Void Shift, so... I feel like Ducomified, they have the answers to survive. And these setups here on Absurge are looking lethal. Absurge needs to play in a very safe position. He's got that trinket coming up in about 13 seconds to break out of the stun lock. We'll see if he can hold on to that point. Calvish is going for it. He's caught into the kidney shot. There is no trinket available, but he's going to immediately use the blessing of protection. Does not want to mess around. And now... Golden Guardians getting very aggressive here on the Nick. Yeah, full kidney shot, not in bear form, no bark skin. Calvish rotting down. Whiskey's doing a lot of damage, man. He's just pummeling down both targets. Gouge on the Kearney. They're still low. Dismantle on the Calvish. He can't peel, but Whiskey gets cloned. He can't CC. Nick is trying to jump over and clone Absters. Peekaboo's right on top of him. Peekaboo cannot afford to miss a kick here. Is he going to land the kick? He goes to the cheap shots on DR. He gets kidney shot. They can't stop the cast. Cheap shot on Absters. They're setting up on the Paladin once again. Can they knock Absters down and take the swing match? They've got him down at half health. Kearney's on top of him. Big damage incoming. Is he going to be able to hold on. He is so low right now. Whiskey's doing everything that he can. Flash after flash. He gets kicked on Shadow and Absturge somehow, someway survives the swap that should have been lethal. He's going for a repentance. He's trying to fake the Shadow or death. He gets silenced. They get the repentance. They're turning it around. Calvish has no trinket. Calvish. Kearney needs to get ready. Calvish is going to vanish. They swap over to Nick. He ducks into Bear. Kidney shot on Absturge is setting up on Peekaboo. No trinket on Peekaboo. They have to drop him in the stuns though. They don't have the damage it looks like. He survives. He gets the evasion. He can cloak if he needs to. And the Golden Guardians, man. Absturge survives the swap. 
swap. Whisk case support is enough. This game's gonna keep going. Kearney trinkets the blind, and now Nick's in trouble. He's dying even despite the trinket. Void shift comes through. Kearney swaps his health. Now Calvish is dead. Gets stunned up. No trinket. Ray of hope. Spirit of Redeemer from Kearney. He's doing everything that he can to get his team back in the fight and try and buy them another opportunity, but there's still so much more defense that they need to get through. Abstract pre sacks on the kidney shot, anticipating the damage. And now Calvish is like, what do I do? Pre evasion. Try and dodge some stuns, but Nick's in a gouge for the kidney out of bear. Getting ready. Searing glare from Absturge. Trying to turn it around and deny some pressure, but with no medallion on Kearney. He's a sitting duck. The next CC on him. I think it's game over. Kearney has nothing left. There is no tools, and Absurge has some of his cooldowns rotated back up. He's got the Divine Shield. Big damage here from WizK is there. Looking to close out the game. Kalvish has the Vanish. Might have to trade it, but he's caught into the stun. Peekaboo's there for the stun lock. Do they have the damage to take him down? Kalvish escapes. Beautiful Cyclone by Nick. Buys a little bit of a gap there for Kalvish to actually uh, get a breathing room and escape with that Vanish. So it looks like Ducom are going to be able to hold on, but I am still afraid for them. A full fear here on the Kearney. He's going to be using the Wheel of the Forsaken, that undead racial to break out of the fear and keep his team in the fight beautiful grip there by Calvish as well Kearney is doing everything he can to avoid crowd control getting away from Absurge avoiding the repentance but look at WizK just dealing so much damage trying to set up his team but they actually go after WizK or set the dispersion and he could be a very good target in the near future yeah dampening's high no void shift no dispersion he's still just dead he gets kicked on cast Absurge has to sacrifice trying to redirect damage but dampening is so high Incarn's coming up in 27 seconds Calvish cloaked preemptively anticipating the damage and staying aggressive of just trying to run WizK down. They know he's been a key role in the game. They're trying to limit his damage and dampening and limit his support, but now they're turning around. Void Torrent fully channeled onto Calvish. Kearney blocks the kill, and how is Kearney still have mana at this point? It's been such a crazy game. Nick moves in. He gets a bash. Fear on Peekaboo. Triple CC. WizK, how are you going to survive this? He's on the run, trying to get back behind the pillar. Peekaboo backs him up with a disarm onto Calvish, but now that's over. He gets kicked on Shadow again. Abstract has one more blessing of protection. He has Divine Shield, but here's Incarnation. This is a big hit of damage. Abstract needs to be ready once again for this swell because it's going to be massive in just a moment. Kearney's into the fear of the turning it around. Calvish is low, but he evasions. Whiskey is low. Absurd, what are you going to do in these final moments? He's into the chest. I see Divine Shields. Is it going to be enough? Kearney, MD, off the dots, getting ready, getting the Cyclone. Here comes a double root solar beam into Clone and Ducomified are looking to take the swing match. Whiskey gets the MD in between. He squeezes it right at the last second, gets the MD on the CC. So Absurd gets the Blessing of Protection. Whiskey's immune to damage. No, and now they turn it around. What an insane play. Whiskey is popping off right now he is back with a vengeance some beautiful defensive plays there by the golden guardians to hold on but at the same time i mean Ducomify, their offense is so good that final swap there on wiz k was almost enough there's a beautiful master spell from kearney as well when he was in that spirit of the redeemer he got off the master spell which i think removed the blessing protection or the divine shield and that's what led to that double uh root solar beam moment that almost closed out closed out the game but Golden Guardians, they play it calm, cool, collected. WizK gets the master spell. We're going to be able to see it here in the replay. What an insane conclusion. Like, you're thinking that WizK is dead. Like, how is he going to live in this moment right now? And he gets the sickest MD, just squeezes it at the last. Look how low WizK is. Like, he's dead. There's a double root beam. The root breaks on WizK. MD right before Kalvish could get there. Gets him out of that for a second. Squeezes time. Then gets the pop at the last possible moment. Kearney's in a kidney. He can't purge it. So WizK's taking the time, just free casting, doing what he can in that small window where they got nothing to get a kill on a Kalvish. This is a monster moment here for them, and they definitely needed it because I was thinking they were going to lose. And this is their last chance in the North American Championship. If, if you lose a series, you're done. Look at this master spell by Kearney, too. Look at the Divine Shield, master spell, boom, root solar beam. But it's so important to have a playmaker like Peekaboo on your team as well, while Absurge and WizK are just like flailing to survive. You have Peekaboo there going for the gouge on Nick, getting the stun on Calvish, getting the kidney shot on Kearney, doing everything he can. I mean, Peekaboo. Uh, is so used to these situations where he's in, you know, one versus two, one versus three scenarios. He's able to step up for his team there, really set up some plays. So I, I think that is such an important thing to mention. When you have your team so far on the back foot, that other DPS, Peekaboo, just so important to come in to slow down the damage and also just keep your mind on offense. Like, how are we actually going to win this game? How are we going to turn around the pressure? Because you need to have that, right? Like, you need to have that moment where... All of a sudden, you get them on the back foot, and they're able to basically close it out single-handedly because of Peekaboo's offense. All right, let's see if they can keep it together here because this is so close. Like, 
anybody could take this, but the pressure's on to Decomify. They're the newcomers into the tournament scene. You know, maybe they're, I think it's, it's their first grand finals, at least together as a roster. They have to fight the Golden Guardians or face elimination. They're keeping the chains going, staying aggressive, maintaining into the late game. They've got everything that the formula would require to win, but Golden Guardians are just clutching a little bit more often in, in the exact moments that they need to be able to pull off these wins. So Decomify can't let the fact that they're on match point get to them. They need to keep playing the same at the same level that they have been throughout the remainder of this series uh, they're gonna if they do manage to pull it off luminosity gaming is waiting for them that's still a really tough opponent in north america this is a type of event that you don't want to miss this does not happen very often it's gonna be the last chance for these teams to decide which is the greatest in north america who's going to take the lion's share of the money and Golden Guardians, man, they, they want it. They want to show that they are back because Luminosity Gaming, they've been winning every single major event for, like, years. I mean, I think the last time Sidhu won was his BlizzCon win, and that was 2018, maybe 2019. That was a long time ago, long enough ago that it's hard to remember. Um, Golden Guardians, they haven't had a major tournament win in a very long time. Like, there's, there's a lot of pride on the line, and they want it. That's why they're playing at this level. They're stepping up. They're really showing up for this. Um, and Dukamify, they're taking it to Imperial domain we're going to a really big map and i can't imagine that they're making any changes it's it's likely going to be the same matchup same thing i mean they were so close right if that master spell didn't land it was game over so that's how close every single one of these games really is it feels like as the game goes later you're kind of right like WizK's damage seems to really start like popping off and if absurd can get his divine shield rotated back up that's when it feels like the game goes a little bit better here for the golden guardians but it is just so close. Both these teams just one or two setups away from closing it out. Comified now, they have the option to go for a counter comp, but I don't think we're going to be seeing that. I think they're probably just taking their time, discussing strategies uh, of how exactly they want to play that same matchup. So um, very likely we do see the Moonkin uh, Subtlety Rogue once again. They're taking their time. Maybe just want to pause, reconsider some things that happened in the game. I mean, this could be their last lock-in um, for the season. That's true. It's their last chance, so... Just take the extra time, really talk through, like, maybe targeting. Maybe they went Absurge too much because they spent a lot of time going on Absurge in that last game, and maybe that was a mistake. Maybe it just enabled Peekaboo and WizK to, to do too much in the matchup. So taking their time here and, and running the clock, I think, is probably wise. Slowing it down, final moment. Don't let the anxieties get to you too much here uh, in this game because this is, again, their, big, their first big tournament showing, and... You know, you're fighting Golden Guardians, you're on match point. You obviously want to try and calm yourself down in this type of situation. Yeah, I mean, it is a very stressful situation. As someone who's been a competitor, um, in a moment like this, where basically your entire year comes down to one draft, one map, one game, if you lose this, you're done for the season, uh, it can be very stressful. So, Comified, they're going to have to rise up. They're going to have to play it calm, cool, collected, stick to the game plan, play as well as they have been because, like I said, every single one of these games has been like potentially one setup away from them winning so they definitely still have a fair shot in this one the golden guardians would be happy <laughs> close it out here 3-1 but uh Ducomified certainly has a great chance uh here on imperium domain they're at least going to make it interesting, to say the least. They're, they're looking very yeah. competitive, very evenly matched here against the Golden Guardians. It's not going to be a cakewalk. It's going to take these top level above 200 IQ plays and moments for the Golden Guardians. And if there are any missteps, you are going to get punished in this type of series. So Golden Guardians just need to seal the deal here. One more win and they will advance to face off against Luminosity Gaming, which were the tyrants for North America for year after year after year in North America. They're going to have to fight their demons against that team. If they managed to make it through to Comified, who is definitely leveled up, easily the most improved team. Um, I want to say even for just the region, <laughs> for both regions, you know, as a team, this they're just looking so insane, so clean, so aggressive, and just the swaps, everything about it is looking really awesome from them. So even if they do go down here, they're certainly going to be able to pat themselves on the back. Is Calvish the youngest player? That's He's the new Peekaboo, I think, isn't he? Like when Peekaboo yeah, started, I mean, he was that's like how you want to think about him, right? Calvish is the 15 year old. Rogue. Sometimes I still think about Peekaboo as like a, a young man, but he's definitely getting older. It's, uh, you know, 
is Calvish going to be able to take the the sneakers away from Peekaboo? He's going to just be able to turn this around, like how the padded one like outdoes the master, is, is twice as strong as the last time that he met here uh, against Peekaboo. It seems like rogue rivalries are going to be a big thing in this region uh, with how dominant rogue is at the moment. So he's still got a chance. They could still rise up here. They got to win two series or two games, sorry, back to back in this series to do it. But anything is possible, I think, at this point, seeing how chaotic this match is. Yeah, all right. Let's see how this one goes. Gates about to open. Golden Guardians looking to close this one out and send Ducomified out of the tournament. This is such an important match here for Ducomified. Let's see how they decide to open and navigate the early stages of this matchup. Calvish going to be moving in itself, popping sprint, looking for an early sap, and does manage to find it. Nick is on top of Peekaboo right now and actually gets him out of stealth. This is a good opportunity to just go after Peekaboo. Do they have a smoke bomb? Root Solar Beam comes oh, no. in. Whiz case fear. This is a perfect start for Ducomify. They get a lot. I mean, look at Peekaboo. He's got nothing left already. He's almost dead even throughout that. Finally, a big heal. Absurd tops him off. They're trying to turn it around. They're going after Nick. Big damage. He's in the bear form. Knocking back Absurd. Trying to stop the cast. Trying to stabilize. Gouge on the Kearney. Peekaboo gets cloned by Nick. He's not going to be able to get anything going. Absurd gets a repentance, though, but it's not going to mean too much consequence. Whiz K gets cloned. They're trying to set up on the Peekaboo. If they can line up a shadowy duel here, it could be really devastating. Is Calvish going to be able to go for it? He's on top of Absturge. Gets the kidney shot. Setting up Kearney. They're actually swapping to the Paladin big swap onto him but peekaboo is there to peel for absurd ain't no way he is getting through peekaboo calvish gets totally peeled off now they're setting up damage onto nick he's gonna duck in a bear form peekaboo gets stunned they bop it off aggressively to stay onto nick it's match point for ducomified right now is nick gonna topple over kearney jumping into the spirit of redemption will it be enough they bop peekaboo aggressively they're going all in on nick that raid is bouncing between negative and positive but it does ultimately get nick back in the fight and those bop plays those aggressive bop plays from absurd man could come back to bite him they get a fear into a rep on the will but he Death it. Will death from Kearney breaks the crowd control chain, but now he's into a hammer of justice. Whiskey gets cloned away. Bash on the app search. Peekaboo still no trinket here in game number four. Whiskey in the chastise. Can they connect? Kidney shot, triple CC. Whiskey, is he ready for the void shift? App search trinkets out as well. They're going to cycle on Peekaboo. They need to get out of there. They got the medallions. They got the major goal. They're going to interrupt App search, try and put him behind. Whiskey's trying to position away from Peekaboo, but Peekaboo is just running in. I mean, Golden Guardians, they've got match point. They've got room to breathe, and they're going to play recklessly here. Yeah, definitely. Nick, though, in a kidney shot, and Kearney is in crowd control, managing to break out. Full blind does land, though. Peekaboo, they are just going for the win. They smell blood in the water and want to close out the series, but it's not enough damage. Beautiful Cyclone coming in from Nick. Cheap shot onto Peekaboo as Ducomified is looking to strike back here, but where are the openings? Peekaboo had a disastrous start, had to basically trade on everything, but it's all rotated back up now. Evasion, Cloak of Shadows, Trinket, all available here for Peekaboo. Now that it's going after Whiskey, does not want to fumble on the finish line. He has uh, his... his, his uh, he has his defensive cooldown available if he really needs it, but they're actually going after Nick. Can they take him down? Big cheap shot. Huge heals from Kearney. will keep Nick alive with the bark skin. And it looks like that is more than enough for him to survive. Repentance sneaks through by Absurge into a sap. They're just continuing the crowd control chain. This is insane. Nick could easily fall. That's the void shift. And Golden Guardians, they are looking good. These crowd control chains are clean, and all of a sudden, Kearney really has nothing left. I mean, look how many options the Golden Guardians have. They're so far ahead on cooldowns. They still have momentum. Nick is just not getting topped off. The Golden Guardians are going for the kill. They grip Nick away from the engagement. Whiskey being pressured, but Calvish gets feared. He can't connect, and Absurd is out of CC. He should be able to top him off, and Nick is just getting destroyed. The kick, the Void Torrent. Kearney pre-jumps into that Spirit of Redemption. He saw Peekaboo moving to him. Pre-Angel form, immune to CC. Keep Nick topped off. They're mind-controlling Nick. They're trying to wait for that Spirit Redeemer to fall, but he's even dying through free-casted heals, and now the CC protection of that ability is over. They clone Whiskey, Whiskey trinkets. He knows he can trinket aggressively. They're so far ahead. They just want to close this game out, close this series out, and move forward to face Luminosity Gaming. Kearney is on the run away from Peekaboo. Peekaboo is just chasing him down, looking for crowd control. They get the gouge. Nick, where is he going to go? He needs to get away, but Peekaboo, he's so fast. He's already there on target. Nick pre bears. He's got bark skin up. It needs to be enough. He's going to stampede over to Whiskey, try and escape. Clone up Whiskey, the kidney shot Peekaboo, but Nick gets stunned. He can't connect anything. He's trying to get a clone off this cheap shot. Is he going to be able to get it? Chastise. They need more CC on Absurd. They can finish Pika, but they do get Cloak of Shadows. It's not all for naught. That is still a major cooldown. They would have liked to get his medallion, though. Another Void Tendril proc for Whiskey. He's ramping up his damage. Once again, his silence is available. That silence could be the end of Nick's life here. He's got Shadow Fiend available. Shadow Blades are up. Big damage incoming. Kearney pre-grips the silence just in time for Nick to get back behind the pillar on the blind, trying to heal up. Regrowth after regrowth. Gouge and Calvish. Triple fear from Whiskey. Cheap shot incoming. Peekaboo behind the pillar, dodging crowd control. Fear onto Absurd. They're trying to keep the chain going. They're trying to pull off a 
miracle. Peek with pre evasions. He's not going to be going down. He gets cloned instead. Whisk survives the stun lock, but they got Absurge's trinket, so at least it's still not nothing as Dukamified are just fighting to stay alive. Yeah, they're doing what they can to battle it back and keep up their offense. And Absurge, I mean, he does not have a trinket. There's no sacrifice. Could be in trouble, but it is going to be Nick on the back foot. Once again, looking for a Cyclone. Can he find it? Not able to. And WizK is just tearing in. Kidney shot and down goes Nick. Golden Guardians, they do it. 3-1 against Dukamified, eliminating them from the tournament and continuing this dream run through that lower bracket. Oh my god, I mean, they just got better and better. I mean, it just seemed like every game was better and better. There's a little blunder game in Ashamate's Fall, and then after that, it's just been better and better. Golden Guardians want this, I think, more than I've ever seen a team want something here with that level of performance. And now Luminosity Gaming is going to be their next threat. They're still a big dog in North America. It would be a statement in and itself that the Golden Guardians could beat them there in that lower semis. But this game was just domination. Golden Guardians just all over them. Nick constantly on the back foot, just trying to get him off of his chest, trying to breathe throughout this entire game. They couldn't get any major cooldowns from them they they get the cloak or a trinket but they're still sitting on a bop his first bop's coming off cooldown they still have the divine shield there's such a huge line and in this final push they just overwhelmed them i could not believe how much damage they actually did so how did they ultimately because nick fakes a kick he fakes peekaboo and i'm like oh he's gonna get a clone but he gets searing glared on his clone i don't think he expected that so searing glare is a new paladin pvp talent it makes all of your attacks miss so nick in that position thought like oh i fake the kick i'll cast a clone and i'll be fine but it was immune from the searing glare of Absturge, and then he was like, oh, the rogue didn't get cloned. Uh -oh. I'm going to die now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was just a beautiful play there. We can see it again in the final moments. I wonder exactly what happened to Kearney. I think he did get out of crowd control, but there was this close call after close call. He really, This is a great push here by Kearney. He was in such a bad situation, but managed to kind of turn it around with a fear on Absturge, getting the trinket sacrifice. So, Calmified, they really battled it out to the bitter end. Putting out a lot of crowd control, a lot of damage, great setups, but ultimately this is it. This is the Searing Glare I believe you are talking about. So Searing Glare comes in, Nick looking for a Cyclone, not able to find it, and the damage is just completely overwhelming. Curdy's not even in crowd control, but there's just nothing as a response. Doesn't have any tools left to keep him alive at that point of the game, and Golden Guardians will claim victory. They certainly will. Dukamified, the team that came out of the gauntlet, unfortunately, that is the end of the road for them. So hopefully they will see them return as a roster for the next season of AWC. But Golden Guardians, now we're going to see their, them moving on here in the bracket. But I mean, you guys already said it. What an incredible series by them. They were able to make those adaptations mid-series between those games, figure out what they needed to do and just get it done. But Another challenge is coming up here. They're going to be heading off against Luminosity Gaming. And this is a team that has reigned supreme in North America for so long. So that's just that, you know, it's like the, the a little bit of a boss. And then they're going up the ladder potentially again if they can beat that series against Team Liquid. So there's just, a, you know, a couple of tough series ahead of them if they want to continue here in the lower bracket. But that being said, we actually do have another segment. We do have another AWC award and this one is going to be for the best multi-classer and you guys ready for the nominees ready shoot all right it's absturge Sidu, was and trill thoughts all right how many healers has Sidu played he's played uh, like, probably all of them has he Voker, played close paladin all of them? I think I remember seeing a tweet that he said that he's played every healer in competitive play or something throughout this season. He's won a tournament on every oh, healer. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. so play. that's that's a pretty good credential. Um, yeah. Who are the other nominees? Was Search. Was Moonkin and Rogue. Trill. And Trill has played Rogue and Augmentation and Devastation. And Devastation. I, I, Devastation, I that. Augmentation, I was, I was slow to get to it, but Rogue. I got it. And I think it Windwalker. should be based on not just like the number of specs you're playing but maybe how you're rate. utilizing them or or that if you want to just if it's success your rate, logic i'm, I'm going to i think if i'm going to success rate it's got to be c do c do or absturge mm -hmm. i would say c do or absturge okay all right um who do i want to go for i think i think absturge because i feel like once we saw absurge start to multi-class is also kind of when we saw Golden Guardians, I think, kind of take off as a team, not to credit that to him 
alone, but it, you know, that whole team started kind of multi-classing a little bit, but I think I might go Ab Surge for this one. So wait, Ab Surge, Ven, who are you voting for? C-Do. C-Do? Super Cheese? Yeah, C-Do. Okay. All right, well, let us know in chat. I don't see a poll yet, but I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of trills. A lot of trills, actually. I think trill might win just based on what I'm seeing in chat, but. No respect for the healers, you know? It's always no the respect. DPS that DPS get the glory. get all the credit, and then healers just yeah. get all the blame. That's literally the all life the glory. of the healer. It's like the yeah. star quarterback, yeah. you know? After playing Not my ever. fair share of healer and solo shuffle, I definitely have a new sympathy for <laughs> healers, so they're always, I give them as much yeah. love as I can. <laughs> World of Warcraft should have like international thank your healer day or something. They just they don't get enough credit. Not just PvP, but you know, all aspects of the game. Be kind to your healers, chat. Stay in school. <laughs> but let us know let us know in Twitch chat who you think um should win best multiclasser for AWC, App Search, Cdu, Waz, or Trill. And hopefully when we come back from this break, we can let you know who won that, but we've also got some Sidu tweets. Uh, my teammate predicted us to lose in the finals to GG. I think he's re referring to Sam I am. Um, if that if that information from Raikou's interview earlier was accurate, and then, uh, oh my God, what a series so far. That was during that last series, I think around game number two or three. Um, and then this most recent one from Sidu, GG to GG, hell of a fight. Another absolutely insane series coming up next. That is so true. You are absolutely right, Sidu, and I am very much looking forward to it. And that that series that he is referring to will be the winner of this last one, Golden Guardians, facing off against Luminosity Gaming. And if you'd like to root alongside Sidu for these next up teams, definitely stick around. We will be heading to a break and we'll come to that series very, very soon. Everybody and welcome back. Also, if you were here for our most recent AWC award, Trill actually did win the chat favorite for the best multiclasser. So congrats to him. Well done, Mr. World of Warcraft. I think that's accurate too, because you know, dude literally competed in MDI, one race world first, you know, one BlizzCon, whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know, so it really should be. I don't think Mr. best Warcraft multiclasser. Himself. Yeah, Mr. World of Warcraft, that's what they call him. But uh, let's talk about this next up series here. This is the, I mean, you know, the series that is going to determine who moves on 
to mm-hmm. the grand finals for North America. So this is a big one. Loser of this one will end up walking away as ale with third. And it's either Luminosity Gaming or Golden Guardians. Now we've heard from apparently a, a cu- several people now that Sam I Am is actually predicting Golden Guardians to win <laughs> this whole thing. What do you think about that take? Uh, I mean, I, th- I think it's definitely not a bad take. I mean, to me, coming into this weekend, I was thinking it was going to be TL and Golden Guardians in the finals. So obviously, yesterday, Luminosity kind of clapped up Golden Guardians, but that wasn't without that wasn't with Wizke, and that is a, a very big but because Wizke, you know, is, is such an important part of this team. We saw how good he was today in the series that they just had against Zucomified. So I don't think you can count them out whatsoever. I'm expecting Golden Guardians to be playing with Wiz in this series against Luminosity, and I think it's going to be a really good one. Yeah, I think so too. So let's see what we've got coming for us. Golden Guardians, are they going to face Liquid in the finals or is Luminosity going to claim their title once again from the North American region? It's game number one here, Luminosity Gaming versus Golden Guardians. Ooh, we got to see Drake back on the Windwalker. Let's go. This is this is main territory for Drake. Gotta you know, sit up for this one. You know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was just adjusting my seat myself here. Uh, this is getting real exciting. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a wizard cleave mirror, you can you can slouch down a little bit. But when it's melee caster healer, okay, it's time to sit up. Time to get ready. I think this one's gonna be a banger. And peekaboo out the gates already, sprinting in there. Let's see what he goes for for the opener. Already has a sap onto Drake. Now looking like he's trying to hunt after Brain, but can't actually get to him. So it's just going to be a kidney shot thrown out on Drake. And it's an instant bomb. But Piku gets bashed on the bomb, so they're really not getting much out of it. There's an in-cap onto Piku right out of that. And they're over onto WizK as Piku's thrown into that Cyclone. MD from WizK does get him out of it, though. Cheap shot now onto both uh, Prev and Brain as Prev is just getting sent. There's a blind on the Brain. And this opening is so fast here. The Repent coming out as well there from Absurge as Golden Guardians are trying to keep the pressure rolling yeah and this is when the tiger and serenity from drake but so far he's not able to get too much work with it done prev drops about to, uh, half hp there but does manage to get picked back up from brain brain back on the holy pilot then drake back on the windwalker and prev back on the moonkin here this is triple mains against the uh, triple mains basically whiskey taking a lot of damage there forced into the dispersion there during that leg sweep from drake drake now hunting whiskey behind the pillar and brain and absturge kind of playing ring around the rosie there at the pillar there for a second but it looks like brain is trying to avoid absturge right now he gets gouge absturge looks like he's there with the follow-up what are they going to get there paralyzed actually into a full fear here onto brain drake could be in a lot of trouble here brain needs to make the trade potentially drake just sitting through it and brain actually just sits through the full repentance as well full hammer of justice onto brain Drake, drake dropping to about 30 percent hp still has the touch of karma but saved by the life procs and i think he's going to be fine with that brain with ice in his veins is back on the holy pile and now it could be prev actually taking some damage but brain immediately responding here with the sack Sacrifice and now Wiz K could be in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you saw Sturge there was looking for another repent onto Brain, but Brain throws down the sacrifice, so Sturge is going to cancel it. Now Prev moving forward, full clone onto Sturge. Brain has the Hodge to follow it up if he wants, and they're trying to get the damage rolling here onto Wiz K. Wiz K in trouble is going to have to trick it out. He gets bopped as well as there's a kidney shot over onto Drake, but the MD is going to have to come through onto Sturge, but it doesn't get him out of the root beam. Mind control now coming out, trying to be used defensively there by Wiz K as he was still sitting in the bot, but that's going to expire now. Blind over onto Brain. Gouge to follow it up there from Peekaboo. CC just being traded back and forth back and forth between these two teams as there's a full repent over onto drake as brain's kidding behind the pillar so he can't dispel it the cross cc is beautiful and prev's in a lot of trouble there's the silence coming out onto brain prev back behind the pillar now does catch a regrowth onto himself but it's a swap now onto drake the pressure relentless both teams swapping around between these two targets non-stop as peekaboo now into the clone he's looking for a reclone can't quite get it but there's brain now the repent coming out but it's insta md pre-md from whiz and now the double fear it's a 3v1 and whiz making the mvp plays you're expecting from him brain now into that repent is gonna have to trigger it trying to keep his team alive that was a huge swing though from whiz perfectly timed on the md then the double fear got them a lot of pressure and got them the trinket off of brain but it's surge now into the hodge into the repent cheap shot there over onto drake peekaboo taking some damage now going to be thrown into a clone as they're trying to keep things rolling onto whizke he gets another md on the clones these mds have been massive there's the double fear both onto brain and drake it's a 3v1 again but there's an in cap over on a peekaboo and drake is chasing in this could be it almost takes him down a massive deal comes out from sturge 
We're in absolute insane amounts of trouble right now. No dispersion, no trinket available, and that was the bubble from Absturge. They do have the void ship, but no way to actually connect it if Wiz gets uh, CC'd. So let's see how is Wiz going to navigate these difficult waters. He's been on point so far with the master spells, but it's going to have to be peekable potentially, saving the day here and looking to launch the next attack. There's a gouge onto Brain. There's the cheap shot onto Drake. Big damage. Prev actually gets bopped here, looking to get aggressive maybe with that one. Healing up Drake here, pushing in. Here it is. Leg sweep coming in. There's the serenity peekaboo saves the day with the cheap shot on the trinket there he blinds drake into a gouge into a cheap shot as well and a fear onto drake just to buy with a couple of seconds there now he can't access that void ship but he gets cyclone on half hp there and peekaboo does manage to save the day didn't have to use his trinket for it as well so now the golden guardians are able to stay alive from that crucial kind of ko moment but still where are the openings drake still has plenty of defensives brain still has bubble brain still has sacrifice and bobs how are they going to actually close out the match they need to find that pressure. Peekaboo sitting through a cyclone right now. Drake once again getting aggressive here onto Whiskey. Whiskey finally has his dispersion back of cooldown. Double fear comes through. Silence onto Brain. Do they have anything to chain it with? Doesn't look like it. There's a kidney shot now onto Brain. Do they have a repentance or something? Absturge is pushing in. Looks for the DR Hodge. Looking for the repentance here, but Kick could be coming out. He fake has the solar beam. Nicely done there by Sturge, but double leg sweep coming out there for Drake. Whiskey trinkets out. Trying to hold on to dispersion. There's the Greater Fate coming out with the flash heals, and it looks like Whiskey's going to be able to hold on to that dispersion cooldown for now but that was a close call yeah it absolutely was but the pressure just doesn't seem to be ending is now there's an in-cap over on a sturge and there's that disperse having to come out from whiskey he's retreating back behind that pillar as tear is going to get cast up by surge trying to get that healing rolling he has wings will he need to pop it my game's coming out prev's in some trouble back behind the pillar it's a 3v1 and prev is out of los that's going to have to be the lay on hands coming out there from brain but he's going to be silenced a split second too late from whiskey to prevent that that could have been a bubble that could have been a trick and that would have been massive for golden guardians because they are so far on the back foot md comes out it's on the clone but the reclone is there and the life swap has to be used by Whiske. He's trying to go for the defensive MDs, but he's going to actually get kicked. Now the flash shield's coming out. The pressure is just unrelenting. Nice cheap shot over on a brain, but it comes in too late, too little to stop the repent. And now a Hodge counter repent coming out as well. Prev getting pretty low here, but it's a sacrifice from brain came through in time. And now Sturge is going to get locked out by the rebuke there from brain on the other side. Heart of the Wild pop by Prev trying to get damage on to Whiske. Whiske running for the hills here as Sturge is caught into this full Hodge. Now the repentance is there. He's got no bubble, no trinket, and That's no it. way out. That is going to be it. The touch of death comes through. An incredible back and forth game, but Luminosity claimed first blood in this series. Luminosity striking first blood. Finally, we get to see Prev here on the Moonkin. Believe it or not, we've seen him basically only on Shadow Priest, but this is actually what he was known for. And he comes in, makes it look easy here against the Golden Guardians. They take game number one. Insane crowd control chains. Both Paladins rocking the Repentance. We didn't really see too much Repentance actually uh, in the European games. It was a lot of blinding light, but here the Repentance are coming in. They're getting those CC chains. Drake back on the Windwalker here. And you can see in cap into Repentance there onto Absturge. And immediately they're forcing out cooldowns every single time here. Absturge with the counter Repentance here onto Brain. He's going to trink it out, trade out the Sacrifice. Heart of the Wild comes out for the Prev. And then here, this is where the counter pressure happens. Whiskey with no Trinket, with no Dispersion. Absturge with no Trinket, no Bubble. And he gets put in the full Hodge. Brain coming in with the MVP Repentance. Prev knocking away Peekaboo there so he can get the follow-up if he needs to. Peekaboo tries to shut it down, but it's not enough. And uh, the damage is there for Drake. The touch of death comes through. And uh, all of a sudden, we are seeing, you know, some very explosive matches here so far in NA. Yeah, I mean, this, this game was incredible, man. Game number one, back and forth, was really, really fun to watch. The CC chains, the off CC, the, the aggression, the, the ability to actually swap and bounce around between targets and coordinate on that has been so fun to watch already in this series. And we're only one game in. And I'm so <laughs> interested to see if we're just going to have them running it back. You know, both these teams, I think, are going to be really confident playing on their mains, playing these kind of compositions. So I wouldn't be surprised if they both just lock in the same thing and run it back one more time. But I will say it did feel like Luminosity had the edge, you know, after the early stage. I uh, did think that Golden Guardians had a really, really good start to the game, you know, got some good pressure, forced some cooldowns, but they never got Brain to bubble. You know, he still had cooldowns remaining at the end. His PvP trinket cycled back up. He never had to use it a second time. So, uh, you know, I think that they were definitely a lot more stable defensively than Golden Guardians were. And especially in the later moments of, of that game, it felt like WizK was kind of always in trouble.
Yeah, and, and that's a big problem, you know. Uh, when you have, uh, you know, the new Windwalker buffs that came through, uh, you know, they got a lot of more survivability, and that was their weakness before, uh, you know, the rogues coming through and one-shotting them, basically. All of a sudden, Drake's able to survive a lot longer. All of a sudden, Holy Paladin's been buffed, and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you have that classical matchup of a Windwalker hitting a Shadow Priest, and that's always going to be in your favor uh, if you are Luminosity Gaming. So I do wonder what the Golden Guardians will decide to do here. They could go for Outlaw. They could go uh, for the same composition. They could even lock in their own uh, Balance Druid. We have seen Wiz on it in the past. So there is some options here for the Golden Guardians, but uh, this is, you know, an elimination match. Of course, this is the uh, lower bracket finals. Whoever loses here is out of the tournament in third place. Whoever wins is guaranteed to get $40,000 and potentially even more if they can manage to That's beat a lot of months of wow sets. waiting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> You'll be able to subscribe for as long as you want with that, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Liquid waiting in the finals. I'm, I'm excited to see if they're going to mix it up. You know, I think it, it's so tough, right? Because th if this was the upper bracket one, I would have thought for sure they were going to actually just stay on their same comp. But because they unfortunately didn't have boys yesterday and they lost in the upper bracket, you're in the lower bracket. Do you run it back? Do you go to a mage, you know, like a mage comp or like a wizard cleave comp? Do you go to, do you bring in jelly with something? Do you do moonkin? There's so many options. And unfortunately for golden guardians, they didn't actually figure anything out really with their upper bracket series other than the DK hunter doesn't work, right? Like that's the only Intel they really got because they didn't get to try a lot of their compositions. So I definitely feel bad for them for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just have to see what they, what they think they could do. Do you actually think that the moonkin rogue would work out because to me it just feels like drake kind of has that higher consistent pressure and that higher threat i don't know if the same is, is going to be you know if he's hitting a moonkin but it feels like that would probably be disadvantaged well you have better setup potential as well for the moonkin mm -hmm. like the cheap shot cyclones are just super strong as well whereas drake has to uh you know land his interrupts to shut down those cyclones and outside of that He's not going to have that same kind of lockdown as well to interrupt. So I think uh, the Rogue is better at setting up the Moonkin for Cyclones and also better at, uh, you know, allowing the Moonkin to get those offensive Cyclones. So it's better for peeling and it's better for setting up offensive Cyclones. Um, but uh, at the same time, Drake, you know, he, he was able to do a lot of damage on that Windwalker. And uh, that's definitely yeah. one department where uh, Luminosity would pull ahead. Um, but either way, we are going to see the exact same thing here um from the golden guardians they're just going to run it back uh with the rogue shadow priest here so i wonder what they're actually going to change is just a strategy they're maybe going to target prev more or go after mm. brain more or what actually is going to be the plan here because you know like you mentioned they're running out of time if they lose you know this game they're gonna have to reverse sweep the entire series yeah. luminosity gaming they're gonna have so much kind of wiggle room to decide what comps they're gonna play what maps they want etc so Golden Guardians, they desperately need this one. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm really interested to see, you know, if if they are going to change things up a lot in game. I, I'm always a fan of like when when Shadow Priest Rogue is able to actually target healers. I think it's really really effective. Like you off CC the healer, and then as soon as the CC is going to end, you just start going the healer, right? Because they generally don't have enough consistent damage, especially with sub rogues, to just train someone through heals right like it has to be 100 to yeah. zero play it has to be during cc so i'm really a big fan of if they can push in you know start pushing in if they're going to be focusing your shadow priest shadow priest starts stacking in on top of the enemy pallet uh, enemy paladin and then you know you're gonna have the windwalker there as well you can get multi-man fears you can try to swap the healer out of that do those sorts of plays uh, i don't think you can train the pally like 100 to zero or anything like that but i definitely think you know when blinds and off gouges and silences and stuff are ending you can look to try to pressure them and maybe be able to force some cooldowns out in that way because uh, it did feel like if it's just going to be you know peekaboo strapped to the back of prev and you know on the other side drake hitting whiskey that felt like it was really favoring luminosity yeah absolutely um i think it's going to be have to be you know some clean defensive plays as well um you definitely gonna need to you know swap around and be unpredictable and that's something the golden guardians of course do better than anybody uh, but also the blessing of protections need to be very very quick absurd sh shouldn't be too afraid to trade them out anytime he sees a leg sweep onto whiz k and just try to hold on to his personal cooldowns a little bit more but they are actually going after brain here on the holy paladin big opener and they are going to follow it up with a repentance but brain use that sacrifice and that will break it up so uh, they're doing it a little bit in reverse double fear can 
next year. Brain actually rotting down Drake as well in that fear and uh, Prev forced to use that bark skin. Boy turn coming out. Big fake cast coming out from Whiskey. Mind Spikes being spammed here onto Prev and he's taking some damage, but Brain is there to just deflect it for now. And I do believe it's going to be Whiskey here on the back foot already. Uh, in cap coming out there onto Abster, but it does break from that Zwen the Tiger. Yeah, going to be able to break that out. Peekaboo now, kidney over onto Brain. He has the cheap shot there onto Prev. Steps over, does have the blind down onto Brain. And Prev getting pretty low here. But Brain Ooh. is going to get sapped. And that could force something. There's the bop defensively to actually break that. But he gets silenced on it. So they have the damage to force something more. Prev into the bear form is going to be okay. But they're dropping the bomb. They're trying to keep the pressure rolling. I just don't know that they have enough damage to really push it over the edge and get anything more here from Brain. And Brain is going to hold onto those cooldowns. Greed is good in this case, and he's going to get away with it. Prev, though, forced the trinket, does jump back. WizK in trouble, gets low, saved by Light and a proc as the MD comes down. Drake swapping it over now onto Sturge and trying to really get that pressure rolling on him. But there's the gouge. It's going to be a repent on Drake behind the pillar. Can't get MD'd. Can't just get spelled, rather, as Piku is going to be put into a clone, and Prev is just spamming out those clones. Now a full one onto Sturge. It could be Whiskey in trouble, but he gets a fear. He has the mind games down onto Prev, and it's over on the other side of the map. They're swapping over onto Brain. Brain here has the sacrifice. He's taking damage from that, but it's going to pop his shield wall as Piku is on the back of him. They want to force a bubble. They want to force a trinket or something, but Brain, again, refuses to use those cooldowns, won't spend anything, and it's Ab Surge potentially going to get CC'd up as Brain was looking for the repent, but Surge able to LOS it, and now Prev, wow. Wild charge in, full clone there onto Sturge. It's Whiskey low, and it's Whiskey having to disperse. Now the leg sweep, swapping it over onto Peekaboo. They're trying to keep this pressure rolling and putting Golden Guardians further and further behind. Yeah, and that was Whiskey dispersing outside of that Serenity punch. So next time Drake will connect with that Serenity, it could be lights out here for Whiskey. Solar Beam com connects defensively onto Whiskey Prep. Behind the pillar right now, LOS thing trying to just stay alive. And it's going to be a full blind here onto Brain. Uh, can they actually sap out of it? Doesn't look like it. Drake is going to be there with the grapple weapon onto Peekaboo, shutting down any funny business that he will try. And Prev once again repositioning here with Brain. Peekaboo pushing and gets the, uh, the kidney shot there onto Drake. That was the Serenity coming out there for Drake. And he's not going to get too much work done with that cooldown. So really nice off kidney there by Peekaboo, realizing the danger they're in. Double fear connect onto Brain as well as Drake. Full silence there as well. Into a full wrap onto Brain. Big CC chain. But where is the damage? Prev just walks it off here with the bark skin and the frenzied region. He's actually going to come out of that with full HP. So that CC chain was clean, but they didn't have the damage to kind of back it up. Master spell coming out there onto Absters on that repentance. But he gets put into full cyclone. And here comes Prev. Big damage potential. Goes for the recyclone. Gets kicked on it though by peekaboo and now it's peekaboo actually getting cyclone and that's going to be a sacrifice preemptively here uh, by brain on that hammer of justice from abster so brain definitely reading the game right right now making sure that his dps are just staying nicely they're brain and offensive they're going to swap over to Brain. They fear Prev away, and they're on to Brain hard here. He does get, actually, that VT fear to spell. As he comes through, he's going to pop the wall. WizK, though, taking some damage on the other side. There's an off gouge, and Brain now going for the repent. is not going to be interrupted on it. Now going to be able to flash a light himself to top himself back off there. Sturge is actually just going to get in cap off on the side. You can see the cheap shot now coming down onto Drake. They're going to swap it back over on a Prev. There's the bomb getting dropped, but Peekaboo got faked on the clone. He gets cloned in his own bomb, hiding his shame in there, unfortunately, <laughs> as Peekaboo going to get the re-stealth now off the bomb, thankfully. Now going to be swapping it back over on a Brain, but WizK can't get there. There's no damage to follow it back up. It's just Peekaboo on a solo mission here. It's Kidney Shot and it's Cheap Shot, but it's WizK nowhere close to be able to add that damage in. And WizK now throwing the silence down on Prev, trying to do a solo mission there. They're splitting the damage around Brain, Brain is going to sit through the full blind, though. Golden Guardian's got nothing with the bomb, nothing with the swap to Brain, and now they use all their CC, and they are so far on the back foot as there's the double leg sweep after the MD gets that clone off, and it's right into a full repent. There goes Sturge. Prev, though, taking some damage now. Can they make something happen? Finally, Brain going to trade out the sack. They're forcing a few cooldowns. Golden Guardians really need to get something going because it's feeling like they're falling further and further behind. Definitely falling further and further behind, but Whiskey manages to hold on to his dispersion in that exchange here. This was Drake once again uh, using his Serenity, trying to get something going, but Whiskey manages to stay alive. But still, a lot of pressure from Drake. Zwen the Tiger is cutting him through, and Whiskey will connect with the sacrifice there from Absturge. And now Prev running behind the pillar. They got the cooldown, and now it's time for Prev to run. He doesn't want to be an exposed target here. Where is Peekaboo, though? Ca caught up in an in cap, and he gets slowed there as well by Drake. Brain pushing in. Full hammer connects. Whiskey gets kicked here. He could just go down. 
without the dispersion finally does manage to connect with that cooldown beautiful setup here coming out from luminosity and now prev continuing the chain as well with a full cyclone out of that repentance absolutely devastating whiskey spamming out the flash shields he's going to connect with the greater fate connects with the fear onto drake as well prev in a gouge looking for the cyclone there and he does manage to find it onto whiz peekaboo looking for a stun onto brain but brain is just being annoying here behind the pillar full kidney onto brain double leg sweep by whiz k but look at peekaboo shuts it down with a beautiful cheap shot there slowing down the offensive setup from luminosity gaming but mana is so somewhat tied here between both of these paladins but i do feel like it's going to go in favor of luminosity if this continues yeah, and Serenity is now available. We'll see when they're going to look to pop it here. Brain into that VT Fear, looking to try to set something up out of that. There's the double fear coming through from Wizke, and Wizke trying to get the damage rolling onto Prev. They still can't force the cooldowns out from Brain. He sits everything into the silence. He still doesn't actually get that, but the bomb almost takes down Prev. Unfortunately, they can't knock him down with it. The sacrifice traded out, and now they're going for the swap on a Brain, exactly like we wanted them to do. Pikachu trying to get aggressive, but he's going to be grapple weapon there by Drake, shutting down that go, shutting down the peels. Brain and Prev, though, still sitting low. If Wizke can keep the damage rolling maybe they can make something happen great ring of peace actually able to interrupt that disperse or rather that a mass spell coming through from whiskey and now he's trying to chase after brain trying to catch up to him for the fear but brain is just running away here now the full fear does come through there's the bark skin on prev and he has pre-bared this go and now the silence there on a the brain can they get anything from him the bubble is all he has remaining right now including that bop so we'll see if they can actually get him to use that now whiskey gonna get bopped there by surge they have that disperse back so golden guardians actually getting themselves back into a better spot here another md comes out there from whiskey and prev is getting incredibly low the trinket's gonna come out from whiz as they sense they could kill right Whoa. here right now the trinket from prev but is it even gonna be enough brain is into the bubble he uses the bop that's the last of his cooldowns he's got nothing remaining here and prev is just getting double trained fear. into the ground it's another double fear there from whiskey they're looking to finish him off prev on the run but he's got nowhere to go he's got nowhere to hide brain is in the hodge and golden guardians gonna strike back in game number two tying it up unreal golden guardians the entire match not able to get that divine shield not able to get those big cooldowns from brain but in the end they find an insane cc chain and they manage to get that double fear by whiskey they managed to chain it into a win and all of a sudden we are all tied up one to one apiece but we're gonna see exactly how it happened here so far you know during the match i want to say absters did a lot better in this match look at that bop that's exactly what i was talking about in the start of the match as soon as that leg sweep connects just ship the bop you're going to be able to rotate through them and that's exactly what he does here allows whiskey to stay aggressive allows him to get that pressure and then here they force out the divine shield whiskey moves in they almost take down prev here with uh, drake spamming out the vivifies a nice typhoon there as well onto whiskey but whiskey manages to water right back into brain connect with the double fear get the dots up here onto prev and he's trying to duck around a corner but that battle master is gonna fall and they get the hammer of justice onto brain and that is all she wrote peekaboo as well with the clean gouge there onto drake yeah really really nicely done i've got to say for me whiz k is just making the mvp plays man i think sturge really stepped up but i think whiz k you know with his mds he's always pre-mding these cc's as they're coming down on ab surge it's so impressive the timing that he has on that the ability that he has to actually just continuously fake the interrupts from drake you know to to perfectly balance the offense the defense the you know the cc everything that he is doing is really really impressive here and also i really do like that Golden Guardians got Brain involved as a target much more often. You know, we talked about that as an option. Yeah. That's something that I really feel like you have to do when you're playing Shadow Priest Rogue because they are great at killing healers, especially Pallies. If you can actually force this guy to, you know, say bubble or pop in a bad situation, you can MD it off, you can dispel it off, you know, really, really quickly, and that can put them so far behind. And Golden Guardians were able to put more pressure on Brain, you know, in a number of circumstances, even with some of these solo missions that they were going on not really working out. Golden Guardians. Um, were able to dig themselves out of a hole with a couple really, really good plays in a row. And sometimes it can work like that. Sometimes you can be behind the entire game. Someone could be holding their cooldowns perfectly. And then a couple things go wrong. And it's not just one cooldown you have to spend. It's bubble, it's bop, it's sack. It's everything having to get used in a row. Uh, so, you know, you, that's why you never give up in these games. You know, no matter what the situation is, you, you never know what's going to be able to happen. 100% and that's exactly it you gotta uh, you know get that big push at the end and just kind of force them to chain through all of those cooldowns and just once you have that momentum try to snowball it into a win try to roll with it uh, and that's exactly what they, they were able to do you know uh, especially in the start of the match it didn't look too good for the Golden Guardians it was looking a bit like a repeat of that last game but eventually mm -hmm. they found their footing and 
a lot of it was as, as well peekaboo you know when he would go on those solo missions going after brain kidney shotting him getting him to like half hp then cc'ing him going after somebody else and then all of a sudden when brain could actually play his character he had so many targets that he needed to catch up on uh and uh, that's how they were able to you know force a lot of cooldowns but also uh people would just have a great sense of when whiskey is in danger there's so many times mm -hmm. where wiz is going to feel the pain of a big serenity and you know he had to use his dispersion on the moon king cooldowns or you know they got a nice cc chain you know with a repentance on absturge and whiskey was forced to trade there he knows the next serenity i'm dead unless my rogue comes here stuns the target or you know does something and peekaboo is always there backing up his uh, his shadow priest as well so uh the golden guardians uh, they're gonna immediately lock it in once again and luminosity they're gonna do the same so i think this is just gonna be what we're seeing uh for the remainder of the series and uh i mean i'm here for it this is perfect <laughs> yeah i know who, who would want them to even change after those first two games man uh those are absolute bangers really really exciting stuff so imperium domain i'm very hyped to see it I, I think luminosity you know they're still gonna be feeling confident after that game number two you know they were in a really good position they were able to deflect a lot of the plays you know that earlier there was that one sequence of plays where i thought luminosity had it kind of in the middle of the game where you know people goes to the bomb and prev just fakes his kick and then clones him in his own bomb and then gets away and you know then they yeah. try to do this solo go on brain they get nothing on him they spend their blind they don't get trinket they spend their whole go their dance they get nothing and i was like okay luminosity has it right you know they are really making a lot happen in these games as well and brain is just he's just insane on holy pally honestly it feels like <laughs> no matter what you do you can't make this man use a cooldown it's just ridiculous so uh really really impressive stuff from him as well but we're gonna be starting game number three right now Yep, game number three is live in pure and domain swing match territory here for the Golden Guardians. Can they take this one or will Luminosity Gaming take the lead once again in the matchup? We are going to see immediately a sap onto Drake and they're opening up here actually onto Brain once again into a repentance here. Absurge casting out the tears deliverance and they're getting a double fear there onto Drake and Brain and now going after Prev. So this opener, you know, it's what we were talking about. Brain getting a setup onto him, dropping to about half HP and then all of a sudden he has to heal Prev, he has to heal himself. A lot of time targets here multi-pressure that's a smoke bomb coming out for peekaboo big void tour and being channeled out and that's gonna proc save by the light and that all of a sudden is a pretty solid opener here if you are the golden gardens they also got the divine protection from brain sacrifice onto prep so brain could be a target there but unfortunately for peekaboo that kidney shot is the already maybe he didn't see that absturge actually did a hodge onto brain uh, so a little bit of miscommunication there in the golden guardian department oh, and that peekaboo. could be a big punish here onto peekaboo drake popping that serenity almost taking down peekaboo but peekaboo is able to hold on to his trinket yeah, Peekaboo had already used his evasion and his cloak offensively. So, you know, they were thinking he could be a good target. And Wizkay now in some trouble potentially as there's the in-cap over on Absturge. Wizkay has to run. That's his dispersed down already. And Peekaboo is getting focused pretty heavily. He used the clone. He used the evasion to try to dodge bash to try to immune clone. And now he is kind of on the back foot. As a result, the blind going to come out over on a brain. But Prev is just on the other side of the map. So they have nothing going with it. Can they actually swap the damage onto someone else? Brain's now into the hodge. But it's Wizkay that's getting crushed. It's Wizkay that's in trouble here. The silence is going to come out, but not going to be able to force much as drake put into the fear golden guardians just kind of on the run right now trying to recover somewhat trying to get something rolling and now peekaboo going to be moving off that pillar had a gouge on the drake and is now over there on to prev prev now taking some damage here as whizk going for the void torrent trying to fake those kicks mind play insanity coming out ab search on the other side has to get that tears deliverance back up but it's a nice beam there the wild charge Whoa. in is going to lock Whoa. him out and it's whizk that's just dead off of that prev with the huge play Wild Charge leaped in, locked out Sturge on the Tears Vengeance, and Wiz K just goes down. Lock and load. Prev coming in with the beam, with the star surge. The touch of death connects there for Drake as well. Luminosity Gaming make quick work out of the Golden Guardians here in game number three. We're going to need to see this on the replay and see exactly what happened here. What an insane push. It looked like it was fine. You know, it looked like Pre like uh, Whiskey was going to be actually fine in that situation. But then uh, he just kind of surprised everybody with that offensive play here. And it was actually Prev on the back foot here. But then he jumps in and at the end of that cast connects with the solar beam. Whiskey has got no dispersion. They kick Whiskey and boom, headshot from Drake. He's going to connect there with the damage as well. Really, really nice little micro play here coming in and... Uh, this is, you know, a very unfortunate situation because this is what happens when Wiz has to trade first and Abster has all of his cooldowns uh, remaining. 
that's when these things uh, can, you know, just one kick can potentially end the match. So it is very, very unfortunate. Wiz doesn't have trinket, so he can't void shift. And even if he could, he was kicked here. And he obviously he wants to get aggressive. And at the same time, you can't really blame Sturge either because he wants to go for that tier's deliverance and try to be as greedy as possible with his cooldowns. But uh, they proc a full moon, they get the touch of death, and they get the damage there. Actually, it wasn't even a touch of death. It was a rising sun kick, I think, mm -hmm. at the end that just kicked Wizk's head off. Yeah, I mean, he just smoked him at the very end there. I mean, Prev, this is just such a nice play. That leap in there with the wild charge to lock out Surge. Surge obviously thought he was safe to be able to cast that out back behind the pillar. But you're never safe here against Prev as he was able to find that angle to really make it happen. And you can see that Drake has actually changed up his spec. Um, he wasn't playing Serenity this game. He changed oh. it over to Storm Earth Fire, I believe, uh, is the addition that he had. I'm not sure what all he, he changed, but I do see that is on the cooldown tracker. It wasn't on it before it. He uh, dropped Serenity. So he's, he's made yeah. some changes. And, you know, you were talking about the fact that he was getting locked down on this Serenity so many times that Piku was peeling it. So, you know, maybe swapping up his build for a, a little bit of a more consistent damage. Yeah. And also um, at the start of that replay, it's actually Drake with a Ring of Peace on Absturge that locks out the first cast. And that's kind of, it's, it's actually um, a follow-up that comes out there from Prev uh, on the second cast. So um, it's actually Drake who interrupts the first cast with a Ring of Peace that is kind of behind the pillar, like a little bit off screen. We didn't see it, uh, but he actually buys enough time for that second cast to come through when Whiskey is kind of... Uh, dropping a little bit too low and then in addition to that he swapped his talents around uh opting for more consistent pressure and mm. uh, sometimes that's all it takes right you just change yeah. a couple of talents you just change a, a couple of things around and uh, all of a sudden you can get a quick win like that yeah absolutely i mean at the end of the day if if you're getting shut down on all the serenities anyway like who cares it doesn't really do anything for you right so you know drop a little bit of burst gain a little bit of consistent damage and we'll see you know if that's going to continue working for them that's definitely a game the golden guardians are going to want back though obviously a number of things went wrong at the same time you know you called it out ring of peace interrupt surge then he gets locked with a beam at the same time whiz gets kicked and gets burst and he lost like 40 50 percent health pretty much insta and he, so he had life swap they still had a lot of cooldowns on surge so that's going to be one of those where at least from the point of view of golden guardians you're saying that's a throwaway game like that's just a garbage game you died without cooldowns being used you know like don't worry about it whether or not that is the case i think that's gonna be like how you kind of look at it as a competitor anytime you die with all those cooldowns up is it just kind of feels a little bit unlucky so we'll see you know they are now though on match point here so luminosity wins one more and they're moving on to face team liquid in the grand finals golden guardians gonna have to win back-to-back -back games here against luminosity if they want to be the ones to take them down and knock them out and go to those grand finals and see if they can become the north american champions yeah and uh it is match point and it is ruins of lord Aron, and uh it would be a fitting final resting place as it is a cemetery so uh, <laughs> you know i think it's the first time we actually get it this weekend and I think Sid is done casting, so I have to stay the time <laughs> for now. <laughs> but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, the stakes could be higher. Golden Guardians right now, they need two back-to-back -back wins right here. And uh, the last time we saw, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's been a good year for the Golden Guardians. It's been a good year um, for Liquid as well. The last time we actually saw, uh, you know, a big tournament uh, with Golden Guardians in the finals and Team Liquid in the finals, was that year when Sidu won BlizzCon. Uh, I think mm. it was 2017, I want to say. 1948, uh, no. if I recall correctly. Yeah, oh, yeah, 2019. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I said 1948, um, by the way. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> yeah, 19. You're totally right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, Back is when Sidu was so. only, you know, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> Sidu 96 years old now, so it's been a while. Uh, since, yeah. since he won, <laughs> uh, we're all, we're all a bunch of done dads, man. It's, it's actually crazy. I gotta say, it's crazy seeing a lot of these guys who I competed against, you know, like 10 years ago, still competing, still holding it down, still crushing it. So that's, it's really, really impressive on the reel to see a lot of these players who have been at the top for so long, you know, be able to kind of maintain that level of dominance is, is really, really fun. I think you're being modest, bro. What are you talking about? 10 years, man. I 
what like I was watching you play MLG in like what 2008 or 2009 or something. It was like, <laughs> it was like 15 years ago, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last but, tournament I played was uh, 2014 or 2015. So it's been about it's been about 10 years since I played anything. But yeah, I, I started. Oh God, I started in like 2007, man. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been uh, almost two decades here. Uh, for a lot of these guys, but also some of these uh, guys, you know, uh, have uh, kind of entered the scene and started just dominating it out of nowhere, like Luminosity, you know, yeah. they just kind of came out of nowhere a couple of years ago. And uh, they just have had NA in a chokehold since then. And they're looking to make their way to the grand finals. They've had a somewhat of a tough year, actually, by their own standards. But uh, they are just one game away here from being able to make it all the way back to the finals. And it is going to be decided here on Ruins of Lordaeron. Or if we could go to a game number five already, Peekaboo sitting through a disarm. The setups are coming out. Triple leg sweep from Drake. Big orbital strike. Here we go. Big pop-off moment. Smoke bomb comes out. But I don't think that's going to be enough. Whiskey going for the master spell here. Once again, Abster sitting through a solar beam there. Whiskey spamming out the flash shields, trying to stay alive here. And Abster will be able to actually sit through that crowd control chain without having to use his trinket or his bubble. So big opener here uh, for luminosity but good defense from the golden guardians yeah good defense there from the golden guardians and they are going to force the bark skin here out from prev as peekaboo pushing forward onto that moonkin going to get cloned up fully though but in the end a great md there from whiz will keep his rogue free trying to get that pressure rolling as whiz is just kind of getting crushed right now by drake you can see whiz though trying to push in looking for a fear here on a brain we'll see if he can get it does get the double it's brain and drake both cc'd it's prev on the run he's already in bear form they're gonna make a swap on a brain they're gonna try to go heavy onto him with the dance the mind oh. games coming through do they have anything to follow it up the in cap comes out out onto Wizke, but it's not enough just yet. The silence is going to be there. Saved by Light does proc, and some massive heals come through from Brain. How did they not force a single cooldown with that? The man has ice in his veins, but it's Peekaboo now swapping it back over onto Prev. Nice fake kick there from Prev. Going to be another clone coming through. We'll see if he can land it. This time the kick does come out from Peekaboo. Going to be interrupting him there. Full fear onto Brain. Are they going to look for a swap out of it? No. It gets shut down by Prev with a beautiful clone, but Peekaboo is still going on a solo mission. There's the kidney shot onto Brain. They're going to swap it over onto Prev, trying to get the damage going on him. But Prev is stopping everything with the clones. First it was on Wiz, and now back-to-back -back clones onto Peekaboo. Stop all of Golden Guardian's momentum. WizK sitting through a leg sweep. This could be dangerous here. Absurge is out of crowd control, though. Another clean massive spell coming out, and now it's going to be Prev. Pressure's turned back onto him. Absurge sitting through a full root solar beam, but Brain actually trading out the sacrifice there. Doesn't feel too safe. Triple fear from WizK. They're setting up onto Brain here. The VT connects. The mind games connect. Here comes the smoke bomb. Here comes the Void Toria. Big damage here onto Brain. He's trying to sit through it, but I don't think he can. Unbelievable greed coming out from Brain. He sits through that setup. That looks so clean, and he's going to be able to just walk it off there with the divine protection and now it's going to be whiskey in trouble here absurge in an in cap whiskey what are you going to do here dropping to 20 percent hp he doesn't want to trade but he will make the trade there on the dispersion and uh, he's holding on to it for the right moment here but that means now he's going to be an exposed target full brain onto brain full prev. cheap shot here onto prep full repentance connects as well onto brain big damage here onto prep but he manages to self-sustain himself so far big leg sweep coming out from drake that's going to be an instant sacrifice coming out from absturge so back and forth this game Whiskey going for the master spell there on Peekaboo, but now he's not going to have it available for Absturge. And Brain realizes this, pushes in, Hammer of Justice. They're actually swapping to Sturge here, potentially. He's dropping down to about half HP, gets fully cycloned. And now Whiskey, he's got no dispersion. He needs to kite here and stay alive, manages to stay alive, get a couple of flash heals. And Absturge will be able to sit through that CC chain. And Whiskey will be able to stay alive for now. Full root beam, though, connect. He pre bops it on Whiskey. Is that going to be enough? Whiskey pushes in for the fear. He gets cycloned on the bop. He trinkets out offensively. That could come back to haunt him later on as trinketing and void shifting could be one of their final li lives of defense here whiskey looking to get some damage onto prev but so far it's going to be whiskey here in big trouble shortly yeah, I mean, they still haven't even gotten the trinket or the bubble. Nothing from Brain. He just holds on to those cooldowns. He is relentless with that. And Prev now in a lot of trouble here. Maybe they can force some cooldowns out as Prev is getting dangerously low. Saved by the light. Gonna proc, though. And again, Brain holds on to everything, even through the silence. The Barkton may not be enough. He may be whoa. getting too greedy now. A massive heal comes out. That's a lay on hands, barely keeping Prev alive. But Peekaboo trying to finish it off. There's now the trinket coming through from Brain. He's gonna have to get in that smoke bomb. Sacrifice comes out. So they finally are forcing out some major cooldowns here as back to back. Back-to-back -back cooldowns forced there by Golden Guardians. They're trying to keep this pressure rolling. They're trying to make something happen from it. Sacrifice now expires there from Brain. The Repent onto Drake was insta-dispelled there by Brain and Prev. 
you know, out in the middle of the map here looking for these clones, but there's a full kidney on him. Drake coming back on a peekaboo. Blind there over onto Brain. There's the gouge to follow up. Does Surge have anything? Doesn't look like it. There's the cheap shot on everyone. Triple CC coming through. Brain holding onto the cooldown still, but the silence is there. Trying to get even more. The DR Hodge Where's comes out, but Prev is back to that pillar he is safe for now it looks like they hold on to that bubble they hold on to everything and they're gonna be able to survive for now as surge is gonna get beamed he's gonna get hodged he's gonna get repented the grip comes through from WizK though he's gonna have to disperse as the bop comes out on prev trying to keep him offensive they're trying to keep this pressure going here on the WizK, but drake is gonna jump back in on him spear hand strike is gonna come you can see the peekaboo already was forced to cloak as well so some pressure is actually mounting on peekaboo as well but it's WizK that's truly the target we'll see if he's gonna be able to, able to set up for a double leg sweep or something the silence comes in on Prev, the Repent lands onto Drake, and Drake is just onto the back of Wizke. The Double Fear comes out, though. It's a 3v1. Prev is on the run here. He's in a bear form, but Peekaboo can't connect just yet. He's looking for a sap, but he can't get it. It's a gouge that he has to settle for. Absurge now pushing in on a brain, but there's the Feral Charge coming out. The Leg Sweep does connect on multiple members. Surge gets connected on by that, but Peekaboo has the Step Kick onto the clone. Prev now looking for more. The Surge, Repent is not going to land, but the Kidney Shot is going to expire there from Peekaboo. Now you can see the off gouge there is going to have to try to come out as Peekaboo is actually going to get cloned up. It gets MD'd again, and both teams looking like they're resetting here a little bit. Both teams are on absolutely fire right now. Brain still 15 seconds away from his trinket here. They need to make a push on the side of Golden Guardians, and here it is. Full fear onto Drake. Silence onto Brain into a full Hammer of Justice Repentance combo. Still a couple of seconds away on that trinket. Prev, though, running away to the starting area, just tanking this one out, and it's going to be Whiskey actually in trouble. Great positioning by Prev. Whiskey could be in trouble here. Drake looking to set it up here. They get the full in cap into a full root beam. Cyclones being spammed out here by Prev. The trinket's out to try to get it, but it's going to be Prev once again on back foot. Peekaboo. Does a counter setup with a full blind into a gouge into a full cheap shot. Whiskey is there with the follow up fear as well. Verify is being spammed out by Drake, but the CC is absolutely endless here. Smoke bomb now as well coming out onto Prev. So much damage, but mana is not looking good for Absturge here. Brain can just hold on for a little bit. They could be winning this one. Luminosity, they want this so bad to connect back to the grand finals. Battlemaster is going to fall here for Prev. Sacrifice is slowly fading here. The next setup is going to be big cooldowns here from Brain, unless Luminosity can find some offense. They're actually swapping to Brain. Brain's going to trinket. Hammer of Justice on the Peekaboo. Big swap here. Peekaboo getting gripped back into Absturge's line. Gets the Cloak of Shadows in time. Full Fear Connect onto Drake. And now, once again, it's going to be Golden Guardians here looking for the kill. Can they find something onto Prev? That swap on the Peekaboo costed Absturge's bubble. And one more swap like that could be a KO. Yeah, they did at least get the trinket from Brain, but he still has his bubble. Peekaboo could be the target now. He's looking like they're just going to stick on the back of him. There's the Lake Sweep coming through, and this could be it for Peekaboo. He's getting rocked down, but he does catch a massive heal from the Lay on Hands there from Surge just before he gets put in the clone. WizK, though, still low, and Prev now in trouble. The bot's going to be forced, so they have anything else to try to get it off. He's LOSing WizK, so WizK can't dispel it just yet. Prev now healing back up as WizK's charging in. He's trying to look for the CC on a Brain, but it's Brain on the retreat here, and it's Peekaboo in trouble as there's an in cap on a Surge. He's going to be able to get down that sacrifice. And break the repent i believe that as it came out and now peekaboo going offensive here once again there's the full repentance on a brain out of the fear and prev's in trouble this could That's be it. it golden guardians do it they take him down out of nowhere golden guardians making it happen deleting prev from the map they're sending us to game number five we are going to game number five what a nail biter series the prophecy golden guardians will they make it all the way to the grand finals or will it be luminosity i can't wait to get into that game number five but that was an insane setup here once again at the end abster it looked like peekaboo was going to go down so this was the void shift actually that came out from whiskey look at peekaboo here he's basically dead but the void shift comes through final line of defense there and then immediately whiskey turns it on he gets so many beams here with those void tendrils getting a lot of pressure onto prev then whiskey just charges in here looking for the fear but uh, he actually gets kited here by brain but meanwhile you know he's getting his dots rolling as well and they're doing a little bit of damage he trinkets out from that cyclone and then immediately brain actually uh, runs in into a double fear there from Wiz. absturge follows it up with a repentance he's got the hammer he's ready to lay down the law and uh, drake he can't do anything he's still making his way back from that fear just a clean setup and you know a lot of dampening as well that munkin self-heating from the frenzied region from their cooldowns is not going to be as effective this point in the game but uh, Wizk really turning it on there as soon as they go after 
after um, peekaboo, Whiskey knows exactly how to turn the pressure back onto uh, or back in favor for his own team. And it is that big push when he actually goes for that fear. You know, some priests here will just fear Prev and try to, you know, uh, get a silence, disarm or something onto Brain, uh, but not Wiz. He's going to hold on to it because he had the silence there, you know, but he waits. He's patient with it and he manages to connect the double. They get the full kidney. They get the setup. They have the damage. And uh, we are going to be going to game number five. This is insane. That's the move right there, man. Uh, it's, it's one of those things, you know, you have to know these top level players really know when you're not the one being focused, you are the one who has to make something happen. You're the one that needs to push in. You're the one that needs to make that CC happen, right? So if WizK is being focused, it's Peekaboo that's trying to set things up. And as soon as they're swapping out of Peekaboo, you called it out. WizK is pushing in on Brain. He's trying to create that pressure because it's the person that's free that really has the onus on them uh, to be able to kind of make things happen in these, in these tight situations. The Golden Guardians were able to do it. And I'm just blown away that they're able to pull it off in these late game situations. But you have to say, Brain, it's it's ridiculous how hard it is to get him to use cooldowns. Imagine if he was just a regular pally. Like they would win in two <laughs> seconds because he, he would just he would just press his defensives right away and then he would have nothing. Like he is holding on to everything and they're still losing these games, right? So it's it's pretty incredible. I think some of the setups, um, you know, the Golden Guardians are able to get. But also on the other side, how patient Brain is with these cooldowns. He's somehow full mana. You know, it's like five minutes, six minutes into the game. They go, do a full go on him and you, you, they don't even get Trinket. They don't even get Bubble. They don't get Bop. They don't get anything. It's like ridiculous. So uh, honestly, both teams really, really impressing me. It's such a fun series to watch. Uh, you know, I, I am just such a fan of, of these like melee caster killer teams. You know, RLS was like my my love when I was yeah. competing, you know, and, and these kind of style of comps, I think, are just so exciting. Being able to see people, you know, really capitalize on positioning in a way that I think you can't sometimes in like double melee mirrors or in double caster mirrors. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about Arena when you can really see kind of like the beauty of WoW Arena where there's all these different factors, right? It's not just about maximizing damage. It's about, you know, capitalizing on positioning. It's about pulling your opponents into bad spots. It's about, you know, recognizing these small little windows to create opportunities out of seemingly nowhere. And I think both teams are really masters of that. Absolutely. And, you know, that's the thing as well uh, that Luminosity did really well. You know, when they got Absturge's bubble, they went and they did that swap to Peekaboo when he was overextended uh, behind the pillar, brain trinketed out, got the Hammer of Justice and they did this big swap and that forced out Absturge's bubble. And uh, it is really fun to see uh, when these uh, comps that are kind of based around a, a bursty melee and then a caster uh, kind of go head to head. And we are going to see it locked in once again for Luminosity here. Enigma Crucible is going to be the map of choice here. And... Uh, Honestly, no matter which team wins here, I feel like we're all winners uh, getting to watch these games right now. Uh, <laughs> the fans have already got the dub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be exciting to see, actually, who is going to take it. Who do you think will take it? Uh, Putting on the spot. <laughs> that is hard to say, man. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like in, in, in most of the games, the momentum kind of is in, in the favor of Luminosity. Um, but Golden Guardians still seems to be able to kind of like pull these these games out of nowhere you know they just seem to kind of have that clutch factor so you know if i'm basing it just off of gut feeling i feel like golden guardians might be able to do it you know if i'm basing it off of like my head it feels like luminosity is spending most of the games winning so it's hard to say it is what do it, you think it's hard to say yeah i don't know let me let me fill out my body parts here uh yeah my heart is definitely going with the golden guardians and my brain is definitely uh, a little bit more kind of luminosity so i think uh I would go with the Golden Guardians. I think they're going to clutch this one out. I feel like Whiskey specifically came today with something to prove. He wasn't here yesterday and today, you know, you know, you know, you ever feel like that? Like you play a game or whatever. And like, uh, at least I get like that. If I'm like the reason why we lost, I'm like, dang, dude. You're trying to go big. Next game, <laughs> we, I, I'm unlocking Super Saiyan level, you know? It's like, I feel like, I feel like that's where Whiskey is at right now. He wasn't here yesterday, and now he's like, okay, you know what? Everybody jump in the backpack here on my back. Let's go. We're going all the way to the top, baby. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. Wizgay just spent all day yesterday watching them lose those games, just charging up. He's, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he's just he watches them lose three games. Like, ah! <laughs> it's just going crazy, man. Uh, you know, finally he spends his, his five episodes charging up. And now he's he's gonna let the spirit bomb fly here on Luminosity today. <laughs> yeah. He was, he actually was available yesterday, but he just wanted to charge up. So he was just sitting at his PC, just 
<laughs> watching them all lose. It was just a big <laughs> plot to, to, to make the, the games more exciting today. I yeah. know they needed it against the Luminosity here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was available the whole time. That's that's the secret. You just needed time to, to charge up. All right, we'll see. Uh, Luminosity versus Golden Guardians. Game number five. It's match point for both teams. Whoever wins now is going to be able to take it. And Peekaboo is just sending Drake right off the bat. Drake in so much trouble there as Brain is going to be put into the CC. There's the off cheap shot. A cheap shot to follow that up. Do they have anything else? Not just yet. Drake able to pull back and able to stabilize. They do get the sacrifice, but that is it. Uh, it was almost a one shot. It felt like right off the stack, though. Ooh, big, big opening here, and uh, the pressure is going to continue here. Big setup on the peekaboo. People need to be extremely careful there. That's going to be the trinket lay on hands coming out from Absters. That's going to be the cloak of shadows coming out from uh, peekaboo there as well. Huge pressure coming out from luminosity, and look at Whiskey as well. He's not out of the woods yet. Desperate prayer coming out. Big damage coming out. Full solar beam connects onto Absters, and that's going to be the dispersion as well from Whiskey. Luminosity gaming basically getting every single thing from every single player here in this opener, and they're not done yet prev still looking for more here full cc coming out though onto drake to get the fear into repentance here potentially absurd kind of playing with the idea of going for it but he might want to hold on to it for brain to get the full blind onto brain do they have any follow-up there's the repentance absurd no gonna be able to find it they find the sap instead by peekaboo but prev here it's not gonna be under too much fire he's actually gonna go for the cyclone there onto peekaboo beautiful in cap coming out there by drake and so far it is more of the same here luminosity gaming coming out swinging and the golden guardians holding on yeah absolutely really intense start here to this game as prev's going to be looking for the clones there's double leg sweep though it's going to actually force the trigger no excuse me it broke there onto onto peak i'm not sure how he got out of that so quickly maybe it was dr it was a bop excuse me that came out there from absurd and now the repent they're over onto drake they're trying to put some pressure here on a brain you can see that peak was pushing forward but does have to be a little bit careful the clone's going to land now onto him whiz k pushing up looking for the mine spikes but drake is going to go in for the in cap there on a surge they have anything to follow it up but not just yet but the beam does come down there from prev prev now pulling back to the pillar as whiz case the target gonna get interrupted there by drake and now drake pulling back they're looking for peekaboo the grapple weapon now onto peekaboo as they have the cheap shot down onto prev but he's pre-bared it storm earth and fire gonna get popped there was the repent now expiring onto brain but it's prev on the run it's prev actually dipping down here fairly low they may be able to force some more cooldowns here from brain as they're trying to actually swap the pressure over onto him as well whiz just dotting up everyone prev trying to pull peekaboo back into these awkward spots and it's drake now going over looking for some cc on surge there's drake now trying Trying to get that pressure going on to Whizk. The smoke bomb comes down. It's Peekaboo in trouble, though. Peekaboo stepping out, gets the gouge there on to Brain. Do they have any CC to follow it up? Not just yet. Now the repent trying to come out. Prev on the run here in bear, charging away, trying to stay alive. And it's Drake back onto the back of Peekaboo here, but he still has cloak, has no evasion for quite some time. So does have to be respectful of the damage, but should be okay. And Brain now charging forward. Leg sweep there onto Surge. Clone onto Whizk. It's a 3v1. It's Peekaboo potentially in trouble here, but they're going to throw the clone onto him and just swap the damage back onto Whizk as the Zwen is out here. And they're trying to keep this pressure rolling. Pikachu with some fancy moves there, actually dodged the leg sweep and now going for his own setup, full blind onto Brain, into a gouge. Whiskey is there though with the silence as well. They don't have a fear, it looks like, to follow it up and all of a sudden they're going to get the cheap shot, but Brain sacrifices it. Nice trade there by Brain. Prev is going to be completely fine with that cheap shot coming out onto Drake. Absurge, what is he going to do here? He needs to try to read that setup that's coming now because it's going to be onto Whiskey here. Most likely, Drake is looking for the damage, attacking Whiskey right now, getting all over him, but it's going to be Prev actually still on the back foot absurd looking for some repentances here brain line decides it though and absurd actually trying to find one onto drake but he gets incapped on it here comes the pressure drake is ready fist of fury being channeled out he's gonna go after peekaboo peekaboo dropping very very low he has the cloak of shadows he needs to make the trade and he will make the trade right there full kidney shot now onto prev silence onto brain do they have anything else look at this damage coming out from whiz big void torn being casted out full repentance on drake cheap shot coming out onto brain but once again, Brain not using his trinket or his bubble or his bobs, only using that lay on hands, but it's still one of the objectives being ticked off from the checkbook. Yeah, going to be able to get that. Peekaboo, I think, maybe got a little bit too fancy. He's trying to off-CC Brain, but ended up getting himself cloned there, unfortunately, and now chasing him behind that pillar. The grapple weapon is there. There's a, a big venom damage coming down on him from Drake. As Prev is just kiting across the map, he's just running for the hills, trying to constantly reposition here 
further and further away from Golden Guardians. Clearly, the plan is Prev just plays Mac Distance, and Drake is the one playing in their face. Piku trying to push in here, but he's down at half HP. He can't really go behind the pillar until he gets top back up. And you can see the Ring of Peace going to interrupt that repentance that was coming out from Surge. And Wizke now pushing in. There's going to be some CC coming out onto Brain. You can see that the kidney shot is there. There's a gouge over onto Drake. It's a 3v1. Prev in some trouble. They have the follow up. There's a blind over onto Brain. There's a repent onto Drake. The CC Ooh. is never ending, but they're not getting anything out of Drake. And Prev, Prev is just sitting in bear. He's chilling, popped the heart of the wild, but he didn't even use his bark skin. So, so much CC, but really not a lot gained there by Golden Guardians. Well, they did actually get Brain's Trinket there as well, so they are able to get a couple of cooldowns here, and now Pika, we're going for a solo mission, the Smoke Bomb, but the Sacrifice is active, but that will force out the Bark Skin here from Prev. Look at that Mind Control coming out here from WizK as well. Beautifully done there. A defensive Solar Beam coming out there from Prev, Cycloning WizK, but it looks like Drake actually wanted to go after WizK. Now they're going to swap the Cyclone onto Abstage, going after WizK once again. WizK with the beautiful Fade, though, and he needs to be careful. Caught up in the Leg Sweep, instant Dispersion. Cyclone coming out here onto Pika, but Drake actually wanted to swap him there, but and he wanted to get that to make sure that Prev is able to get a little bit of distance. Now, Pika going for the gouge, going for the cheap shot onto Brain, full kidney onto Prev. Prev's going to trink it out. Mind Games trying to line of sight. He actually knocks uh, Absturge on the Repentance here. Absturge mana not doing too hot. Brain's mana as well, kind of tied up here. Full Cyclone connects onto Absturge. Where are they going to go after? It looks like Pika will be shadow steps away from uh, from the engage onto Prev. Full Fear connects onto Drake. Look at that side. Look at that Repentance onto Drake. He is crowd controlled in Narnia over there. Full Cyclone now onto Absturge, and once again, it is going to be Drake reconnecting onto Peekaboo. Prep trying to stay away from Peekaboo, and Brain here just trying to hold on to his cooldowns for as long as humanly possible. That next setup, though, could be deadly. Still 30 seconds away on Brain's Shrinket. Yeah, and we can see the kidney shot does catch Prev into kid in human form. But look at the damage coming out. Peekaboo is getting crushed. Leg sweep into that uh, Hodge following it up. And the save by light does proc as he was getting incredibly low. And now Drake going to try to put some pressure over on a Sturge. But it's Wizgay charging in. They got to stop that. So the in cap comes out. You can see Peekaboo getting in onto the back of Prev here. Prev just trying to stand and fire as Wizgay is caught into the clone. And Drake now looking to reconnect with the Shadow Priest as the CC is going to be ending soon. Brain trying to play really far away. But there's the step line over on a brain. Do they have anything to follow it up? Not just yet full repent though on a drake it's a bomb on a prev prev gonna have to actually trink it he's gonna have to bark and he's gonna have to try to get out there with the wild charge he's on the run here from from peekaboo but peekaboo actually looking like he wants to maybe try to re-stealth maybe try to actually get some sort of an opener but whiskey's in some trouble here and whiskey may be forced to disperse if he's not careful he's trying to pull back behind the pillar looking for the flash shields but he's down at 40 percent hp saved by the light looks like it's gonna proc there there's a gouge there's the bop instantly on the sun on prev the off jeep saw on the brain amounts to nothing because brain was instantaneous with that blessing of protection protecting prev and shutting down that go completely the double lakes week now coming through is drake getting the pressure rolling here onto whiskey peekaboo taking some off damage as well Wizkay does have this burst, but is sitting down about 50% HP, and he's going to interrupt it with the beam. He could be in trouble here, potentially, so Absurge drops the sacrifice, trying to keep him alive with the wings as well. Absurge and Brain, very even on mana, but slightly behind, it looks like, is Absurge, and now Wizkay is in some trouble. There's the in-cap over on a Surge, and Prev is trying to push in. He gets the full clone, and there's the dispersed force there from Wizkay, but Wizkay's sitting incredibly low, and if there's more CC on a Surge, this could potentially be the end, so the Bob has to come out as well. They're having to go through so many cooldowns here on the side of Golden Guardians, and now the offensive clone comes out he still has the swap but is he even going to use it look at prev he's down incredibly low on the other side prev into the bark skin in the bear form trying to run for the hills brain is going to be able to keep him up for now as Pika is now put into another clone here golden guardians have finally stabilized but they don't have a lot of cooldowns left Whiskey did use his trinket there, so he's not going to be able to trinket. Void shift right now. He could be in big trouble. Going for the flash shields. He can't be too greedy with it. Absurge going to trade out the divine shield and the sacrifice. Last line of defense coming out here for the Golden Guardians. 50 seconds away on that dispersion. Who are they going to go after? Full fear onto Drake. Where is the setup? Who is the target? Where is Peekaboo? He's looking for Prev here, but Prev doing a great job. Just line of sighting here. Preemptive Bob coming out from Brain once again. Brain so quick with the buttons here. Deep into dampening. Full cyclone root solar beam onto Absturge. And Whiskey could fall right now. He has the void shift is he gonna use it he's trying to hold on to it for the absolute last second getting very very low though drake looking for the kill here full blind onto drake full kidney shot onto prev whiskey pushing in sacrifice comes out from brain once again and mana is stable here between both healers and whiskey with a triple fear right now lives on the line the two the two winner will advance to the grand final loser will be eliminated in third brain gets hodged on his trinket big damage here onto prev prev is going to be able to activate the bark skin heal himself up whiskey spamming out the flash of lights going for the mind games get cycloned on and no trinket available for whiskey and this is way too close to call anybody could take it 
Yeah, absolutely. But Whiskey has the disperse back. That is massive for him, but he may have to use it here quickly. We'll see. They're trying to pull back. Whiskey, though, pushing in. He's looking for the CC on Brain. Can't quite get it. It looked like he couldn't land that fear, couldn't get in range. So he's going to hold on to it for now. We'll see if he can find another opening, though, as Drake is going to get gouged up and the Repent going to be coming out here. It's going to land full onto Brain. So now they're looking for Prev, but Prev is already pre bared. He's ready. The Cheap Shot comes out, though. Mind Game's coming out. Smoke There's bomb. the bomb, and the Golden Guardians are going to go for it. They're going to try to burst down Prev. Prev down about 30% HP. The in cap from Drake on a peekaboo, making all the difference he's going to be bashed out of that and now into the full clone bought so much time is on the other side the disperse is forced it's drake on a mission here he's soloing out whiskey he's soloing out absurds back behind the pillar they're both getting rocked but now the full hodge is going to buy them a little bit of time tears deliverance does come out surge is completely tapped and golden guardians have got to win now if they're ever going to do it they're looking for the go on to prev whiskey trying to push in on brain looking for some cc the kick on the clone comes out from peekaboo you can see the off cc now though landing on surge and there's a pummel on to whiskey whiskey in so much trouble Trouble. may have to actually use that swap soon but he gets bopped so he's gonna be able to hold on to it prev though sitting pretty low here we can see another bop rotating up for brain in a couple seconds our golden guardians gonna be able to make anything happen before that they're trying to stack in on top of these healers they're trying to make something happen the gouge comes out there on a brain and surge is charging in he knows that we bubble. need to win now but the bubble comes out they're trying to make a big go on to on to oh. prev we can see the triple fear coming out and this could potentially be it for golden guardians can they make it happen do they have anything out after this they have a repent on a brain no i think they may have done it prev is incredible low and they don't have any healing coming out from brain but the sacrifice is going to be enough i think to stabilize surge on the other side gets leg swept but still he's going down the bop is maybe going to have to be used the heart of the wild comes out from prev he's trying to cut away he's going to be able to do it the regrowths are going to be able to stabilize him as well as Whiskey is pushing in, but Whiskey has nothing, and I think this could be it for Golden Guardians now. He's got no swap. He's got no disperse. The beam comes down. The repent is there on Drake, and the fear to follow it up. Whiskey just trying to run for his life, but Surge has no mana, and Golden Guardians have no time. Surge sits down for a drink. He gets a tiny sip of mana back, but Peekaboo is caught in the clone. They're trying to push forward, but Peekaboo is just getting CC'd up, and Drake is on a mission pushing forward, trying to close this one out. The repent coming out on the Peekaboo is actually going to get broken by Drake as Drake is looking to try to kill off peekaboo he drops the bomb he steps out he's on the run golden guardians trying to reset but they've got nowhere to go it's 63 percent dampening whiskey down at 30 percent hp he's looking to try to make it happen but i don't think they can do it prev looking to finish him off but this first just barely comes back off a of cooldown golden guardians somehow some way are holding on for now but drake is just relentless they're going to try to swap it over onto him the lake sweep comes out it's answered by the kidney shot peekaboo popping the dance jumps over onto prev there's the cheap shot coming through the repent used defensively onto drake no the to cover the hot there to cover as well can golden guardians do it prev is getting down incredibly low it could potentially be a cross kill but peekaboo has to do it now if he's gonna do it and the ring of peace comes out the bash is there on a peekaboo prev getting around the corner and i think that is gonna be that as the bark skin comes back up they're trying to stabilize can peekaboo get there to make anything happen it's almost 75 percent dampening almost 70 percent dampening excuse me but i don't think it's gonna happen zico yeah, I don't think it's going to be possible. Peekaboo getting line of sighted there at the end by Prev, playing it out so expertly. The map paying dividends, but they're still going to try to play it out. Full blind here onto Drake. Peekaboo looking for his target here. Can he try to take down Prev? Prev has the bark skin here. He gets a full sap onto Drake, going after Prev. Prev trinkets out. The full cheap trick coming out onto Brave. Look at Peekaboo going for the solo mission right now. Can he do it? 2v3 in the with his backs against the wall. It would be absolutely Brain incredible. Bark skin comes out. Brain has no mana left. Cyclone onto Abster. They're trying to take down peekaboo he's got the sheet death and nothing else to work with his shadow dance just came back off of cooldown that's going to be the sacrifice peekaboo using everything he can the sheet death frogs abstract with the tears deliverance trying to keep peekaboo back alive full kidney shot connects full gouge onto drake peekaboo trying to run for the pillar trying to get one more reset here with the drs but i don't think he's gonna have it i think luminosity gaming may have done it at this point smoke bomb coming out who are they gonna go after with it they go after drake full hammer of just gets dispelled instantaneously by brain and peekaboo will fall double leg sweep that is going to be the bash as well onto absturge luminosity gaming what an insane game five between these two teams unreal the fact that luminosity gaming were able to hold on and turn it around brain is a legend for keeping his team going for as long as he did yeah that was crazy what a series between these two teams luminosity clutching it out in the end was ridiculously close imagine if there had been that counter kill if it came down to the 2v2 it would have been absolutely oh. epic but people can't quite make it happen i mean golden guardians in the last say 30 40 seconds of the game were so heavily on the back foot you know whiskey was out of cooldowns absurd was completely tapped you know brain just had that little bit of mana was trying to squeeze water from a stone keep his team alive 
was able to barely do it as everything was needed you know it felt like the split second of cooldown came up at this point it had to be used because they were just so far behind they were struggling to survive and you could see this moment you thought for a second wow. golden guardians might actually be able to kill him but the sacrifice was enough to stabilize for just that tiny bit of time that brain needed keeps him alive I mean, just look at that, though. Like, his whole team was basically rotting down there. And uh, it's at this point where there's just, you've hit the point of no return. You got no mana left. You got no cooldowns left. You get the disperse back up, but at what cost? You know, Brain has already stabilized his team. His team is playing offensive, dampening is deep. Peekaboo trying to get something going. And at this point, I thought, okay, this is just a game. It's over. Whiskey is dead. But look at this setup here that the Golden Guardian showing that fighting spirit here, even all the way through. Look at that Void Tor. And if they just had something more on to drake right there if uh, they just managed to get that mind spike off i think it would have been a 2v2 prep almost going down there such a close game and such a close series and you really gotta feel like that one game where they just kind of died in the opener with that yeah. um, solar beam you know that's the game that really stings if you are the golden guardians you know because that was the game where you know it was looking good for you and you just kind of threw one away and it, it just this game was so close. I feel like the map did, you know, a, a big favor as well for Luminosity Gaming Strat. Mm -hmm. They were able to drag it out for a long time uh, due to the size of this map. And even in the end, uh, you know, if the pillars weren't this big, for sure, Prev dies and it's a 2v2. And, uh, you know, anything can happen in that fight as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I agree. I think I think one of the biggest differences, you know, because Prev was kiting so well on this map, the fact that it was that big map, but also Golden Guardians couldn't really get to Brain for swaps on him because the map was so big, because he was playing so far away. I mean, look at look at right now how he's repositioning, right? You know, they know that Whiskey is going to push on him. He's already across the entire map, you know, just mounting up on that horse, just getting back behind the pillar, you know, playing at absolute max range as much as he possibly can, making sure that they can't look for these swaps to him. They can't find that additional pressure. Uh, and that made it really, really hard for them. And, and, you know, just go back to what you were saying earlier, you know, talking about that earlier game where they died with those cooldowns still up, where those interrupts came through that they weren't expecting and everything kind of just went sideways so quickly. Those are the games that stick with you. I'm sure you have games like that stuck in your head yeah. that live rent free. I absolutely do from forever ago that are just, you know, stuck in your brain. You can still remember them. And that's that's probably going to be one of those games for Golden Guardians that's going to be really frustrating for them. Uh, which is definitely a disappointing way to have it happen. Also, you know, really does suck for them that that Wizkate wasn't around yesterday to play in their upper bracket series because I'm sure that they feel if they had another five games to play, maybe things could look different. Uh, but at the end of the day, still a really strong season here from Golden Guardians. They're going to finish third overall. They won a couple of the cups. I think really were able to step up and showcase themselves as some some real strong competitors here in NA. But it is Luminosity at the end of the day that will make it to the grand finals. They will face off against Liquid. And one of those teams will be our North American champions. Yep, absolutely. Um, unfortunate for Golden Guardians. You know, I feel like that's the closest they've ever gotten. And you're absolutely right, Azale. That's definitely going to keep them up at night. But I mean, third place, that is still incredible. They've had an incredible season. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it disappeared. Se second um, place is Zico. Yeah, second uh, place is Zico. For the second best region, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. But the rest of us, you, 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 Zale, me, uh, Sid, and, and Ven, we're in the we're in the gold gold category right there, as it says right there, uh, nice and clear. North. Oh, uh, oh wait, we can only, we can only talk trash like this no, because. Because we don't have to play against Echo after this. Echo's that looking is, pretty good. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. True. I'd, I'd be pretty true. scared uh, you know, if I was the North American teams going up against Echo. <laughs> it's, 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 it's even like, no, that, that looks great. We're going to have to get a, a copy of that. But um, here is a look at the North American bracket. We can take a look at the series that we just finished here. It's Luminosity Gaming Golden Guardians. That is the end of the line for them. They will be finishing in third place, but I mean, this is the 1% of the 1% here. So that in and of itself is a huge, huge accomplishment. Golden Guardians had an incredible season and I can only hope that they continue on that path as we head into uh, hopefully more seasons with AWC. So Luminosity Gaming, they have got a rematch here against Team Liquid, but semifinals, it was Liquid that actually sent them down to that lower bracket. And it was a really kind of a one-sided series honestly it was three to one but but liquid kind of just ended the i think it was the, the one on imperium domain that ended within a minute or something like that so this one might be 
uh, quite difficult Zico for Luminosity to pull off, but we do know that this is kind of a team that really quickly adapts to situations such as this. I mean, this is just going to be a fantastic story here. You got Team Liquid, you know, they had their big win, you know, in, uh, in uh, 1948 at BlizzCon. They won that year. <laughs> and after oh that, goodness. they kind of they haven't been looking too hot, you know. Uh, they've had some rough, uh, you know, couple of seasons. They, you know, they haven't been bad or anything, but uh, they haven't really gotten back to that former glory level. But this year... They have been the team to beat. They have been looking super strong. They've been able to get Sam I Am incorporated on the Moonkin. He's looked absolutely insane. Their, um, uh, you know, augmentation evoker with the DK looked phenomenal. They got, you know, Sidu uh, winning the multi-classing award uh, almost if it wasn't for Trill. And, you know, they're just, uh, <laughs> they're just looking like a great team all around. Uh, and Luminosity Gaming, you know, they are the team from last year, the year before that. But basically all those years since 1948 that has just been dominating the region and they have had a tough year but they have series by series clawed their way back into the tournament you know and all of a sudden they are going to have that chance at a rematch and they will make the most of it 100 so i cannot wait for this grand finals this is going to be so exciting yep I cannot wait as well. So let us know in chat who you are rooting for. Is it Team Liquid or is it Luminosity Gaming? We're going to head to a break real quick. When we come back, it's going to be the North American Finals up next.
are about to kick off the North American Season 2 Finals. It's game number one here, starting off between Team Liquid and Luminosity Gaming. Ooh, we're going to have some mage lock action here from Luminosity Gaming. And this has been a composition that Liquid has struggled with in the past. I feel like for this blind pick, I have to give Luminosity Gaming a little bit of an edge here. Liquid going to be leading with their double evoker, the augmentation preservation evoker with Mez on that Death Knight. This can get crazy. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting because it's the same comp that Luminosity played yesterday against them. So I guess Liquid was thinking that they wouldn't be running that same comp that they beat yesterday because they ran, you know, ran their Moonkin Rogue into it and were able to you know beat them 3-1. So we'll see you know how they're going to be able to actually uh, do with this now as a bunch of damage coming through already. There's the double blinding suite into the breath on multiple members and Mez is just going crazy in the middle of the team. Prev is getting rocked right now. He's going to have to get top back off, but at the same time, Axos over onto Trill. It's going to be Quill to follow it up as Zidu is going to get feared away and Trill getting dangerously low. Trill will use that rescue to keep himself top back up. Seralium looking for the CC. It's going to get actually interrupted though as Sidu pushing forward, going to get the sleepwalk over onto Brain. AMZ coming down now from Mez, trying to just stay on top of Prev, but is now pushing in on top of him. Prev going to be sprint porting and just running for safety here as Trill and Sidu are kind of getting crushed right now by Seralium. Yeah, definitely. Seralium uh, playing one of those builds that could be very punishing. The Glacial Spike, every single one of those Glacial Spikes can be absolutely lethal if it does crit, so they have to be very careful. If they're gonna just go after Prev and leave Seralium in the back line, they might just go down. I mean, Trill is just outright dying. They're sitting in that cleave, and this is a very good composition into this double evoker. The mage lock is good. I think this is exactly the matchup Luminosity Gaming did want, so I don't know how Liquid is gonna pivot from here. Like, maybe they should be going after Seralium a little bit more, especially if he's gonna be playing that Glacial. Trill taking a huge amount of damage from that Ray of Frost into a stun. See, he's in crowd control. This is very difficult, but it seems like Trill will be able to top himself off and stay alive for the time being. Yeah, he'll stay alive for the time being, but it just feels like this augmentation of Ochre trading cast with the Mage is such a bad trade for Liquid. Prev, they haven't really gotten much out of him. He uses a Dark Pack now, but that's about the only cooldown they've been able to actually force as he's just sitting in the middle of the map trying to kite back now. But there's the big Glacial Spike coming out again onto Trill as Trill is kind of getting crushed right now. Sleepwalk going to be thrown down onto Seralium, dispelled immediately, though, by Brain, who is really sitting back in good positioning. And Mez is having trouble just kind of creating this pressure solo. Seralium, again, looking for that Glacial Spike. It's going to get Mind Frozen there by Mez as he steps back to interrupt. Now a Rebuke uh, coming out as well, going to be interrupting that again as the Emerald communion going to be used by Sidu already here. Trill pretty much on that back foot once again, even though they just used that Emerald communion, he's down about 20-30% HP, is going to get top back off as Sidu is now going to be getting feared out of that sheep. Will be able to get out though. Sleepwalks trying to come through, trying to actually look for some CC back over on a Seralium, but Seralium's just getting cleansed out of that CC every single time they need it. Now the breath comes out. They have that double blinding sleet and Brain is going to be the target now as Prev has actually ported the way. Can they get anything done here on a Brain? Evan might has been pops a massive buff on a Mez. A Mez is going to try to go crazy here, but Trill's going to be coiled away and it's Trill that's still taking the worst end of this trade. Yeah, but once now behind the pillar, no, he gets interrupted. I mean, Dream Projection coming in from Sidu, but this cleave damage from the Mage Warlock is quite good. And whenever Trill and Sidu are going to be hiding at the pillar, that's when the Ring of Fire is going to be dropped. The Frozen Orb is going to be dropped. Prev, though, taking quite a bit of damage in the meantime, caught into a stun. Do they have any crowd control on Brain? Do they even need it? Blessing Protection trades, but they might just kill him through it. Big damage here by Liquid. They are playing this very confidently, but they have to be careful. This Ray of Frost could be lethal here on the trail. If we see a Glacial Spike from Seralium and a Polymorph onto Sidu, it could be the end of the game. Trill in desperation is going to be pulling back, looking for the Dream Projection to remove Sidu from crowd control. They managed to find it, and I think Liquid should be able to hold on, but this cleave pressure is high. Yeah, absolutely is. It was a scary moment from Prev, though. You know, he was trying to reposition across the map with his gateway, but he got gripped back. And I don't know if he lost track of where his port was, but he ported LOS up Brain. You know, they had to use the bop. They had to use the trinket from Brain. But at the very least, Prev still does have his unending resolve. So they haven't really gotten through many of those defensive Warlock cooldowns. And he does still have the Tyrant available. So we'll see when he can find an opportunity to get that rolling. The Mind Freeze has been used. So I assume he's going to start looking for that Tyrant now. Try to get the pressure rolling because Seralium is just teeing off on Trill once again trill just constantly hovering low on health but shockingly enough cedar's mana is actually very similar to brain i kind of can't believe that with how much it feels like the pressure has been on the side of luminosity gaming well that's the nice thing about having an augmentation on team you can see on the healing done trill has done a considerable amount there on that specialization to keep himself alive 
Rev in the meantime, taking quite a bit of damage. Mez needs to be careful. He's in the middle of the map, but with two evokers backing him up, I think it's very unlikely we do see Mez go down in this matchup, unless we see a lot of crowd control on c and Trill. Rev continue to be the main target in this match. Rallying doing what he can to cause a little bit of a panic here with damage. And it is going to be Mez continuing to take a lot of pressure and maybe even a healer swap here. Liquid is falling behind. Sidu needs to get some healing out. A big spirit bloom, but that is not enough. Anti-magic zone drops at the same time. They're trying to get aggressive here on the Prev. I think Liquid has weathered the storm, but Seralium, every single time he gets one of those glacial spikes off, could be lethal. Yeah, absolutely could. And, and they didn't really interrupt uh, the Tyrant that much. Trill now in a lot of trouble, down about 20% HP, sitting at that health for quite a long time. Sidu had to trink it. He is going to have his Emerald Communion back, but Prev is actually now in some trouble, potentially in the middle of the map, but Brain landing some big heals, topping it back off. But yeah, that last Tyrant did eventually get sleepwalked, but it got so much damage out onto this Liquid team, and it really put them on the back foot. And now Prev porting back in, you know, has that port on top of where Sidu and Trill are. You can see Sidu immediately uses the Emerald Communion to stabilize, but also to get some mana back. And now health funneling out here, you can see the Trill was actually focusing in on that Felguard a little bit. They were trying to rot that down, see if they could create anything with that a little bit of pressure that they're looking for. Trill, though, back behind the pillar by himself as Seralium out in the middle of the map is going to actually blink out here as Sidu's now into the fear, but the double blinding sweep on both the DPS. Do they have the breath to come out? No, they can't get it because it's Brain pushing in. The Axe Toss came in, and then a double blinding light there from Brain. Hodge to follow it on to Sidu, now into the full sheep. It's actually going to get removed there. I'm not sure if Trill was able to break that or what, but the Evan might now going to get popped here by Trill. So trying to get Mez aggressive here, and Prev now could be in a little bit of trouble here. He's going to be able to pop that Dark back, but it goes away immediately and now the unending resolve is needed and brain is falling behind on mana trill though still sitting low does have a shield wall pop uh, has those blazing scales up as well looking for the sleepwalk but he's going to be coiled on it Sidu trying to stabilize trying to keep his team going and Me mez is going to actually grip prez back behind that pillar but it's brain in the middle of the map drinking they've got to stop him immediately he does get stood up but that is would be catastrophic if he can get a drink yeah, it definitely would. We'll see what Brain's going to be able to do. He's crossing the map right now, and Sidu cannot afford to do the same. Big Dream Breath coming in, but he might just die! Sidu's in so much trouble! Ice Lance is coming in from Seralium. Somehow, Trill stays alive, but they are not out of the woods yet. I mean, that was a scary moment. Trill and Sidu at 5% health, but they are now topped off, and they can now make a play. Glacier Spike going to be cast out once again, cleaving down Trill. Trill needs to be very careful. Let's see what he's going to be able to do. Anti-Magic Zone drops out here by Mez. Just helping the defense a little bit from all this caster damage that Seralium and Prev are able to do. Ray of Frost channeled out, but it doesn't look like it is going to be fully empowered with the Water Elemental. And it looks like Trill will be able to survive. He's now going aggressive, looking for the Ebon Might. They want to take down Prev, but Brain got some mana back in the meantime, which is kind of a disaster with the side of Liquid. Yeah, he was able to get a small drink off. Sidu now pushing in. They were stacked for the Dream Projections. They have that big Dream Projection hot up. You can see that nice Mind Freeze there coming from, from Mez, interrupting that sheep, and now going to grip the Glacial Spike. He's trying to pull in Seralium. Maybe going to make him a bit of a target as he is just destroying Sidu and Trill. Mez maybe going to try to mix things up here a little bit as Prev just dropped that Soulburn Gateway. Gateway to safety. He's out of there for now. He does have a Tyrant available. We'll see if we can actually look to get that out. Sidu just completely oom at this point. Point. I'm not sure how much longer Liquid have in this game. Seralium, though, getting relatively low, but he's pushing in onto Trill. Trill in a lot of trouble here with both these Demo Lock Pets and the Mage on him. He's going to get locked out on that Sleepwalk, and in comes Prev. He ports in on top of them. There's the Death Coil onto Trill. Dream Breath comes out from Sidu, but his health is just not going up. I think this is it. He's going to try to go for the Evan Might, but there's Seralium pushing in once again here. It's 10 seconds until there is a major cooldown coming up from Sidu, but they got nothing and Trill is just completely on the back foot. Yeah, there is no doubt about it. Things are looking good. This is the Icy Veins from Seralium getting really aggressive here on Trill. They want to get that game one win. Can they do it? Trill down to 5% health and will go down. Seralium, Prev, and Brain, they get the counter pick here. I mean, this is the exact matchup that they wanted. It's good for so many different reasons, but it's just really difficult for Liquid to actually get anything going in this match. Seralium, Prev, and Brain can just play so far away from each other. If Sidu and Trill play at a pillar, they have a bunch of cleave damage. Seralium's going to be able to outrange Trill and Sidu throughout the entire match. So I think this is brilliant from Luminosity Gaming, and Liquid's going to have to come up with something else for this composition. Yeah, I mean, they, they ran yesterday. We saw this them you know play against this exact comp, right? And they played Evoker, Moonkin, um, as well as uh, the Rogue. So I feel like we know what comp they want to play into it. But I'm just kind of curious, like, what do you think 
Liquid was worried about that they didn't play the blind with their Moonkin Rogue? Like, what comp do you think they were scared of running into from Luminosity? Otherwise, you know, I would have thought that they would have led with the Moonkin Rogue. I think the Moonkin Rogue is just way safer in general. Um, it is possible that they were afraid of the Windwalker. Mm. Like, maybe they're like, oh, okay, Drake can play Windwalker. This is what they've been practicing. This is what they're preparing. So that might have been the comp that they were trying to counter. Um, yeah. that, that's the only thing that I can really think of. But it, it is really, really tough because just knowing Luminosity Gaming can play this matchup, uh, it, it's definitely in favor of Luminosity Gaming. Um, it's really tough because as dampening gets higher and higher, as long as they're avoiding the kind of one-shot setups, Trill's off healing, that's a huge strength of the uh, the Evoker, the augmentation Evoker is you have a lot of added healing, but at a certain point when dampening's high enough, like that added healing is just not that important. And being able to just do raw damage like Seralium and Prev is going to be a lot more advantageous. So um, it's one of the reasons why Liquid fell behind so bad badly in the match, but it is a really good question. I mean, what is Liquid afraid of? Why didn't they just play the composition they won with yesterday? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now, if I'm Luminosity, like, you you start to mind game it a little bit, right? You start to think through, you know, what your opponents are going to try to do. And I think, you know, clearly, if, if Luminosity just lock in Mage Lock Pally, Liquid is going to answer with what they beat them with yesterday. They're going to come out with Moonkin Rogue. I think that's almost a guarantee. So if I was Luminosity, I would almost want to come out, you know, with a different composition and see, you know, if that can can actually get something done, right? Because they did lose 3-1 to Liquid. Unless they think they can just make adjustments in that same matchup and beat them and they can do something better than what they did yesterday, I would rather see them come out in game number two, like with that Windwalker comp or with something different and see if they can maybe, you know, steal a game in that way. Um, because as long as you're winning the games on your map picks, like they now have the advantage, they now have that lead. And I think it's Liquid that has to show that they can kind of win one of these matchups that they were potentially afraid of uh, with, with more of like a blind pick comp. Yep. We'll see what they end up doing. This is the finals. This is a best of seven. So there's so lots of games ahead of us, wow. but winning that first game is going to be really important. Really and now damage. at a certain point, <laughs> yeah, damage difference is pretty massive in this game. And that's that's why double caster is so good into the evoker. Uh, one of the main weaknesses of that augmentation evoker is going to be that short range, right? Mm -hmm. So unless you are getting multiple players grouped up and you can actually get, you know, that those big breaths, set up for those one shots you're just going to be on the back foot you're going to be healing so we are going to dalaran sewers luminosity gaming i don't mind them just playing this composition once again because it did it felt like they could win with this like there was some really close games yesterday yeah uh, even when liquid was you know ultimately getting the w's it, it was really close and i got the feeling that luminosity gaming could win if they cleaned it up a bit yeah it's, it's just interesting right because then it kind of puts me in the mindset of okay well if this is going to be their blind and liquid can do the counter then it's probably just going to be Luminosity almost only playing Mage Lock, right? And then Liquid should feel a little bit more comfortable. So, you know, maybe they kind of overthought what that first pick was going to be a bit too much. So uh, we'll be interesting to see, you know, what they come out with. I'm definitely assuming it's going to be the Moonkin Rogue. They usually do take as much time as they can to kind of talk things through and make sure that they're all on the same page. Um, but that is absolutely what I'm expecting. You know, they played four games in a row of the Moonkin Rogue versus this exact comp from Luminosity. They won 3-1, so they have to be feeling relatively confident about that, even though, as you said, it was close games. Uh, overall, you know, they were coming out pretty far ahead in the series. Yeah, I mean, that last game was really, I don't know if you remember the last game, but it was very one-sided. Liquid picked up the momentum, they picked mm -hmm. up the steam. That's why it's really surprising to see that they didn't opt for that composition. But in game number two, they're going to just go for it, bringing in Trill on the Outlaw Rogue. Got uh, Sam I Am, of course, on the Moonkin, and see you on that Preservation Evoker. So this is going to be a bit different. <laughs> You're going to have Sam I Am actually looking for Cyclones. Trill's going to be able to lock people down on that Rogue. Uh, and this is a matchup that definitely went in favor of Liquid when we saw it yesterday, but they were very close games. Yeah, absolutely. And Luminosity, you know, should know that this is what Liquid's response is going to be, right? So, yeah. you know, they should they should have fully fully be fully aware of that and maybe make any sort of talent changes talent changes that they would want to make to try to mix things up uh, to try to see if they can create any sort of a, a little edge sort of advantage. Uh, do you think this Rallium would still play Glacial Spike in this matchup, or do you think that was more because he felt like he was going to be so free in the last one? I don't think he's going to play Glacial Spike. It's kind of, it's one of, it, yeah, I, I feel like it's a, one of those things where you, you can get away freedom. with Glacial Spike. You can get away with Glacial Spike um, when you're playing against, you know, the augmentation of Oka DK, because if they do go after you, Prev is going to be able to punish in such a way that it doesn't even matter. Um, in this matchup, I, I feel like 
the fact that Trill's able to bounce around so much and Seralium is most likely going to be the main target, I feel like it's going to be difficult for him to actually get off those spikes and probably get a lot more value of just like the Frost Bolts back. But mm -hmm. who knows? He could. I mean, maybe that's the adaptation that they do make. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, you just need one, you know, or maybe you need to be able to kind of go for that surprise burst. Yeah. If you're not able to win in, in a more standard matchup and a more standard series, then maybe you do go for that kind of riskier setup. You try to get the cross CC to be able to, to set yourself up to actually land that. Uh, we'll see if there are going to be any of those sorts of adjustments here as we are starting off in game number two. It's the grand finals here in North America, Liquid versus Luminosity. Luminosity took game number one. And we'll see if Liquid can strike back here as Trill's going to be opening up on a prev. There's the cheap shot with the Polymorph Spim coming out immediately there from Seralium as Brain's going to be put into that root beam. Sam I am in the middle of the map. Looks like the main target is going to be prev. But Trill on the other side taking a lot of damage here. Trill getting incredibly low. Has to actually vanish out of there as Cedar's just being CC'd up. And Sam has got to have to go bear. He's going to have to trick it. He's going to have to bark skin. It's Liquid that are really on the back foot already. Yeah, very early aggression here. But Glacial Spike is going to be used by Seralium, so he is playing that talent to get off those big one-shot spikes and really just force them to kind of go after him. And if they don't, I, I feel like he's going to be able to really punish here. Glacial Spike being cast out right now. Big hit there on Sam and Trill. If it doesn't crit, it's not going to be that much damage, but there's always that threat. It does, mm -hmm. and that's when you're going to go down very quickly. But CD right now is going to be able to just avoid crowd control with this PvP talent. That's going to be up for the time being, so opting to play very aggressive. But if he gets caught into a Polymorph, we're going to see that kind of aggression that we saw on the start. Big setup here on the prep, though. Needs to be careful. Dark Pack gets traded out immediately, but they are just going for it with the full Cyclone on Brain. Can they get more? It's the unending resolve. Can they get more? They do not want to greet it. Brain, you need to keep him alive. That's going to be the Hellstone. Tyrant, though, is going to be used. Cedo immediately using that Emerald Community to try to keep Trill aggressive. Polka Shadows has to trade, and... Both teams are just putting out so much pressure. Yeah, they just have no CC on the Tyrant. It is just free casting on a Trill, so they were getting rocked on that side. But at the same time, as you say, so many cooldowns there. Forced out of Prev, forced out of Brain, and Seralium now getting rocked. And Trill is just on the back of him. He's going to alter time back towards safety. But is it safety at all? As Sam Iam is still hitting him, and now he's put into the clone. They keep this pressure rolling here on a Prev. As he's in the kitty shot, Seralium and Prev both still low. And there's a gouge on a Brain, and Prev might just go down here. That's a lay on hands coming out from Brain over on a Prev, but it's still doesn't get him out of the woods just yet as Trill comes in with the kick onto Prev. He's trying to keep this damage rolling as much as he possibly can. The defensive coil into the Axe Toss, though, will finally slow things down. And it's Sidu now who's caught up into that CC. It's full Sheeps into the full Fear Spam now. And Sam is really, really in trouble here. He's back behind the pillar. He's in bear form, but he's got to get back over to Sidu. Sidu jumping in there with the team, trying to recover them. As you can see, Seralium playing on top is going to get cloned up. And now Liquid going offensive back onto Prev here. If they don't want to give him time to get these cooldowns back, but there's the bot being forced out. The Dark Pack traded as well. As the gouge is going to land on a brain. There's the cheap shot to follow. Prev still sitting really low. And he's on the other side of the map from his Paladin. If Trill can reconnect, this could be it right here, right now. He's going to get Typhoon off the pillar. And Brain is still not in LOS. Prev is in so much trouble. He's going to gateway away. But still pulling further and further away from Brain here. It's making it so difficult for Brain to actually stay on top of him. Because he's kiting his Paladin, it feels like, more than Liquid. Yeah, Brain at a pillar, though. If Prev can reconvene at that pillar, it looks like positioning is finally in a good spot here for Luminosity Gaming. Sam I am wants to shut that down real quick, though, going for the Bash Cyclone. Gets coiled on it, and now Sam could be in trouble. Rescue comes in from Cedar at the same time, though. Prev is taking unhealable damage. He's going to be using the Soul Rip to try to slow down this pressure from Liquid, and it looks like it will be enough for the time being. Beautiful Cyclone from Sam I am once again. Clone City in these games, really just slowing down some of this healing coming in from Brain. Such a back and forth match. Seralium in a full Cyclone. Root Solar Beam on Brain. This is a three versus one situation. Prev, how are you going to survive this? Seralium has to help him out just a little bit. Beautiful port though. Prev on top of Brain now should be able to survive, but this pressure is unrelenting. Another Cyclone lands. Do they have the damage to take him down? Liquid looking to strike back here. I think they're going to be able to do it. Prev goes down to 5% health, but no. Brain deflects it with the sacrifice. An absolute miracle. Yeah, he's going to be able to keep him alive, but for how long? Now the Tyrant coming out. They're going to try to turn things around. If this Tyrant could free cast, it could be trouble for Sam. It's a full fear on CD. He's got no trigger. I think Sam I am might be going down. There's the coil on a Sam, and I think that's going to do it. Luminosity take another one. Liquid falling down 0-2. They might fight it out, but no shot from this position. Are they going to make it happen? They tried to go all in for that push. You thought they had the kill. They thought they had the kill.
but they couldn't get it and it compromised their positioning somewhat made them fully commit to it and when the tyrant came out Sidu had no cc breaks gets fully cc'd up and that tyrant sent sam into the grave and it's going to be a disappointing start now for liquid the pressure really will be mounting you know, yes they're still going to play it out but i just there's just no way right you know from this spot there's too many cooldowns remaining yeah it's very unlikely they're going to be able to pull this off it was actually i feel like it was actually seralium's ray of frost that shut that down he had a massive ray and i, I don't know i mean we're going to see it in the replay it's one of the situations you know you're deep into a game i i think shot uh sam was very close to having a shadow meld available mm. um I also think there was another option. He might have been able to pull away to avoid the Ray of Frost. To range uh, it. Instead, he kind of charged in to try to shut it down. But at that point, it was too little too late. Seralium was using uh, his icy flows to just run around the pillar and making it really difficult to stop. So you see that cooldown up in about 36 seconds. Um, I think this is earlier on in the yeah. match. So a few close calls here. On to Prev, as you can see. I mean, <laughs> Brain just pulling off miracle after miracle. That was good poor positioning onto Brain, and I think these are some of the final moments of the match. Prev, this is where it's like, how do you not go down here? Brain manages to deflect the kill with the sacrifice. That's going to be enough. Fear spam coming in from Prev, surrounding landing a nice ray, a ring of frost, and here is that ray of frost I was talking about. There it is. Sam, I am opting to charge in and try to shut him down, but at that point, Seralium had already kind of done the damage. I don't know if he could have ran the other way. I'm not really sure. That's a really I can't criticize the decision because that's a really difficult decision to yeah. make. And he did have that shadow meld coming up in just 10 seconds. So that's yeah, really maybe well he could have run to the Australia. stairs, like you're saying. You know, maybe, maybe he could have tried to range it. But um, the Tyrant was also hitting him at the same time, right? So I think maybe he's thinking kind of doubly so. He goes to the boxes, potentially can interrupt Sorelium and LOS the Tyrant. Um, it would be interesting to see the death log, like how much damage was done by both. Because it's just kind of like everything hit at the same time. c fully CC'd. They were out of cooldowns. He doesn't have the meld. He gets Ray of Frosted. He gets hit with the Tyrant. Everything came in at once. And I think Liquid just kind of compromised their position because they thought the game was done. They thought they were going to get that kill. So everyone piles in to try to go for it. And that is the danger against Mage Warlock. They have so much CC. If you do get out of position, if you do run out of those cooldowns, all of a sudden... You know, the, the, the tides can really turn very, very quickly. Uh, it's all that CC landed, all the damage comes through. Sam ends up going down, and now Liquid are kind of up against it because they chose wrong on the blind pick in game number one. Then they had choice of counter pick. They lost with it. So now, already down 2 0 here, you know, Liquid were looking like the big favorites coming into today and definitely coming into the series after they beat Luminosity 3 1. You know, they won the last two cups, they finished number one in points. Luminosity, I think, even had to have a tiebreaker to just like auto qualify into, you know, the top three. So it was looking like it was Liquid's tournament to win, but the tides have, have changed really, really quickly. Luminosity has always been that team, like, it's not over till it's over. They're, they really level up when the pressure is on. And that's why they've been consistently winning for such a long time. So we'll see if they can do it here for the finals. They're up 2-0 right now, two away from ending the series. Liquid has another map pick, so they're going to be going to hook point. And Luminosity Gaming, I don't blame them. Very confidently going to be locking in this mage lock paladin. And I think a big potential difference for, uh, in their strategy is to go after Samayam a little bit more in the match. Mm -hmm. So maybe get more damage or more pressure or crowd control onto Sidu or crowd control onto Trill and uh, just get that damage rolling onto Sam, making it really difficult because if you do get CC on the other two, that Moonkin, there's not too much he can do. Like he can defend himself a little bit with the Cyclones, maybe a Solar Beam, but if those aren't available or there's a counter spell available and you can lock that Cyclone, you're basically just sitting in bear form uh, waiting to lose. So I like the strategy change here from Luminosity Gaming. Uh, it's definitely been working, but that last game was just so incredibly close. It's it's kind of difficult to know what exactly Liquid should do, but I do anticipate we're going to see the same matchup. Yeah, I think so too, especially because it worked for them yesterday. But that that's the really, really tough things about series like this. When there's so much pressure on, there's so much additional pressure and stress in a series like this that is worth so much money that you've been working towards all year long. And it really has those additional stakes that... It can be hard to kind of have, I think, a clear mind and read the situation correctly at times. You know, if you make a mistake, was it the fault of the comp? Was it the fault of the player? Was it something that you can easily fix going into the next game? Do you need to change specs? Do you need to change strategies? You know, because it can be like you can go into a series with the correct prep 
and just mess up in game number one and people can start to doubt themselves right and then that really can make things tricky so you know liquid definitely needs to keep uh, clear heads here and try to you know think through exactly how they want to play this out was incredibly close multiple times i want to say at least twice prev was under five percent hp in that last game yeah. so it was ridiculously close right that is like a crit one crit and you you actually win that so We'll see if uh, if they're going to be able to kind of bounce back here in hook point or luminosity could move us to match point i mean i feel like if luminosity wins three in a row it starts getting pretty darn tough for liquid yeah that's when you just you really get tested mentally too i think right like that is not the position you want to be being down oh two is already so tough because yeah luminosity gaming has a massive lead now you have to win two swing matches in order to actually pull off you know and a series of victory maps. so yeah it's uh there's a lot of big maps in wow too i don't i don't i'm sure you do know that um but yet yeah, there's a ton of big maps yeah. so there's gonna be no end to the big maps that luminosity gaming has available with their mage lock and that's obviously going to be a huge advantage so liquid needs to start winning on these small maps this is the smallest map in the pool can't win here it is going to be a really tough series for them yep let's see what they can get done Seralium, no fear charging trading gets confidence uh combat immediately but there's already a sap down on a brain the opener coming out on the prev but the problem is sam can't actually get there to connect so the hodge comes out on a trill and they really didn't get much done at all with that opener and out of that hodge there's a coil on a trill putting him in a pretty bad spot you can see the root beam coming down on the brain as sam is going to try to get that pressure rolling Seralium, more of a target here so that may be a bit of an adjustment that liquid is going to make but again it's trill that has to vanish out in the opener he's just getting crushed here in the ray of frost channeling through isn't going to be too much damage but does put him down to about half hp before he's picked back up yeah glacial spike being channeled out oh. big damage on trill that's cloak of shadows and that is the problem with leaving seralium free i feel like the games are going a little bit smoother when they're going after the mage i agree i, I do think it is scary for trill because obviously he has to overextend and there's not many cooldowns left but I kind of feel like that should be their main focus, especially with this new Glacial Spike build that Seralium is playing. Uh, it, it's kind of a game of chicken, but it, it's really, really difficult. If you just leave Seralium completely free in this match, he's going to be able to get a lot of damage, but a nice setup here coming in from Liquid as they get Prev down to 50% health. Brain's forced to trade out his Trinket to keep him alive, but Samayam shuts down the healing with a Cyclone. Big swap here onto Trill, Hammer of Justice with the Polymorph on Sea Dew, but Sea Dew's not going to overreact. Should have the healing to keep Trill alive, but it's a little bit dicey right now. Big Glacial Spike once again, and Samayam saves the day. That could have been good night, Trill that solar beam coming in clutch yeah it's a good beam but if you don't have your rogue on them and you're having to spend you know beams and, and whatnot to actually stop those those glacial spikes well then that's problematic because now they don't have anything for that ray of frost which is also getting a lot of damage down onto trill prev gonna port away but brain is kind of on the opposite side of the map brain though still has los on him so should be fine the killing spree is gonna get popped they're trying to swap it over on a brain there's the full kidney can they get some cooldowns out of him saved by the light is actually looking like it's gonna proc but he's gonna be able to survive there and will back off back to the pillar here as seralium just continuing pumping out those frost bolts popping down the blizzards just trying to harass liquid as much as he possibly can and now the full clone there over on the brain what can liquid get done with this cc chain doesn't look like much as there's a fear on one dps there's a sheep on the other immediately luminosity shut it down yep Prev right now going for the tyrant getting out a huge hit of damage here onto sam i am who is looking for cyclones can he find one the smoke bomb drops down a bit of a surprise there trill dropping that smoke bomb huge damage cd really contributing here that's a massive amount of damage lay on hands is going to be forced at the same time though sam i am is getting smacked by a few ice lances this is the icy veins this is the glacial spike from seralium ray of frost is now available do they have the damage who are they going to try to go after they need a polymorph here on the cd but they're so far on the back foot a beautiful sleepwalk coming in from cd shutting down seralium and they're just going to take down prev one percent health again i mean prev how many lives could you possibly have? This is heartbreaking for Liquid. Yeah, that's crazy. He lived with basically no health there whatsoever, and he is going to be able to at least get that those cooldowns off him. He did use the enemy resolve. Now going to pop that coil, but Sam under some pressure. Trill under a little bit of pressure as well, but his vanish is rotating back up, and he already has the clone, so Liquid can maybe get aggressive here. Sidu on the chase. They want to stay on top of Prev. We'll see if they can actually do it as he gateways away to safety. Trill briefly is hitting over onto Seralia, but there comes the kidney shot onto Prev. Nice triple blind light there from brain ceasing everybody the ring of frost to follow it up on a sea and there's a clone over on a prev trying to shut down some of that damage as trill needs to back off because sea is just locked up in these cc chains good clones from sam to actually prevent any follow-up fears coming through oh trill gets over to brain he catches him trying to drink he gets a sap can they get anything with this they need to get the damage going here with this cc but it is still liquid on the back foot the cc is just destroying them from luminosity 
Yeah, I mean, now CD finally has a moment to breathe. Big Spirit Bloom, but Samaya might just fall. The damage is overwhelming. Prev being able to get out a lot of demons, and once again, Liquid is forced back to the pillar. Mana is good, though, and Liquid does fully recover, so they are not out of this yet. Prev is the one that has no unending resolve, and Trill has the cooldowns to make the push. They could do this. One more good crowd control chain could close out the game. Prev going to be going for a soul rip, slowing down Liquid's offense just a little bit as they're forced back to the pillar. Big Ray of Frost channels out, but Sam, I'm looking like he's going to be able to survive that one. Full Cyclone now on the brain. Cheap shot on the Prev. They are going for it. They're looking to close out the game, but a big Glacial Spike here going to be landing for Seralium. Getting pressure rolling onto Trill, but he does not care. He shrugs it off. Adrenaline Rush coming out as they make a swap here onto Seralium. And maybe they want to turn their attention a little bit more onto the Mage. They seem pretty committed here to Prev, who just portals away after an Axe Toss onto Trill. But Trill reconnects. And if Liquid can stay on target, they might be able to actually take down Prev here. Yeah, it feels like the problem is every time they get a, a stun onto Prev, it's Sam getting off CC'd by coils, by, you know, Axe Tosses and Sheeps and whatnot. And so they're not actually connecting at the same time. So it's making it easy for Brain to just kind of stagger his cooldowns, heal through the damage, because Liquid are not able to connect at that same moment. They're not able to combine their bursts. And it's Sam now in some trouble. It's Cedu in the Hodge. It's the Axe Toss on Sam. He's going to have to pop that Bark Stone immediately. He's going to be coiled into the middle of the map here, trying to look for clones now. Is going to be land that clone on Seralium to prevent any additional CC from coming out. And it's Prev now in some trouble here. Trell was crushing him back behind the pillar. The bubble's going to be popped from Brain. He already has no trinket. So truly, one more big CC chain could be the end of the game. They get the gouge onto Brain. Do they have anything else? Sidu looking for the fire breath, but it's going to be LOS by Prev so far. Sam and Sidu stacking it on top of him. Sidu trying to spam out that damage onto Prev as much as he possibly can. It's only 12 seconds until he has that unending resolve, though. So I think Prev is not going to be taken down just yet. Brain doing a good job stabilizing them once more. Yeah, Prev right now going to be able to portal away, making full use of that short portal. But Trill is there with the kitty shot. Gouge here onto Brain, but Sam I am and Sidu are not there. But they are swarming Prev right now. Unending resolve is available. Doesn't look like he's going to trade it out just yet. He might have to, though. Does not want to be too greedy in the situation. Dampening is getting higher and higher. Seralium finding it difficult to actually find pressure. But a big rare frost as I say that going in on Sam, and he might just fall. He does. Beautiful, and that is so unfortunate. Sidu is just channeling the Emerald Communion one step out of line of sight. If he was in line of sight there, there's no way that Sam I am would have actually gone down. They were literally, I mean, we're going to see it in the replay, one step, and yeah. the, the, the game ends differently, potentially. Yeah, that is brutal, but it's now a 3-0 for Luminosity. They are one game away from claiming the title here, from being the North American Championship here. This has been a dominating series from Luminosity. Game number one, not close at all. You know, the next two games, incredibly close from Liquid, but heartbreaking for them to not be able to pick up the win in either one. This one, Prev lived with about 1% HP. They couldn't kill him. The last game, he lived twice with about 5% oh, HP. So they couldn't brutal. kill him. But I think Luminosity is really just kind of getting the hang, it feels like, of this matchup. They're doing such a good oh, job. I mean, that was crazy. I wonder what his actual health total was. It was basically nothing. Thousand. Yeah, maybe a thousand. Ridiculous. <laughs> Another auto attack probably uh, could have actually knocked him down. But there's just so many moments where Liquid is getting shut down by off CC. You can see Sam in this in this circumstance. You know they're getting prev low, but he's getting feared. He's getting hot. They turn the damage around on him. This. You know, and and Sidu trying oh, to get there communion. gets hit by the blinding light. Now the Emerald it. Communion he pops. Gets feared away on the oh, Communion. That is so close. Yeah, the heal doesn't come through. That is so sad. CD tried to get into position. It, he got blinded, and then the fear of path them away. Like, that's like, I mean, that's, I guess it's like a 50 50 chance that that's going to happen, but that is a really tough one. Like, that's a really tough situation to be in. And now you're in a position where you have to win four in a row. That, I mean, they're going to have to rise up in a way. We haven't seen in a while so we'll see if liquid can do it it's gonna be really difficult i don't know if they have a better composition i, I feel like if they did we probably would have seen it but yeah they, they might be forced to make a change i mean it's it's so tough right because you still want to say one percent hp five percent hp all these times where they almost had them you know sam dying with that animal communion coming through but just not quite able to make it happen in any of those games and you know it is at the end of the day, 3-0 for Luminosity. So Liquid in such a tough position now. And you really have to wonder, you know, how they're feeling, you know, at this point. You know, having lost three games in a row, the two of them ridiculously close has got to be really, really frustrating. If this is their best comp, do they still have the confidence to actually play it out at the level that they need to to be able to get that reverse sweep? I mean, it's a really good question. 
we'll see. Um, that 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 is the the thing is, if there's any team that could do it, it would be Liquid. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are are champs, right? So they have that warrior spirit. They can rise up here, um, and they're they're going to have to if they want to win because Luminosity Gaming they're looking extremely good with this Frost Mage. Uh, Demonology Warlock, uh, Mage Lock is obviously back in a big way. Brain's back on the Paladin. We are going to Ashamane's Fall, which you would think is a good map for a Wizard setup. But yesterday, the most dominant game, we, the most dominant game we saw from Liquid actually was on Ashamane's Fall. That's where they were able to just kind of brute force Prev, go after Brain, go after Prev, go after Brain, go after Prev, get a really early win. So maybe mm -hmm. they want to try to emulate that success. Yeah, I mean, when, when you think back to the previous series, obviously it's different comps, but when you think back to the Golden Guardian series, that last one against Luminosity, they had a lot more success when they were able to actually get goes on Brain as well, right? When they'd get CC yep. on Brain and then coming out of the CC, they were able to get on him. They created way more pressure, so maybe Liquid needs to, to kind of you know, take a page out of their book or do what they were doing yesterday where they were able to kind of bounce around a little bit more. And we were talking about this in the last game, but I feel like Prev is a bait. I feel like going on Prev is a bit of a bait because Seralium is just destroying them. Like, he's the one who every single time it feels like there is kill pressure, it's basically from Seralium, right? It's a Glacial Spike, or it's it's a Ray of Frost, or it's something that is really, really just shutting them down. So I, I don't know if they feel that they can't stick to him or that the Warlock's going to be too disruptive, but the reality is Prev is getting lots of fears off anyway. You're still going to, no matter whether you're training or not, you're still going to get Coils, you're still going to get Axe Tosses, you're still going to be able to harass these DPS. So, you know, maybe they do need to pressure Seralium more. I don't actually remember if Seralium was playing the Glacial Spike spec or not, yesterday it wasn't but, okay so that's something that's like you know we both have played a lot of mage lock over the years and that's something that you know i do think can be really smart it's you know if you were playing as a warlock in a lot of these comps and they're just training your mage in the ground then you would go like destro and you try to go one shot builds and try to like create pressure and try to punish and the same thing is being done here by seralium so i feel like liquid maybe needs to try to mix it up and, and shut him down a little bit more because i just feel like even though you know, it's, it's, it was good when Sam did it and he'd throw a beam and interrupt a glacial spike or whatever. It's like, if you were forced to do that, how are you going to have enough CC to get a kill? I think that is kind of the big question. Yeah. You're living at the expense of your opportunity to actually win the game and get that game winning crowd control. So it, it is true. I, I do feel like they did struggle to take down Seralium, but at least it slows down the game a little bit Yeah. Um, and might give them a little bit more time to pull off a win. We'll see what Liquid decides to do here. Luminosity Gaming playing very intelligently so far in this one. They're one away from winning a North American Finals once again. This team is absolutely insane. and They're proving it here uh, during this Finals. Liquid definitely has their work cut out for them if they want to stay alive in this. Yep, absolutely. It's going to be the same comp. They are running back. So you do not go swap with the healer. They're not going to change anything. They still have confidence in this composition. And we'll see if they can make it happen here. Match point for Luminosity. Seralium again, charging straight in here. Is going to be able to get in combat. And this time, Trill can't really get much of anything going whatsoever with that opener. He's still just chilling in stealth. We'll see who they want to go for. Sam now pushing in. There's a cheap shot over on a Prev as they have the root beam down onto Brain. They're trying to get this damage rolling, but the Axe Toss again onto Sam. It's just this off CC that is shutting everything down. Trill gets put into the Sheep. The Axe Toss lands onto Sam. And now we have that Tyrant out. It is going to get gouged up by Trill, but now it's going to be free casting as Trill's put into that Hammer of Justice. So you do moving in, dispelling him out of that, trying to keep his pressure going. Australian right now is going to be under fire with his icy veins, looking for some pressure here onto Sam. I am big ray of frost, but that gets shut down. It's going to be a shadow melt. So that shadow melt doing a really good job, but uh, basically Australian just gets it out of the way. So that cooldown gets used early on. The next time Ray of Frost is available, Sam will not have that big axe toss here on a C2. Sam, I might just fall! 1% health is in a really scary situation. C2 forced to trade out the rewind, but that was too close for comfort. Yeah, that was ridiculously close to Luminosity just taking the whole tournament there as Sam barely survives. It had been Prev living on tiny bits of HP multiple times, and now it was Sam's time to have the luck of the draw on his side, able to survive. Sidu picks him back up, but now the Hodge over onto Sidu. Trill sheeped in the middle of the map. He's kind of stuck in that double blinding light coming out onto Sidu and Sam, and it's Trill that's in trouble. Seralium just on a solo mission. There's the Axe Toss, and Trill is going to have to trinket. He's going to have to vanish. Has to get out of there. Seralium is just destroying Liquid it feels like in this grand finals they have no answer for this frost mage who has just been teeing off on them every time they step up 
He is just knocking them down. And Sam again pushed back towards the pillar. This one feels like it's going even worse than the last couple. Trill being put into the sheep. There's a full fear again over onto Sidu. And Trill is the target. They want to force the cloak here from the Liquid Rogue. We'll see if they can do it. Because Seralium again is just teeing off in that background. But it is going to be a beam to answer. Trill pulls back. The kidney shot does land on Prev. And oh. Prev gets Typhooned out of LOS of Brain. Can they get something done here? We'll see. We can see that the unending result is going to be pop, but no cooldowns really forced there out of brain. Yeah, that's a really nice cyclone there by Sam, but it gets interrupted. Seralia manages to snipe the counter spell and shut down that crowd control chain, but they are still just pushing forward with just raw pressure here. Brain does have a lot of healing available. I think he should be able to keep Prev alive, but I can't believe Prev is still not topped off. Big flash of light finally going to be landing. Seralium shutting it down with some polymorphs, now turning his attention onto Trill, forcing Sidu into the middle of the map, and Trill could be in some trouble. This is the Demonic Tyrant. Now maybe swap here onto Sam. I mean, he's the only one in the middle of the map. I want to see a swap here on Sam. Big Glacial Spike. Can they take him down? Big Flurry combo. Hammer of Justice into a full fear on Sidu. Doesn't look like they're going to use more than that. Still has that Emerald Communion, but needs to be very careful. It didn't work out for him in the last game, but this cleave pressure from the side of Luminosity Gaming is high. Full Cyclone on Brain at the same time, getting some pressure here onto Seralium. It is a race to the finish. Samayam needs to be very careful. He gets counterspelled, but he was in his Moon and Star, so it's not really going to last that long. He's able to get a Cyclone now onto Seralium. A full bash on Brain. Samayam looking for game-winning crowd control. Can he find it? We'll see if he can find it. They need to get this pressure going, and they're finally now focusing Seralium. He's going to blink away. Is he going to be able to get back to safety? The step comes in. The kick was not there for the sheep. Trill, though, going to be dispelled immediately by Sidu, and a big fire breath comes through. Brain has to get this tier's vengeance up. He's able to do so, and now the Glacial Spike trying to be channeled back out as there's a fear over on a Trill. He's going to use that time to get the Glacial Spike down on Trill, and it chunks him down for about 40-50% of his HP. Trill still trying to go forward as Sam has chunked down Prev. Prev going to be able to pop that Dark Pack, though. Full Clone comes in on Brain. What do they have left here for Prev? Do they have enough damage to actually push through here and try to get a kill? The Axe Toss there on Sam is really going to split things up, and now a Fake Kick there from Prev gives him the ability to get that fear down on Sam again disrupting them constantly. Sidu now put into the sheep, and they're going to be trying to swap this pressure back as Prev is going to be out of the clones here very shortly. The Hodge is going to expire there on Sidu, but even with Prev CC'd up, it was the Emerald Communion that had to come out. It's the Barksian that had to come out from Sam, and it's more cooldowns being forced from Liquid. Yeah, this is absolutely crazy. Prev and a kidney shot, though, into a cheap shot as it looks like Liquid looking to strike back, and maybe they could do it. They get the trinket from Brain as they are continuing this push here onto Prev. It's had really good kiting so far in this game. Seralium looking for a polymorph, manages to, fi manages to find it on Trill, and Sidu now gets caught into a fear, and that Mage Lock crowd control really sitting in here in this matchup so far. Let's see what they can do. Here comes the Tyrant. A big amount of damage is available. Ray of Frost gets channeled out on Trill. He gouges it in desperation. Does not want to go down. Might have to trade out the Cloak of Shadows, but wants to save it if he can for an offensive push. Unfortunately, has to use it defensively as Sidu is in an Axe Toss into a full Polymorph. This is not looking good here for Liquid. It's not looking good at all. Trill trying to be on the run, but Sidu, the CC is just not ending. Another Sheep comes through. Finally, it's going to expire. The Shadow Fear, though, connects on both, and Trill goes into the middle of the map, but was this a mistake? The Kidney Shot comes comes down onto Prev. It's a cheap shot on Brain. They're trying to do a go, but it's Sam that's dying to Seralium. Seralium is just soloing him, and Trill might just go down. He gets rescued back behind the pillar, but the blinding light connects on three. Ray of Frost going to come down, and Luminosity are pushing here. They're trying to finish off Trill. Seralium is just unstoppable on the mage here. Anytime someone steps off the pillar, he just makes them pay. Trill down about 30% HP. His health is just not going up here. Sidu struggling to top him back off. The Axe Toss comes in, and they're both casting in onto him. Trill's got to run back to the pillar but all this is doing is biding them some time you know it's not really creating any pressure at all from liquid you look over at brain his pvp trinkets back up in 30 he still has the bubble he still has the bop and they've got so many cooldowns to get through but we'll see if they can do it right now as they're in on the prev and prev is getting sent oh! and they're gonna finish him off out of nowhere they get the kill on prev liquid are gonna stay alive even through the enemy resolve it was popped too late the bop didn't come out the bubble was used but it just didn't matter liquid Grab victory from the claws of defeat. Oh, I am stressed out for Liquid, but they managed to battle it back and they stay alive. Like you said, really well fought game for both of these teams. I'm really surprised that Ashamane's fall is going in the way of Liquid. And maybe they're starting to realize that they need a bigger map potentially. Like maybe they actually need to create some space. Um, and it's not as easy as just rushing down Prev on a small map. So do, that do might be an adaptation that actually them, goes in favor. Oh, I mean, it, they won. They, they <laughs> did win, but do you think they look good for them? Because I thought this was looking like the worst map so far. 
I mean, you know, the results speak for themselves, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> come on, bro. Don't give me that. <laughs> uh, uh, well, um, I mean, uh, if, put, put yourself in this game. How sad were you playing this game? If you're liquid the whole time, they're just getting pounded. I mean, CD looked pretty fired up after, after this <laughs> moment. Here's the kidney shot and uh, Trev ultimately goes down. So yeah. uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, the large map. This is, I mean, this is something that Liquid chose, right? Like they put themselves in the situation. Maybe the game didn't look the best for them, but I feel like all of the games have kind of looked tough. Yeah. Although there have been so many close calls. Yeah. I, I think it is worth mentioning that like two or 3,000 damage at multiple moments in this series. And maybe Liquid is actually the one that's up, you know, 3-0, you know, 3-1 in the situation. So it's been very back and forth. It's been really, really close. Um, but Liquid definitely has a difficult task. They have to win another three in a row. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the only game that wasn't close was game number one uh, when Liquid was running that uh, augmentation of Ochre Comp. That was really, really one-sided in my mind. Uh, Luminosity kind of crushed them. So, but the other, the other three games, I mean, it could be said either way, you know, it could it could have really gone right. You know, Prev lived with about 1000 HP in game number two or game number three, excuse me, about 5000 HP in game number two. But also Sam lived with 1% HP at the very beginning of this game. Right. So that's true. This this could have been a 4-0 if he got hit for like a thousand, two thousand more damage. So uh, it would have been, you know, really, really uh, close on on both sides. Definitely an intense, intense series. But I still do feel like it was more luminosity favored as far as the overall pressure was going on this map compared to the previous ones because it did feel like liquid had more consistent pressure on prev uh in those last two maps than they did on this most recent one doesn't mean that liquid can't win on a big map and we're going to go to the biggest map we're going to imperial domain you know this one is really really big so i think it's gonna be tough there for trill but you know in those last couple minutes of the game there was a long time where it was like Trill just, it didn't feel like he could leave the pillar. And when he went out, he's instantly to half health from Seralium. And then he he starts looking for a push and then Seralium almost solos out Samayam and he's back to the pillar. You know, it was kind of just this like endless cycle of Liquid getting pinned at that pillar. And then they decided, okay, we can't sit back. We have to make a push. We just have to risk it. And they were able to go out and got a kill. You know, Prev just used the ending resolve a little bit late um, and they weren't able to actually survive with that. So, you know, even though Luminosity had a lot of cooldowns, they use bubble, they use ending resolve. It's too little, it's too late. Liquid gets a kill and maybe can build a little bit of confidence back for the series. It's really crazy. So I, I wanted to double check this because I wasn't entirely sure, but Luminosity Gaming, I don't know, like they, they have won the last five North American championships. This That's would be insane. number six in a row, six championships in a row in North America. I mean, this is like, this is a dynasty for them. If they can win this six times in a row, I, I feel like it's easy to call them like the most dominant team in North American WoW history. They're absolute beasts. They've won every single tournament since the last finals in Battle for Azeroth. Like, <laughs> that's how crazy they are. That's ridiculous. And it, you have to say, it's almost it's almost more impressive that in this cup where they were, you know, they're really struggling in this season where they didn't win any of the cups, where they weren't the team that was the favorite, if they could actually come through and win, you know, beating all these teams that were winning in the cups that were beating them out earlier, if they can really level up that much to be able to take down the whole thing. But we'll see if they can do it or if Liquid can keep this series alive. See doing the Axe Toss is going to get feared up off it. Sam into a, a stun as well into the coil. Now there's a full sheep over onto c -Doo, but it's a rally. I'm taking a lot of damage. Sam taking a ton of damage as well as he dropped the smoke bomb. Looked almost defensive there from Trill. The Emerald Communion is going to have to be used as well. So already some major cooldowns used on both sides. Sam behind the pillar, but he's still just dying back there. They did at least get the trinket off of Seralium, so that's something from Liquid on the push. But it feels like, again, Luminosity coming out on top in the start of the game. Yeah, it's looking really good here for Luminosity Gaming. This map is the double threat, right? Like, not only is it such a large map, but the pillars are as small as possible. So when you're fighting a double caster setup, this is basically your nightmare. Sam, I am caught into an axe toss right now to turn around the pressure a little bit, getting a stun onto Seralium and a kidney shot here onto Prev. No crowd control on Brain whatsoever. They're going to be completely fine. Seralium, once again, looking to punish Sam, I am, but this map is just so difficult for CD to avoid crowd control. If he is ever in the open, it's going to be a fear. It's going to be a polymorph. Big setup here on Brain, though. If they can get the Divine Shield, it would be massive. Brain getting low does not want to greet it. This is looking like deja vu from yesterday. They're looking for repeat success. That was almost the exact location where Brain went down without bubbling yesterday. So definitely not going to allow that to happen. 
throws up the divine shield and it looks like he will be able to survive as they turn the pressure around here onto sam yeah, they're going to try to get that pressure rolling, but Prev's still in some trouble as there was a blind over on a brain. It's going to be followed up by that clone. Prev's still sitting really low, doesn't want to use that unending resolve, doesn't want to use his Hellstone, is going to be able to pinch it, holds on just enough to be able to actually survive without using those major cooldowns. And now it's Sam that is taking a lot of damage here as Seralium spamming up those sheeps, trying to peel Prev so Prev can get fear, uh, fears out on the rest of the team. And now looking for that Tyrant, going to get cloned on it though. Trill trying to get out of the middle of the map, but he's kind of just stuck here by these Frost Mage slows. Now swapping it over on a brain, they're going to look for a big move on him. But Sidu into the Ring of Frost, he's going to be in some trouble as well. The double Shadow Fear comes out on both Sam and Trill. It's going to be a trinket there from Trill as he's trying to go aggressive, but Trill's in a lot of trouble back behind the pillar. He's still split off from Sidu. Sidu's in the fear he doesn't want to trinket so trill's gonna have to vanish out but that's no vanish no trinket no cloak on trill and he's just gonna reopen he's still down incredibly low and sidu hasn't had time to heal him and now sidu's gonna get locked out the rescue comes in the clones coming through defensively and there's another hodge though on to sidu did liquid overextend let's see brain in some trouble though potentially but trill might just die right here right now the x toss comes out sidu has a lot of work to do the second felguard sun comes out there is a summon felguard you can see the double blade storms down on the liquid there as Prev using all of his CC to try to continue that push, to try to secure the win here for Luminosity. Sidu now finally topping the back off, but it's Brain on the other side of the map. He's sitting down and just drinking his mana up to full, and Liquid not going to be able to stop him whatsoever. So a slight mana advantage now created here from Brain as he does decide to step up, but Seralium really warding Liquid away. Uh, it seems like they don't want to push out until they have cooldowns. Yeah, I mean, this is just such a difficult spot to be in. You're just behind the pillar. You are sitting in a blizzard. You are sitting in a frozen orb, and you were just rotting down. See, just burning through his mana. Brain might be able to actually just sneak away and get a drink here. He's not going to really mess around too much. The Tyrant gets channeled out, so they're not even saving it. They're just going after Sidu, really trying to get full value, but they're making a push. There's a Cyclone on the Tyrant. It's still available. This could be really dangerous for Liquid if they are not careful. Sleepwalk here on a Seralium, but Immortal Coil here on the Sam I am. That's going to force out the bark skin. Great counter pressure here by Prev. And I'm really surprised that Liquid just made the charge right into that Tyrant. But they have weathered the storm. Didn't cost them too many cooldowns. And now Sam I am looking to get aggressive here with his orbital strike. But there's just nobody to hit. Finally, oh, Prev, Prev, Prev just poured, poured behind the right pillar, on though. top of him. Yeah, he poured it behind the pillar. He's completely LOS of Brain. He's going to be putting the smoke bomb. Is going to be able to gate out of there to safety. But that was a risky moment. His Brain at reposition. And Prev poured it right into the waiting arms of Liquid. But now Seralium in the middle of the map. He's just soloing out Sam. There's the Emerald Communion having to get used by Sidu as he was put in the sheep. Defensive clones now being spammed out here by Sam. Lands one over onto Prev. But it's Brain keeping them rolling. The Glacial Spikes so already potentially he could look for that. He did use that beam. It looked like it got melded by Sam. So it was able to actually cancel that. But Trill still ends up trouble maybe gonna have to cloak maybe gonna have to vanish as he gets knocked back by seralium but it's seralium actually getting low here trying to kite as best he possibly can he used the ultra time he uses the blink he's trying to create space but he's still sitting low brain now out of the cc c do sam trill trying to push trying to create some sort of action here but they can't force the block and now they're gonna swap it over on a prev prev still has that unending resolve he has the hellstone he's got almost all of his major cooldowns and now it's sam into the axe toss it's seralium looking for some cc c do put into that hodge Do they have anything to follow it up not just yet there's a nice kick on to prev as he was looking for the fears onto Sidu, and now the clone's coming out from Sam. Could be landed onto Seralium over there. There's Root Beam down onto Brain. They need to get the pressure rolling here now onto Prev. The killing spree comes out, but it just poured it away from, and it's Sam that's getting hit hard once again. Yeah, Sam, I am getting incredibly low in this situation, but looks like he might be able to survive. Double Dragon's Breath comes in. Nicely done there by Seralium. Gets the full polymorph, and now Trill is all alone, and he is forced to vanish retreating to the shadows. He does have that Cloak of Shadows available too, if he needs it. Sidu is finally there to get some heals, but he has a lot of catch up to do. And to get the big Dream Breath to get those big heals out, looks like he will. And that should give Sam and Trill some confidence to push forward, but they're still just dying. I mean, this cleave damage is unbelievable. Trill definitely does not want to use this Cloak of Shadows. This pressure coming in from the side of Luminosity Gaming. I mean, look, Brain is full mana. They are one game away from closing it out. This is not looking good for Liquid. They're going to have to find a miracle fast. Yeah, we're going to see if they can do it right now. They're going in on Prev. They're trying to get this aggressive push. Sidu looking for the sleepwalk. Does land it on Seralium. It's an offensive clone on Prev on the bop. Nicely done by Sam. Do they have anything to follow it up? Seralium in trouble. Oh, Seralium is just going to go down. No block comes down. Boom, headshot, Liquid getting the kill on a Seralium, Trill and Sam make the aggressive push there on a Prev, the beautiful clone offensive on the bot, they swap it over on a Seralium, looked like he even used the altar time during that, I think, 
He went back and just insta died. No block coming out. Did not see that coming at all. It looked like Liquid had it all, like, all falling apart. It looked like Luminosity was going to be able to take it just out of nowhere. They're able to make it happen. I think that might have been, a, I mean, I, I said they needed a miracle and, and they found it, right? Like that game was looking terrible. Let's be completely honest. They're all behind the pillar. Sidhu's mana is down to 40%. Dampening is getting higher and higher. There's fire and ice down on the pillar. Seralium is just destroying them. All the demons cleaving them down. They had to make a move and they ended up doing it. There's just a beautiful offensive push. They go after Prev. Get some of the heals and sacrifice on him. Samayam says, okay, let's swap to the mage. And I think Seralium may have altered timed at like 1% health. I think mm -hmm. he actually altered at extremely low health uh, right before he got healed and then ended up altering back. But we'll, we'll see exactly what happened here. Here's the push. They managed to get the sacrifice and blessing of protection. And this is where Sam says, okay, let's go after Seralium. So they make the swap. Let's see when he alter times. He alters right... Or is it? Oh, he doesn't even alter time. He's just displaced back. So, yeah, he, oh. he ended up using his uh, blink. He displaces back. It's a little bit of a heal, but that heal is really not that effective with was dampening as high as it was. Hmm? Like, just, did you think the displaced back was was like an accident? Or what? It I mean, he like, heals uh, you. Like sometimes it is enough yeah. to survive, right? So he gives you like a twenty percent heal, but with wound poison did and nothing, dampening yeah. getting higher. I mean, there's yeah, definitely did... things you could do. Uh, Seralium. I, to his credit, has been doing a very good job, you know, living mm -hmm. these situations. But sometimes the greedy plays do not pay off. Like that could have just been an easy yeah. ice block at that situation, right? Like you just respect yeah. the incarnation, the orbital strike, and then um, you're, you're probably going to win this game. I mean, you're so far ahead at this point. Yeah, I mean, just look at the mana, right? Like, look at the mana when when they actually lose. It's crazy. It's like eighty percent to to twenty percent, maybe uh, for C do. So definitely a, a shocking win there from Liquid. Uh, I don't think Liquid had been able to force a block the entire series from Seralium on any of the swaps. So Seralium has definitely been playing it really well defensively, has not been you know, able to actually be pressured very effectively. But as you say, in that situation, you know, why risk it, right? You know, we, they'd already seen Brain got a drink to full. Um, he does go for that riskier play, tries to hold on to the ice block, ends up paying for it. And that's one that's really going to frustrate you because it's now back-to-back -back games that I felt like were heavily in the favor of luminosity um that they now lost and this series is starting to get closer right you know starting to go through you know more of these maps and this is it's kind of crazy to believe like i thought after the start after the first three games i was thinking okay this is gonna be a 4-0 potentially for luminosity you know when you're looking at the state of the game in these last two games i feel like luminosity was heavily favored from those spots but liquid just get these huge pushes two games ago it's the late unending resolve it's the bubble coming through you know and not not enough time to actually heal them back up this game it's a no block it's kind of like these situations that they're really really favored from but just being a bit too greedy it feels like on the defensives and ends up uh being being their their end and this is this is crazy so i'm, I'm sure you have been in the situation so it feels really really bad to be down oh three but you know it feels even worse than that is when you're up oh you're up three oh and then somebody puts you on match point and you have no momentum swept. you've lost the last three you're like yeah. hey we were one away how have we lost these last three games like this is crazy and all you can think about is that inevitable defeat so luminosity gaming they're gonna have to shake off those losses uh liquid obviously proving like their mental fortitude right because when you're down oh three and the games are looking like this uh it, it could be really really tough but i i want to say that liquid has been their their major demon for many many seasons has been the mage lock right like if there's anyone that has spent you know to cloud nine <laughs> hours and days and weeks just behind the pillar getting cleaved by a frost mage <laughs> it is liquid <laughs> so they've been in these yeah. situations before they have experienced losing the lock mage absolutely uh it was definitely was their demon i agree man you know back to to like the snuts days and chan days and everything and now luminosity and uh, a lot of different teams. I mean, this has been obviously a strong comp for so many different years throughout so many different versions of WoW. And we'll see if Liquid can finally defeat those demons, take down Luminosity here. Still, Liquid have to win back-to-back -back games. Luminosity only need one. We'll see if they can make it happen. They've had a lot of close calls, nearly took down Liquid in both of those last two losses. So absolutely could still close this one out right here, right now. We'll see if they can make it happen. CD looking for the sleepwalk. Not going to be able to find it just yet as there's the axe toss into the fear onto Sam. Seralium is the target for now and it's being chunked relatively low. There's a beam over onto Brain. He's going to have to use the Dwarf Racial to get out of that and be able to heal Seralium back up. 
That's the save by the light. So they get that kind of safety net right out of the way from Seralium. Really good pressure there by Sam. I am just pulling the trigger on his cooldowns, wanting to build up that initial momentum. And I will say, Liquid has been on the back foot in most of these games because of their hesitation to kind of just pull the trigger with that offense. So at the same time, though, CD needs to be very careful. I mean, this he's one game away from losing. CD, don't greet it. Emerald Communion comes in. I mean, heart attack. Talk about a heart attack. I mean, CD, that was a really, really greedy play. That was close. Yeah, he almost went down there, had to drink it, had to Emerald Communion, so a lot of major cooldowns forced there by Luminosity on that push. We'll see if they can keep that momentum going now as Sidu actually caught into a full fear, and Sam or Trill could be the target. They're trying to pull back a little bit, but there's a full sheep, and Sam now in some trouble here. Trill trying to get out on Seralium. There's the killing spree. He's trying to shut him down, trying to keep that damage rolling as Sidu now out of the CC. Liquid going to try to make their push happen, but Trill doesn't want to chase Seralium too far, so he's going to swap it over onto Prev. Gets feared, though, on his step over onto Prev, and Prev now creating a lot of space here, and it's Sam, again, getting pushed back by these Warlock pets, getting pushed back by Seralium. Liquid trying to get off this pillar, but struggling to really find their opportunity to make it happen, and now Brain pushing in. It's a triple blinding light, but it's immune by the deep breath from Sidu. That was clutch because he had no trinket, and he's able to get that nullifying shroud out. That could have been potentially a winning push there for Lumen Luminosity, but Sidu does shut it down. Now the Barkskin going to be popped here by Sam. Fear over onto Trill. You can see Seralium in some trouble as the root beam is there. Is Seralium going to have to block here? He's not going to. Will hold on to it. And Brain keeps his teammates alive. Yeah, a little bit of a close call there for Seralium, but playing it cool. Not going to let that last game really get to him here. A little bit of damage now onto Trill. Kitty shot here on Prev. Liquid looking to keep this pressure up, and they're just swapping between the Mage and the Warlock, kind of just hitting what is available, realizing that Sidu has no Trinket, no Emerald Communion. They are very vulnerable in this situation. They need to kind of stall a little bit here. They can stall another 20 seconds. That's going to give them a big safety net, and I think that's exactly what Liquid wants to do. They've won the last two games. They definitely don't want to just throw it away by not being patient, so they're going to play it safe. Trill's going to get a gouge here on a brain, a cheap shot onto Prev. Prev trinkets out. They are going for it, but a smoke bomb drops down. Big setup here on the brain. What is brain going to do? Looks like divine protection should be enough, but Trill is continuing the push at the same time, though. Sam, I am's in trouble. Ray of Frost channeled out here by Seralium, but it is not enough damage. Mortal Coil, though, the pressure is still unending. Sidu really needs to get some heals out, but at the same time, Trill is just trying to create some solo pressure here. He's got the Cloak of Shadows as well as the Vanish. Might have to use it. it looks like he will not use it. Sam I am and Prev just exceptionally low. This could be match point. Sam I needs to be very careful. Big Glacial Spike here onto Trill as he vanishes out. Is not going to mess around, but just immediately getting back into the fight, going after Seralium, going after Prev. Liquid is on a mission. Yeah, there's the kitty, and they're going to try to swap it over on a Seralium. Seralium with the altar time here, trying to stay alive, does alter back to really high HP. Nice play there by Seralium to deflect the push as Liquid wanted to get aggressive onto him. Now the CC landing hot and heavier over on a Trell. He's going to get spam feared out by Prev. You can see the disintegrates coming up from Sea-Doo. They're trying to get that damage rolling onto the Warlock. Now Clone coming down as they want to go back for Seralium. Seralium going to blink across the map here. Getting back over towards Brain. It's going to have to trick it as the stun came through. Does not want to mess around in the middle of the map. The Axe Toss now going to be landing over onto Sam. There's a coil over onto Trill. Glacial Spike coming out. Trill could be in some trouble here. It doesn't look like a crit, though. And Sidu going to be able to keep his team pushing forward here. Liquid senses some weakness, senses that they are ahead, and they're trying to keep that momentum. They're trying to stay on top of their opponents, but Luminosity senses the same, and they're on the run here, trying to kite back as fast as they can. Yeah, big damage here on to Prev. Brain in the back line, though, has to charge forward and land the sacrifice, but now he could potentially get cycloned if Sam Lamb's going to be able to find it. Full polymorph does land here onto Sidu, but Liquid has so much pressure. Australium is going to be forced into that ice block, saved by the light procs as well, so a little bit of an overlap there. Not the biggest deal, and I think it was an appropriate trade there by Seralium. At the same time, though, a setup here onto Sidu. He is not messing around an immediate Emerald Communion, but... Now, without that Emerald Communion, definitely opportunities to swap the Sea-Doo in the future. Going for a big Dream Breath, getting the heals loaded, getting all his heal over time effects onto Trill, onto Sam, to make sure that they can make an offensive push. They need to get off this pillar. They can't just sit in the Frozen Orb, can't sit in the Blizzard, and they are going for it. Once again, Seralium on Hypothermia. Can they take him down? Brain immediately makes the trade, but that's going to be the second Ice Block here, and they get oh. everything from the side of Luminosity Gaming, Liquid is looking good in this fifth, sixth game. Yeah, that was massive brain trinketed, and Sam bashed him on his trinket, and they got the bubble, they got the block, they got the bop as well. Everything was used, and now Seralium's in a lot of trouble. He's going to alter, purge. but he's still incredibly low. It got purged off there by the fire breath, I think, from Sidu, and that's going to do it. Liquid get the kill onto Seralium. What a push from Liquid. 
out of nowhere, they force everything off of Luminosity, and Luminosity is just getting a bit nervous, it feels like, in some of these tight moments where they're overreacting and they're underreacting. On one push, they got Trinket, they got Bubble, they got Bop, they got Block, all on the same go. And then right after it, Liquid able to secure that kill. What is happening? Are they actually going to be able to do it? Is Liquid going to be able to end the dynasty? I, I talked about Luminosity Gaming. This would be their sixth North American championship in a row. In a row. And Liquid on match point, just absolutely defiant. They put in so much work to be in this situation. They might be able to pull it off. They tie up the series. And there is only one chance left here for Luminosity Gaming. You can see in the replay, obviously, CD was very excited pulling off that win. But these are the pushes that we're seeing. They just go for it. The orbital strike comes down. So Rallyman actually lands a very nice uh, alter time there. But you can see he's forced into the ice block. And that's overlapped with the Blessing of Protection as well. So very unfortunate. That's a Divine Shield from Brain. I think he had to trade out his Trinket also. So yep. just in one good push, Luminosity Gaming uses literally everything. And that gives Liquid the confidence to continue to push. Sidu has his Trinket. You know, he's got the Nullifying Shroud, a beautiful Fire Breath Purge. And that is enough to just end it with a full Cyclone. And uh, ultimately, it is going to be Seralium that falls here. So I don't know. Now, I mean, I, I, I talked about it. Azale, like this, this is a, it's really, really bad. It feels awful to be down 0-3, but it feels even worse Way to worse. be up 3-0. And now you could potentially be reverse swept here when you were just one away from winning the whole thing. It's so much worse. I, I've been reverse swept in finals before. Yeah, me too. And uh, all I can describe the feeling is, is dread. Like you start to realize that it could happen and then it starts to kind of creep up on you. And it can kill your confidence, right? Because it just starts feeling like, oh, okay, well, we just lost one game. Who cares? Well, two games, we're still two up. And then all of a sudden, it's 3-3, three, three, and you were up 3-0 at the start of it. And you get that kind of sick feeling in your stomach where it just starts feeling like nothing is working here. Nothing is going right. You know, and Luminosity may be facing that right now. Um, you know, and it feels like just in these situations, they just got to be a little bit cleaner on the defensive because they often are, are insignificant mana advantages. In this spot, they weren't in a huge one, but, you know, in that spot, if it's just an early block or just an early bubble, that would be like all they trade out or maybe even just an early bop, you know, like just have to trade something early. Um, but it does feel like a little bit of that panic is setting in at moments. And, you know, we had blind, the trinkets, uh, the trinkets force on the blind, instant uh, bash, you get the block, you get the bop, you get the bubble, everything at once, right? You just can't have that happen uh, or Liquid is going to be able to take you out on that next push. So Luminosity need to collect themselves, need to play a little bit more cleanly like we know they can. They showed it to us earlier in this series that they have what it takes to be able to actually take down Liquid, that they have what it takes to play a really bulletproof defensive game. And also massive credit deserved by Liquid for finding these opportunities, for finding these pushes, because in a lot of the spots in these last three games, it started looking pretty hopeless for them as well, where they are pinned on the pillar, they're low on cooldowns, they're getting crushed, but they're still finding their moments to really go aggressive and, and really capitalize on things. And it feels like they're finally, I think, taking note of the fact that Seralium might be the best target, right? You know, they're going on him a lot more. Uh, they got the kill on him without blocking the previous game, but this time they got through both blocks. They really made a lot more swaps to him and they were extremely punishing oh my goodness oh and it's they're a making swap. the change it is a mirror match drake is going to be tagged in we got a mirror the only difference is going to be Sidu on that preservation evoker and brain on the holy paladin so i have no idea who's supposed to win this i don't know if this is a dead even matchup but one thing's for sure i feel like we could not have asked for a better finals like <laughs> this this finals is as good as it gets right like yeah. liquid looking for the reverse sweep luminosity gaming wants to shut it down we're going into a direct mirror match on tolveron this is crazy and this could potentially be the end of a dynasty here for luminosity gaming it's like if they win this they are six times in a row north american Ridiculous. champions and if they lose liquid they shut it down yeah absolutely i mean either way luminosity has has really done themselves justice. You know, they, they didn't win a single yeah. cup. They made it all the way to the grand finals here. They took down Golden Guardians, a back-to-back -back series. They, you know, were able to push Liquid here to seven games, and now they may be able to seal the deal here. Liquid, you know, winning three in a row absolutely has the momentum, but Luminosity definitely could close this one out. They could still make it happen. I'm going to be so interested to see how this one goes. It is, you know, that big difference, the Evoker versus the Paladin. Bob can be incredibly, incredibly 
effective in some of these rogue versus rogue matchups. You know, I do think bop on kidneys uh, can absolutely be game changing. You know, being able to actually bop off some of the rogue oh. CC is so impactful. But like, look at the win rates for this team. Like that is this disgusting. is all time, by the way. That is truly disgusting. Of an eighty-one percent win rate in competitive play. Like what? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> that, is, that is ridiculous. That is, it's like this isn't just ladder play. Even even to have that on ladder is super impressive. But to have an over eighty percent win rate against teams that are curating their entire like gear, they're setting up their gear, their comp, their races, everything specifically to beat you, and you still win over eighty percent of the time over years. That is absurd. That is absolutely insane. It's like you said, even in the ladder play, getting to the top of the ladder and having over an 80% win loss is it, it's nuts. Like that is not something that happens often. Normally your comp's just super OP. So doing it in tournament play <laughs> year after year after year, expansion after expansion after expansion, incredibly impressive here from Luminosity Gaming. You can see Liquid, you know, they, they've been holding it down too. They've been a consistent team for such a long time. I feel like after they won their BlizzCon, they kind of struggled to hit their stride. But this season yeah. has been very impressive from them. I feel like this has been their best season in a long time. They're looking extremely good, and they are not making this finals easy here for Luminosity Gaming. Yeah, absolutely. And here you can see Luminosity. This is uh, Dragonflight Season 2, their stats. So obviously, you know, came down to earth a little bit here. Um, you know, 10 and 6 overall uh, as far as their, their match record. Still, you know, a really good performance. We're still able to get in the grand finals, but, you know, nothing like the level of dominance, that I think, where it just seemed like they were impossible to beat in previous years, right? Where they're winning every cup and they're always going to be able to take it. Uh, just looking ridiculously unstoppable these last couple of years. This is this is the first kind of cup where it feels like, you know, first kind of season that it feels like they are maybe mortals. <laughs> maybe they can actually be touched. And Liquid, you can see 14 and 4, their win right here for this Dragonflight Season 2, you know, looking really strong. Um, utilizing a lot of evoker comps. Sidu has really, really liked the evoker, has taken to it very quickly. You know, obviously Trill was playing some Devastation Evoker and stuff in, in previous seasons as well. Um, but even in this season, Sidu has really maintained his preference to playing this evoker, you know, over the Shaman, over the Paladin. You know, I thought we were going to see a tremendous amount of Pallies, and I know Sidu was prepping the Paladin a lot online, but it has been, you know, almost only his, his evoker. I think maybe only his evoker that we've actually seen so far. I think he's played a little bit of Shaman, but when I talk to Sidu, he loves the Evoker. It's like by yeah. far his favorite healer. He says if he could just play that, that would be great. So uh, obviously we are now entering a game seven between these two Titan teams, Liquid looking for the reverse sweep and Luminosity Gaming looking to win their sixth North American championship in a row. There is so much on the line in this game number seven. We are going straight to a mirror. It's going to be an absolute banger here. Game number seven, Luminosity have changed up the comps, and Drake is just going on in immediately. Looks like he's able to pop out Sam, so Sam just straight into the bear form there, trying to play it a little bit defensive, pulling back, but Trill's going to be opening up here on to Drake. The clone off the cheap shot, and now they're going to push in. We'll see what they can actually look to find here as Trill getting in across the map. Looks like they wanted to try to get towards Brain and Prev, but they just pulled back, so they weren't really able to find anything, but Drake at the same time is going to be targeted once again here. Bash thrown down there onto Trill. There's the beam interrupting sam as he's gonna have to pull back here drake now dismantled pushing forward though looking to actually get some cc down onto cdu who's actually gonna get hit the, the repent there from brain but brain is blinded up at the same time there's a sap onto brain from trill and now the reopener here onto drake liquid looking to get the pressure rolling onto drake and the fire breath comes out as well gonna be topped back off though by brain who's equal to the task and the clones do come out from prev looks like they'll stabilize yeah, Sam, I'm getting a little bit of healing here, but a beautiful Cyclone. That actually, Cyclone the Dream Breath, that is massive. Prep doing a really good job shutting down the healing with the kidney shot on Sea-Doo. Sam, I am, could be in some trouble. Goes for the renewal to stay alive, looking for a Cyclone. Can he find it? Unfortunately, not able to. Prev landing a Cyclone of his own onto Trill. Sea-Doo and Sam going to be retreating here to the pillar, but now Trill has been left in the open, and Prev and Drake are really just putting the pressure out, hitting what they can. Not going to be overextending too much here. Full kitty shot now onto Drake as they're looking to get some damage rolling, but a kitty shot into Cyclone onto Sam. Both these teams playing out of their minds in this final game.
Yeah, absolutely. It looks like Trill really wants to go for Drake more, but it's Sam who's the target for Luminosity, and now Trill on the back of Prev. Prev is in some trouble here as Brain's caught into the clone, and it's Prev down pretty low here. The sacrifice will be popped. He holds onto the Barksian, but is going to throw down that beam. Drake now into the kidney shot. Trill's trying to get the damage turned around on him, and Drake is just getting crushed right now, put incredibly low. The save by the light will proc as Sam looking for more of that CC. Going to get cheap shotted on by Drake, but Drake's got to run. He was down to 20% HP, and there's the root beam coming through, and now Prev on the run as well. Trill chasing in hot pursuit here as Drake's out in the middle of the map. Brain now finally stabilizing the team. The kidney shot comes down onto Sidu though. They're trying to get some damage rolling now finally here onto Sam who is going to have to pop that Barkton. He gets kicked on the clone. He's looking to push forward there. Oh, we can see the Repent was trying to just time out of that clone from Brain but he's going to get interrupted on by Sidu and Sidu still has a lot of work to do here to try to pick back up Sam but he's going to get blinded. It's DR. There's the gouge. The Repent coming through and Sidu is going to have to commit the Emerald Communion because Sam was in so much trouble. Yeah, that was a really dicey situation. CD does not want to over or underreact in a situation like that, but the damage is still rolling. This is immense pressure coming in from Luminosity Gaming. Sidu is flailing to survive, but just goes for the offensive disintegrate. But at the same time, Trill is just outright dying. The full root solar beam here by Prev. And right now, Liquid's in a lot of trouble. Trill is in a stun. I mean, that was Sidu's trinket. He had to trade out basically everything. And all of a sudden, Liquid is running on fumes. They have no defensive cooldowns left whatsoever. One more setup here from Luminosity Gaming could close it out. Yeah, it absolutely could. Trill has no cloak, and Sidu's got no trinket. There's a lot of cooldowns on the other side for Brain. He's going to use the bop offensively there onto Drake, but a great clone comes through from Sam, shutting that push down, and Trill's trying to get something happening here. Now onto Drake, he's going to look for the stuns. The gouge expires there on a Brain, but he's into the root beam. Dismantle thrown down onto Trill as Drake is pushing forward here, sensing blood in the water, throws the kidney shot down onto Trill, and now looking to try to get some CC down onto Sidu, but it's Trill in hot pursuit. He's going to land the cheap shot. Do they have the damage followed up? There's the trinket from Brain as he was into the clone. Alone, oh, but he might just die. Man. Drake down incredibly low. The bubble's going to have to be forced. It's the bubble. It's the trinket. It's the lay on hands. It's the whole kit being spent there by Brain and Liquid striking back. Nobody has anything. A full repentance cyclone here on Sidu. Sam I am is left all alone. Do they have the damage to do it? Sam I am holding on by a thread. Rescue comes in from Sidu, and Sam barely holds on. What a close call. Root Solar Beam, though. It is not over yet. Sam I am on the run, desperately throwing in regrows. Trill has to trade up the Cloak of Shadows and just buy Sidu a little bit more time. But now a full repentance. The crowd control is never ending. This is an absolute disaster for Liquid. How are they going to be able to hold on? Sidu get caught into the full blind he's been cc'd for 20 seconds a full kidney shot now on to sam i am but liquid is looking to reverse the pressure can they do it somehow liquid holds on yeah, just barely. That clone came in a split second too late from Prev, and a massive heal landed on Sam right before it, and now Drake is in a lot of trouble. Drake's got no cooldowns. Did Luminosity overextend? Brain is oom. Um. Brain is on no mana somehow, some way. Four minutes in, but they're trying to finish Trill. off Trill, and they might just do it. The kidney into the Hodge, and I think they've got it. Trill's down to 1% HP, what? but Sidu finally picking him back up. I can't believe vanish. Trill is surviving, and now he has the Vanish. The Vanish comes off cooldown. He's going to Vanish out immediately. Throws down the kidney shot onto Drake, and Drake may be the one going what? down because Brain is stuck into the clone. They got nothing remaining. Drake trying to cut for his life trying to keep their hopes alive and he's barely going to be able to do it for now but brain still has nothing and the cc is there there's a root beam though over on a sea brain looking for the repent out of it not gonna be able to find it just yet trying to time it at the end of this clone but he's not gonna be able to do it just yet there's a the gouge though and the kidney shot comes through on drake and i think this could be it sam is spamming out the rest and liquid have done it your north american awc champions the reverse sweep is on liquid take four straight games against luminosity against the odds and they have done it i can't believe it look at cedar he is so excited <laughs> they dethrone luminosity game i mean that's what i would be doing if i just won that is unbelievable i mean your back is against the wall you are down oh three and you have the confidence to just keep pushing, keep playing. They went four in a row. Absolutely unbelievable. That was insane. What a series between these two teams. Liquid able to clutch it out in the final moments. Ridiculously close to getting a kill on both sides. Liquid living with nothing left time and time and time again. And Luminosity, you know, almost being able to secure it. Sidu is celebrating with his kids now. Absolutely ecstatic. You can see how happy he is. He has been working for this 
for years to be able to get back to this spot where he could have a chance to win a major championship like this. And he's finally done it. Him and his team have been able to pull it off. And so much credit deserved by them. Sam, Trill, Mez, and Sidu make it happen here. They win the grand finals. Luminosity, heartbreak for them on the other side. They played an incredible series, an incredible tournament themselves. Made it all the way to match point here, but couldn't quite finish it out. Small mistakes, you know, really are all the difference between them being the champions and finishing, unfortunately, for them in second place. This is just the final moments here. You can see there was just close call after close call. Drake in these final moments, really, I mean, this is just so unfortunate. Brain is just completely tapped on mana. You can see the kidney shot on Trill. How does he live? It's just heartbreaking. He literally went down to 1% health, like 1% health with cheat death. The Vanish comes up, and that is the difference between winning and losing this game. These two teams are so evenly matched. It's very back and forth. Look at Drake here, just realizing the trouble he's in, manages to get a bunch of cross crowd control out, a bunch of stuns. This is just such an insane finals. I, I feel like we just got to get a round of applause for both Liquid and Luminosity yeah. Gaming for putting on such an amazing show. I mean, this is truly what World of Warcraft Esports and World of Warcraft PvP Arena is all about. I mean, these last two series, man, it just doesn't get better than that. Luminosity versus Golden Guardians and then Liquid versus Luminosity. You know, both series going the distance, both series showing us, you know, the absolute pinnacle of competition here. You know, really, really incredible plays on both sides. Uh, you know, flexibility, you know, adaptability within the series and just some amazing individual plays and just ridiculously close. You know, we're just watching it time and time again and you almost cannot believe your eyes. You know, I thought that Trill was dead multiple times. I thought that Sam was dead multiple times and Luminosity just spent so much going aggressive, trying to get those kills uh, that all of a sudden you look over and out of nowhere, Brain is oom and Brain is never, <laughs> Brain is always full mana. So it was just such a shock to me when I look up and I realize four minutes in, Brain is on zero mana. And all of a sudden, Luminosity, who had so many cooldowns, had spent those cooldowns going offensively, had spent those cooldowns to trying to finish off Trill, and just barely Trill had hung on by the skin of his teeth, survives and is able to allow Liquid to turn it around. I think I'm gonna pass out. I think I did pass out. <laughs> now I'm back. Oh my gosh, my heart was beat. I, I, there were so many times. I feel like both of both sides were just inches away from death. I cannot believe that took it all the way to a game seven. I think that might be the most intense finals we've had in quite some time. Huge what congratulations. Yeah, for real. Uh, huge congratulations to Team Liquid. Definitely heartbreaking for Luminosity. But you know what? They've got so many wins. They. <laughs> they they I, you know they they were reigning supreme for so long i mean team liquid they broke the curse and they are our north american champions and i believe we do actually have Sidu with us right now hello can you hear us i can <laughs> whoa congrats right. man you're the goat oh no. thank you so much man that was uh that was crazy <laughs> That was absolutely insane. Where does that where does that rank with like, you know, your favorite series, your most series of all time? Because that was ridiculous. Uh, you know, I, I, I think to, go ahead. we live with one percent HP, probably two or three games on your reverse sweep. Yeah, um, I think this has to be the most excited I've ever been. Like winning BlizzCon was definitely <laughs> up there, and uh, you know that was an incredible series too, in each their own. Um, but you know that was a four row. And coming back from a reverse sweep in a game seven already is like something in itself. Like that was just unbelievable. My teammates, you know, they just did such an amazing job. And Jesus, Louise, man, that was just, it was just insane. It, I, I can't, I can't believe it. When we were down 0-3, I was still super confident. You could ask my teammates. There wasn't a single point in the series where we gave up hope. Uh, you know, I said we can reverse sweep it. You know, LG, they are probably the best team at making adaptations and their adaptations in the series was go Sam. So when Sam dies two games in a row, we're like, you know what? Let's just have Sam, you know, be a little bit less aggressive when we don't have anything. And then that was just enough to make him think it was a bad matchup. And, uh, you know, traditionally, you know, uh, Prez isn't super great into Moonkin. So we we never really played the mirror. So we were a little worried about the root beams. Um, and I mean, it's just, you know, you play that matchup a thousand times, 
you know, Trill and Sam are dying in those situations. I, I kid you not, like the only thing I was doing was praying. I'm like, it's over, you know, someone, <laughs> someone take the wheel because it's out of my control. <laughs> but oh my gosh, we got it done. And obviously we are incredibly happy about it. As you should be, man. What does it mean to you know have it done? You know, not just have a reverse sweep against against anybody, but against Luminosity Gaming, who has dominated AWC in North America for the last couple of years, right? They're just winning every single time, and you know, like, does that make it feel extra special to finally be the ones kind of dethrone you know this this Goliath team that just can't be beat? I mean, it definitely it definitely does feel you know really really good, and it's it's crazy to think that they were one game away from six AWC final wins in a row. They have won the last five. So the fact that they were one game away, you know, people people say like they've had a little bit of a rough season. They were right there the whole time. Uh, you know, they are incredible competitors. Like I said, I think they are probably one of the best teams, if not the best teams at making adaptations. And we knew coming into uh, this series that they were gonna make some changes. They weren't gonna go down without a fight. Uh, it didn't matter what happened in the previous, uh, you know, in the previous series, but I mean, it, it just it just feels good all around. It's it's definitely not like, a, you know, wow, we beat LG, we feel super good. It, it would have felt great to beat any of these teams in the finals because I really think <laughs> NA was wide open this year. You know, I, I think any of the teams could have could have uh, took it, you know, to come put on a show and the, the series last series, man, you know, that that could have went to a game seven. If they had a seven game series, that was unbelievable. So these two back to back series for that team is just absolutely crazy. I can't even imagine how they were feeling being in another, you know, uh, final game of the other series or whatever but i mean that was just it, it's just unbelievable we are just on top of the world right now <sighs> yeah i mean as you should be an incredible performance i i feel like this season for your team has been the best in a while uh i want to know what you kind of attribute that to like has has your practice schedule been different like what do, what do you think it comes down to man we we are uh a dysfunctional family to say the least man but we are a family and uh that's that's just kind of where it's at you know uh, me and me and mez are literally the dads and we're always yelling at trill and sam like you need to practice more you got to eat your greens but you know they show up when it matters and uh i think the biggest thing is that we're just all always really open and honest with our communications like if someone's annoying someone you can have that you know that discussion be like bro you're annoying like leave me alone uh so you know we're, we're always kind of giving each other a hard time um but I really think that we just wanted it really bad this year. And uh, I think like one of the biggest changes for my POV at least is, um, <clears throat> you know, there was no complaining this season, you know, in the, in the previous seasons, instead of complaining about rogue, you know what, just put one of the best multi-classers in the game on rogue and, you know, stop complaining about it. So I think we just came in with a little bit of a different uh, mindset this season. And um, we didn't have to play from behind since we decided to make those adaptations early on. And, uh, you know, just really, it really, uh, you know, paid dividends for us. We we obviously are very very happy with the results and winning for Team Liquid too. You know, those that's definitely our motivation. This is such an incredible org, and to be even wearing this jersey right now is uh, a dream come true. I remember uh, <laughs> after you won BlizzCon, uh, one of the interview questions you had is like, "Are you going to keep going? Or are you going to keep competing?" And you said, "You will keep competing with this team for as long as they want to." Is that still true? Like, you got another season in you? I'm sure you do. Uh, yeah, we definitely, we definitely got, you know, as long as everyone's still hungry and we got the motivation, I would love to continue competing with these guys. Like I said, you know, we are, we are a dysfunctional family, but we are a family. So, you know, we got the ups and downs, we got the bickering, uh, you know, and uh, it, at the end of the day, man, it's all love, you know, to come back from that, that 03 deficit when we're winning and Sam's just like, I love you guys. Like, that's exactly how I feel, uh, especially on the Enigma game, you know, I'm like, uh, on the Enigma game, I tried to pre-trink at a coil that was in the air, and I ended up shrinking like a one-second hodge into the coil. I saw it flying at me. I was a second too soon, so I had to trink it and commune right in the opener. And the thoughts just start, start going through my head. I'm like, well, I just choked the finals. There it is, man. That's so tragic. And we were able to win that one. I'm like, guys, thank you so much for giving me another chance, like allowing me to be in this game. So you know and and just the positivity too you know it's like oh my you know there's no negativity like oh my god man that's so terrible you know sam's like it's a long game bro like you know this is a nice little dampener we got here so you know it's definitely it's nice to have those uh you know those those solid teammates to bring you up especially mez mez is mr positive man also brutally honest too you know sometimes we come out of a game he's like that looks great and then sometimes we come out of a game he's like that one you know looked a little bit harder you know <laughs> so. the kiwi in him yeah, yeah. absolutely I, I, 
how, how does it feel? I mean, it's, it's such a cool moment seeing you celebrate there with your kids. And it's like, I obviously was there with you when you're starting your pro gaming career. And like, how has that journey been for you? Because obviously you've been competing forever now, right? Like, you know, I, I stopped playing like 10 years ago and you're still going, right? And it's, it's kind of this, it's interesting to me to see this journey for you because when we started, it's like we were kids and here you are winning AWC, celebrating with your kids, right? Like how, how does that kind of change your perspective for you? And like how special of a moment does that make it to be able to have your kids there? I mean, it's, it's definitely really awesome having my family have my back. You know, they, they make me like little signs. Uh, you know, we got like, we love you and Aww. you know, we got good luck dad. <laughs> and that's on, that's on my PC when I wake up and you know, my wife is super supportive. You know, she makes sure there's cold drinks in the fridge, you know, that I'm not bothered by, you know, the kids being too loud or dogs or anything. So, ready. you know, <laughs> yeah, she definitely, she definitely keeps the house on lock. You know, she's got dinner and, you know, beverages ready. You know, even though the beverage is a Sam's job, we had to have him step up this year, unfortunately. You know, that's, that's how, you know, we're really desperate. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it is just awesome. I, it was, it's actually bedtime. So I, I might've, uh, woke them up a little bit and they came <laughs> down running because, uh, you know, they, they always ask me and, you know, they're like, dad, did you win yesterday? Cause I always tell them, you know, I'm playing, I'm playing. And it's always like, oh, you lose again. And I'm like, I'm sorry guys. I'm sorry. So, you know, to finally get one, you know, we didn't lose, we didn't lose this time, Mav. We didn't lose this time, Mace, you know? So it's definitely very, very awesome. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome, I think man. that might be the, I think that might be the biggest remote tournament pop off we've seen, uh, maybe ever. Oh man, I, I I cannot tell you how good that felt. You know, I we really wanted that one. We really really wanted that one. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that's most of the questions that we have for you. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we let you go celebrate? Uh, you know, there's, there's a couple things I'd really like to say, you know, shout out to my family. Like I said, my wife holds down, you know, the four and it, it's not easy to hold down while I'm in these tournaments, you know, all the scheduling, all the practice, you know, she's right there supporting me, has my back, uh, making sure she could do everything for me, you know, shout out to, uh, shout out to my teammates. They're incredible. You know, we give each other a hard time, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade him, man, you know, trill on the rogue. I wouldn't trade him for no one else. Not this season. No way. Uh, you know, Mez, Drill, I love those guys. Uh, shout out to Team Liquid, man. I love this org. I am so happy and proud to get this org a W. And I just want to, I want to shout out the, uh, the OG Stad man. A lot of people ask me where Stad man comes from. This is, uh, my father-in-law. He was at my BlizzCon win and, uh, he passed away, uh, battling cancer. And that's why I named my character Stad man in honor of him. It was the last conversation I have. I said, I'm going to make my new character. And wow, he was a big wow fan. He was a big fan of me. So I'm going to name him Stadman and honor you. And he told me he was going to kick butt for me. And he was he was here with me this whole step of the way. When we were down 0-3, I said, come on, Ken, give me something, man. You know, don't let me go out like this. So, you know, he was with me the whole step of the way. And, uh, you know, it is just it is just an unbelievable feeling. That's awesome, man. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, Thank you so it much. sounds like that win definitely means a lot to you. And I, I'm glad it, you could it, get it, it for does. him. Um, but on a on another note as well, we you have been voted for the most valuable MVP healer by Twitch chat. I don't know if you tuned in or not, but we've been doing these little AWC awards all day, and uh, you won that one. So congrats to that as well. So it's a double double W for you. I'll take it. How much does that you one can pay? Tell, awesome. it, tell your kids. Tell your kids that one later, so you can have a win for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll store some in the bank. I'll store some in the bank. Yeah. Next sure. time you take a fat L, you can be like, "Oh, your dad's the MVP healer." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, CD, congrats once again. Uh, congrats to the rest of your team as well. Of course. There you go. Now you got the L three for it, MVP healer, and we will see you for the next one. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you guys, and uh, hope you guys have a wonderful evening. You too. Too. Oh man, he's tugging out the heartstrings. I was getting yeah, I got a little tear in my eye. I'm not gonna lie. I, me too. That was that was honestly a beautiful tribute. But congrats once again to Team Liquid Luminosity Gaming. Gonna be walking away here with second place. Golden Guardians in third. Definitely some North American staples. I know every single person, every player, every team that we've been talking to. Have been talking about just how much work they've been putting in and i really hope that everyone is uh is proud of themselves and their performance because i feel like this this might be honestly like the best finals for, for eu as well though that, that 
I mean, I just, I can't, I can't really, there's no words to describe, I feel like, how good today went. I don't know if anyone's as hyped as I am right now. <laughs> oh, definitely. I feel like I've blown my battery, you know, <laughs> casting those games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, was, yeah. Uh, it, it was incredible. I mean, this is, to me, what the AWC is all about, right? Like, these amazing yeah. finals between these teams that put in so much work and so much effort. So it, it's really awesome to see. And it's, a, it's obviously a pleasure for me getting to work with everyone here, Aya, Azale, we cast the finals with you, Zico, Super Tease, of course. Uh, it, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I've had so much fun coming back, you know, and getting to, to cast some WoW has been you know, awesome, you know, from, from competing against you, Ben, for so many years, to getting to come back and cast with you has been uh, absolutely a blast and working with all the other folks. And definitely a huge shout out to, to all of the competitors, because I know, and you know, obviously, how much work uh, it takes to be able to compete at this level. You know, it really does become your entire life to, to work and grind and be able to put that on, and, and they do it, and uh, they're able to provide us some extremely entertaining games. So massive shout out to all the players, the winners, the losers. Uh, uh, definitely all worked incredibly hard to to get here so you know definitely something to be proud of wow this might be the the most wholesome uh send off for for the end of a tournament we've ever had this is <laughs> this is great i hate to change the subject but we actually do have another um mvp that i've got a shout out as well it was it was trill or the mvp for dps so congrats to him also so that's just Three W's for Team Liquid. Yes, well done for them. Congrats to <laughs> Team Liquid. And, you know, Isaiah, I'm absolutely with you. It's been such a pleasure. Uh, you know, I've been working behind the scenes from, since 2016. So it's, it's I, we, I feel like we've all kind of seen a lot of these players sort of grow up um, and to see some of them just succeed so tremendously and really grow and find these players that they really vibe with and succeed with together. It's, 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 it's all. And I, I just, I just love AWC. Moments like this. Absolutely. And this is uh, just another shout out for Europe. Echo, first place, Admirals Esports, second place, and the agents in third place. And and what a you know what a tremendous couple of games that we saw as well. Then for for Europe this morning. Wait, was that a question to me? Oh, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Just passing it, <laughs> <laughs> kind of just passing it off for you. You know, you want to talk talk about EU a little bit. Well, I mean, uh, it's just it, it. One thing for EU is just so incredible is to see Echo and how dominant they've been. I mean, Cedu talked about Luminosity Gaming. I, I feel like we can give them a shout out. They've been so dominant mm -hmm. in North America for such a long time. But good reminder for Echo too. Like you gotta always, you know, stay as hot as possible. You know, it seems like every single year that goes by, the competition for the AWC gets higher and higher. Like teams are just refining you know, the strategies that they have, the characters that they're playing, all the different classes and compositions, and it becomes more and more difficult to just pull off chain wins. So uh, it's been really impressive to see all these teams evolve. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And also yep. huge shout out to, to everyone behind the scenes, all the production, everyone working, you know, mm -hmm. all the mods in chat, like everyone who's actually, you know, working on the show that makes it so easy for us. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people working behind the scenes. There's mods, there's admins, there are, obs there are observers. Um, you know, I know a lot of them uh, were kind of dealing with their own problems today and, and throughout the rest of the cups also. So that is definitely a rock star team of people. So if we can get some hearts in the chat for everybody that's working behind the scenes also. And they are not done. You know, we, we might be done here on the desk, but the production staff has more to come. The great push is coming up. Definitely be tuning in for that global finals on Friday, August 18th here at twitch.tv slash Warcraft or youtube.com slash Warcraft. We've got some incredible teams lined up for that total prize pool of $300,000. So, you know, if you want to see Echo potentially win again, they're competing in the great push as well. So make sure to tune in for that. But everyone, that is it for us here on the desk. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in and supporting our players. Congrats once again to Echo as well as Team Liquid, and we will see everyone for the next one. Thank you so much, and have a lovely rest of your night.